And welcome to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta. My name is Sophie Aikman. And my name is Heather McGowan. And today's broadcast is brought to you by Osborne's. Welcome back. Again, I'm Sophie Aikman. And my name is Heather McGowan. We're going to be your presenters this morning. Um, we have a lovely day for some rowing. It looks absolutely gorgeous, don't you think? It does. I can feel the nerves already starting. We've got uh, some of the live commentators behind us. They're calling everyone to the start positions. So I can imagine there's a lot of nerves going on at the moment. Yeah, we've got a great broadcast put together for you guys today. We have our own live commentators. We've got behind the scenes. We've got footage of dates with rowers. We've got dogs. We've got people learning to row. We've got a really well-rounded broadcast. It's going to be amazing. It is. It's a good day to be rowing uh, and we'd love those of you at home or watching alongside on the riverbank to be sending in any information to our social media. Yeah, follow along on our Twitter. We'll be having live updates. We'll have live edits in case anything goes wrong. Not too wrong, hopefully, for our rowers today. But we'll have lots of exciting coverage, lots of exciting stuff. Our live commentators are very excited to be here. Um, yeah, it should be an excellent day. We're really excited to bring it to you live. Yeah, we've got some of the highlights of the first races coming up. We've got Hillbead versus Collingwood College. I believe they're racing in eights. That's a big local derby. Uh, it's currently 13 degrees as well in Durham. It's not too windy, so that should be good for our rowers, although everything is up to change. Everything is up in the air at the moment. Yeah, uh, so we're about to cut to commentary for the first couple. I think we've got the eight, uh, the boats of eight novices at the moment. Mm. Um, a couple of particular highlights, I think we've got Sheffield University rowing, we've got Lancaster University, people coming from far away. I think St Andrews is maybe the furthest. Yeah, probably. I mean, we were debating earlier which is farther, Cambridge or St Andrews, and it depends on the drive, I guess. But yeah, we'll be cutting to commentary in just a few moments here, so stay tuned for the rest of our coverage, and I hope you guys are excited to watch some rowing. By of events kicking us off all the way until nine o'clock. We've got the women's elite eights, J14, octos, women's J15 eights, and the women's beginner falls. So some brilliant, brilliant races to, re to kick off this regatta. And then throughout the afternoon, we'll slowly whittle it down. And here we can see we've got those J13 women's, uh, J13 Cox Quads, the open event, getting lined up on the stake boat. So nearest to our camera, on the race course side, we have got Kambwa, and then furthest away from the camera on the Pila Wood side is Durham Amateur Rowing Club. Okay, 
So it seems like both crews are getting lined up and are attached to the stake boats. They're coming forward to attention. And we'll have them getting squared and ready very, very shortly. And there we go, the 190th Durham Regatta has begun and it's a furious start between these two Cox quads. Seems to be that the crew on the race course side in the green, that's Cambo, have taken the early advantage over Durham Amateur Rowing Club. These two crews actually faced each other last weekend at the Hexham Regatta and it seemed to be the case that it was Cambois that won that race too. So interesting to see that they've then been drawn against each other but only a week later as well. Apparently taking a strong lead too. So really, really strong start there. Coming past Collingwood landing stage and Cambois have already opened their lead out to more than a length and they've managed to break that distance and contact with the Durham crew. So this course that they're racing on today is the short course of Durham Regatta, starting at the white line at the top end of the straight and finishing just beyond the Bath footbridge. And then tomorrow the races will be raced over the 1800 meter long course. Today's course is only 700 meters long. Getting some lovely drone shots, by the way, of these two crews. Um, and Solidifies the, uh, just the advantage Currently. Yeah, you can really see the distance they managed to eke out there. And uh, you can see he'll be landing stage already with the flag out and a few spectators ready. They'll be in race number two against Collingwood. So it's the battle of the race course landing stages up next after this. But it's Camwell that have taken the advantage in this race and will surely see them through to the finish line. And they're coming past our commentary position now as well. Durham's still going all for it. They know that this could be one of the last few races they have in their seasons. So they'll want to make sure that they give a strong performance all the way to the finish line too. But for Cambois approaching the finish line, it seems like they're going to take the victory in this Open J13 Cox Quad event. And they'll next be racing at 12.15 in the final of the event, I believe, against the winner of race 67 which is later to come in the day so no doubt they'll have their eyes peeled on who their future competition is going to be they have a lovely nice clean race to kick off the regatta we like to see i'm sure the upcoming races will be much closer but who knows yet Okay, back to the starting line and we can see the first crew in this next event is just getting close to being attached to the stake boat. Believe that is Collingwood College mm -hmm. and no doubt Hillbead will be appearing soon. Here you can see a nice drone shot of the course. So we've got the race course side and the lovely clear fields and then on the left Hillbead College and Peel or Wood side. Okay, so actually this race is going to be the J15 eights between both entries of Yarm School, we can see. So race number two, Hildbead versus Collingwood, and race number three, Durham School and Hexham versus Queen Elizabeth High School are still to come. And we're going to jump to race number four, which is an, a, a straight final of the event. This is for the pot in the women's J15 eights between these two school crews of the same school so it'll be interesting to see whether the coaches have elected to go for an a crew versus a b crew or whether they've entered mixed match boats um, only time will tell but yes yeah, so you can see collingwood in the background in their red uni suits as well for the next upcoming race but yarm school on the peel or wood side still to be attached before this race gets underway sorry you cannot race under, under ara rules 
and I believe if we look on the crew on the race course side, is that going to be one of their coaches coxing them? The rules are that it has to be a junior in a junior boat. Does that happen often or is that very much unseen or...? I think at a junior level it's not entirely unheard of. It, it's quite surprising to see maybe at a national level. The coaches would have certainly coxed them when they were learning to row because it's, it's so much easier to tell what's going on in a boat from when you're sat within it compared to be it whether you're in a motorboat on the side following them on the river or even here in Durham where you can't coach from a motorboat and you have to cycle along the bank. I've known from my four years of training and doing the odd coaching session that it's quite difficult to tell what's going on in a boat and even then give feedback to the crew and shout across the river yeah. what's going on. But we can see now that the two coxes are going to be sticking their hands up and they're not happy with the direction that their boats are pointing in. And then once both hands go down in a classic boat race style, they'll be underway very, very soon. Why is it that sometimes coxes face forwards and sometimes they're fighting away from the rowers? Uh, that's more to do with just the um, the number of people that are in the boat. Most like eight you'll always have the cox facing them. But we're underway here in this race. And you can see the crew's getting very, very close together there. Little bit of clashing, but it's the crew on the Peel or Wood side that seems to have emerged in the lead out of that. Um, I would say Yarm School's ahead, but it's Yarm School versus Yarm School here in the women's J15 8 event. And now the crew on the race course side have recovered from that early tussle and collision, and now they can carry on and get back into their swing. crew on the race course side just experiencing a few issues there having to ease in and recover but it's the it's the crew on that peel or wood side that are charging out and taking a really really strong advantage here it's going to be difficult to come back to in such a short 700 meter race some of these races will only be lasting about two and a half minutes compared to the let two two kilometer races that these crews will have done earlier on at the end of May at the Nationals, which lasts about anywhere between five and a half to seven minutes. So much preparation goes into rowing, you know, the 5 a.m. starts, especially DU. Yes. It's, it's, it becomes a lifestyle. And I think at school level as well, it's always tricky because everyone's going to be doing different timetables everyone does yes. different extracurricular activities so it's really important that they make sure that they've got that coherence in their training that everyone turns up on time because with nine people in this boat if one person's not there then yeah. there's not really much point in having a session and yeah teamwork <laughs> exactly it's the it's so brilliant this is a wonderful celebration of everyone's hard work and effort that's gone into the entire season and for the majority of these clubs this is the the final race that they'll be taking part in for the season so it's really the pinnacle of both their capabilities from of the year in terms of their rowing and also just the the hype and the importance that goes into this event in their minds the 190th regatta brought to you by Osborne's this year as well. Yes. So approaching the finish line, it's the Yarm School crew on the Peel or Wood side there that's taking the win in this women's J15. It's, that's the first overall winner. That's one category complete already two races in as we just had two entries in this event. So it's a straight final. So hopefully we'll be going back up to the start in a second to bring you either race two or three. It's delayed. Okay, here we can now see Collingwood and Hild Bead on the start line. Um, just to give you a quick rundown. So in Collingwood, we have got Barton, O'Connor, Musgrave, Cox, Curtis Simpson, Matchworth, Prade, Oglethorpe and Bourne versus Hild Bead, Cox by Varley. Then going down the crew, we've got Fordham, Karen Taylor, Nichols, Wilkinson, Coxon, Norman, Holt and Organ got the captains in the bow pair there of the Hildby crew and their president as well at sat at six. That's Flora. And this is this is a real match up here. Um, I was speaking to one of the Hildby captains on their walk over to the boat tents earlier this morning 
as they were heading over and get, getting through their race warm-up. And they said that they know that the odds aren't in their favour, but they still intend on rattling Collingwood. Collingwood, when it comes to the college events today, really are the ones to beat. They had a really successful weekend at Hexham Regatta and in the women's and the men's events across the board, everyone is thinking, how can we beat Collingwood? As is the case with college sport. Yeah, indeed. Right, we're underway. Really furious start between these two crews and it's neck and neck off the start. Slight advantage from Collingwood. Collingwood seems to have nudged their nose ahead here. And it's going to be the first cheer coming from the Collingwood landing stage, which is just at the end of the Peel or Woods side. But he'll be still maintaining contacts. It's a really difficult, narrow stretch there at the top of the course to start on. And Collingwood got the, a bit lucky, I think, with the side that they were chosen. The river just runs a little bit faster on that side as it's so shallow on the race course side. So no doubt he'll, he'll be Cox. Meg Varley will be wanting to head over and make sure that she can eke some of that faster stream. I regularly see he'll be training outside their boat club. Yeah, he'll Loud music playing, great vibes. Oh yeah. Hard work. <laughs> so he'll be to have actually been on the up this year with a lot of new recruits. This is most people in this boat are racing for Hildby for the first time this year and a lot of them will be back next year as well. You can see Collingwood there may be interested to know so their blade design isn't the usual red. This is the quote-unquote DCR set of blades. There's a set of oars that is owned by the college rowing community that get loaned out to whichever club applies for them and it certainly seems to be helping Collingwood in their race here as we can now see coming past the commentary position they've got about a length of clear water over the hill bead crew. Um, Collingwood crew gave us a little note before the race saying that the whole crew can speak Spanish. And if you listen closely, the Cox often gives secret calls in Spanish. Well, those secret calls are working. <laughs> underneath Bath Bridge. That is not the finish line. The finish line is just a little bit beyond the bridge where you can see this bunting hanging over the umpire's finish booth. And it's Collingwood that have emerged victorious and they'll progress through to the final, which is at 12.30. That's going to be race 106 and where they'll be facing the victors of race 46, which will either be Leeds University or Tyne Amateur Rowing Club. That's for the women's elite eight. Back to the start line now. Seems to be some fours on the start line. We also have another set of crews coming that are already on the course. But at the start line now, this is a race in the women's beginner fours between St. Mary's College and Van Milder College. And the winner of this race, race number five, Mary's or Van Mildert, will go on to face Leeds University, we can already confirm in race number 41, as sometimes you, when you have events that are done in a draw where there's quarterfinals and semifinals, but there's not enough crews to satisfy everyone doing a quarterfinal, a crew will be selected to have a, a buy into the next round. So Leeds University will be racing fresh against whoever emerges victorious in this but we can see outside our commentary position, there's another race going past between uh, St. Leonard's School and Hexham Rowing Club in the J15 Cox Quads. And Hexham Rowing Club seems to have been the winners of that one. And off the start line in this women's beginner fours, it is St. Mary's College that have taken the early advantage off the start. Van Mildert College have a little bit of steering issues. But now they seem to be getting underway and they can start eating away into Mary's early lead, hopefully. So everybody racing in this event will be either a first or second year that has never rowed before. This will be their first year of rowing. So this is one brilliant element about the Durham University rowing scene is that people turn up in Freshers Week 
and get taught how to row by previous older members of the college boat clubs that have either rowed at school or also been a part of their college novice programs and then through the years they'll then train up the new students as they come through it's this great legacy that you have so in the coxing seat for the mary's crew is becca wood who has spent a lot of time not only racing for mary's in the senior categories this year but also helping out with the novice programs Mary's don't seem to be moving away too much now as we come past the Hillbead landing stage. Let's see if Van Milder can try and challenge them a bit more as we approach the finish line in these final few hundred metres. Van Milder now, since the tragic circumstances of their boathouse um, no, no longer being there, uh, from last season now we use the facilities of the Durham Amateur Rowing Club and also the facilities at Maiden Castle so huge thanks to them for continuing their assistance of the Durham rowing scene and also uh, Mary's who boat out of their own facilities at Clive's Boat House which is next to the Amateur Rowing Club under the coach um, their novice captain this year that's been Beth so she'll be very proud to see her own crew hopefully getting to the finish line ahead of Van Milder here. So yes, Van Milder aren't using their own yellow blades. They're using the blue blades with the yellow strip that they've borrowed from Durham Amateur Rowing Club. So many thanks to the Amateur Club for giving the equipment over so nicely. We're hearing that race number seven in the women's beginner fours as well same category has already started between chad's college and castle uh university college i should say everyone calls it castle though so i'll try not to do that anymore um so mary's win that race progress on to face leeds university at race number 41 and now it was chad's college versus university college the chad's women's captain maddie pig is at stroke followed by Patton, Boyd and Doherty and Cox by Chan Castle. It's, this is the only four that they've entered today, which is led by Banks, Sandbloom, Wharton, Bowen and Mason with Charles Bird at Cox. So University College in the red on the Peel Wood side and Chad's on the race course side. And this is a really tight tussle between these two Bailey colleges. A lot of rivalry between these two as they're literally just what is it? Um, just a little little lawn that separates the two college accommodations. Just across, across, yeah, across the lawn, really, across the cathedral. Mm. Now it seems to be University College with a eking out an advantage. Really, really good rowing from these crews, especially given that this is their first year of rowing. You wouldn't think that this is a novice crew looking at the the standard that we've got going here. can hear some cheers on the bank from some supporters of one of these crews. We were lucky to meet some of the uh, current captains from University College uh, while filming uh, a VT, which you guys will see later. Oh, oh, so University College coming past our position here have got just over a length advantage over Chad's. And what we're going to do once this race concludes, which will be for University College, is we're going to carry on with our coverage here of Durham Regatta, the 190th Durham Regatta. Brought to you by Osborne. Yes. Thank you very much. So we have University College going through the finish line to take the win in this Women's Beginner Fours event. Strong performance from Chaz. That's the closest race that we've seen so far this morning. So they'll be very, very proud of their performance. And we'll see them racing in the senior categories once the season 
goes into next year's. Okay, up on the start line now. Oh, there's a there's a lot of blades going about. This is the J14 Octopal Skulls, an event that you don't see often anymore. And a furious start between these crews. It, this is Durham School and Hexham versus Queen Elizabeth High School. A real matchup of the titans of the lo local northeast school rowing. And um, really, these two is getting the rate up high. It's a strong rivalry between them. They'll have raced each other all year, and it comes down to this. This is the last race where they'll face each other throughout the season. And you can see on the near nearest crew nearest to our camera position on the race course, a different colours kit. That's a composite, so it's made up of both Durham School and Hexham Rowing Club athletes. And then in the green and light blue on the Pilar Wood side is Queen Elizabeth High School. So these juniors will have many, many years to go in their rowing careers and no doubt in a few years' time we'll see them competing for medals at national events and once they start to get older as well they'll be pushing on the rowing machine on the water for national squad selection potentially even. So a lot of rowers that have come out of the northeast that have gone on to very successful careers for Britain. And also in Durham as well. Yeah. So a lot of people in the Durham College rowing system that have come from these schools too. So there you can see Queen Elizabeth High School who have still managed to maintain contact in a race that's so fast paced between these two crews where it's so difficult with eight athletes. It's it's really challenging to get a turn of speed going and to make progress back on the other crew. So they've still maintained contact but with the Hexman Durham School crew. Really, really tight race here. So Durham and Hexham continuing to lead here, but haven't managed to break that contact on the bow ball of that Queen Elizabeth High School crew. And this is a straight final again, the only two ent entries in this event. So it seems that Hexham and Durham will be walking away with the pot in the open J14 octuple skulls here at the 190th Durham Regatta. Why is it do you think that um, a certain team will take the lead? Is it their sequence of the rowing sequence you think they've really got pinned down or? For, for me, it's all about keeping a tidy start. Mm. In a race that's so short, you can't win a race in the start, but you can certainly lose it. So we can see from this footage here in the eighth race now between St. Aidan's College and St. Leonard's School. So a university college versus a school crew. So interesting matchup we've got going here between Aidan's and Leonard's. Um, and I was actually talking to one of the Aidan's rowers, Ben, who sat at two with the long hair. He knows that the odds aren't in their favor. School crews are always much tidier with their approach to rowing. They have their own coaches. The Durham College system is coached entirely by students of that college, in the, with the exception of St. John's in Collingwood, who do have a coach. And Leonard's now eking out a one length advantage even before we get to the Collingwood landing stage. Do teams get to pick which sides they can start from, or is that completely down to chance? Unfortunately, not. It's entirely luck of the draw. So that's one. One fact that's always brilliant about entering these races is you might know who you'll be up against in the category, but you have no idea until the draw comes out on the Wednesday before the regatta who your first race will be against. Okay, so some strong shouts on the bank from the supporters of Leonard's School coming past our commentary position. They're taking a really, really strong lead in this eighth race over St. Aidan's College, who, in my opinion, have not necessarily had the best season in terms of the results they've been getting but they certainly win the trophy for me in terms of the most entertaining comments on social media because they know that they don't need to try and talk down their opposition they embrace the fact that, that that's not what they can do so they they're racing there with their bucket hats with their sunglasses on with their mullets no doubt as well as university crews we'll so often do a Durham staple. Yeah, so follow the conversation on Twitter at PalTV and send us some comments 
of your impressions of the racing so far. We've got this lovely drone shot with the backdrop of our UNESCO World Heritage Site that we're all very proud of. Up to the start line then, we've got another Cox Falls race here, which is Durham School against Chad's College, race number eight. This is another Chad's boat. This is their second women's four competing in the event today. So it's really impressive from a college with such a small contingent. There's only about 40 students that make that get admitted to a Chad's each year, if I'm correct. Don't quote me on that. So they've worked tirelessly this year to have a novice program that's managed to field two boats of eight athletes here. Um, and this is one of the, their first rowing races. So it's been a long season, but novice programs are always the first to get cut when it's the weather. Um, of course, the infamous novice cup has been plagued by wind and high river levels over the past few years. So one of the few races that novices get where they don't need to worry about being interrupted by senior crews or things is always difficult to organize as well. But it is St. Chad's College that are leading out over Durham School. And Durham School have opted for a bow rig as well. So you notice here from this drone shot, the rower on a stroke seat in Chad setting the rhythm has the oar to their right hand side and then the Durham School crew it's on the left hand side yeah. it's just a option that the the choice that the coach has made uh, doesn't make any major difference to the speed of the boat whatsoever it's more just preference over which athlete you want to put there and on it, rowing to one side is almost like handwriting if you told some of these rowers to row with the oar in their other hand it would be quite challenging for them and also uh, might might show some new blisters as well can anything be done or is it a compromise you know if you have to row a certain way but you're left-handed i don't think it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed i just think just as, as an analogy mm. to illustrate it i at the moment this season i've rowed with the oar on the right hand side yeah uh, um as i was setting the rhythm at stroke so usually the boats are set up so the stroke seat has the oar on their right hand side um but in the past I've mostly rowed with you on my left hand side so it took a bit of getting used to and if you spend enough years rowing on one side you'll start to find that your body becomes stronger on one <laughs> side so I remember turning up to um, training for the, u the university team when I first joined Durham in 2019 we did lots of testing in that first week um, and we did a side plank contest and there were some people that, are, that we were doing the testing with that are raced at incredibly high level at finals in Henley World Regatta and they had incredible careers but they rode on the other side so we were doing a left plank and that was the side that I was stronger on so I managed to beat them but it, but then of course on the other side they're much more developed so even if you can even notice it in your rowing as well when I switched to the other side it sort of became a bit tricky with my shoulder I started to you know needed to make sure that <laughs> I did a bit of conditioning on the land to make sure that my shoulder didn't get any injury. Looking up at the start line then, we've got another eight race here. Rowing isn't just about um, arms though, is it? It's very much legs, oh, heavy definitely. and back as well. Yes, it's a common misconception is that rowing uses a lot of arms. It's mostly in the legs and the back. Um, one coach told me that if, if we wanted to we would just row with our arms and our legs but it's really there to just like reverse the momentum of the oar once you get to the end of the stroke it makes it a bit less clunky i'd say that's about 10 percent of the work is in the arms wow you wouldn't expect that though so we've got st john's college and university college lined up on the start this is a race in the open beginner eights race number nine this is a semi-final and the winner of this event will progress to race 100 at 12.07. Oh, excuse me, that will progress to race number 73 at 11 o'clock. And on the race course side, we've got St. John's College. And on the Peel Wood side is University College. So just waiting for University College to get their bows pointing in the right direction down the course. And then we'll be underway in this university or this college matchup between another two Bailey Colleges. There's a lot of Bailey Colleges we're seeing in these early races.
can see the Yarm School trying to squeeze their way past, just making sure that some of the crews that have already raced can make it past the start line before they set off these crews. So the umpires will be holding crews that have already raced on the race course side, tucked into the bank, and then they'll let a whole bunch of them quickly row through before they set off the next race. So you can see from the drone shot in the background in that field, that's where all the boats are being stored for this weekend. So even though the Durham Colleges have this as their home race, they're required to go and leave their boats there overnight, where, so they'll be on the Friday and the Saturday. But what we're going to do now is we're going to pass back over to the presenters, Heather and Sophie, and they're going to bring you the latest update from the table. <laughs> Incredible. We've seen some great races so far. What have been some of your highlights, Sophie? I think a highlight for me was watching the Collingwood women's first eight smash hill beat. That was a very impressive win for them. Very proud of they how They probably well wouldn't like the description you've given. Oh, this. huge <laughs> yeah. apologies probably to Probably by about a boat and a length, maybe, maybe two. Yeah, but awesome for the women. I can't help. I'm Collingwood pride. So Yeah, we've seen some J13 crew, so that's probably the first race they've ever done. Maybe the, one of the first regattas. Yeah. Looking very tidy, very sharp. They've spent a lot of time preparing for this, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, very clearly everyone has. So now we're going to take you to an ad. Um, stay tuned for more rowing, commentary, all of that good stuff. See you soon. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you, where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. So down the river right now, looking amazing. Looks like John's is pulling ahead. Wonderful Admittedly, for them. I was just yelling myself hoarse, yelling, yeah, John. Yeah, we've got Heather's a rower. She's rowing for John's. Can't help but get tempted in by the whole thing of it, but. Yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed our advert. We're going to be going back to the commentators in just a second to make sure you get all of the fabulous rowing content that you're tuning in for. It's, weather's still really nice, um, looking great. I'm yep, really excited I think to John's see. John's have secured that victory just now. Amazing. Uh, so go back to the commentators. See you soon. What a brilliant race there between John's and University College. And now we've got a race in the double skulls. And we can see that on the Peelor Woodside Durham Amateur Rowing Club. A really, really tight race between them and... Oh no. Sunderland City, I believe. This is race number 14 in the Open J16 doubles. So Sunderland City taking the lead against Durham Amateur Rowing Club on their own water here. Battle of... Two clubs that train on the weir, but in very different spots. So they might need to watch their steering a little bit. They're straying towards the other side of that boy line. You can see we've got a few little yellow boys there on the course just to help the crews to stay apart. But Sunderland have just passed there with their blades on the wrong side there. Doesn't seem to be getting in the way of the Durham Amateur crew too much. 
And it's the case with these junior doubles that the majority of them will actually be stronger than the open double events that the adults race in. So I've raced in the open doubles at both the Durham Autumn Small Boats Head and then the February Small Boats Head. I managed to walk away with the win in the open doubles event, but I was overtaken by school kids during the race. So even though on paper it looks like I won a nice event on time, there's still a bunch of school kids that are faster than me, and rightly so. So age range doesn't really matter too much? or it can, I think at a junior level it certainly does. So these J16 doubles will struggle to challenge the J18 doubles. Mm -hmm. But at university and open level, for people that are no longer at school, there's a large disparity yes. between people's abilities. So that's where the school crews can really start to challenge those people. And it really depends on people's commitment levels as well. There's a slight breeze today. Do you think that will be causing the rowers much havoc or? Not too much at the moment. We're in a very sheltered spot here on the river, especially at the start line surrounded by the trees. Okay, now we're back off the start line for a race in some coxed fours. This is Tyne Amateur Rowing Club versus Buick. In the intermediate Cox Fours. So we've had some beginner Cox Fours. This is intermediate now. Race number 13. So these crews will have had a few years of rowing under their belt now. And these are club crews, so they'll no longer be students. Some of them may be students, but opted to row for a club rather than their university programs. Some of them will have jobs as well, and they'll have to juggle their training around their hours. And nice tight racing with these crews. Tyne Amateur Rowing Club on the Peel or Woodside just need to still maintain that contact with the Buick team on the race course side. And as the Buick team comes close to our commentary position, we can hear their cocks from where we're sat here at the Cutter Boathouse, furiously encouraging their crew. As the time crew is slowly starting to come back, it seems even, as well. Many hours of training goes into becoming a cox, doesn't it? Oh and yeah, it's, it's so much harder than it looks. It's almost, I, I compare it to driving. Right. You ha really have to be aware of everything that's going on around you and be really commanding as well with however many rowers, whether it's four or eight of them that, play, that trust you to steer a good line and to take the initiative with the training session or the race because these rowers can't see where they're going. Mm -hmm. So it's all on the cocks and the rowers will be able to see the little line almost, you can see off the end of the boat from uh, from where they've raced already. There's a little, like, um, a line that comes off off the stern of the boat, and the rowers will be able to see how straight that line is pointing down the course or whether it zigzags a bit. And they can, well, it's happened a few times that I've had a go at a cox for snaking all the way down a course, just adding extra meters where it's been quite unnecessary in such a straight race. Do you find that coxes often row themselves or? I think the majority of coxes are a lot shorter. So some of them may try their hand at rowing and then maybe decide to switch to coxing. In the college system, usually people will turn up in Freshers Week and be spotted for how short they are and then get told to cox or encouraged to see if they'd like to. Um, it has been the case, as we've seen with the race between Johns and Castle in the beginner eights, the cox of the University College crew, Matthew Stranix, is actually um, more of a rower. I've trained with him quite a lot over the past few months, and he's a big bloke, and he was to squeeze himself into that coxing seat. They're very tight seats for the coxes, and they all have to weigh in at, I think it is 55 kilos, and if they weigh underneath, under 55 kilos, then they get given wait by the event organizers to make sure that there's some equal that's 
really interesting. Okay, so that is the women's beginner fours between Sunderland City and Lancaster University. Lancaster have made the trip to Durham Regatta. They're always big, big supporters of races in the Northeast. And we saw their whole contingent walking past us earlier as we were setting up for this stream. And that's their first race of the day against Sunderland City. So coming underneath Bath Bridge now, approaching the finish line, it is the Sunderland City crew who are taking the win on the weir over Lancaster University. Up at the start line, then we've got some more Cox Fours. Lots of Cox Fours going on today. It's always a real, really popular category. So we've got lots of races to get through to whittle down these crews ready for the final races later on in the day. We'd also like to shout out Andy Thomas, as it's the first time he's not racing in the regatta in 15 years. 15? 15. Goodness I've me. never heard of that before. Don't think I've been rowing for 15 years. <laughs> Imagine that. How many different events do you think you could race in in 15 years? I know. How do you actually enter into the regatta? Is that how well you've done say in U in Durham how well you've done as a college or can anyone sort of enter is it like separate so you so you have to pay for membership all of these events are run under British rowing rules so there's a whole online platform where everyone has their memberships of their club and then it's the responsibilities of the captains or entry secretaries however you like to name that role to make sure that when entry is open for the event about a month in advance they log on and say these are the crews that we want to enter and i'm always a big fan of the minute entries open i just do it because the event organizers have the right to refuse entries if too many people enter if yeah. the event's oversubscribed it's first come first serve so on the start line here we've got josephine butler college closest to our camera with the red blades and yellow cross on their spoon design and then the yellow boat and red kit of collingwood college So this is in the open maiden Cox Force, race number 16. And the winner of this will go on to race either Stevenson College or St. Mary's College in a race that will be coming very, very soon. You can just see there Josephine Butler crew getting themselves sorted as some other crews pedal past back towards the boat tents. Right, they're coming forward under starters orders as we have the Cox's hands go up. Both hands are down. And we're off. Big matchup here between these two crews. And they're getting very, very close together off the start. Lots of overlap between the blades. A lot of clashing here. That's not what we like to see. Josephine Butler seemed to have emerged out of that one. Oh, we've got a crab there from the Collingwood crew at the two seats. They seem to have recovered from that, but it's Butler who have managed to seize on that uh, with that early advantage there. And now Collingwood will have their work cut out to try and turn the odds in their favour. Butler having their own issues there as well. Oh, the Butler crew have stopped. What's happened here? Both crews have stopped, it seems to be. Okay, the umpires have intervened and no doubt we'll see the crews spin and head back up to the start in a minute to have a have another crack at racing each other off the start the umpires weren't happy with how that turned out so they'll want a fairer race to come soon shout out to michelle scott in dubai from your mum who's here on the race course lovely you've got lots lots of people viewing wherever you are in the world thank you for joining us here on pal tv's coverage of the 190th Durham regatta sponsored by osborne's our good friends. I loved seeing that advert earlier where we had a little quick yeah, water break. Wonderfully shot. Wonderfully shot. We've got a really, really big production team behind us here inside Cusp Boat House. So thank you to Cusp for hosting us as well. And we've got the operations team upstairs with a whole load of equipment that we were given an induction on, but I'm still struggling to understand. I just get given the microphone and do my research on the cruise. 
Scuffs are racing soon as well, I think. Oh yes, yes, we saw them. They were warming up, so they were, they were down in their boat bay earlier inside the boathouse while we were setting up, doing their warm up, and then they made their way over to the boat tents. So still, this butler and this Collingwood crew sat on the course, awaiting further instructions from the umpire as to what to do next with their race in the Cox Falls event. Of course, the umpires will want to get this race restarted as soon as possible to make sure that it doesn't interfere with then their later race as well. So the winner of this race will be then racing at 10.07. So not long for them to get their recovery in either. No. Okay, so crews seem to uh, be aware of what to do next and they'll be heading down to a more suitable place to quickly turn around and head back up to the start line. You can see there we've got some results coming along the bottom of your screen. So um, we'll keep those coming as soon as we get the results coming through race by race as well. And shout outs can be requested on Twitter or if you comment on the live stream. We'd be happy if you have a family member or friend who's racing today, um, just drop us a comment or a tweet and we can try our best to shout them out on the, on the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking back up at the start line then, this is Stevenson College and St Mary's College. This is another race in the Cox Fours event. So the winner of this race will go on to face whoever is victorious in the race there between Collingwood and Josephine Butler. So Mary's in the purple, Stevenson in the red. Um, Mary's actually put in their commentary notes, one of their crews said that they are racing under the <laughs> joke name of Durham University Boat Club because of course Mary's race in purple. Yeah. Um, Durham University race in the officially termed palatinate color. And I have to say, I, I'm one of the guilty people when it comes to rowing past Mary's on the water throughout the season, we would always shout yeah do you at them rather than Mary's. So they've actually put in their notes that they like it when people do that. And I have to say that's been me mostly. Oh, <laughs> William. This is our first viewing of Stevo today. Yes. Stevenson College, a relatively new college to come to the Durham University main campus. So it's been a few years for them to get their boat club up and running, but they've had a really, really brilliant season that started, of course, at the Senate Cup and then races on the Tyne and on the Thames as well at the big head of the river in March. Stevenson College had a, re a brilliant performance in terms of the ranking of the Durham College crews on the men's side of things. Um, OK, so Mary's have now come to attention in that stern-loaded boat with the cocks sat facing the stroke seat. And in the Stevenson crew, you can see the cocks lying down there behind the bowman, and they're underway. And Mary's have really taken a rapid start here versus the Stevenson crew, who almost weren't ready there for the umpire to set them off. Very tidy and coherent rowing from the Mary's crew there. Incredible disparity there. So Marys will be pleased to see Stevenson in the distance on the other side of the race. They can see them and they can see the gap increasing as they get smaller and smaller in the distance. But now we can see the Stevenson crew managed to get some rowing back in time after that issue at the start line and it's tricky especially with with some of these novice crews it could be some of the crew's first time doing a regatta mm. having to line up on a stake boat get their boat pointing in the right direction it's all quite hectic there because the umpires have so many races they need to get through they're not well, they're not going to be patient with you so as soon as they see that you're straight they're going to go um, it's happened a few times that whether the crews aren't aligned or someone's not putting in the right direction but Stevenson will be pleased that they've managed to get some boats out of this regatta, no doubt. 
as you said earlier, it's completely taught within college. So if you're an older college, in theory, you would have had like generations of knowledge passed on, whereas Stevenson is quite new. You might have only had a couple generations of rowers and still n quite new to setting out, really. Oh, definitely. And I think it's especially when there's a technicality where te you can row for any college you'd like to as well. Mm. Um, there's no word of law that says if you're at this college you must row for this college so you'll see some rowers today in the in some durham college crews won't actually be members of their college so the people at stevenson have had had to obviously try and maintain people who have rowing knowledge and convince them to stay and start their program and keep it alive rather than go and row for another college So the Mary's crew have come past our commentary position with a resounding lead over the Stevenson crew. And underneath Bath Bridge there, great spot for watching the racing. If, if you, there's space for the people to walk past as well and actually use the bridge. And very, very flat conditions there towards the finish line really really brilliant brilliant conditions here for some rowing today very little wind nice bit of sun and of course it's non-tidal here on the weir so no issues with fast stream or high river levels either the river levels actually been incredibly low by summer standards lately so much so that during my training session last week we were using a boat that's stored at Maiden Castle at the sports centre. There's a landing stage there, but that's quite a shallow part of the river naturally anyway. So it was so shallow that if we'd have put the boat in the water there, we would have broken the fin off. So what we had to do is we had to carry the boat from Maiden Castle on our shoulders all the way to Collingwood's landing stage, which is about a 500 metre walk. With a, It's quite a heavy boat as well. Um, put the boat on the water do the session for six and a half kilometers, take the boat out and then walk back and put it back in Maiden Castle. And let me tell you, the walk back was <laughs> rather tiring. My shoulders were very sore, sore the rest of that day. Was that your first experience of the walk being that shallow? Yes. Usually in my, my four years here, it's always been the river being too high yeah. to row on, not too low. What happens then when it's too high? Do you also have to relocate or? So there's a, an official limit where you can't actually go and row if the river level's too high. If there's been a lots of rainfall over the winter, it's just a bit too fast flowing and dangerous. Mm. Especially just beyond Previn's Bridge, there's an actual weir and you don't want crews going off the edge of that. I think it's only happened once so far this year and thankfully the, the crew are okay. I think it was a St. Aidan's College novice crew that saw a picture of the uh, boat, an end of a boat just hanging off the edge of the weir. Oh, I saw that, yeah. Okay, up on the start line now, we've got St. John's College and St. Aidan's College and another Durham University College rowing matchup. So wonderful to see a large contingent of college crews racing today. So this is in the women's intermediate Cox Fours, race number 12. St. John's on the race course side and St. Aidan's on the Peel of Wood side. Seems to be that the boats are sort of pointing towards each other. Yeah. So we'll wait a second before they get started, no doubt. So John's might need to make sure that their bows are pointing in the right direction. And just a few crews paddling past the, the state boats as well, just to get out of the way so we can have a nice clean start. The last thing we'd want is someone clashing with a crew that's not even on the course. just want to give a shout out while we can see them to those stake boat holders leaning off the edge of the moored skiff boats it's their job to lie there all day with their life jackets on and hold on to the boats um, if i'm ever in the stroke seat of a boat where there's someone holding on to the stake boat, i'll have a quick word with them and say go on give us a little push <laughs> little advantage never know no doubt they'll be getting a free burger for their volunteering efforts today and they'll probably be racing in some events later on themselves too. They'll be made up of juniors from the amateur rowing club. 
a lot of a lot of volunteers today um, from the amateur club and the college community there was a big marshals briefing that took place the other evening for everyone so lots of colleges that enter are then required to um, make some of their athletes act as marshals when they're not racing so there's a big spreadsheet that's sent out and every college has to fill their slot so they're under starters orders now And we're underway. Furious start there from both crews. St. John's College pointing a bit towards the race course. They might need to get straight. It's very shallow there. Oh, St. John's are in the bank. And they're it's Aidens that are leading out. Bit of a strange. Oh, they're straightened up now. They both had a bit of a strange angle. So St. Aidens won't be showing any remorse here it's a cutthroat sport rowing and they'll be pleased with the fact that they can make it through to the next round but also it's very unfortunate for john's after such a long season and coming here for one of the biggest races of the year to for it to end so quickly for them so ins will continue to push it's always handy getting that first race out of the way there's a lot of nerves so they'll be pleased that there's little pressure on them and they can have a quick test of their race pace for the later races. I remember there was, there was one race earlier on this season, uh, the Senate Cup, which was a competition between College Fours and we were up against University College quite early on in the morning and we knew, we knew that we were more likely to win than them. And I remember going off the start and you know, the Castle leading out and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, if I lose this race and it's like, my parents have travelled all the way to watch and it's so early on then I'll be really annoyed. So um, luckily I didn't and just that, those nerves on the first race, it's quite frantic. Like we're saying, you, so, you can't win the race in the start but you can certainly lose it and there's your, your example there in St John's who unfortunately just had a bit of issue with one of their athletes missing a few strokes and not being in time and then getting pointed into the bank because of course you've got two people rowing on each side so you need to make sure that there's a nice even power between the athletes as well so it works as pivots so Aiden still pushing as they come past our commentary position lots of dogs at the regatta as well I can see two from where I'm sitting now and there was a large very very big Alsatian earlier as well so it's always one of my favourite things to spot at these events. Lots of supporters with their dogs. Lots of parents out. Lots of colleges, schools, university crews, club crews. A whole host of training programmes on display here at the 190th Dome Regatta. Okay, up at the start line then, we've got our re-row between Collingwood College and Josephine Butler College. You may remember earlier on there was a little bit of clashing at the start so the umpires have opted to rerun this race for fairer racing so Josephine Butler on the race course side with the white boat and Collingwood with the yellow boat it was Butler that emerged in the lead after the little clash that they had in the early running of this race but Collingwood seems to be closing the gap quite quickly before the umpires opted for the restart so ooh, don't know who to pick for this yeah, you mentioned earlier about those pre race nerves. How do you think these rowers feel now that they've had to restart? They've already had their initial nerves and they're having to oh restart. Oh, gosh, now. yeah. I can't even begin to imagine. They'll be even more nervous, especially because they'll have already had that initial burst of adrenaline. Like when you clash your blades, it's like a, a real burst of adrenaline. And almost this surge of e energy comes out of nowhere and you start to row a lot harder but then of course once the adrenaline wears off it hurts a lot more and they've got to go through this all again and the start sequence can be really really tiring so just waiting for that john's crew to get past josephine butler and the crews are now coming up 
to attention. Of course, you can't see the umpire. The umpire is located on a little stand parallel with these crews. Underway, much cleaner start then in this race and very even between the two crews. A little bit of clashing again, I must say, actually, the Josephine Butler crew pointing towards Collingwood and there's a clashing on the bow side there of their blades and Collingwood, oh, but they've stopped again. It's the second instance in this exact race of the crews not being able to get the off the start cleanly, which is not what they're looking for. Um, we've already got, of course, the, their opponents in the next race will be watching this coverage eagerly to learn about who their opponents are. Will they race again, or is that...? I'm not sure. But what we're going to do now is we're going to pass back over to the presenters, and we have a very special guest sat on the sofa with us here. Welcome back, and there's been some incredible first few races. I'm joined here today by St John's principal, David Wilkinson. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Nice to be here. So, David, how many Durham regattas have you been to in your time here? Um, this is about my 19th, um, 17 as principal. So this is my 17th. This is the last year I'm, I'm being principal. So this is the last time I'll be here uh, in, in the role of principal, although I'll still always be in the background cheering Johns on. <laughs> And what do you think of the John's performance? We saw the men's eight win, and we have just saw the women's four, unfortunately, have a crash at the start. Yeah, this happens. I mean, the men's eight were outstanding, of course, a great row. Uh, women, that's a very difficult start, isn't it? And mm -hmm. so it can often happen. And I've seen a number of crashes and uh, sinkings over the years. Um, and occasionally it's John's, not always. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very sorry for the women. We know that they've put in an incredible shift of hard work. Uh, I'm very proud of those girls and hope that they're able to enjoy the rest of the day. I mean, this is the thing with, with the rowers. I mean, I, I was never a rower because, A, I, I don't like hard work, B, I don't like early mornings, and C, I'm really afraid of the water <laughs> most of the time. Um, so I've got a really high regard. And, uh, yeah, I mean, in all competitive uh, racing, there's always the possibility that it goes well or it doesn't, depending on uh, however much training you put in. It's always a risk. Yeah, and that just shows with Durham Regatta, I think when, when it's all in the start, anything can happen, really. You know, two crews can go in at very different ability and who knows what's going to happen. Exactly. And, I mean, I've seen some fantastic races, and particularly with John's, of course. Uh, but, I mean, Durham Regret is wonderful, isn't it? I mean, the whole atmosphere, it's just a, a kind of sense of community here with all of the colleges and then all of the other rowing teams. Uh, it's a wonderful, easy atmosphere, which is good. Great. Well, thank you very much, David, for um, agreeing to be interviewed, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we're now about to go over to Sophie, uh, who's going to talk to us about the VT that's about to come up. Thank you very much. <laughs> back to the commentary booth and we can bring you now a race in some Cox Fours, that's Trevelyan College with the blue oars on the race course side taking the lead. Coming past Collingwood, there's their lead over Chad's College. Another great matchup of University Colleges here. Yes, this is the first Hill versus Bailey race we've had of the day so far, actually. We've had a few Hill Hill, a few Bailey Bailey, but the first Hill versus Bailey. And of course, later on, a few, an event coming up over the next few days, I'd say in about a week and a half, we've got the Admirals Regatta, which is run between the college teams, and there'll be a mixed eight of Hill rowers versus Bailey rowers, which is always a fun race, a little bit of bragging rights between the Hill and the Bailey rowing teams. And it's Trevelyan that are taking the lead. I saw this crew tr out training 
quite a bit over the past few days. They've got some very tidy paddling about them. So it's great to see that that's tr transitioning into their race pace as well. Okay, on the start line now. Hexham Rowing Club and Cambwa Rowing Club. This is the J15 doubles, race number 22. Just a shot there of Chad's making their way towards the finish line. So nice local rivalry between these two titan clubs of the Northeast rowing system. J15 doubles that... These athletes will be no older than 14 years old, managing to run a boat without a cox at their age. It's incredibly impressive, steering a straight line, running their own training sessions. And of course, they won't have had any input from the coaches once they'd have pushed off on the landing stage here today compared to their training sessions. It's all down to them, these 14-year-olds, once they get on the water on race day. What's a typical age to start rowing? Was it any age or once you can good swim, question. you can go in a rowboat? Or yes, good point. So everyone's required to do a swim test before they can row. So I first did my, I did my first swim test when I was, oh, I want to say 11. I started rowing just after the London Olympics. I was inspired. inspired. I was inspired. The, the tagline was inspire a generation and it worked for me. Um, went and saw a few gold medals being won on the day and I thought you know what I'm rubbish at other sports let's try rowing I think that's the case with lots of people that join this sport we're not very coordinated with catching and things mm, so we turn to rowing um, and these school crews it's usually the case if you're rowing at school you'll have started when you join in year seven or year nine and then we've seen with lots of the women's beginner fours people choose to start at university as well and it doesn't necessarily matter when you start rowing either and how that affects your ability because there's lots and lots of novices that have started at Durham University that have then gone on to represent Great Britain at under 23 level and they only started when they were 18 years old and then two, three years later they could have a, a Great Britain vest on. How quickly does it take for your skin to, or like for your body to get used to? You know, like you often see like the injuries, um, the blisters, the cuts. Does your, does your skin get used to that? or no? <laughs> The blisters are pretty immediate once you first start because there's so much twisting of the oars. So you can even, you can, you can see now, Etta, I've still got like, these blisters on my hands are quite old, but they're still showing through. Um, but your hands, the more you train, the more your hands get used to it and the more your skin hardens. So, yes. Okay, now a race in the pairs between Josephine Butler College and Hillbead Boat Club. The Hillbead Boat Club crew of Jason List and Joel Crew. They've been training this pair for a very, very long time, since about March, when they took the decision that they wanted to have a crack at the pair at the summer races. And Butler are giving them a really, really strong race. This is race number 24. The winner of this race will go on to race number 60, where Sheffield City will be waiting for them. Sheffield aren't going to be racing in this round. So incredibly tidy rowing from both these crews. It's so hard at college level to move a pair. It's one of the trickiest boats to, to work from both a balance and a power perspective, because what you want is the two people to row exactly the same way. Would you say it's more difficult in a two rather than in a, a larger boat? Oh, definitely. Because the boats are a lot smaller, so they're a lot flimsier. When you're in boats that are made up of eight people, you have much less effect on the balance just as you're one person. But when there's only two people responsible for the balance of the boat, then everything you do has such a larger effect on the boat. And even when you've got one oar, you have to rely on your opposite man to make sure that he's balancing the boat. Whereas as we saw with the doubles race just now before this one, they've got both oars, so they can still adjust their handle level themselves to affect the balance. But the pair, such a tricky boat. Is it a scully when there are two oars? Sculling is two oars and then sweeping is one. Will we see any sculling today? We just did see sculling. That was, yeah, <laughs> with the J15. So, Joel Crew and Jason Ish, you got uh, Joel sat at stroke with the blonde hair and Jason in his customary, his usual bucket hat. 
having a very good race and there was a large cheer from the hillbead landing stage as they went past we'll see them racing again later today in the eight but they've before that they've got their next race up in the pair versus sheffield city but they just need to watch their steering a teeny bit strain towards the shallow side of that bank same for hillbead as well the river kinks there just as you come under the footbridge you always forget had a fair few scrapes with that little bit of concrete on the far side. There you go, he'll be taking the win in that first pairs race of the day. looking up at the start line we're just waiting for our next set of crews to get attached to the stake boat on our program it's most likely to be the intermediate eights between york and lancaster we've had a few races that have been chopped and changed around by the umpires depending on whether the crews in the marshalling zone are ready or not sometimes they'll just have one of the crews won't be ready and if there's a race where both crews are already there they'll just opt to run that race instead Beautiful, beautiful shot of the race course as well. So we'll have a few more races underway very, very shortly here at the 190th Durham Regatta. And we're going to pass to the presenters now. Oh, we're going to pass to Avita. I'm Heather and I'm here with PAL TV to explain the regatta course for the 190th Durham Regatta. Behind me is the start of the race course. Uh, it's a stake boat start, which means that both boats are starting from a complete standstill and released at the same time. On a short course like the 700 meter one on Saturday, the start is incredibly important. At this point, we're about halfway down the short course, so 350 meters in. Crews are starting to likely feel pretty tired by now, which is where there's a real boost when supporters are cheering along. For the rowers participating in the race, the footbridge signifies the end. After this, there's about 40 metres left to go. For those participating in the longer course, they've got to go all the way through the traditional Elvet bridges, all the way round the corner under Framwell Gate Bridge, right before Prevens Bridge. On the course now, we've got race number 18 in the women's intermediate fours between St. Cuthbert Society and Josephine Butler College. Josephine Butler on the Pilo Wood side with the advantage overcut with those green chevrons on their spoon design. So Josephine Butler with the lead here coming towards Bath's footbridge, but Cuss still maintaining contact as well. So many, so many college crews here up against each other. They've been racing each other all season, have really strong knowledge of who their opponents are. And there's the next race on the course as well. Both teams will have been anticipating this race. It's a really important 
exciting race. And then this race here that you can now see, that's still Butler and Cuths, but close behind them is Gray College and York University that's already on the course in the same event. Okay, Butler have managed to eke out a really, really strong lead here now as Cuss row past their own landing stage. And we can bring you an update as well on the previous race. So you may remember in the other men's Cox 4 event between but Josephine Butler College and Collingwood College was raced twice because of some steering issues in the start of the first race. They were restarted then in that rerun as well. There was some clashing off the start. And just in that VT break, I managed to grab a quick word with the Collingwood Cox as they rode past. And we can now inform you that the Josephine Butler crew have been disqualified by the umpires and Collingwood will progress to the next round of the Open Maiden Cox Fours event where they will be facing St. Mary's College in race number 52 at around 10.07. On the start line then, this is Gray College on the race course side in the red and York University on the Peel or Wood side. So college versus university program. And a furious start there from the Grey crew. They're very keen to get their noses out in front. Incredibly high rating. This, so these crews won't have faced each other much throughout the year. So they won't know much about each other. So you really have to make sure you give it your all off the start to try and intimidate the other crew. Is that the best way to, to go? As powerful a start as you can or are you liable to wearing yourself out quite quickly? I think in a race that's 700 metres long I'd worry more about the start yeah. than running out of energy at the okay. end. I think if I wanted to get my do, do sort of have my quickest turn of speed during a race I'd rather it be at the start in this event because right now the York crew are the ones that are behind Grey can see them they know exactly where they are mm -hmm. so if you're in that Grey crew and York starts to come back at your lead you can watch it happening in real time but York still maintaining contact that fast start from Grey has got their their bow ball out in front but York could slowly start to eat into this lead down the race course can start to become quite lonely on the course and that stretch between Collingwood and Hillbead is always longer than it feels. No, sorry, it feels longer than it is. <laughs> so coming past Hillbead landing stage now, but J Grey College still with that lead, but York uh, getting ever closer. This could be the first race you see of the day where the crew that's led off the start might have their lead eaten into. Really, really, really close racing now coming past our commentary position. I can see the York crew there. Butler might, uh, sorry, Gray might need to be a bit careful with some of the crews that are parked up on that marshalling side of the bank and make sure their spoons don't overlap. Um, York have given them a very, very close race. No doubt Gray are going to be very tired here in the intermediate Cox Force event. The winner of this race will now progress to race number 55, where they will be racing again in what I believe is the semi-final of this event. So this is a quarter-final. Gray managed to take the victory in that, but York getting very, very close to coming back at them after that initial strong start from Gray. Brilliant racing there here. Back up to the start line now. This is race number 23. Open J15 Cox quads between Yarm School and Durham School. The local matchup on the way between these two school programs, a very strong rivalry between the two clubs. And it's Yarm School that have led out strong 
on the race course side in their blue and red stripy kit. And Durham School on the Peel or Wood side have got their work cut out. They need to make sure they maintain that contact with the arm, the arm crew if they've got any chance of progressing through to face the awaiting Bedford Grammar School in the next round of this event. Would this be an extracurricular activity that, again, again the um, the students will sign up to, or is it encouraged in activities such as PE? Or Oof, yeah, good question. Uh, most likely in the school program, it'll be one you know like your sports sign up. Yeah. So they'll have the choice between your usually like your rugby or football, and then rowing. No doubt, when people join this school, everyone will have had the opportunity to try rowing, and then you yeah. choose to sign up for it to be your sport for the term or the year. Um, and at the younger age groups, the squads are very, very large as like more people in the year group row and then it slowly, slowly you get smaller and smaller as the training levels become a bit more intense and so it's sort of not for everyone as well and people elect to take the decision to pursue other directions too. So Yarm there with a very large advantage over Durham School. This is race number 23 originally scheduled for 8.55. We've had a few switch, a little bit of switching around here in our program. Yarm yeah, even managing to slowly ease off a bit before they cross the finish line. They'll need to save their energy. They've got a big race coming soon against Bradford Grammar School. For the um, university swim tests, are they always so early? Yes. Um, is that just a tradition or is I think it's more just access to the pool as yeah, well because true. it's such a one-off thing you can't really book the the pool for a normal time of day they'll already have their timetable set up okay this is a Cox Falls event You've got Collingwood College on the Pelor Wood side and Lancaster University on the race course side and it is Lancaster that have led out off the start line here. A match up between two clubs that opt for the red and black kit. So this is race number 21. The winner of this will be going through to race number 56 where St. Leonard's School are waiting for them. So can be the case that you have in these events where it's not specific to club, university, college, that you get a bit of a mixture of programs that are run in different ways. So university programs versus school programs and club programs as well. Little bit of steering there. You can see Lancaster is straying off their side of the river quite a lot and hampering Collingwood's chances of eating back at their lead. If Collingwood now came back into the lead, they would be on top of Lancaster. So Lancaster really needs to get across the umpires won't be happy with this impeding on Collingwood's chance of making any progress in this race so you can see there to the right hand side of Lancaster is this yellow boy they should be the other side of that coming past he'll be landing stage now they've got the sofas out as always again is that like a problem with steering that they've ended up so close Yes, that'll be something. The, the Cox can control the steering as well. You've got a little rudder that they can yeah. point in the direction to move the rudder strings and steer the boat. But um, they need to make sure they get across. They haven't managed to do that just yet. Collingwood won't be happy. Because you can see the Collingwood boat's now starting to get very, very close. There's clashing. We can see out of our commentary position there. And the Collingwood crew are not happy with Lancaster for being on their side of the water. So Collingwood managed to come back, but then run into Lancaster as they've been almost blocked here. So it'll be interesting to see what decisions made over the outcome of this race. Coming under the footbridge, it is L Lancaster that will take the win here we can say now but that's unconfirmed as a result no doubt after that clash just outside cut landing stage 
Okay, on the start line now, we've got some eights that are lining themselves up. This is race number 25 in the open intermediate eight between York University and Lancaster University. So I believe this is the first race we've had today where neither crew racing are natives to the weir all the time. So Lancaster University are going to be racing in the red and black and York University in the light blue and yellow. Great historical rivalry between these two. If you just consider Lancaster and York racing each other as well. It's nice to have other universities here too. It just demonstrates like the inclusivity of the regatta and mm. You know, it just adds to its already like profound history. I mean, I'm sure it makes up some of its history, the fact that anyone can come here and apply to race. Oh, such a strong appeal to this regatta. Um, we'll hopefully have a chance to speak with the man himself tomorrow, but we've got a former Durham University, Ed Gardner, who's very, he's got some ex an exceptional career. He's traveled all the way from Cambridgeshire Wow. To race. He's representing his club that he rose for now in Cambridge. So he's coming in his single to race. Such is the appeal of this event, which of course is oh, about three, four hour drive. Yeah. All the way up the A1. So now Lancaster and York coming forward to their start positions. And they are underway here, the first race of the open intermediate eights. Very, very tight start between these two crews. Does seem to be, if I could call it Lancaster, that have managed to edge out in front. We'll see as the camera pans around and we get a better indication. Oh, it's too close to call at this stage. This is one of the closest starts that we've seen so far this morning. It's now York that seems to have the advantage as we come past Collingwood. A very quick race. Blink and you'll miss it here in the student eights. It's a very, very quick race. It's about two, two and a half minutes long on this short 700 metre course. Now they come into this little stretch of what I like to call no man's land between Collingwood and Hildbead. It gets a bit quieter, start to have the adrenaline of the start wear off and it starts to really hurt. And then once you get to Hildbead, of course you think, oh goodness, I've got the start line, the finish line to now start to, to to wind for as well so a lot to think about in such a short space of time Lancaster University straying over very tightly towards the boy margin between these two crews you can see their spoons getting very very close together as they come past it's very loud between these two crews now you just see Lancaster and York neck and neck it does seem to be Lancaster that have now eaten into this initial lead that York had really, really close racing here between these two intermediate eights. They'll have been racing each other throughout the season at Bucks at the head of the river in March as well. They'll have a lot of understanding about what the results have been between the two. And it all comes down to this as well. The bragging rights for the year go towards the final race and it's too close to call coming past the finish line. Oh, I, I can't say it. Wow, amazing racing there between those two university crews. Okay, up on the start line then. Yarm School and Hildbead Boat Club. This is race number 26 in the same category, open intermediate eight. So Hildbead, this is their second eight racing at the regatta their first day is racing later on in the day in the next category up um this hillbead crew also nicknamed the dairy boys by themselves on social media what does that it, mean it's just the name that they've gone for okay. the club um you may see a few of the athletes sporting their cow print bucket hats oh, right. around the bank as well um a few chance of move will no doubt come from the hillbead landing stage as well and we're off and it's a very very tidy and fast start there for the yarm school crew a lot of the all of this hillbead crew will have learned to row at university 
over the past three years and have been part of the novice programs and then gone through the ranks and the yarm school crew incredibly tidy know that they may not be as physically strong as the hillby crew but they're incredibly tidy rowing and their technique is what's giving them this advantage over Hildbead. How difficult is it to get that sequence um, like imprinted in your memory? It really, I think it's down to the, the coach, especially because you need to make sure that every athlete's rowing in the same way. Yeah. You see a lot, there's there's some difference between the styles of rowing that we'll see today and that doesn't necessarily mean that one crew is faster than the other yes. what matters is that all eight athletes in that boat are rowing mm -hmm. the same way and then that will have such a profound impact on the boat as well if you consider when people are applying the pressure on the oar as well whether you want to give more power on the oar at the start of the stroke or at the back of the stroke it doesn't matter as long as all eight of you do mm -hmm. it at the same spot that'll have a big big difference on the running of the boat and what you don't want to do is interrupt the boat and throw your weight around make it tip back and forth or side to side so yarm school with just over a length advantage over the hill bead boat you can see there we've got um let's see who have we got in that boat you've got joe marshall henry tom dom and Cox by Tiger Lily coming underneath the footbridge there. No doubt we'll see the bow ball of the arm crew. There they are managing to take the rate down. So this is the second time we've seen today a yarm school crew take the rate down as they've had a resounding lead over another crew. It seems to be a little instruction they've been given by their coaches to save their energy for the later races. So yarm are going to go on to race the winners of that York and Lancaster matchup that was too close to call. So we'll bring you that result as soon as we know the confirmed verdict. Up on the start line now, we've got more eights racing. Starting to pack out a bit more now um, on the race course. More people are arriving, the sun's out. And more dogs walking past as well. Yeah, lots of dogs. So this eighth race between Sheffield University and York University, staying with the in open intermediate eighth event. And it is uh, York University that seemed to have this early advantage over Sheffield in the yellow and black on the near side. Sheffield, big fans of Durham Regatta. They come every single year and... They'll be racing throughout the weekend. A large contingent will be here. A little bit of an issue there for the three-man. Almost lost his blade, but he's managed to recover. So like a very, very strong crew. Quite a large life jacket as well, I must say, on that cox. Nothing wrong with that. Safety first. Exactly. So it seems now it's the York crew that have managed to stick their bow ball ahead of the Sheffield crew as we approach the Hillbead landing stage there. So Hillbead have already raced three times today. Two boats knocked out though. Their pair will be racing later on. Coming past the commentary position, you can see... Oh, I believe it's the York crew that are just in front of the Sheffield crew by about a seat. Really, really tight race. And of course, there's a little kink that bends in the river here towards the finish line that may give Sheffield a slight advantage as we come to the finish line. York needs to be careful that they don't put too much rudder on and slow down the boat as we come underneath the footbridge here on our final camera position. We'll see which bow ball comes underneath first. And it's the, the York crew that have eked out their lead towards the latter stages of this race over Sheffield University who will progress through to then race Yarm School later on. Right, more eights racing. We're staying with the intermediate eights. Collingwood College versus Hatfield College. Big, big rivalry and matchup between these two programs. 
first viewing of Hatfield, am I right? Yes, this is Hatfield's first appearance of the first race of the regatta. So we'll just wait, I believe, for some crews to get past. Right, you can now see the Hatfield crew coming towards the front, ready for the start. And we're underway. Very strong start from both crews, as always is the case with H Racing at college level. This will be their last big event of the season. So all of the bragging rights until we get towards the first event of next season in October finish here and it's Collingwood that are taking out a lead over Hatfield these will be rows that have had a few years of experience under their belt will have maybe even rode at school as well I know I went to school with the Bowsey of Hatfield um, and he used to row at school with me So Hatfield, this is, I believe, their second eight. If we think of the ranking of their crews in Collingwood, this will be similar for them, a second boat as well, as both of these clubs have eight entered in the category that's a bit higher up. So there's a little cutoff in terms of Ooh. your results from the season and where which event you're allowed to enter. So you can't enter the bottom event if you're the fastest boat here. There's a few things in place to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, it's Collingwood yeah. charging past in the boat that they borrowed from Josephine Butler. So many thanks to Butler for being so kind with their equipment. Collingwood with a one length advantage over Hatfield. Over the finish line, race number 27, sorry, number 28. Collingwood taking the victory in the open eight round versus Hatfield. Up on the start line now, we've got a women's Cox 4 event to bring you. Sheffield University again, right, with South College this time. I believe so. South College, again, a very new. How old is it? Two, three years old, South College? Something like that, yeah. So, again, a very new college. And, and so we'll be new to rowing as well. Exactly. And, of course, with a new college and a new boat club comes an entire new set of equipment oh that yeah. they'll have to buy. So, it's not just a case of everyone having to write the training programs and turn up and voila they'll yeah. have had to source their boats and all of their equipment as well for this program to even start over the last few years so just waiting for a few of the crews that have already raced are gonna paddle past the other side of the stake boats and clear the starting area so there'll be a nice clear gap on the course for the sheffield and south college crews Of course, these stake boats aren't a permanent feature of the weir. You don't have to avoid them every training session. So if we cut back to the start camera in a second, you'll notice on the other side of the bank from the camera on that concrete wall, there's a little white paint l painted line um, on, the, on the wall there that's, that's the little marker of the start line here for Dome Regatta, but also for the head races, the time trials that run throughout the season in October, November and February. Um, that's the finish line. So crews start at the other side of the river, at the finish line for the long course and race a time trial all the way to this end of the river. 
which is about seven, eight minutes of racing compared to the two, three minutes that we'll be seeing here on the Saturday. Rowing seems to span quite a few of the seasons, actually. So you might be rowing, you know, 5 a.m. at winter practicing and then the regatta in summer, which might be really hot. It seems to oh, be yeah. like an all season sport. Oh, gosh. I was just thinking this morning, making my way over here to our Paddle TV setup. Um, we arrived at 6.45. And just thinking back to training in November, December, I'd leave my flat at 6.45 to head out for a session with gloves, two base layers, T-shirt, jumper, and then a jacket on top of that, two pairs of leggings, and then oh, a beanie as well. It, it would be freezing cold it's happened quite a few sessions this year that if there's a bit of splashing going around during the session that the water will actually freeze up on the oars as oh, well wow. so we have these little icicles form by the end of the session on the on the blade handles and all the way down the oar as well and so it's 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 kind of surreal being able to just wake up and leave my flat at 6 30 in the morning walking around in a shirt now compared to the uncountable layers that I was wearing at the same time of day so many months ago. Was it the same at school? Did you have to get up or was it after school that you'd row? It's mostly after school. So it was actually a rule that our school implemented where we couldn't train on the water before school started because it was so far away from school. If we wanted oh. to have a productive water session, we'd have to be there at five o'clock, then get the bus up to school for 40 minutes. It didn't really work. So we would do a lot of land sessions at 7am, mm. which wasn't too bad. I'd say it wasn't too bad. You had to do like... 30 minutes flat out on the rowing machine. Not wow. fair. You get used to it. I'm not used to it anymore. <laughs> and I noticed you're wearing uh, a few rings, William. Do you have to take them off to row? Yeah, this is just for fashion purposes. Um, no, no, you don't want any obstructions on your hands when rowing. So, yeah, take the rings off. No gloves either. A lot of people ask Ouch. about with blisters. Do you wear gloves? And I, I, a lot of people find that gloves actually add to friction. the friction yeah. it's just another layer that makes the blisters worse i think um so instead we'll, a lot of electrical tape involved oh, around right. the, blinger, uh, the, the, bl the blisters <laughs> okay so right now uh, we'll wait for this race to get started but what we're going to do now is we're going to pass over back to the presenters at the table And welcome back. We're hoping we're still that you're still enjoying the broadcast. Yeah, we've had some fun crashes, some fun disqualifications, <laughs> keeping things interesting. Probably not fun for the rowers, no, but, but great, great entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole rounds yeah. out Which the broadcast. Um, Indeed. Sophie, have you ever rowed before? I have never rowed before. I used to cox, you know, for Collingwood, men's top four. I've got a couple pots under my belt. Oh. Yeah. But Heather, you row, don't you? I do. You're I'm rowing, rowing today. today. Mm. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, uh, I'm competing in the Women's Four Elite, uh, so we've been boosting up a category. Uh, we're going against Tyne Amateur Rowing Club today. Mm, how's that going to go? Well, we raced them a couple of weeks ago in Durham City Regatta. Uh, unfortunately, we lost by about five lengths, so we're hoping it'll be a tighter race. Yeah, maybe three this time. Well, I hope it might even be a win. You never know with you Durham Regatta. No, no. I mean, you are set to commentate later today, but speaking of... I guess we're going to be going back to them or VT or an advert. You'll find out. Can't wait. See you later. OK, welcome back to commentary. And now we should have race 29 preparing to set off, which is the women's quads coxed fours, which is uh, Sheffield University against South College, as we were discussing earlier. South's a very new college. Um, so they haven't got the advantage which some colleges such as uh, University College will definitely have behind them. But that might not mean anything. So, especially as they're racing against Sheffield, this is not an um, intercollegiate race. This will be interesting. Just waiting to set off here. Slight tilt there, so that I imagine they'll be trying to rectify that. Right. 
Still waiting, seems to be fairly straight now. <laughs> I'm just filling in for the other commentator. Um, who knows the ins and outs of rowing? I'm more here to supplement and ask questions. Just lining up now, William. Oh, and we're off. Right, this is... Good start. Race number 31. Open J13 Cox Quads. Between Bradford Grammar School and Lambton Rowing Club. And the winner of this race will go through to... Race number 67, where Durham School will be waiting for them. They'll be watching this race closely to find out who their opponents are. Seems to be the crew on the Pedal Woodside that are taking the lead here. Of course, this is J13 Cox quad, so... This will be school crews and club crews where they, it's their first year of rowing. So this will be most likely their first time racing at Durham Magetta as well. The first of many, we hope. Is it quite typical of, uh, for schools in the northeast to, you know, implement rowing? There's definitely. Um, You've got the weir. <laughs> I just wondered. Yeah, so I think in a region of the country where there's so much scope for rowing, you've got the weir and the tyne. Yes. Whether it be tidal, or the, it, and, it, and I think these rivers lend themselves to rowing quite well. They're like quite good widths. They're non-tidal as well. Whereas compared to the Thames, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's a lot, a lot quieter in terms of p uh, boats moving up and down. It's just going to be for rowing boats here. So you find there's a lot of schools that do. It's not every single school yes. that does. And that's the red boat of Lambton Rowing Club on the Peel or Wood side that have the advantage over Bradford Grammar School. few Bradford supporters running along the bank cheering them on up on the start lane then women's beginner Cox Fours on the nearest side to the cameras St John's College and Sheffield City on the other side but it's Lambton that are going to take the victory no doubt in this Cox Quad event and they'll progress through to face Durham School very shortly in about an hour and a half's time so not very very quick turnaround for these athletes having to finish one race get back to the marshalling area and then prepare for the next race they won't have much time to to rest their legs they may even just stay on the water as well and have their coach throw them some food from the bank you'll is find. that best do you think like rather than like having a large gap and kind of like worrying and anticipating or do you think this is a bit riskier as you can't really like have a talk through and plan mm. ahead much it's a good point. I'm more of a fan of racing in quick succession. I found yes. that um, get it all done at once rather than mm -hmm. sit down for a few hours, worry, and you cool down. You have to go through a long warm up again, mm -hmm. and your mind's drifted elsewhere. Whereas if you've got sort of like that half an hour to one hour yes. gap between each race, then you're just still in the zone at that point, and it's just one after the other, and you can try and keep keep going through and through. But now in this race, in the women's beginner Cox Fours, it's Sheffield City with a with a large lead over St John's College. So there's St John's College may need to watch this doing a little bit. They are on the straying towards the middle of the river compared to their imaginary lane on the course but that's not going to affect Sheffield City 
We have a nice large lead over them. And we can see the next race lining up up in in the pairs and brilliant match up here because I believe this is St. Andrews University and Buick Amateur Rowing Club. So the two have made a long journey down here yeah. to Durham Regatta. St. Andrews, re probably we, th we were thinking about this earlier and it seems to be, I think, one of the clubs that's traveled the furthest here. And away they go here. So tricky to get the start right in a pair with the balance and the low boat speed. It's a really tricky one. And the steering as well, which is very clean start from both crews. They're slowly starting to get a bit closer together. But now I think it's that crew on the race course bank. It's the St. Andrews crew have managed to stick their bow ball out in front. St. Andrews opting for a bow rig compared to the normal rig of the Buick boat. I imagine if one um, rower is quite a bit taller as well, um, can mm. throw it off a bit in uh, pairs, you know. It yeah, you have to make sure that you're the same sort of athletic composition if you want to get the most out of a mm. pair. Um, it's quite tricky. I've, en I've ended up rowing a pair with people that are almost a foot shorter than me. And it's, it's a tricky, ch it's a challenge to, to get it right. What's the height of the average ro rower? Are you like, for the men's, are you well into six foot? I'm six foot four. Oh, wow. Um, a lot of people in the squad, I think, there's a few people who are six foot four, six foot five. It'll average out at about six foot, or maybe mm. just a bit under. Okay. Um, it's, always, it's always the case that sort of you see athletes or you see students arrive in Freshers Week, and you're like, right, who's the t who are the tall ones? I've heard, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> and you ask them, say, ah, you would be a good rower. Okay, St. Andrew's there made the long journey down it's paying off here with this lead that they've got in the el uh, the elite pairs this is the top pairs event at the regatta and the winner of this race will progress on to race number 70 where there's a pair from Collingwood College waiting for them of course the Collingwood College men's squad have been absolutely formidable this season absolutely dominating the Durham rowing, college rowing scene and beyond as well, challenging some of the Durham University crews, um, strong performances at national events, racing uh, ahead of the river, even racing at an event overseas. Wow. L uh, last term, at about week seven, week eight of last term, uh, Collingwood c crew ended up racing in France. Wow, what is it about Collingwood? Have the monopoly on I all mean, sports? They're good. They're good. At, they're good enough, so they get. They, they. I don't think if any other college attended, it would have been a bit tricky to compete against um, French clubs, where you don't know anything about them until you turn up. Of course. True. So they they backed their chances so much that they decided to travel yeah, at great ex expense to an event where they didn't know they, how they were going to perform. And now on the start line, we do have one of these strong Collingwood crews open elite Cox fours Collingwood College versus St John's College these are the top fours from these colleges so you can see there in the Collingwood crew sat at bow you've got Alex Waring in his Ustinov College cap because he's a student at Ustinov which doesn't have its own boat club so he rose for Collingwood and then John's with their bow rig but also with the bucket so two and three on the same side um, and now we get into the real, the real bragging rights of the Durham College rowing scene is which college has the fastest co Cox Fours and Collingwood have certainly seems to be the ones at the top here it's, all, it's Collingwood are the ones to beat so um, they'll want to dispatch Johns nice and quickly and put down a statement for everyone else watching to be aware of and tomorrow morning will be the Cox Fours event so today they'll be racing against an entry field maybe with other university crews whereas tomorrow it's just as an event category exclusive to the colleges where the real bragging rights over the long course come into hold is that the ultimate flex who wins at the uh the long course yes yeah, so it's it's called the college fours event right 
tomorrow. But they're underway here. Of course, Johns will be going for a really strong start to try and stay in touch with Collingwood for as long as possible. This is Collingwood's race to lose, but that doesn't mean that Johns aren't going to give them a run for their money. And they're leading off of the start line here. Collingwood caught in that shallow section of the river where the stream just doesn't flow as fast. So you, you find that off the start, you're just a little bit slower, but now they've managed to settle into their rhythm quite well. Shout out to UCBC who are here watching the regatta having raced this morning. Lovely, yes, of course. That was Castle who raced against Johns in the beginner eights. And now Collingwood Johns, neck and neck. Johns had the initial advantage off the start line and seems to be Collingwood that are going to try and get their nose out in front. But it's neck and neck here as we make our way towards the Hillbead landing stage. This is, this is where these two crews will have, they will have thought about this all season long when you're sat on the rowing machine in the cold in December, sweating when it's dark at 4 p.m. On, in November and you're thinking, why am I doing this session in the rain and the cold? It comes down to this race. So John's still with a slight advantage over Collingwood. Really tense Coming race. past the commentary position. Goodness me, this is the tightest race we've seen so far this morning. I still can't call it from this camera angle that we've got from the drone. Grey College will be watching this race, waiting for the victors very, very nervously. It does seem now coming under the footbridge, Collingwood have managed to get their bowel slightly in front. It's hard to tell, but incredible racing from these college crews. Such a high standard for programs that don't necessarily train as much as the university programs. A brilliant race there between Collingwood and Johns. Well done to all 10 people involved in that race. Okay, so there's another race on the course between some Cox Fours. But what we're going to do now is we're going to pass back over to the sofa where we're joined by some lovely Aidan's rowers in their stash. Welcome back. I am here with Jack Goldsack who raced this morning. In case you haven't seen it, um, I went on several dates with several rowers that are in today's regatta on a little dating show called Catching Crabs. There should be a clip of it playing throughout the day if you've not seen it already. You'll get a full viewing later this week, hopefully. But um, Jack Goldsack was on that show and since has decided to come for an interview. So Jack, how was your race this morning? Um, well, it was a tough race. We were racing against St. Leonard's and we lost it in the end, but the boys gave it their all. There was uh, surprisingly no crabs, which is always a good sign. And when when we got members of the crew being sick at the end of the race, everyone gave it their all. So, you know, it's tough luck. It's, you know, yeah, you did your best. It did look a bit tragic. Um, the Pit Vipers did not give enough free speed, did they? Well, I'm only an eighth of the crew, so <laughs> I suppose if, if everyone else bought my pit vipers and bucket hat then maybe we might have maybe you would have stood a chance yeah. well jack has rose to the occasion from catching crabs and was one of two rowers to ask me on a second date so um i do have to quickly intervene and say a huge shout out to osborne's which is durham's favorite club um you can catch us there anytime yeah always we love osborne's uh, we love the bounces at Osborne's, and we never get kicked out of Osborne's. No, so. never get kicked out of Osborne's. We love Osborne's. Um, but yeah, I guess, are we going back to commentary, I assume? Going out oh, the advert, to the Osborne's advert. Um, do you enjoy? Thanks to Osborne's. It's been great. I'll see you later.
Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Lindigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. Welcome back to Pal TV's coverage of Durham Regatta, the 190th one, brought to you by Osborne's. Uh, and the race we think that was just nail-biting was Collingwood first four versus St John's first four. What do you think, Sophie? I thought it was insane. It was yeah. absolutely yeah. so close. You know, mm. Collingwood through and through, always have my support. Yeah. Can't really, I know and you're John, yeah. but it's a little controversial. Yeah. Here. And the St John's men have done an incredible job. They've, this year they went to Head of the River, they won an mm. academic pennant there, and Collingwood is such a strong crew. Yeah. So really nail-biting, and great to see that it was such a close race, because I think that's all you can ask for on the day. Mm. It's very clear that both crews have been training really hard, looked really good, really clean, couldn't be more proud yeah. of both um, yeah. colleges. Absolutely, and the college rivalry is strong here. It is. Like we've seen online there's a Facebook group called Rowan, where I'm sure there'll be several comments later. People get quite into it in Durham colleges, don't they? No, absolutely. <laughs> Great. Um, so we've got lots of more races coming up, uh, lots of VTs. I think there'll be some more course explainers, some more behind the scenes um, and looking at the culture of what Durham Regatta looks like. So thanks very much. And we're back to the commentators. Welcome back to the commentary booth. We've got some women's cox forwards getting attached to the stake boat for our next race this is going to be race number 38 Collingwood College versus Durham Amateur Rowing Club rivalry definitely of course Collingwood and Durham Amateur Rowing Club are well, I wouldn't necessarily say they're neighbours, but if you had to pick a club that was closest to each one, you would say it was th those two. But before that race gets underway, there's a race in the singles going past. It's the women's J15 singles, Hexham Rowing Club versus Tees Rowing Club between Kane and Pickering. Seems to be the Hexham crew of Kane that had the advantage in that race as they went past. Such a tricky, long, long and lonely race out there in the single. Absolutely dead silent once you're in that boat. So you have Kane of the Hexham Rowing Club single going past versus the T's crew. So they'll progress through to race number 77 where we've got the boat race waiting for them from Camus. Apologies to Camus Rowing Club, I've been pronouncing it wrong slightly um, earlier on in our coverage. So m many thanks to the, to the supporters that came over and gave me a little note there on how to pronounce it correctly. I would say in my defense, I studied French. So I kind of read it like a French word, but I don't think that's... Easily done. <laughs> easily done, let's go with that. On the start line then, Collingwood College and Durham Amateur Rowing Club are waiting for the instructions from the marshals. Just got a few crews that are gonna get past the stake boat before they're under starters orders. You can see there the coxes have both stuck their hands up just to indicate to the umpires that they're not happy with where their boat's pointing yet, and they don't want any start to occur just yet either. So once we see those hands go down, the hands down from the amateur crew, Collingwood hand is now down as well and will be underway shortly.
And here we go between Collingwood and Durham Amateur. Slight catch of the blade there from the two seat in the Collingwood boat, given Durham Amateur that opportunity to get their bowels out in front. They'll be so familiar with this course. If Durham Amateur wanted to run a training session, I'll have to rove past this stretch every single session. Of course, Collingwood will be coming past their landing stage now with a large cheer. They seem to have a really good sequence going on. Mm. Very, very tidy rowing perfectly in time there and the Collingwood crew as well. Just not to that same mm. speed as the Durham Amateur crew. No doubt this Collingwood crew will have multiple events. They'll be racing in multiple events throughout the weekend. So we'll see these athletes again just because they're getting knocked out of this event two hours into the Saturday doesn't mean that this is their regatta over. There'll be further categories where we'll see them be racing tomorrow, maybe even this afternoon as well. How is it decided who races who? Oh, it's completely randomised. Randomised. So once they have the entries for each category at the event, they'll, um, it's almost like a lottery. They'll just take names out of a hat and that's who faces who. Some crews, if they're, like if there's quarterfinals and semifinals, but not enough crews to satisfy a full set of quarterfinals, then some crews will automatically progress to the next round. Mm -hmm. That may be done based on the number of points the athletes in the boat have accumulated throughout the season. So um, it was the case a couple of years ago that I had to race an opponent first and then the winner of that race faced the Durham University crew, which on paper and um, in terms of past results has got more points. So they progressed through automatically compared to the oh, college right, eights that okay. had to battle it out to face them later on. So we can see Durham Amateur Rowing Club coming underneath the finish line bunting to take a victory in this women's intermediate Cox 4 event over Collingwood College. They'll progress through to race number 74 later on today where they'll be facing either Gray College or York University. But on the start line now, it's another eighth race. This is Sunderland City on the race course side in the light blue versus St Cuthbert Society on the Peel or Wood side with the black boat and green kit. boats just getting aligned both coxes have their hands up not happy with the way they're pointing you can see in the Sunderland crew bow side are just tapping on to point their bow in the right direction down the course so these crews don't head towards each other immediately off the start line okay both crews are ready hands are down and we are underway in this matchup between two clubs on the way in separate locations a college and a club Cuthberts and Sunderland. Really, really tight race off the start. Furious blades in these eight races. One of my favorite races to watch, just eights go off the start. It's absolutely quiet. And then as soon as the umpire says go, you get this great noise of the cocks and all 16 oars clunking. 
and it's Cuthbert's that have taken the advantage in this early stage coming past Collingwood's landing stage. Sunderland just seemed to be caught out in that quite shallow dead patch of water. still leading with a strong advantage currently. So another sofa has made its way out onto the Hillby landing stage there. Every year it's there, every year. Oh, we love those sofas. I don't know where they come from. I imagine the boathouse itself. Yeah, so I'm actually at, I don't know if I mentioned this yet. I actually rode at Hillby all year. Are you from Hillbeard? Yes. Oh, see, I'm from so, Cuffs. Yeah, so the um, the sofas live inside the boathouse at the back where I we've got so. the rowing machines. There's the sofas and the rowing machines. Um, they're quite they're quite rusticy. Yeah. They're quite old <laughs> sofas, um, but we love them for that very reason. Okay, coming under Bath Bridge now, Cuffs will be pleased with this result. Obviously racing a crew that you haven't come up against many times throughout the season, it's always nervous on the start line, not knowing what could possibly happen. So they're glad that they've squashed those nerves and they'll progress through to race number 72, where they'll be racing either the Victors in, out of Durham School or Hatfield College, which is a race to come very, very shortly. What, how likely is it, or how often have you seen someone actually fall in the river? Because obviously the, the, it's Ooh. imperative that everyone does a swim test, but how often does someone end up in the river? So you can either end up in the river from capsizing the boat itself entirely, or by catching your blade in the water and it forcing you out. It's called catching a crab. Yes. You might have seen a few yes. times when people having issues. That can happen to the point where you're pinned so forcefully between the oar and the boat that you just eject out of your seat. It's called oh, an wow. ejector crab. Those are quite painful. There's a few instances if you're if that happens at a fast enough speed that you could break ri ribs. Um, uh, how often has it happened? Um, it happens more sort of in the novice programs, especially hence mm -hmm. why if you look when the novices are out training on the water, they'll be using the big wooden yes. boats, like the big bathtubs. Um, they're quite wide, very easy to balance, mm -hmm. but also a lot slower moving and it requires a lot of people to carry. So they're easier to balance. So um, the novice crews don't have, they, they're less likely to fall in when they're using those sorts of boats. Um, and with the eject crabs, can yes. the oar snap at all? Yes, oars do snap. Um, they don't necessarily even snap when you catch a crab. They can snap with clashing as well. These are very yes. delicate oars, some of these. It's just it's just a hollow rod of fiberglass. So mm. if you whack that into another, uh, another oar strong enough at high rates, you know, taking 30 strokes a minute back and forth with the oar, then there's strong likelihood that you could break your equipment, which... Obviously, these oars cost upwards of four to six hundred pounds each. Wow! And then um, it takes a while to get them delivered as well. So every club here will be using all of their oars, and if one oar breaks, then it sort of backs the drawing board in terms of the equipment that you use. But we're underway in this race here in the women's cox force. You can see there that is. University College on the Peelor Wood side and and Sunderland City there on the Peelor Wood side. Quick shout out to Harrison Glasper who's 
but celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Regatta special. So this is now a uh, race. These two crews have already raced in race seven and race 19. So you can hear large shouts there coming from the bank for the University College crew. Neck and neck here with the Sunderland City crew. Coming past Hillby landing stage. It's so close to call from these brilliant drone shots that we've got. We can track the progress of these crews so closely. Goodness me. Very rowdy crowd. The bank's very much awake now. And Castle Ooh. seems the cheers are paying off. The athletes are running down the bank to follow them and carry on cheering. Castle have managed to eke out an advantage. You can see there on the left, athletes running alongside on the bank, cheering them on. And it seems that University College are managing to hold on to their advantage over Sunderland City here in the women's beginner Cox Fours. Still, this is only a quarter final. So mm -hmm. the, the winner of this event will have had to have raced four times today. And then they might even be entered in another category. So a lot, a lot of energy needed. Those blisters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So there you go, over the finish line, University College taking the win in race number 43 over Sunderland City. A brilliant race there between those two clubs. We spoke earlier about the the misconception that it's all in the arms, and yet in actual fact, it come, a lot of the power comes from the legs and the back. I just, mm -hmm. I just wondered whether, so is it that you push up from your legs and then that gives your arms the power? Is that how rowing works, or it's not quite? Like push with your legs and then pull with your arms. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can see that everyone sat on a seat in the boat. Mm -hmm. that uh, that moves up and down on this little runner. They slide, don't they? So you can slide back and forth with the seat. And well, how far you slide on that seat is dictated by how much you can compress your legs. So mm -hmm. the longer le your eggs, the legs are, the more yes. slide length you can get. Hence why people like being tall in this sport. Mm -hmm. um, just seeing there, these two crews get attached. The Josephine Butler crew on the race course side and the Durham School crew on the Peel Wood side. So Josephine Butler already received an automatic progression into this round. This is still the women's beginner Cox Fours. So Durham School have had to already race earlier on this morning to face this Butler crew with that are racing fresh legged as well, which is good. Okay, crews are attached. Seems like we'll be underway very, very shortly. Do they quite literally have to just get going if, you know, a, a certain amount of time has passed and either crew's not happy, do you just have to go? Mm, that's at the umpire's discretion. I'd be surprised if a crew was definitely pointing in the wrong direction if they started them. You can see there Durham School taking a very, very quick lead over Josephine Butler College. A little clashing of yeah. the boats again and the boat there from Josephine Butler has stopped. This is the second Butler crew we've seen this morning having steering issues off of the start line and it's really affecting the club's chances at making it through the rounds at this regatta. Um, of course you may remember there men's Cox 4 versus Collingwood was disqualified for clashing into Collingwood twice over, over the start. And now it seems they really need to get their steering right. They're just playing a bit of ping pong with either bank now. There must be some equipment issues there. They need to be careful they don't damage their boats in the bank. But Durham School will be pleased that they can save their energy. Of course, this is their second race of the day. So they will no doubt progress through to race number 91, where they'll be facing the winners of race number 66. So. They'll have a nice long rest compared to their next competitors in this 
women's beginner cops for event. You can see them there just taking the rating down, conserving their energy to no point going into full race mode now with Butler so far in the distance still trying to make their way out of the bank. Tidy paddling there from Durham School. Of course, this will be one of the last races of their season. So, really, really strong contingent, large flotilla of entries coming from them, no doubt. Up on the start lane now, we've got an eighth race. This is race number 37. In the open beginner eights between no apologies not race number 37 yes this is race number 46 between Leeds University and Tyne Amateur Rowing Club so Leeds made the journey north come and race here and Tyne have made the journey traveling south to come and race here and of course we, now we've got another matchup between a university crew and a club crew so two very different approaches to the training program having to juggle studies versus juggling jobs um, some of the lead students may be on similar timetables whereas of course in the Tyne amateur crew everyone with jobs could be working around lots of different schedules and they're underway here very very fast and clean start from both crews and it's the Tyne amateur crew that have managed to get half a length advantage already off the start line ahead of that Leeds crew Leeds are big fans of Durham regatta it's brilliant to see them coming here every year of course Tyne this will be yet another race on their calendar they race so much on their local stretch at all of the head races that take place on the Tyne of course and there's Tyne Regatta too and now of course Durham Regatta with this side by side two lane racing and they've got over a length advantage now they've managed to get a, a little margin of clear water between them and the lead crew this will be very very difficult to overturn you mentioned earlier that people will, you know, some people who begin at university will carry on rowing and some people go on to be Olympians. And how often is it the case that people will continue rowing? You know, some people might have issues with like access if depending on which city they're from. But is it a kind of like once you get into it, people really do have a lifelong sort of like career or a long career of rowing? Certainly. I think it. there's so many clubs across the country as well all you need is a stretch of water yes. and the British Rowing website's got this great tool that you can do where you put in your postcode and it tells you where your nearest club is and there's a lot of funding opportunities as well so the British Rowing team is funded by the National Lottery and a lot of that money drips down so it's not only used by the national squad but they sponsor a lot of programs it's called the, the uh, World Class Start Program which there's one of actually in Leeds mm. so there's co coaches there's national coaches where they'll have athletes that may not have had opportunity to row to a high level at school or university but as long as they have the, like the right um, body type so that you can apply you put in your wingspan your height your weight and then they use that sort of inform whether they want to then train you up from a complete beginner to then competing at Olympic level and it has turned out a lot of athletes that make the national squad and go on to win Olympic medals started in that program 
And then, of course, you have athletes that progress through from school to university or just university to national level as well. That's really interesting. And um, we mentioned the novice programme earlier, the mm -hmm. Durham University, I think it's, it's college specific. Does that yeah. last just one year? I, I imagine you take it up in your first year. Is that a year? Does it span a little longer than a year? Or? Mm, so the novice programmes run for just one year. And then the idea is once you've done a year of novice rowing, you then progress into the senior squads. Yes. Um, because once you've done a year of novice rowing, you can't then race as a novice again the next year because oh. you'll have too much experience. The idea mm -hmm. is it's just beginners for that year. Otherwise, it would be unfair on the, the people then that year if you've already got one year under your belt going up against people that have, ha that have zero experience. And if you enter uni already having done rowing before um, college-wise, would you go in at a higher level? Yes, you'd go straight into um, the senior squad. So off the start line in this race, in the Cox squads between Yarm and I believe that's Hexham, the boat crews have stopped just off the start line, waiting for the umpires given some. Oh, we seem to have a little equipment issue there in the Yarm school crew. It seems like the three seat of the Yarm crew's seat has come off. And so what will happen is the crews will head back up towards the start line and we'll have a restart. Of course, there's actually a rule in place where if there's an equipment failure, such as a seat falling off within the first 250 meters of a race, then you're allowed to restart. Whereas if it sort of happens towards the end, then it's, it's, yeah, not really much yeah. you can do about that. So it's important to have a good start. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Okay, so the Hexham crew just backing it down there, a bit further ahead of the Yarm School crew. Okay, so still waiting for Yarm School and Hexham Rowing Club to get attached to the stake boats here for race number 42. This is the Open J15 Cox Quads. Yarm School are going into this one fresh, haven't raced yet already, whereas the Hexham crew have already dispatched of St. Leonard School early on in race number six this morning. So the winner of this race will then progress through to the final where they'll be facing the winners of race 59, which is coming up later on in the program between Bradford Grammar School and the winners of race number 23, which I'll confirm for you very, very shortly. So the Yarm crew there, you can just see the three seat checking that his seat's properly attached. You don't want the issue repeating itself once we get going in this race. 
This race originally scheduled for 9.42, but as is the case with rowing events, they naturally just sort of end up getting pushed back. I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> Hexham crew seem to be all nice and calm, just making sure they're not getting distracted with the job at hand while Yarm sort themselves out to make sure they get straight as well. So J15 is under 15. Nobody racing in this event is older than 15 years old. This They'll be in year 10 of school. Maybe even year 11. But... Yeah, I believe it's year 10. I yeah. Go, I'm going with year 10. Yeah, I'd go with year 10. Okay, so Hexham just needs to make sure they're getting attached on the stake boats. Um. Okay, so while we wait for this race to get underway, we're going to cut to the sofa where Heather's joined by yet another college rower called James. Welcome back. I'm now joined by a Cox, James Lennon. James, who do you row for? I row for St. John's College. And how long have you been coxing? I've only been coxing since the start of this year, so uh, very new to the business. And what's the training been like for that? Gosh, it's been intense, but it's been a lot of fun. Early mornings, lots of shouting, but actually it's been really enjoyable. And how have the races been? Exciting, exciting. You were in one of my boats, Heather, <laughs> Lennon's ladies. Um, we smashed it. It's been really fun. Yeah, and what does a cox do when they're in the boat? Shout. Well, no, that's not all we do. <laughs> um, the cox is there to really steer both physically and mentally. You're really yeah. pushing the rowers. You're really trying to get the most out of them. Yeah, and have you learned a lot over the year? Have you changed the way that you do calls or your strategy? Yeah, completely, completely mm -hmm. transformed. Um, you need to really get in time. You need to really encourage. You really need to drive the boat. So, uh, yeah. yeah, working on that throughout the year. So whilst these rowers are competing, they're yeah. having feedback all the time from the coxes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So every single stroke, I'm saying something for them to do to change their technique, to give more power, to give less, to really push. OK. And do many coxes end up rowing? I've given it a go once and I was slightly <laughs> awful. Head over heels. OK. And a lot of coxes are smaller and built differently to rowers. Yes, um, perhaps not myself, I'm quite tall, but uh, yeah, yeah, in general, you need to squeeze into the boat um, and really get down there and steer. Okay, and when are you racing today? I'm racing at midday uh, with my men's Collingwood group. versus, who is it? Fabulous. Uh, well, we're about to cut to a pre-recorded video where we're learning to row with rowers in the gym and seeing what that looks like. Hi, I'm Matt, and today I'm here with Kira, the women's captain for Senate. Could you just explain a bit what Senate is? Um, so Senate is basically a college composite um, of all the best rowers from the colleges, and we come together to try and make a mega eight, and we compete at some more higher competitions than the colleges do. And today you're going to be taking me through a bit of a workout. Yeah, so today... How do you think I'm going to do? Um, I think we'll do okay. Um, we have these gym sessions once a week, but we can cater to your ability, so I'm sure okay. you're welcome and be fine. <laughs> That's good, yeah, because my ability is probably not quite up there. And you might need to blow out my calves because I don't really break legs, so this should be interesting. Great. Is there like a difference in terms of specific training styles? Yeah, so we do, on the ergs, we do more wow. stamina and endurance, but in the gym, they're just really trying to get the strength in the legs. So if you start with some just general stretching, yeah, yeah. whatever you feel I like need to do. Yeah. Any All personal... right, just test my mobility. Oh, that's oh, pretty good. That's not too bad today. Not bad for a row. to be a row. Uh, but, yeah, the rows just... have a lot of like flexibility is that an important yeah, point aspect of it's it it's important to have good hip flexibility right yeah boat when you're like leaning over um so yeah it's fine are you feeling pretty fun you feeling pretty yeah i'll just finish limber. we can do a warm-up on the bar so yeah that'll be fine Right. I'm a bit scared. I feel like she's going to start putting on 20s on each side, and um, I don't know if I can handle that. Okay. So it's time with three by six back squats. Okay. So we'll just do that first. We're going to do a few on the bar. And yeah. We can put some weight on. I think we need to go a little bit. Let's try to get like a lot of depth as well. Okay. Because like you're doing a boat. That's a lot of that. It is. Very impressive. 
Well, don't look at my phone. Then. I mean. <laughs> to see if my knees holds up or starts oh, yeah. bleeding. Yeah. It, it was fine, fair, it was yeah. just like, <laughs> don't want it to rip off and bleed all over yeah. your nice squat rack. Right? That's fair. Okay, I think we'll put some tens on. Yeah. Do one more upset with tens and then we can start. Makes sense. So what would you say is kind of the ideal physique for a wearer to have? Um, tall, yeah. um, ideally a bit taller than me. Um, and yeah, just kind of long. Because the more like the more length you can get in the stroke, the longer you can have your blade in the water. And you, what's the kind of strength to mass ratio you want to go for? Because obviously, I guess if you had a bodybuilder, their weight would probably impact how much because obviously the boat's heavier. Yeah. So is that a factor as well? Um, yeah, I see it as a factor. I mean, with rowing, we don't do it with college, but you can have light weights and open weights. But I think it's better to have the extra strength and the extra weight than it is to try and be lighter and less strength yeah. because like in a 2k it takes a lot of like strength and endurance to get to the end. Barbell row, so we'll take all this way off. Yeah. Unless you want to row. Oh no. Money is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm keeping up all right, but then again, I feel like yeah, so just, uh... that might just be because she's a bit smaller than me, so body weight wise, probably I'm not doing very well at all. So, but I'll say we're keeping up well. Welcome back to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta brought to you by Osborne's. And we've just witnessed Durham University's first event. They were against Sheffield, but unfortunately, uh, Durham had a crash at the start, so Sheffield took an easy win there. Yeah, it was sad. Sad we missed it, but mm. what unfortunate. Are you do? And, and these things do happen very often in rowing. You don't know what's going to happen with the boat. You don't know about the steering imbalance, and unfortunately, it's how you recover from these events that's important. Exactly. Some highlights that we've had was Collingwood versus Johns. Collingwood came through with a the win there, and coming up, we've got Leeds versus Tyne, which should be a tight race. Yeah, big, big university competitions coming in here, uh, so lots to stay tuned for. Yeah, lots to look forward to. We'll talk to you guys later. Back to the commentators. Welcome back to the commentary booth, and we can see they're lining up on the start line. We've got some Cox 4 races. Just as, the comment as Heather was just saying, previous race was the Cox Cox's fours between Sheffield University and Durham University Boat Club with Sheffield taking a nice resounding win. And then also in the J16 singles, it was the Durham Amateur Rowing Club crew of Clue that made it through in that race too. So this race then that's on the start line. This is women's intermediate Cox Falls. Both of these crews have already raced this morning. So this is Gray College on the race course side. And York University on the Peel or Wood side. So nice matchup between university team and a college team. Underway very furious start from both crews gray are very eager to get off the start line there ahead of the york crew and that slightly affected their st steering so they're gonna have to adjust for that get back pointing in the right direction before they start to make inroads down this re durham regatta course and york have certainly used that to their advantage and are charging out the starting blocks out of the peel or wood section of the bank
course, York University characterised by the flower on their blades. Go and spot that. So then there's Gray there. York University still not let, giving any let up on their advantage over Gray. You seem to be having a lot of trouble there. So York clearly wanting to carry on getting some race pace experience for later on in this event where they'll go on to no doubt race in race number 98 where they'll face the victors of race number 44 which will be coming up later on in the programme. Just see York outside our commentary position. Very, very tidy crew. So York will have brought their own boat all the way down here um, in advance, or are they borrowing a boat, do you know? Yes, yeah, so this will be their own boat. So before the event, the, um, the York crew will have had to have taken all of their boats apart, take all of the riggers off the side of the boat, loaded that onto a trailer, tied that down, attached the trailer to a truck, and then someone will have had to have dry driven that all the way here from York, put the boats together when you're here, finish your racing, take the boats apart, load the trailer, take them back to York, put them all together again. They would have been stored overnight in that field? Yes, all exactly. The other ones. So the field down towards the start line is full of boats and trailers, for the for last night and tonight and then they all have to be gone by Sunday night so if you're racing on Sunday you finish late you're tired you've got to take your boat back to wherever it belongs as well it might once, be St. Andrews once the racing's finished yeah St. Andrews yes they'll have to load their trailer but if you're University College or St. Aidan's you've got to row all the way to the other end of the weir it's a bit annoying so you're on the left of the sofa that stays right right now see the drone shot of each rowing team. So this is now a race in the J16 double skulls. And see there that Bradford have got a slight lead over the crew from Sunderland, I believe. About a length, would you say? So a length is when the boats are just overlapping. Right. So at the moment, it's more than a length. It's very easy to judge thanks to the drone. So I'd say that's Maybe a length and three quarters, almost mm -hmm. two lengths. Yeah. Of course, a length's not like a true measure of distance because it depends yes. on which boat class we're talking with. These double skulls were a lot shorter than an eight, but you'd still call, you know, an, an eight that's 60 meters long compared to like a double that's maybe five, six meters long. They'd still both just be a length. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. I'm liking the bucket hats. Oh, yeah. Seem to be making their way back into rowing fashion at the moment. <laughs> I haven't been a fan of them myself, but everyone loves a bucket hat. As important as they are, would you say that um, the sunglasses as well are fashion to an extent? Oh, certainly. Um, at the moment, I think you could get away with not necessarily racing in sunglasses. A lot of people would choose to, but I think it's always quite a personal thing being able to mm -hmm. choose which 
which sunglasses you, you go for, lens color, shape, design, yeah. all of these factors come into it. Um, you've see, I've seen some people wear racing fashion pairs of sunglasses. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of an interesting choice. I mostly prefer like quite a sporty wraparound type fit. Mm -hmm. I can imagine they get quite pricey too. Oh yeah. And it's something that you, I imagine, you really do need. You know, the way the mm. sun glares on the water. You don't want any issues caused by things that you can hopefully prevent. Definitely, they can be rather expensive. I only got a new pair of sports sunglasses this year for the first time in about six years. Wow. Yeah. Um, because with them being so pricey, you just sort of wait until the sunglasses really have seen their last days before you get a new pair. It's an investment, I imagine. Yes, exactly. Could you tell us a bit more about um, the shoes as well? Because I've seen in some boats, some people like strap shoes or like leave shoes and then put their feet in, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, yes, good point. So there are shoes within the boat that are bolted to the boat. Yes. That don't move and then obviously like when you're before you get in the boat you'll take your trainers or your flip-flops or your crocs even mm -hmm. um you can take them in the boat with you but you don't actually use them when you're racing so then your feet get strapped into the shoes and you're sliding back and forth up the seat so the here then this is the women's beginner singles race number 47 between leeds and york university i believe so you can see it's the york university scholar or uh, York City, excuse me, not York University, the York City scholar of Sealy there with a large advantage over Leeds University's Walker in the women's beginner singles. Beginner singles as well. This will be their first year of rowing, uh, racing in a single, which is a very difficult boat to control. After only a few months in the sport, they're doing an impeccable job. I was scrolling through the timetable trying to see where this event was because uh, by the standard I'd seen, I'd, it didn't cross my mind that this would be a beginner event. On the individual races, you quite literally do have one person, and it's your complete responsibility to keep yourself going, keep an eye on the river, keep your own sequence in check. You know, you don't have a coxswain, you don't have another teammate, another rower. And even before then, when training, it's all down to you as well. Yes, you go out and you do so a training. True. You're putting in the miles, and you know you can't take a rest. The boat only moves if you move it. Exactly. So it's one of the most tiring boats to go out in but also one of the most rewarding when you get it right as well because you know it's all thanks to you it's <laughs> just it's just your job and that's it will you often have someone you know like cycling alongside you or like coaching you in the individual you boats? can yeah yeah um the university crews will do because the coach will have specifically said i mm -hmm. want this single to go out yes. or this single to race so they'll endeavor to coach it. a college level People will go out on the single if they feel they just want to race the single. They may yes. not get necessarily get coaching. They may be experienced enough to sort of mm -hmm. know themselves what the best session to do is. So looking up at the start line now, got another quads race. This is the open elite quads between Leeds University in that red boat nearest the camera and Tyne Amateur Rowing Club on the Peel or Woods side and the winner of this race will go on to face Sheffield University who are waiting for them in the final of course you may remember Sheffield made easy work of Durham University Boat Club who had a bit of steering issues and ended up in the bank quite early on in the race so perfect conditions honestly perfect conditions oh, it sounds rather cliched but couldn't really have asked for anything better here at the 190th Durham Regatta. The river's very flat, uninterrupted, very little wind. It's not too warm, so you can, you know, get away with not overheating. Obviously, these athletes will need sun cream because the reflection of the sun up on, off the water is quite strong. It's always something you forget when you, when the sun first comes out at this point in the season, you think, oh, perfect, I don't have to wear many layers, but then you realize, of course, that you can get it burnt quite easily. 
UCBC women, women's captain Georgia was uh, saying the uh, tan lines from rowing aren't, too, aren't ideal. With the, uh, do you guys call them unitards that you wear? Unisuit. Unisuit, sorry. It's all in one uh, unisuit. Um, something like that, yeah. Former gymnast, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm used to leotard, but yeah. They're rather similar, aren't they? Yeah, in, I wonder how different design. the material is. I imagine it's different material, but it's similar design. Should have brought my kit with me. I could sit here commenting now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thanks. It'd be rather uncomfortable by the end of the day. Are they quite tight, I imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't want anything to get caught. Yes, of course. Um, in the blade handle, so everything's rather tight fitting. Um, never row with a hoodie, especially if it's got pockets. Oh, gosh, we yeah. can keep you. Imagine the blade getting caught inside a mm -hmm. hoodie pocket. Are they quite breathable, or the mm. uh, suits, or? It depends on which brand you're using, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, quite nice material. You don't feel too like warm in them necessarily. Obviously, the base layers are quite toasty, but just with the one layer, it's more there because you know it's like a nice performance fit don't really find it to be too uncomfortable or warm mm. in this weather, I don't think. So we're just waiting for these guys to get started and after this race we will cut to adverts. Cool, so with no cocks in these quads, it's at the umpire's discretion to decide whether the crews are pointing in the right direction before he sets them off down the course. And this will be really really important race for these two crews Leeds University and Tyne Amateur Club they won't have the opportunity to race each other often especially in a quad event between a university and a club with very little instances of them being able to race each other so underway it does seem to be that Leeds University in that red boat have managed to get the lead over Tyne Amateur off the start line but a bit of steering the crews are overlapping and there's a large clash going on. Oh, and the bow seat of the Tyne crew has caught a crab there. Be interesting to see what the umpires decide to do here. Oh, Lees have chosen to carry on. Don't know if they'll get the call from an umpire soon, whether they'll decide to re-row this or whether it was just a fair instance. Oh, here we are. So now the Leeds crew wind it down and wait and await further instruction from the marshal. <laughs> so we won't have any result from this race anytime soon with Leeds and Tyne Amateur being instructed by the marshals probably to head back up to the start as we saw earlier with that Cox 4 race between Collingwood and Josephine Butler. We'll see these crews back on the start line very, very soon for a re-row where hopefully we'll have a lot cleaner start. And what we're going to do now is we're going to cut to an ad break and we'll be back very, very soon with our exclusive live coverage of Durham Regatta sponsored by Osborne's. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. 
for each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. Lovely shots of the Indigo there, but it's back to the racing and we've got some double skulls on the course. This is Thai and Amateur Rowing Club versus Hexham Rowing Club in race number 58, I believe, in the Open J15 doubles. Hexham, of course, already won their race earlier and up against this fresh Tyne crew. This is their first race of the day and it's pretty close. You can see there in that Tyne crew, heads down and they're just pulling hard. This is really, really strong racing. And when you consider these athletes are 14, they haven't been in the sport for, for long, the 14, 15, but you can see how determined they are to come away with a win in this race. The scully has got to be difficult too. You're, you're balancing two oars there. Mm, it's a lot side. to think about. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see there, I think it's now the Hexham crew that have started to get an advantage over the Tyne crew. Lots of parents watching, so shout out. Shout out to them. Endless washing with this <laughs> kit, honestly. A lot of sports kit involved. The unsung heroes of junior rowing are the parents. Okay, lining up now on the start line. is the women's intermediate falls between St. Mary's College and Collingwood College. We can just see there the Hexham Rowing Club double taking that win in race number 58. And up at the start line, I believe it's race number 55 that we're now waiting on. Oh no, apologies, not race number 55. This is race number 55. 52 between St. Mary's College and the Collingwood College Coxford. This will be the first proper race for the Collingwood crew since the disqualification of the Butler crew they faced earlier. So they'll have a chance to really settle those nerves and hopefully be up against a crew with a, with a much cleaner start. And we're off. You can just really see like the passion and the vigor. As you were saying earlier, like all of those late nights, early mornings in the rain really do lead up to not only other events, but you'll always keep this one race in, in mind. That's why it's probably so disheartening to get disqualified or restart or... So unfortunate for that crew, especially. But also when it's such a long season with a lot of intense training hours, and then suddenly it boils down to what, two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's almost kind of surreal the amount of hours that go into such a short race compared to other sports. If you think you train a few times a week and then there's a fixture every weekend, it's not really the case in rowing either. I like how you brought up as well like all the other elements that go into it. So like parents washing for juniors, parents washing, you know, like transporting the boats, um, in, even down to things like um, the team washing the boat after each time it's been out oh, on the yeah. water. You know, it's, so many things go into rowing, not just on the water. No, you always forget, forget about those sorts of things. But we can see here Collingwood have taken a very, very strong advantage over Mary's in the semi-final of the Maiden Colts Fours Open event. Coming past Hill would be landing stage, Collingwood looking very, very tidy there with their blade work. And they'll go on to race number 94, which will be very soon, where they'll be facing the victors of either Grey College or their opponents, which we'll find out about in a race very, very soon.
Okay, looking up at the start line now, we've got some Cox quads, and it is Yarm School on the Peelor Wood side. And Bradford Grammar School on the race course side. This is race number 59, the Open J15 Cox Quads. And the winner of this will progress through to the final. This is the semi-final in this event. Lovely shots there of the crews that have just finished their races heading back towards the boating area. So once they're clear of this start line, we'll get this next race underway. Of course, Yarm School has such a, a long and strong history in all of these races on the weir. So re they're really going to be the ones to beat when it comes to these junior events on both the men's and the women's sides of the regatta we've already seen some yarm crews knock out some university crews earlier on in the eights racing so re really impressive rowing at such a young age the highlights from berwick arc versus saint andrews are on twitter and instagram as we speak uh, please do subscribe to our YouTube as well, which is what you'll be watching our stream on currently. Yeah, so as well as this stream, we've got all the highlights clips being churned out by the editing team upstairs. Um, as, as the footage comes through, there's select races will have videos posted on the PAL TV social media accounts throughout the day, not just once this stream is over either. So it seems to be that the last crew has now got through and Bradford and Yarm are coming forward, ready to attention under umpire's orders. And with that, they're off. Lovely clean start from both crews. And it's always the Yarm crew that seem to be leading out with this very tidy and sequenced rowing and Bradford have got their work cut out if they're going to stay with them on this 700 meter course. The race could be over in a flash. So actually, Yarm have already set up their little gazebo at that end of the, the course. I was walking back home yesterday along the riverbank and there's a big Yarm school tent set up where they'll have all their supporters cheering on on the bank. No doubt Bradford Grammar School have the same two as they've made the journey here. But for these two crews, this will be the pinnacle of their season. Yarm and Bradford will have already raced at the National Schools Regatta over the Maybank holiday down in the south of the country. But now it's time for the, the local race with two lane racing compared to the six lanes that they've been doing recently. Of course, they will have raced at Hex and Regatta too. A lot of side-by-side -side experience under their belts already from this season. It all comes down to this one final Regatta here in Durham where hopefully they're going to walk away with the trophy that they all so desire. can see coming past where we're sat commentating now Yarm for a large lead over the Bradford Grammar School seems to be almost that they're not rowing at 100% race pace which is the trend we're seeing with the Yarm School crews this morning once they get enough of a lead they're slowly conserving their energy and they know there's bigger things ahead in the race program for them so that's some brilliant coaching coming out of that club really sensible mature instructions there will the coaches be teachers themselves or do often are they like external people the school are, are in contact with yeah it could be both i've had rowing coaches one of my rowing coaches when i was younger was my also my chemistry teacher so i was rather than you sort of try and discuss training and lessons to get out of not talking about the class did he kind of like 
bring a bit of chemistry into it like oh the, i don't know like um not really i don't think we would have understood him at that true. age but there's he probably def- had some some thought mm, from like a from a mathematical point of view that went into his coaching and things um but there was also i think once you progress to older age groups there will be like the head coach of the rowing team will be employed by the school solely for that purpose but they yes. end up running the sixth form side of things and then in the lower year groups you'll have teachers and volunteers and people yes. with rowing experience okay so our next race is going to be lining itself up on the start line shortly we can see one crew already there in the distance getting close to those stake boats as we wait for their opponents also a lot of crews that have just raced making their way to the other side just to clear that start line oh a little change of stake boat holders as well so there you go we're seeing it live on camera this is how the stake boat holders get changed around in their shift so they won't be sat on that skiff all day long it's done in shifts so there you have the <laughs> the little oh what did you call it a ferry <laughs> ferry <laughs> transporting all the kids back and forth from the land to the stake boats I imagine it's quite uncomfortable because they do they lean out very far you know to hold on to the mm. stern yes um, looks incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> they're quite wobbly those boats as well if you put shift your weight to one side you'll see in a second as they switch the boats will start to wobble quite a bit um Almost seems like a little comedy routine if things could go wrong very quickly. Okay, so we've had that change now. They've given us a wave. There they are. <laughs> um, and those people that have just switched shifts will probably head to the land and get some lunch. Um, and this isn't even the first day of stake boat holders being on shift. All throughout yesterday, there were practice stake boat holders running, running um, at that exact spot. So it's been set up for a few days and clubs that train on the weir regularly could, were able to just go there at some point throughout yesterday and do some practice starts, get used to what it's like. Because for many people racing this weekend, this will be the first time they've actually mm. had to be attached and held onto by someone hanging off the end of a boat. Um, you don't really see that often with regatta racing on the weir all the time. So yeah, it's rather rather unique, but also a fun way to get everyone involved. And it, I think it brings like a lot more consistency to the event as well, because you can guarantee that everyone's gonna be exactly lined up. Whereas some of the races I've done in the past, it's like, hang on a minute, I swear they were, they were a foot further ahead than me, but you're still going to start us, aren't you? Okay, so we're going to cut to a VT now, and we're going to explain to you what a regatta is. Nutshell, rowing is divided into two disciplines, sweep rowing which involves using one oar and sculling where competitors use two oars. Within these disciplines you can row in a single, pair or double, four or quad and lastly an eight or octopal skull. Durham Regatta dates all the way back to 1834 and is the second oldest regatta in the United Kingdom, predating the famous Henley Royal Regatta. The event is held over two courses, a short 700 metre course and a long course of 1800 metres which requires you to row or in many cases crash through Albert Bridge. <laughs> Both courses have two divisions, the women's category and the open category. You can enter the open category as a mixed crew or or a men's only crew and both categories range from championship to junior 13 status. Some notable rowers from Great Britain include Sir Steve Redgrave who won gold medals at five consecutive Olympic Games as well as Helen Glover and Heather Stanning who won two golds in the women's coxless pair. Who knows, maybe Will spots the next big name in rowing this weekend. Some 
large cheers coming off the bank as this singles race gets underway between six, race number 65, Durham School versus Hexham Rowing Club. Local rivalry between these two athletes, Ridley and Cardinal, will have raced against each other all season long. And especially at J17 level, they'll have raced each other over the years. They'll know each other like the back of their hands. And it's an incredibly tight race as they get towards Collingwood landing stage in this race. And we can even hear outside our commentary position as well. There's a Cox Fours race going on between Collingwood College, who are ahead in the women's intermediate fours. But turning our attention back towards this singles race. It's neck and neck still as we make our way along the race course. How much do these boats actually cost? Say like the, the singles. So singles could cost anywhere between, I actually saw there was a really nice single that raced earlier. Some of these boats can be made entirely of carbon fiber, wow. which is quite expensive or some aren't. So we'll see as we come past which boats the clubs are using. So I believe the Hexham one is using a uh, Wintech and in the Durham School boat, or oh, it's hard to tell which brand it is, but these are definitely in the in, uh, starting price for these would be about two and a half thousand pounds. Wow. And then you could go anywhere all the way up to eight man boats that are made of carbon fiber would then could cost more than a car. So you can see there now it seems to be the Durham School crew of Cardinal that has the advantage over Hexton Rowing Club's Ridley in this J17 singles race. And he will progress through to the final race number 101 where they will face the victors of either Durham Amateur or Sheffield City that's still to race. Looking up on the start line then, we've got some Cox fours. I believe this is race number 66 in the women's beginner fours. Both these crews have already raced mm -hmm. this morning. Some people still yet to race. Some people, this is the second or even the third round of racing for their event. Apologies, this is the race number 68 open elite Cox Fours between Grey College and Trevelyan College. So the Collingwood race that went past um, off camera was the women's beginner fours. And I think that was Collingwood that won there. So we'll just wait for Grey to get attached to the stake boat. They're a little bit to one side for the stake boat holder to be able to grab a hold of their stern. But Trevelyan are ready up at the front end of the stroke, ready for the start. How difficult is it to actually get it straight considering like the weight of the boat and then all the people in it? Is it? You, um, in terms of getting it straight, it's, it's okay once you're attached. I think the uh -huh. difficult part is to get attached to the okay. stake boat because you have to row past the stake boat and then reverse mm -hmm. row, so what we call backing it down to then, so you see there, it's sort of like a little bit of reverse rowing from the gray rowers as they pass, as they try and get their boat like slowly towards the state boat holder but now they're attached they need to get themselves pointing while the state boat holder still has a hold of the boat and now that they're attached we'll wait for the grey crew to get straight and then the umpires will set them both off Okay, we're under starters orders. And underway in race 68 between Grey College and Trevelyan College. 
on the Pilo Wood side, Gray on the race course side. A furious start between these two in this semi final now. Gray are racing fresh. This is the first race for this crew. Trevelyan have already progressed through one round of racing and they seem to have the lead here as well. So for these crews, this may be, uh, this will be the second fours from these clubs. There's still top four events to come today and tomorrow. Red versus blue, or well, it's also hill versus hill, gray and Trevelyan, very close neighbors true. up on the very hill. True. But strangely enough, their boat clubs are quite far apart. Gray training out of the facilities next to the Student Union and Trevelyan training out of Maiden Castle but they'll have spotted each other on the bank over the past month or so and have a really strong understanding of who on paper is better than the other. What have the league tables been looking like this season, college-wise? Hmm. Good point. So it's, it's so neck and neck uh, in this sort of level when you consider like if you ranked every club's athletes from if you ranked their athletes from one to eight athletes five to eight sort of that second four that these clubs are fielding is so close to cool that i can't even begin to predict which club would be on top but at the upper echelons of the college rowing sphere it's collingwood's mm -hmm. weekend to lose okay um collingwood have been dominating things left right and center all year long and I just think when people look at the draw when it was announced on Wednesday, everyone's opening it think, I really don't want Collingwood in the first round. So coming under Bath's Bridge, it's the Trevelyan crew that have eked out a really large advantage over this Grey College crew, and they'll progress through to the final of the Open Elite Cox Fours, which will bring you at a about one o'clock today. So back up to the start line now, we have some more Cox 4s getting attached on the state boat. It's going to be in the women's beginner fours race number 66 between what seems to be Josephine Butler and Gray College both of which have already raced yes yep but off camera there's a race that's about to come past I believe as well see who that is when they come past and let you know so it's a race in the elite pairs between Hillbead Boat Club who have a large advantage over their opponents so I can't even see actually um, Hillbead Boat Club already dispatched of their opponents in the earlier round so this is wonderful to see a college crew racing in a pairs category making it through so many rounds I'm sure you're, you're pleased as well. Oh, I'm Hillbead. pleased, yeah. yeah. wasn't going to mention that too much <laughs> today, but yes, I am Hillbead. So both crews now on the state boats for this women's beginner four, and they'll be off imminently. Wonderful work from our camera operators. Want to give a shout out to them. Brilliant. So just these cameras aren't automated. There are people that have been stood with these cameras all morning long. There's just so many different roles that um, you don't realise go into a live broadcast. And it's so impressive how they all come together. And a, a lot of the work is behind the, very much behind the scenes, behind the camera. Mm, definitely. So in this Beginner Cox Fours event, it's Grey College that have taken the advantage over Josephine, Josephine Butler. Battle of 
the red kit, it's Battle of the Hill Colleges. Seems to be, it'd be interesting actually if we had some statistics on the number of races that are won from the Peel or Wood side of mm -hmm. the course compared to the race course side. If I had the choice, I would take the Peel or Wood side, I think. I'm trusting you, your experience. <laughs> Surely both sides are fit to row, otherwise that wouldn't, Definitely, yes. wouldn't run, but it's interesting. I just think there's a bit more uncertainty starting on the race course side. At that point in the river, it's quite shallow on the bend. There's just a big bend there, just the other side of the start line, where it's really shallow on that side. So I think there's a lot of dead water where the uh -huh. river flow doesn't run as fast. Okay. So you can sort of get caught. Well, it's almost like rowing on a lake compared to a flowing river. Um, but if if the start line was a bit further along the race course, once the river opens out, then it would be in, mm -hmm. I'd be indifferent as to which side I had. But then, of course, with the long course being used tomorrow, there's yes. some big bends that work in advantages for one side compared to the other as well. So um, I haven't raced that course enough times to to make up my mind which side I w I'd prefer. What sort of length do you usually row then? Well, in short I've, form, long form? The, the majority of the races in Durham throughout the season are on the long course. Yeah. Um, it's just the regattas here throughout the summer that take place on the short course. So mm -hmm. the ones over in autumn all the way up to February, March time will be at least 1,800 metres long. And then the ones wow. on the Tyne are, are uh, you know, four and a half kilometres long. Wow. It lasts about 16 minutes. Uh, longest race I've ever done was about 22 minutes long. I can't imagine it's how that feels. It's like it's the, it's the boat race backwards as a time <laughs> trial. It's quite quite a long one. So there you can see, approaching the finish line, Grey College, making easy work of Josephine Butler in race number 66, and they will progress through to the semi-final at race number 91. So looking up at the start line now, we've got some more four-person boats getting attached for the next race. Seems to be some quads now. This will be race number 67, the Open J13 Cox Quads. So very young athletes here in year nine of school. This is Durham School and Lambton Rowing Club who already raced race number 31 beating Bradford Grammar School. Durham School is just up the road from us isn't it? Exactly. You mm -hmm. If if you thought it was a college, I wouldn't be surprised because it's it, it honestly it's closer to the campus than the majority of the colleges. It's very Just, beautiful. It's it fits in. It certainly fits in with the aesthetic. Oh, definitely. Very famous alum from that school as well. Oh, rowing alum or? Oh, in both senses as oh, well. Okay. I think yeah. Um, and Durham School have been one of the most historic entries to this event. If you look at some archive footage on YouTube or online you'll find that it's Durham School versus Durham University mm -hmm. um, big celebration taking place with people parading down the Bailey but in this race it's it's turned to catastrophe almost immediately off the start line with Durham School ending up on the wrong side of the river over in Lambton's water and the umpires will need to have a think about what to do here whether to restart the race to disqualify a crew um, but hopefully you can see there some blades just adjusting themselves to make sure everyone's okay and not getting a little bit of a hit. Just like to shout out Finn Condren, who's a Hexham rower, and Jason Rack, uh, D-A-R-C. Shout out to you guys.
Okay, and it seems to be that the crews have de detached themselves from being stuck together and the race is back underway. So, with that clash out the way, it's the Lambton crew on the Peeler Wood side here that you can see that have taken a length advantage over Durham School, who have their work cut out now if they're going to get that advantage back. I'm a big fan of the drone shots. Well done, school crew just getting a little bit out of time. Seems to be that one of the pupils has got their blade the other way around. They're going to have to fix that if they're going to have any chance of getting back at this Lambton crew, which seems ever unlikely now. Looking back up to the start line now, we've got some double skulls lined up on the stake boats. This is, race. This is in the double skulls between Durham Amateur Rowing Club and Durham School. So, large rivalry between these two. This is race number 57 in the open J16 double skulls. So these athletes would have been juggling their GCSEs with all their training. I doubt their GCSEs have even finished yet as well. You've got a so point there. racing this weekend and then they'll be taking some GCSE exams next week. Maybe some of them. Um, some finish really late into June actually, some GCSEs. Mm. One person who I was tutoring still has their Spanish GCSE to come next really? week. Really? So so, if anyone in the race is studying Spanish, good luck to you in your GCSE on Wednesday. My Spanish was fast. My Spanish speaking exam was my first exam in like April. Ah. Unfortunately. How do you still remember? Because it was horrendous. <laughs> well, it seems to be it's the Durham school crew that have taken the early lead here in the local derby. I think I actually raced this Durham school crew at the... February small boats head had a nice chat with them in the start area um, and then they immediately went on to overtake me after starting about 20 seconds further behind in the time trial event by the end of the uh, course they were the other side of me but they've got very nice boats so I'm going to put it on the equipment rather than the ability <laughs> and then the Durham Amateur managing to stay in touch with them supposed to hit 23 degrees today would you say that's eking on a bit too hot for Robin or I think that's sort of as warm as you'd like it to get mm -hmm. anything else and it sort of would start to have Very a much. negative impact on you it's a very tidy rowing there from the Durham school doesn't even seem like they've got full race pace now I think they know that this one's in the bag so they can start to conserve their energy and play the long game for the rest of this regatta. They'll, the winner of this event goes on to race number 96, which will be at about half past 12, which is the final of the J16 double skulls. So Durham Amateur Rowing Club making their way towards the finish line, but it's Durham School taking an 
easy win there in the J16 doubles. Really, really impeccable rowing for such young athletes. Brilliant to see. They'll be very pleased. Looking up on the start line now, we've got some eights racing. Seems to be between that York University on the race course side and Yarm School on the Pelor Wood side. So this is race number 62. Yarm School already dispatched Hildbead. York University already dispatched Lancaster, I believe, earlier on today. And now it's time for some semi-final action in the Open Intermediate Eights. So Yarm already attached on that stake boat and we'll wait for York to get attached and then this race will be over before you know it. Really, really quick racing in the Eights. So York still trying to get attached to that stake boat. It's always a lot trickier in A. It's quite difficult to manoeuvre so precisely. Mm -hmm. So in a single, it's nice and quick to get attached to as the larger the boat gets, the more laborious it can become. Is this your favourite um, type of boat to row in? Eights or do you like smaller? Overall, I think I'd row in an eight. But when you get it right, I quite like a coxless four, mm. which you don't see much of. They'll be racing tomorrow on the long course, yes. um, but you don't get many coxless fours in the college system. Well, you don't see them at all in the college system. It's always cox four, which are really heavy. Once you add that cox, doesn't feel like it should make much of a difference, but it does. To mm. like the style of the rowing, it feels like a bit heavier as well. It's like you've added, you know, if you're in the, in the gym, it feels like you added extra weight mm -hmm. to the bar. Um, I just prefer the Coxus 4. It's a really light feel to it, and you can really let the boat just fly and take your time with each stroke. It's a wonderful feeling when you get those right. And then if you're after a bit of like sporting therapy, there's nothing wrong with going for a paddle in the single by yourself in the sunrise. Done that a few times too. I see that very often. I'm, in fact, all hours are always people rowing up and down the river oh, of all yeah. ages. Oh, it's, yeah. it's great, all different styles of boats, numbers. I started rowing for a, a different squad halfway through this year and their approach on morning sessions was a bit earlier than what I was used to. So I had to have a little adjustment with my alarms on my phone if I was going to make it to the session on time. <laughs> okay, York are now attached. We can see they just get pointed in the right direction. So we don't want them immediately heading in towards Yarm's boat right off the start line. Of course, York versus Yarm is now a university versus a school mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to find out from someone at Yarm School if they could let us know what age this mm -hmm. boat is because in the intermediate category there's no there's no designation of their ages it's not a junior event so they could be they could be 15 they could be 18 we don't mm -hmm. know um, whereas obviously the York crew is made up of students Could potentially be quite a big age gap then. Mm, definitely. Okay, under starters orders. And away they go. It's the battle of the tidiness of the Yarm crew versus the sheer power of the York students. We'll see who emerges victorious here. This is going to be one of the top races of the day so far. If you had to pick tidiness or power, what would tidiness. you go? Ti yeah, I, I prefer, like that I prefer idea. it being tidy. Um, it's just 
it, it makes you feel a lot more at ease when the boat's running smoothly compared to when it's just running mm -hmm. with lots of intense energy and everyone getting quite um, tight and sort of nervous in their shoulders. You want to keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Mm -hmm. So the Yarm crew really, really in time, as, as goes for the York crew. There's not much between these two in terms of their form. It's, it's going to come down to who wants it more on the day. It does seem to be the Yarm crew that have taken the advantage coming past the hill bead landing stage. We'll see as they come to the commentary position what it looks like. I can see the yarn boat first. Very tidy. Really close. Everyone on the banks turning their heads now to keep track of this race. It's certainly the one that's caught the attention of all the spectators here. Coming under the bridge, we'll see which bowel comes out in front. And it's the yarn bowel that's leading towards the finish line. Wow. Oh, goodness me. There's the York crew at the bottom of the picture. Still think it's going to be the yarn crew who's going to take that victory there. Just what a brilliant it race does. there between two incredibly fast boats. To be interested to see some times from that one. Definitely one of the quickest races of the day. And yarn will go on to face the winner of this race, whether it be Collingwood or another York boat. See now we've got a race in the singles coming past between Durham Amateur Rowing Club and Sheffield City in the open J17 singles. You can see there on the crew closest to the camera, the Durham Amateur Rowing Club crew of Davison making easy work of Sheffield City Hodmont. But now York and Collingwood are ready on the start line for this n next semi-final in the Open Intermediate Eights. Do you ever get accustomed to the early starts or is it all still a bit jarring each time getting up at five regardless of the weather it's n it's not five o'clock i mean i think the earliest i've got up was about 5 45 this season oh, really? but um you're sort of used to and i think it's quite nice as well the fact that you go out and you do the session it sort of wakes you up mm -hmm. it's not like you're rolling out of bed right before yes. your 9 a.m i think yes. it sets up the day quite nicely of course it is still quite early yes but i quite liked getting up before my flatmates having my bowl of porridge in peace in, in peace <laughs> yeah <laughs> Could stick some washing on, you know. <laughs> I know. Don't need to get into the specifics of my routine too much, though. Let's turn our attention to York and Collingwood. Away they go, clean start for both crews. Yeah. If you look at party view for watch as it goes. No doubt there'd be yeah, some loud shouts as Collingwood come past their landing stage. This is their home stretch. Every time they'll want to go on a session, they'll have to row past this little patch of water. They'll know it inside out how long it is from here to the end of the course. And that's helping them get this early advantage over the York crew. I suppose in the moment um, when the adrenaline, adrenaline's pumping, it's quite easy to then forget like the odd kink in the river though when you're in the moment. Mm. You might have gone past it or through it a thousand times, but I feel for me personally, I'm, I get really like in the zone so much I kind of forget where I am. I just know you need to row or you need yeah, to... Yeah, no, definitely. Or. And I think th thankfully you have the Cox mm -hmm. there who's responsible for keeping tabs on what's going on in the course so you can 
if you're in the boat, you just stare at the back of the person in front of you mm-hmm. and just focus on making sure everything's the time when you're putting in as much effort as you can and making sure yeah, you judge it so you don't blow. And Collywood seem to be having the advantage still over the York crew. These two will have had a look at each other's past results from throughout the season and compared their times to know in their heads who's better than the other. I can see now coming past where I'm standing at the commentary position. It's about three quarter length advantage to Collingwood approaching the finish line. This race is going to be over very soon and Collingwood are going to be delighted with this result, making it through to the first final of theirs for the weekend where they'll be facing the Yarm School crew that beat the York crew in the previous semi-final. Unfortunate for York, both crews getting knocked out in each semi-final in this Open Intermediate 8 event. So there you have Collingwood coming to the line. Nice large victory of about a length in the end. When does, um, you know, timings really come into? Um, when do they start to, is it just, I imagine if there's like a tie or there's a close in the league tables, uh, do then are timings looked at or is it more just like win and lose? You'll definitely look at the time because the majority of the races that have happened early on throughout this season before we get to the side-by-side regattas will have been time trials. So mm-hmm. you'll have compared your time to theirs but instead of they finished second, I finished fourth okay. because each race there could be a big big time difference between second and fourth um, so really the numbers don't mean much unless you look at the, the time itself so now looking at this Cox 4 race between Sheffield University who are on the Peeler Wood side but it's the race course side that are leading out with a advantage of over a length at this point oh my goodness there's an ejector crab there for the Sheffield crew oh my really unfortunate there oh that could have hurt well that's really unfortunate well our best wishes go to the rower there after this incident, we hope everyone's okay. Um, let's go back up to the start line then and have a look at this next race that's lining itself up on the start line. Sheffield's opponents making their way down a leisurely pace. Un- really unfortunate circumstances for them to progress through to the next round. So, looking up at the start line now, got some more college coxed fours to bring you. So these two crews now we can see it's Collingwood College on the Peel or Wood side and believe University College or Grey College. So it's Grey College on the racecourse side. Really, really big rivalry between these two. This is this is not the first time they've lined up on this start line this year against each other. So Grey will hopefully be wanting to turn around the result from earlier on this season at the Senate Cup. <laughs> um, of course, and interestingly enough, so it's the stroke seats of the grey boat, Lachlan, 
has spent the past few months training with Collingwood for their Henley campaign, as Collingwood is the, going to be the only Durham College to send boats to Henley Royal Regatta. So they've then brought in extra athletes from around the college system that are strong enough to then join their forces to assist in qualification for the regatta. Um, and one of the athletes includes a person in this grey boat. So racing against people they've trained with before. Um, and a two seat in the grey boat, I believe we'll have Tom Mercica, a good friend of mine who's been out at the beginning of this year with a collapsed lung. So it's great to see him racing at the regatta in Gray's top boat. Finally, we come towards the end of the season. Wow, what a recovery. I know, yeah. Speaking to him on the phone earlier, there was scope for me to sub into this boat a few times when they were training while he was on holiday. He finished his exams and went on holiday for a bit, and now he's mm -hmm. back for some racing. Is a year really long enough to be regatta ready from a novice? From a complete novice, is a year or a one uni year really long enough? It's so weather dependent because the first thing to get scratched if the conditions don't allow it will be the novice rowing because they're so mm. inexperienced as it is. Mm -hmm. If the river's a bit too windy or a bit too high or a bit too fast flowing, then you won't let your novices go out. So some years, if the weather's been okay, then the novices will be in really good form. Whereas other years, they'll be great on their own machine, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't have had much experience on the water. We've just had um, news that the rower who uh, unfortunately ended, in the wa ended up in the water is out and they are safe. They're fine. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, so both Coxes in the Grey and the Collingwood crew raising their arms, just getting themselves straight. And there'll be lots of a very, very tense moment on the start line between these two. No, no talk between them. They'll be staring each other down, trying to do a little bit of intimidation mm -hmm. work. Important to stay focused, though. Mm. Don't want to miss the start. Oh yeah. That good start. So I think we're just waiting on some of these crews and the boat with the Sheffield rower inside just to make their way to the other side of the start line and then Gray and Collingwood will be underway. I can see the spectators eagerly anticipating the next race. Got a nice clear run down the course, given the water a bit of time to settle from the puddles of the previous races. And now um, the, um, the river's nice and calm for them to charge down with some lovely uninterrupted conditions. It would be perfect for their boat speed. Rather jealous, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> okay, both crew suits coming up to the front now, ready for the start. Seems to be from this angle, Gray are pointing slightly a bit too much to, towards Collingwood. Sheffield crew just making their way past out of the way of the starting area. A little bit of a gap in the racing. Etta, what's been your impression of the rowing that you've seen so far from, from a non-rowing perspective as a spectator? Brilliant. I mean, it's 
I am, I suppose, a novice myself um, at it, but it's, it's really interesting to, I mean, discuss with someone so experienced, but also like actually, you know, be able to sort of spectate myself and see those things come to life, such as, you know, the, the good start and the, the tidy sequences and just how that can benefit mm. so vastly in that then those two and a half minutes. Oh, definitely. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Did you ever consider signing up for the novice program when you joined the university? I'm really shy, so no, but I... Yeah, I, here you are with a microphone. <laughs> yeah, I, I was interested in coxing at some point. Oh, brilliant. You um, should have a crack. Yeah. Maybe I'd pursue that next year, but maybe I'm too old. You get to boss <laughs> about a whole group of people. What more is there to love? Yeah, w some some coxes will have an intercom, won't they? And some will just shout. Is there? M m all of them should have it. We call it a cox box. So there's a wiring system without the th throughout the boat. Well, yeah, well mentioned. Mm -hmm. With some speakers at your feet, so there'll be two speakers in these cox fours each, uh, where they can hear the cox. And they're underway for the grudge match. So far between Gray and Collingwood, in the coxed four event between these two colleges. Of course, College Cox 4s to come tomorrow morning, but might as well get the practice in entering this event too. And it seems to be Collingwood that may have stuck their bow ball out in front, but Gray are going to be charging down the bank after them. I heard it's a tradition to uh, throw the Cox in the water if, if your team wins. I think so. I haven't really done it for a while. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it's certainly a tradition at Henley and in the boat races like people see on TV. But with so many events going on at the Regatta, I think the, have, having uh, countless coxes lobbed into the river this evening may get a bit out of hand. I'd have to agree that. And it's Grey that, uh, sorry, it's Collingwood that have the advantage over Gray by about half a length as we come past the Hillbead landing stage. Gray have really got their work cut out if they're going to stay in this fight in the Open Elite Fours. Of course, Collingwood have another entry in this event as well still to come. So we could be looking at an all Collingwood matchup to come later on in the day. And you can see the Collingwood crew come past our commentary position with a really, really strong advantage. Such a formidable crew that Collingwood have been throughout this season in both the top four and the eight. Um, they really are the ones to beat and look at that. Wow. The advantage ever growing over Grey, there's no let up here. Does there seem to be a trend of, you know, DU athletes tend to be from certain colleges or I imagine they're from all over? It's mostly all over, yeah. Um, I don't think, there's, there's, I mean, Collingwood's quite sporty mm -hmm. inherently. I think a lot of people who are sporty apply to Collingwood. So, people that I know in the university program, a few of them are at Collingwood. Um, I'm not entirely sure how the numbers work out with how much of the boats are made up of people from certain colleges. But then again, you'll actually find that people who used to row for the university don't anymore. Mm -hmm. Now row in the college system and yes. the majority of them end up at Collingwood as well. Okay, so now we've got some women's Cox 4s between York University and Durham Amateur Rowing Club. Really, really tight racing here too. As we now make our way from sort of like the first stage of the race towards the end of the event and towards the finals later on today, the racing just gets closer and closer. So there's been a high standard set. So coming past the Hillbead landing stage, I think it's going to be York University there on the far side that have got the advantage over Durham Amateur Rowing Club on their home water. You can see the York crew come past our position first. Oh, but goodness me, it's bow ball to bow ball now. As the camera angle pans round, it's now looking like it's the Durham Amateur crew that have the advantage. Brilliant, brilliant racing here from these two. Uh, 
Back up on the start line then, we've got a men's Cox Fours between Tyne Amateur Rowing Club and Collingwood College. And this is the other Collingwood Four that I was talking about, who will hopefully want to get dispatch of Tyne Amateur so they can progress through to the final where they'll be racing against their friends from their own squad. I trained with them all year, but focus is now on getting Tyne as well. Tyne Amateur, one of the most historic and successful clubs, pro club programs in the Northeast. Of course, training in the boathouse opposite uh, Tyne United and Newcastle University on the Tyne in the freezing cold all winter. And they go and race a lot of the events down in the south with the Metropolitan Regatta, Marlow Regatta still to come. And then, of course, Henley Royal. No doubt this will be a crew they're thinking about sending into the qualifiers for Henley Royal Regatta in the Club Cox Fours event, the Britannia Challenge Cup. Yep. Yeah. Hello, 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 hello. And it seems to be that Collingwood have the advantage coming past Hillbead landing stage. And we'll bring you this result later on, but it's time to pass to the sofa with our presenters. Welcome back to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta brought to you by Osborne's. It's been an incredible morning of racing. So many highlights, I think, and particularly exciting for some people who it's probably their first race ever. Yeah, it's been really exciting. Um, I do want to say that there was someone in the river and we do think they're okay in case anyone was worried about that. Um, but I've gone and got myself some face paint, as you can see. Very lovely. There's lots of fun vibes, lots going on. It's been just such a lovely, sunny, enjoyable Durham morning, don't you think? Yeah, and we'd love to hear more from you. We'd love to see if you're following, if you're watching from the riverbank, watching from home. Send in, send in to Twitter, Instagram, uh, tweet Pal TV. Even in the chat below, go ahead and say whatever you like. We will be playing a little video for you in a minute about learning to row. We've got some of our presenters having their first time ever in a boat. It's going to be great, but this is Sophie and Heather signing off. It's been a pleasure. Have you ever looked out on the river, saw that and thought, I could do that? Well, we're going to give it a go. I'm Sydney. And I'm Izzy. And this is Pal TV Learns to Row. Regatta edition. today by UCBC's incoming women's captain Georgie. Georgie how are you feeling about teaching us to row today? Uh, very excited, a bit nervous because we're probably going to fall in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that that outlook Georgie. And I'm here with UCBC's president Rob. Rob how likely are we to capsize? Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say around about the 10 mark probably. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your blades. I got my blades. I got my blades. Oh, she's getting Oh my god, he's actually pushing us out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> think he's the wrong way again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't crash, Georgie. <laughs> Right, yeah. Okay. Basically, what I think George, uh, George is planning on doing, she's going to sit there and just balance the boat for Sydney. And then she's just going go to go through the motions. Okay, the things you showed us earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Great. So, have you trained a lot of novice rowers before? A few. So, each year we run a novice training program. Okay. So, we get all the freshers that want to sign up in Fresh Week. Mm -hmm. We often get kind of 60 sign ups, uh, which is quite a lot for a relatively small club. Yeah. Um, they then have to do all their swim tests. So, getting up at 6 a.m on a generally Thursday morning, right after CCTV, which is always fun. Lovely. In about week one or two of term, 
they then have to do some swimming, do some treading water, all that kind of stuff, prove they won't drown, and then we shut down boats. Wonderful. And uh, do you have any novice horror stories? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> are you allowed to say any novice stories? There are definitely some I probably shouldn't say. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> a lot of capsizes. Okay. A lot of people that just think, oh, I should let go of my blade. Boat flips in. I see. Yes, I've been told that you have to keep hold of your blade at all costs because yeah. that stops you from capsizing. If you hold your blade, you won't capsize. Very simple. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Wonderful. So tell me, why did you get into rowing? Did you sign up as a novice then? So I rowed from school. So I... Okay. Um, I felt the first started when I was about 14, 15. One of my friends used to go, he said, Rob, why don't you come along and just give it a go? Yeah. Went once, never looked back. <laughs> Wonderful. And what is it about rowing that you like so much? Um, I think there are two sides of it. First of all, kind of the early mornings, getting out, out on the water, lovely still, especially on the summer mornings, gorgeous sunrises, that side of things. And also the kind of sort of comradeship kind of side of it. It's a great team atmosphere, great socials. What more do you want? <laughs> Wonderful. Tell us about Georgie. Right, Georgie is a fresher. Um, wow. I actually first met Georgie um, when she came to an open day. The year before oh, she joined. Wow. Um, but she rode back, back at school, back at home, home club. Um, she's got very involved in the women's side very quickly. Um, sort of going into second year as a women's captain is quite impressive. Yeah. And she's got some exciting plans next year. Hopefully we'll um, be on the up. Brilliant. That. Okay, and how is Castle Boat Club doing? in the general scheme um, of things. We have our highs and our lows. Okay. I think we went into this year very promising. Um, some great people from school, great football rowers, great um, sort of relatively experienced people coming in. Great novice program. Um, Aidan Haig who ran our novice program this year, fantastic. Yeah. Um, sadly, a few crashes, some um, internal ah. college politics haven't really... Oh no! <laughs> ...haven't really supported that this year. Yeah, I think going into next year, really positive. Great, so we can just see them coming back over yeah. now. Um, if. Sydney does try to row. Could you? Go. Oh, yep. Right, so she's going through the sort of arms, body, legs. Yep. Then meant to putting her blade in the water and pulling. <laughs> Not quite managing that, but nearly. Okay. So she's done the arms, arms are away. Yep. She's then gonna bend over. Yep. In a second. Maybe. Come on, Sydney. <laughs> Here we yes! Go. Legs, putting the blade in the water and pulling. Woo! That's she it. did it! Yeah! That's, it. That's all there is to it. Coming forward, blade in the water and pulling. Beautiful. She's coming out square and feathering. Okay, good. So, how long would it take, you say, for Sydney to get to be regatta ready? Regatta ready? I mean, I raced, when I learned to row, I raced my first race within about a month of learning to row. Wow, okay. So, you're talking about your novice development programme. Yes. Um, so how many novices would you say will be, like, are anybody who was trained as a novice competing in the Durham Regatta? So Durham Regatta have a, they call it Maiden Falls. Okay. Which is an event entirely for novice college rowers who have only learned to row this year. Okay, really. Which is always a kind of, we often win it every, well, every kind of two or three years we tend to, we tend to win that one. Lovely, but okay. It's a, um, at the end of the day, rowing is about trying to get lots of people involved in the sport. It's a really fun sport. And events like that are just focused at trying to build that engagement. Wonderful, great, thank you. How many minutes of this sort of just chatting? I don't chatting know. Are we going to throw in? Till they come in. Seconds? <laughs> I don't know yet. I have no idea at all. Until they're perfect. Until Sydney's learned to row like an Olympian. Until they crash into that boat, actually, it looks like. Yeah, Brown's boats are a pain in the arse. Yeah, how do people often crash in? All the time. Okay. They also go in the wrong direction. Oh no. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Novices. Dear, dear. Mm. Right, so Sydney is rowing in. She's been done a couple laps. It's been quite good. It's very good. Oh, good. Okay. Can we come on at any technique? Yeah, so she's coming forward. She's feathering in slightly, but she's getting the blade out nice and square. Yep. Um, then feathering it. Got decent sequencing, so the arms, body, legs is happening. She's not um, bending her legs before she's got her arms out. Good. It's looking really good. You know what? It's quite solid. <laughs> well, you seem surprised. <laughs> well done, Sydney. <laughs> Wonderful. Very fun. Very scary. Very fun. Great. Yeah, well, we didn't capsize. Well done. No <laughs> pressure, is he? No, I'm so scared. Uh, <laughs> any tips for me to not trust Georgie? Sorry, my, my Rob. Don't trust Rob. <laughs> Do, should I trust Rob? I wouldn't either. Great. Okay.
score me. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love, send to peace and gloves. Now you got a girl right now. No rush, score me dumb. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love, send to peace and Now you got a girl right now. No rush, score me dumb. Back and forth, push and shove. Make your peace and love, send to peace and Now you got a girl right now. Old gang, old man, old school, young jam. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. Where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. In a world where luxury is defined. Hello and welcome to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta sponsored by Osborne's. Um, so I'm Lucy, I've just taken over presenting. And I'm Sydney and I've also taken over presenting. You may have just seen my VT of learning how to row, and all I can say is how embarrassing. But it certainly puts into perspective how hard the guys on the river have worked to deliver what they are. And yeah, I'm totally in awe of how, one, they manage not to fall in, and two, they go the speed they do. It's so impressive. But we're so excited to be doing your next four hours. Yeah, we absolutely are. And um, exactly what Sydney said is, is so true. I mean, we are absolutely in awe of our fellow presenter, Heather McGowan, who is about to be rowing herself for St John's Boat Club. We are so impressed by everything that she's done today and we're so excited for you, Heather. We are rooting for you all the way. It's going to be so cool. Good luck. And incredibly, she's coming back to the broadcast afterwards, which is a real commitment to PAL TV. And we're so excited for you to see some behind the scenes coverage. We're going to show you what's going on along the race course. You can see my face paint here. There's plenty going on. But first, we're going to pass you back over to our commentators who are going to bring you all of the action on the next races on the river. See you soon. Good afternoon, esteemed viewers of the PAL TV live stream. Uh, welcome back. I'm Johnny Carton. I'm joined by uh, a co-presenter from last, a co-commentator, excuse me, from last year as well, Megan. Megan, good Hello, to see everyone. you again. Yeah, it's good to see you. Good to be back in Durham. Um, it's a beautiful weekend. We've got lots of exciting races coming up. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's the weather is joyful. It's not snowing. Um, I don't know why it would be in June, but it did rain last year. I remember it, did it was rain all last year. for cover. It wasn't pre pleasant. Certainly not as pleasant as this. The weather has turned out for the occasion, which, as you may have heard, it is the 190th Durham Regatta. Uh, it's the second oldest in the country and the second most prestigious. Some might say I might say the most prestigious, but then I am biased. We're really, really grateful for the amazing commentary that came this morning. They did an absolute stellar job of bringing some amazing insights onto the action on the water. And we'd also like to thank Osborne's for supporting our coverage. Thank you, Osborne's. Thank you, Osborne's. We love you. Um, we sh I should say, very much one of the features of this morning's commentary was uh, a wealth of knowledge about rowing. Now, 
I may have a wealth of knowledge about a number of things, including how to fill airtime inefficiently. Uh, but one of them is not rowing. Now, you are a rower, and in fact, last year, you alternated, uh, as with some of our esteemed colleagues we just heard about from our presenters, uh, both a rower and a Peltivia, and last year, you did both in the same weekend, alternating. Yeah, so I raced la- last year in the morning for my club, Durham Amateur Rowing Club, um, and then just a couple hours after, I found myself presenting and commentating at the regatta. It was a very surreal experience, but it was absolutely fantastic. Um, We've got some really great races coming up this afternoon and the the sun is shining. So if you're in Durham and you're watching, why don't you come down here yourselves? But do keep the live stream going on your your device. On as many devices as you can, actually. Um, No, quite right. It's worth also saying a big thank you to all of the people without whom this event just couldn't happen. Uh, including especially the stewards, the marshals, those on the stake boats, uh, the volunteers, the security, all of the lovely burger vans, etc., who are keeping us fed and watered. Um, without them all, this event wouldn't be nearly half as lovely as it is, um, and nearly half as lovely as they are. So we've got a couple of single skulls coming down at the moment. I don't know what race. It looks like a women's race, Megan? Yeah, so it's a women's race. Um and do you know what single sculling for me would be the toughest race to do um especially for example there's been a couple races earlier today where the lead has been quite significant and i would be absolutely terrified um knowing that everyone was watching me on the banks it is as i think one of our commentators said earlier it's the most difficult because if you are feeling that extra pressure or that exhaustion and you know you've got this much left to do, but you've just not got it in the tank. You can't hope your teammates will be able to notice that and balance out the load with you. It's all on you. Um, but equally, it does mean you get the glory, you get the the reward of your own sort of efforts, as it were. Um, doing quite well here in the claret in blue. I can't make out the number, so I'm afraid I can't give you the location that this wonderful person has come from. We've had some very far-flung entrants. We had earlier one of our signature races, a team from St Andrews, which is quite the journey and not easy on the train. Uh, so congratulations to them. I don't imagine they took a boat on the train. No, they would have probably driven down. Um, even yesterday I saw so many boats um, on trailers coming down um, from all across the country. I know there's some people from Red, um, from Reading all the way down in the south. And Well, I know one person from Reading. I don't know if the rest of his team made it up, but he's doing some single sculling later on today. I believe at five-ish. So that's a, lo- that's a long way to come as well. Well, that is possibly the only thing worse than single sculling in terms of exhaustion. If you find yourself single sculling when you thought you were in a team of multiple people, you've got the bigger boat, you've got however many oars, more oars than you have hands, and, you know, just jump in and try and do the best that you can, even in those circumstances. It's really, really, t- yeah, it's tough being in a single skull. But honestly, the most amazing thing about rowing, um, and I know it's a joke that all rowers talk about rowing all the time, but rowing in the summer is the most beautiful thing. And I think Durham has such an amazing setting in particular. I mean, when you're rowing along, you can see the cathedral. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's amazing when all your friends are coming on the bank side and watching you. I think there's such a good culture around Durham Regatta. It's so amazing and so beautiful. Um, and rowing in the summer is, is you do all your hard work in the winter knowing that soon enough you'll be getting nice tan lines from your uni suit and being able to enjoy the sunshine and you at home will probably be able to pick up at various races especially the college races uh, the figures and the voices of people coming along the shore and running along and cheering their team um, and we love it because that's what it's all about you're not here as a even in a single school, you're not here as an individual. You're here as part of a, a wider community and a team. Um, and all the rowers may ostensibly be competing with each other, but they are all here for each other in terms of, um, you know, looking out for one another and enjoying the uh, endeavour and the pleasure of the day. Are you excited to be back this year? I am excited to be back this year. I'm, I, I've become a travelled man in the last year, but I don't want to bore our viewers with that. Um, I can think of precisely one viewer who'd be interested in that. Um, And surprisingly, they're not a member of my family, but what have you. Um, We are behind on the results, I'm afraid. They come out much later than they 
uh, the races finish. So please do keep an eye on the ticker if you are keeping an eye for a result for a race that you think has already finished. It will appear there eventually, we promise you. I mean, on the screen at the moment, we've got a uh, four, a, a quad, sorry. Um, and it looks like Durham Amateur Rowing Club have got the lead by quite a, quite a considerable amount there. Yeah. I mean, it must be so... It's so difficult to keep that motivation up, especially when you don't have a cox in the boat telling you how far behind you are. Um, and so sh just like amazing well done to all the competitors for really giving it your all out on the day. Um, it's definitely not easy performing to loads of random strangers in such a competitive event, but you guys are doing great so far. Absolutely. On the other side of that, of course, is that we have seen a few races today already where uh, the race has been won quite a way before the mm -hmm. finish line, before the bunting, and the rowers can sort of have that slightly uh, easier time, conserve their energy if they're in a heat for a final later, uh, or a semi-final or a quarter-final as it may be, and, you know, enjoy the weather and enjoy the scenery and wave a little quick hello to anyone they've got on the banks. I have a question for you as a rower. Okay. Because one of the things that I know about rowing is that you classify results by a number of distances. You can do it by a head, you can do it by a length, yeah. and you can do it by an easy, which mm. means that it was the winner was clear, as we you know in such the circumstance we just discussed, from a little bit into it. What qualifies as an easy? Is it a specific length of distance, or is it more a gut feeling? I think it's more about because obviously a lot of the time it's through lengths and I think it's when the distance is so great that you can't quantify how many lengths it was I mean it's always a, it's a bit embarrassing sometimes when you see it that uh, it was an easy win um, yeah. definitely not the most ideal thing that you want to see if you're, you've been racing in particular um, but I think it, it it's interesting because obviously a lot of the ways in which they try to easily match you is through the points that you accumulate throughout the, your racing years um, but it could be for example that a boat has theoretically rowed for 10 years together but they might have only never raced before and they've got all that experience of rowing together um, and they come to a race and they have no points and then they could be against a novice crew who has only rowed the past year who also have no points it's really it's really really difficult sometimes because it, it it does come down to actual racing experience another thing for the consideration of points is that this is for a lot of these teams the last event in the sort of mm. uh, year as it stands so those points will be recalculated and maybe if you are sort of uh, a length behind two lengths behind you find yourself thinking it's a nice day let's let's give ourselves let's give away an easy here and we'll we'll put our heads down we'll reset and when we come back to competitions in the autumn uh, we'll be able to take a bit of a, an easier route into our next qualifiers but some people have that competitive spirit some people want to take every race as it comes they have no uh, no desire to give any ground to anyone and quite right to i want to see some blood sports i think as well like every single race can be so different you could be a dominating crew for the majority of the year and you could theoretically be the favorites to win and something goes wrong on the day and there's just nothing that you can really do about it it is it is so dependent on like many many factors way out of your control for example like we're lucky today that it's not too windy but last year in particular there were huge huge like gales and um i know a lot of people were wondering whether it would actually be cancelled last year luckily it wasn't it still went ahead but uh, as the day went on it got very very windy yeah we have been fortunate today in that i think the high and only very briefly was about 10 11 miles an hour in the winds yeah that's um, not bad at all and that's fortunate for us in two senses because it means we get to see uh some quality rowing and it means we get to give you our lovely drone shots uh which shout out to james doing a great job there some absolutely scenic wonderful you know giving you the best of any relatives you might be watching for um you know, you can put it in their highlights reel or you can send it back to them and say, you look great in this, you looked amazing in this. And if you do so, do just mention it was PAL TV who filmed that for them. Yeah, make sure if you're racing today that you look back at all the videos that we've got and the live stream because you could get some really cool action shots of you racing. Um, and it's free for the... Oh, we have a collision here. Not the first of the day. It's, no. been, a, it's been a big day for collisions. 
both teams sort of stalling? Have they been yeah. are they waiting for an umpire to tell them will it be restarted? Will they join the back of the queue to get back past the stake boats? And that's it's always really, really difficult when that happens really soon for many reasons, obviously. But, you know, you're waiting on that start line for and even before that you get to the start line, you're just waiting around for maybe like 40 minutes, an hour. I know depending on how the regatta schedule is going, it can be a long time that you're waiting to get at, back out there on the water. And in that time, your adrenaline levels will yeah. change for the better, for the worse. You'll cramp up, you'll fidget. And then even once you do get to the stake boats, if you or your opponents take a little while in lining up and getting that uh, grasp on your bow. Bow? Yeah, they, well... Is yeah. the bow the front or the back? The bow ball is the back. Excellent. I didn't get it wrong. Um, that can throw you or your opponent off if you are sort of taking that little extra moment. Um, and we have seen, I think, some of that expressed frustration. Um, there was a crash with the Sunderland uh, Skull team earlier where I thought they were distinctly annoyed because they felt that their opponent had taken certainly longer than them on lining up and then they had an early collision. Um but yes, as a neutral, just great to see that sort of drama. Um, if you are watching at home and you're not a neutral, as well you might be, uh, please do shout out in the comments of the live stream. Anyone that you're here to watch, if you want anyone in particular to get a shout out from our commentary scene, we'll certainly see if we can accommodate that for you. Um, thank you for all of you who are tuning in. You know, We do this as much as we do it because it's a wonderful event. We also do it for you and it's a genuine pleasure to see as many of you as there are. It does look like those boats are returning to the start line, so they will retry that start, Megan. Yeah, they're backing up now. Not always the easiest thing. Um, I know I certainly don't like backing up at all four, um, but but um, hopefully the start will be able to resume fairly soon. I mean, again, like we were saying, the worst thing is like when you're waiting around at the start. Um, and the Cox will obviously be making sure that they get the absolute best and straightest line that they can yeah. uh, to ensure that they have the best race start. And the Cox will also be trying to put their teams in the best mental competitive mm -hmm. position as possible, which I think is an, uh, an undervalued element of that in terms of, for a neutral reviewer, you think the Cox is the person steering the boat, um, but they are the person also well, I suppose steering the boat, but in a metaphorical sense. Um, We've got a really cool interview coming up, and we'll be sending you over to our presenting team. And we'll be we'll back be with back you. Soon. you know Hello, and we're back here at Pal TV's broadcast of the 190th Summer Regatta, sponsored by Osborne's. And I'm here with Durham Amateur Rowing Club rowers. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so firstly, tell me what has the highlight of your day been so far? Um, well, we were stake boating earlier on, so that was quite fun. Yeah? Do you have a highlight? Just like watching the racing. Yeah? Yeah, the excitement all. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you? Seeing Durham win lots of races. Yeah. Very nice. I like the day probably stake boating and him getting the shout out earlier on. Brilliant. Yes, of course, you got a shout out because yeah. it is? My birthday. Yeah, it's also my brother's birthday. Shout out to Thomas Baldwin as we're here. Um, so, you guys are racing against T's next. Do you have a message for them? Uh, watch out. Mm -hmm. uh, just beware. <laughs> beware, oh my God. Tough talk from them, how about you? We're coming for you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave you in our dust. Wow. <laughs> serious, serious stuff. Amazing. Um, so how long have you guys actually been rowing for? Uh, just a year. Okay. Pretty impressive that you got to this level in just a year. Yeah. I really like your bucket hat, by the way. We can definitely twin over that. How about you? How long have you been rowing uh, for? Two years. Two years. Okay. Um, two years for me, too. Almost four years. Almost four years. Wow. Amazing. It's such a cool sport to get into. That's really yeah. incredible of you guys. Um, are there any particular races that you're looking forward to coming up later? Um, well, we're racing in a quad tomorrow and also obviously our double races. Mm -hmm. good, yeah. yeah, so that's going to be a highlight. Amazing. Anything else? Uh, that's probably it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazing. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Thank you so much, yeah. guys. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to commentators now. Thanks so much, Lucy, for that lovely interview with the Durham Amateur Rowing Club team. Fighting words. I Fighting know. words. We love to see it. 
we are hearing that there has been a disqualification in that uh, flunked race we saw just now, but we don't know who it's for yet, so keep an eye out for that. Um, that must be so tough. I mean, there's been a couple of disqualifications throughout the morning, um, and like the, all the preparation that you've had, all the all the early mornings. Like, I mean, rowing is obviously really notorious for 6 a.m. starts, and especially the prep coming into Durham regatta and regatta season you'll have been doing a lot of training and for it to end in disqualification in your race I, words cannot describe it the main sort of sporting experience i've had that's equivalent to the regatta would be rugby festivals years and years mm -hmm. and years ago and you would you know there was it was very similar in some ways you turn up at 6 a.m you'd spend a lot of your time waiting for things to happen but you certainly wouldn't have in any rugby competition i went to it wouldn't have been over 40 seconds after it started. And yeah. that must be particularly gutting. Um, but, you know, you hope that none of the competitors are ever uh, put down by it too much and that they can pick themselves up and be here the next year. Or, you know, for many competitors, be in a later heat for a different class or different race. Um, we've got a lo lot of uh, repeat competitors. And it's a full weekend it for is you guys weekend. to watch and to come along with. So we've just had a race for doubles going up now. Uh, we've got Durham Amateur Rowing Club, and I believe they're against Hexham. A good start from both of the crews there. Really, really strong. Durham Amateur Rowing Club in particular have been really, really dominating in the seniors so far. Um, They've had a few excellent races already, and this looks like it might be going towards becoming another one. They're doing really, really well. And P the Hexham crew on the Pilau Wood Station is... You know, they're not they're trying to keep up, but it looks like Durham have had such a tidy and strong start. That's the thing, the start is so, so important. I always favour for the short races on the Saturday, I think I always favour the race course side starter. Yeah. I don't think there's a massive difference between the sides. But I think you can just get that that might more confidence in your start and the that sort of builds over time and you can see it now developing into a a, a length a length and a quarter maybe advantage that they've got now at this uh, just over halfway stage so yeah the pilar wood side i having raced it it is it is so much different in comparison to the race course side so the pilar wood side because it kind of there's a start line where and it kind of bends a bit so you have to be really really hot on your steering as you're coming around that corner i know for a fact that like when i was practicing race starts and i was steering I very much had to make sure that I wasn't going into a wall. And it is, it is like one thing that I've noticed, like when you've raced around the country, there's there's such a difference with what each river looks like, understandably. Um, and Durham is narrow. Durham is very Durham's narrow. a small river. I mean, we've been talking about the P.L. Orbit so I think being difficult, but we did see an, a complete beach on the race course side earlier mm. in a, a women's four intermediate, I think it was. Yeah. And that's, that's stressful in its own sense because obviously all the previous competitors are uh, lining the banks wait, waiting to get back to the start yeah. or to get back in. So you don't want to be crashing into either side. But Durham Regatta, uh, Durham Amateur Rowing Club still seem to have the edge over Hexham. It has narrowed slightly. Credit to Hexham. They are they well into push. this. They're they well into this. But they, I mean, the amazing thing is they all look really, really comfortable. None of them look too tired, which is always really important. You've got to really make sure that you're relaxed when you're racing. Just but approaching the race course bridge now, maybe 100 metres to the finish line. It does look like Durham ARC are going to see it out by just under a length. Congratulations to them. Once we get the official result, we'll let you know. Of course, do watch the ticker that appears on screen in times. It will tell you what the results are as soon as we get them. Um, or you can, of course, check out the Regatta website. Oh, it's another Durham Amateur Rowing Club crew. And it's another Claret and Blue on the other side. I have yet to figure out which team that is, but I do absolutely love their uniforms. What's the best unitard you've seen so far today? I think it's Sheffield's with the blue sash and the yellow okay. triangle yeah. it reminds me a little bit of the Bosnian Herzegovinian flag which I like because it breaks okay. almost all the conventions of good flag design and yet it still manages to be an incredible flag um, there's been some questionable fashion so far what? there has been there's been a couple of ones that look a bit like football kits I'll be honest Yeah. and I feel like each sport should have its own unique identity as to as to designs in its things 
I think the rowing blazer is obviously the quintessential item that you need for the summer if you're a rower. Um, there's Just been carry I've, one about town. Yeah. I haven't seen any stripy ones yet. I tell you, I am biased. Cards on the table. I am a Josephine Butler man because I go to that college. But I absolutely love their oars. There's something about them, the little stylized cross on them. Uh, same as the symbol of the Prince Bishopric of Durham, historically. Uh, just, you've got to love it. Cute dog going by. That's, I'm starting my cute dog count here and now. Oh my god, he's found another cute dog. Wow, he's brought me two in already. Yeah, if anyone's got any good dogs, pass them by the commentary box. We would love to see them. We might even let them bark into the microphone if we're feeling generous. <laughs> So still just waiting on this uh, Durham ARC one to begin. I think they might be letting people past. Um, yeah, it's possible. Sometimes when there's a build up, they obviously need to stop at some point, have a break. I feel like that's the worst thing if you're a rower and you're waiting on that start line and they choose your race to then let everyone go past. Yeah. Because you just want to get started. The adrenaline on that start line is... Oh, it looks actually like the rescue boat has been recovering an oar. I can yes. see an oar entering that boat or possibly sunk into that sort of shallower part on the race course side. Somebody's lost that and they've had to come back for it. But it looks like they're trying to push themselves away a bit as yeah. well. But that is something for those viewers who don't know much about rowing, uh, you might not appreciate. When you see on those lovely drone shots all of the boats sitting by the side on one side, um, they aren't just watching the race and enjoying themselves. Uh, they are queuing to get back up the river towards the start line. And the race the race marshals will let them by in groups at a time. So it's not a constant sort of stop-start. And the races are all delayed. Um, the races are all delayed anyway because what the heck, there's so many of them, you know. Um, there's always going to be little jiggles to your platform. And I to feel your like it's impressive if they manage to do it on time, in my experience. It's very impressive if it's done on time. Yeah. I uh, stewarded last year and I had to sort out like um, each race and make sure that the competitors were all lining up with each other and some people would boat like 40 minutes early or an hour early and then some of them would boat like five minutes before their race. And they're supposed to boat half an hour beforehand at least a lot of the time. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I would be terrified. I'd be like, I need to be on time. I don't want to miss out on this amazing race. Um, and sometimes if it's so delayed for them coming, they will just be automatically disqualified for not showing up. Can't say fairer than that. We are underway in this race. It's looking neck and neck at the moment as they're heading towards the Hildbead launching point. Uh, you may notice the sofas have multiplied there. There was one. There are now three. Or there were at last count. I don't know. Maybe they've... Maybe they've Maybe they've multiplied again. It's neck and neck at the moment as they reach the first landing stage of Collingwood. Confident oarsmanship here. They both look really, really tidy and really clean. Yeah. Heads down, focusing completely in the moment. There's not glances being thrown towards their opponents to gauge themselves. They're entirely invested in themselves and doing as well as they can here. Eyes in the boat. That's what they always say, eyes in the boat. And it looks like Dark are trailing behind, which, as, as we said, Dark have had a fantastic day so far, so it's interesting to see them not relishing in their race. They do just look to be wiggling a little bit from their, from their spray. They're sort of slaloming ever so slightly, and that, obviously, the quickest direction to any point is a, fast, is a straight line. Um, and especially so in a boat when you have the water you know, slapping you if you're going in the wrong direction. There is someone who is screaming for Durham on the backside just in front of us. Fantastic. I can see her, actually. She's a marvellous lady. Go on. You you show your colours true and proud. Cheer on your child. Unfortunately, it isn't really helping them. Durham ARC now almost two lengths behind, I'd say, unfortunately. Definitely. It seems the other boat really is taking this charge. They've done a last push. They've got... They're in the last little part of their race and, you know, all the adrenaline is just powering them through. They'll be feeling really tired because it, it's one of those crazy things where you literally are sprinting for a couple minutes. Um, it's really, really intense. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if you've tried to sprint for a long, long time, but... I'm not a very big sprinter. Oh, 
That's a shame. You should. It's really good. Running is really nice. Rowing is really lovely. Rowing does look. Have really you ever lovely. tried rowing? I've tried sailing. I'm not. I've never been a really a rower aside from okay. on the machines in the gym. But I have tried and enjoyed sailing. One of the advantages I was going to say of our drone camera is you can really tell when there's this incredibly neat mm. coherence in a team. And that has been the advantage of Dark's competitors here. If you saw those overhead shots, it was synced to a T. It looked like they were cutting glass. That's that's a phrase we use that's quite a lot. That's a phrase. Wow. Yeah. That's a great phrase. So, hope I mean, Dark was trading behind there and their competitors seem to have taken the championship but obviously we cannot no. we'll hopefully get the real results we soon. can't give you a official results we Until will as we say give you them as soon as we receive them um, we've got another dark viewers. rower coming along here in the single skull she looks comfortable very very comfortable if you one of the things you notice really is all of these little variations wow really can't even see her competitor, competitor yeah. again dark absolutely smashing it out of the park today you know one one loss by a little bit a few lengths in that no matter they're i mean they're an easy ahead at the moment Megan. yeah i was gonna say this looks like an easy win for dark but and you the thing is as well of you obviously need to look behind when you're sculling and just to check where you're going but you won't want to look behind and see how far you are away yeah Although, credit to Dark's competitor here, they have a lovely coloured boat. I was going to say lovely red coloured boat. I've been enjoying the red boats and the white boats especially. And especially when they're competing against each other, actually. Yeah. The colour and the thing is, the she river. still looks really, really amazing. Yeah. That's the thing. That there is nothing to fault in her performance. This is, like many sports, excepting possibly darts and, po and poker and snooker. Ones where you at home cannot really sit and say, Oh, what are you doing? Oh, I could do better than that because these make no mistake every person you see today is an athlete they are in they have worked incredibly hard for this um the results you know no result really can be a reflection of the amount of effort an athlete puts in as you will have seen via uh, our our pre-recorded video that we've shown you earlier today showing how these athletes train um at least with the senate rowing team I mean, rowing clubs can sometimes... The good, I mean, the amazing thing about college rowing in particular at Durham is it can be as chill as you want it to be. You can just turn up for one water session a week and, and enjoy yourself in the sun. And that, and that in itself is absolutely lovely. Or there's obviously the really competitive crews at the universities. Um, so, for example, Durham University, I believe they train like 12 times a week. So with only one day off, they have Sunday off. Every and as you say, it's a sport with a with an early start hour. It's it's an early start hour. My most recent club that I've joined, um, they do a double session Saturday and Sunday, um, so it's seven o'clock till twelve. And then, so it's and I have to get there for like six, half six. So it's very very early. Mm. Right. Football, you bring a ball, you can kick off five minutes after you turn up. That is a fantastic rainbow boat. That is an excellent boat. Happy Pride Month to all of our viewers. Um, I'm rooting for them. <laughs> Simply on the rainbow. Aspect. Simply on the quality of that alone. That indicates good life choices to me, to be honest. Um, although I have to say, there is something imposing about the opposite team all being in white overshirts and in a completely sleek white boat with completely sleek white oars. You know, I'm no criticism of them intended by praise of their opponent's boat. And they do have the lead by about three quarters of a length uh, going into this middle stretch. We talked a little bit about the, the left-hand bend right from the start earlier, Megan. Mm -hmm. There is a slight right uh, in the main section of the short race. But you can sort of just take it as a straight. Um, if you get the right angle, I was always told when I was rowing that the best angle to take was when you looked behind you and you could see the cathedral and to like direct your boat to the cathedral that's what i was always told with that's, my line see i wouldn't have instinctively thought that because the cathedral is quite a way in mm. if you're thinking about it from the position of the race course side mm. um pulling almost a full length ahead here i don't want to say it quite is a full length because um it looks like a lovely rainbow boat they're yeah. just keeping it under that at the moment but again you can see from above uh, the lead team, just that slight inch more synchronity. I think the second rower from the front on Rainbow Team is 
ever so slightly out. No criticism yeah. of them in the slightest because they are still doing a sterling job as a team. Oh, it looks... They're out of time now. Bow is out of time in the rainbow boat. Yeah. But is they've managed to pull it coxed together. Or is it coxless? It's coxed. It is coxed. Their cox picked up on that very quickly. Credit to them. But they... I mean, the technique on both sides looks incredibly strong. And sculling, sculling is, de I would say sculling is more difficult than sweep. But I mean, they're both difficult in various ways. Um, but I think sculling, obviously, you can very much feel the balance of the boat with your hands. And you don't, you don't want to be the reason why the boat's off balance. Yeah. Because uh, balance is everything. You have to put, <laughs> especially in a team of more people, you have to put a lot of faith into your team that you won't need to correct one of their movements and you won't need to do this and do that. You have to instinctively surrender yourself to this sort of ethos of putting yourself entirely at the will of the other people in your boat and at the will of whatever your cox is shouting at you. It's a lot of teamwork. You know, you win as a boat, you lose as a boat. Um, you, perhaps maybe you might catch a crab um, and you might blame yourself entirely, but that's not the mantra. It's a really, really... Of really course. strong community we did uh, see that one crab earlier where yeah. the rescue boat had to come out but for the team there they will be thinking oh we had a crab they certainly wouldn't be thinking it was my teammate it was it was on them it was this it's as you say it's an incredibly team focused sport and everyone has to work as a team to make it like one percent better each time there's always something that you can be do doing to improve your rowing yeah and especially if you are one of these rowers who has multiple events in the weekend there's no time to have your head down or wonder about what you did wrong you have to think about it from the perspective of the team and how can you go out there and do again the best that you can as a team plus there's just no room to really think about if something's gone wrong because it will instantly affect the rest of your race yeah. you just need to move on you have your you just have to think i had a bad stroke what can i do to make this one better like if you tense up whilst you're rowing you need you just need to be relaxed mm. you can't you can't have the risk because that's when you'll make more mistakes you can't let yourself be caught by a, a single bad moment uh speaking of things going wrong not a thing I can fault in this current race, going nearly neck and neck as we are heading under the race course bridge towards the finish. They're looking comfortable. They're, They're looking both comfortable. Looking, look, looking like they want it. Although that's quite an acute angle to be taking under the yeah, race course the, bridge. The race course side has very much imp impeded into the middle mm. of the course. Although I suppose the argument is if you are a length, two lengths ahead, it doesn't you matter can do too so much. with fair comfort and you don't have to give too much consideration to your opponents where it would otherwise be due exactly you know there's many uh, even just today we've seen um some dodgy lines to say the least where um they've impeded upon their opponents and it does obviously happen sometimes it's really really difficult in the moment just to concentrate especially if you you're in a coxless boat i think it's sometimes really really difficult it's always the person in bow that's steering uh, and sometimes there are specific foot plates that um, have a like steering ability which is really cool obviously. that sounds i mean that sounds very cool um but sometimes it's literally just up to pressure um pressure steering which is where you have to really really communicate with the rest of the, your boat you have to scream out like harder on bow side harder on stroke side just to make sure that you get that right angle and when you're going, especially in an eight, for example, um, I think that it, it goes so fast down the river. Um, eights are normally coxed anyway, but if you have to make a really, really quick t change just to make sure that you're going in the right direction, you have to call it soon. For water-based vehicles, these things do fly. They do we fly. asked for shout outs earlier, Megan. We have a few. Fantastic. So, shout out from Robbie Goodwin to the Cuffs Boat Club, Bleed Green. Um, Cuffs, lovely college. I've not met anyone from Cuffs I didn't like, really. Uh, Chloe S says, shout out to Adam Shannon from SCSBC. Good luck for a race if you've got it coming up from us here in the commentary box. And I uh, hope you did well if you've already done it. And from Joy Hutchinson, shout out to Kambwa and Harry Shaw and team members. So, there you are. Um, I've got another question for our lovely devoted audience. Where are you watching from? I'd love to know. I'd love to see. I think last year we had some astonishingly far-fledged viewers. We had a couple in Australia. We had one in Saudi Arabia, um, which I was very sort of grateful of 
because that means we're doing something right if we're getting viewers as far from as that. Um, but in order to be doing something right, we probably should be paying, I probably should be paying, I mean, my esteemed co-colleague is paying plenty of attention to the race. Um, Four-person sculling coxed boat here. I think it might be cuffs, actually. They're in the green over shirts, and they've got a the lovely green and white boat, and opposite them, another one of these very sleek cherry red boats. I think it's Cam... Camus. Cam... Cam... Is it Camus? The one we just shouted out? Yeah. Ah. Well, I there you are. I so. I think I could see one in the top. Um... But we have a question as well about whether we're keeping coverage on till the last race on both days. We are here until the end both days, so don't you worry. We have got full coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta. We're here with you for the whole day. So um, we're here from 4 a.m. and we'll be here until <laughs> as late as it takes. If they're running races at midnight, I might ask some of our lovely audience members to run us a coffee. But, uh, yeah, you know, we will be here. We're giving you all the action this whole weekend all the action all the time a little bit of a loss of synchronity here but the race is won um they can conserve energy they can relax and uh congratulate each other in the sense of a job well done and uh our lovely cherry red team can finish the race as well knowing that they certainly didn't make it too easy for their opponents and they were well into it for a large amount i mean you can see there we've just got back to our our finishing bunting camera and it's not a few seconds in between them and, and there's our lovely rainbow boat coming back. I know, back. our favourite boat. That is an absolutely fantastic boat. So. My favourite boat of the day. We have talked about boat choices so far today. We should talk a little bit about fashion choices, because there are a lot of things you can do. You can go hatted, you can go hatless, as uh, this women's single skull is doing. 301. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I personally, I feel like I shouldn't admit this, but I really like a bucket hat. I really like it. I know the traditional thing, although I feel like bucket hats are becoming a lot more popular, but um, uh, visors tend to be the thing that I, I think I own two visors um, and multiple bucket hats. Last year, the fashion item that we were commenting on was the bandana. There were a lot of, Ooh. especially coxes, there were a lot of coxes in a bandana. Today and so this far. year, I have to say, I have been keeping an eye out for them. I haven't seen that many. Yeah. Well, let us know if you're wearing a bandana and you're racing today. We'd like to know. We'd love to know. Um, you know, does it have a special meaning for you? Um, do you... As a rower, Megan... Yeah? Do you have any lucky items or lucky traditions that you do before a race? Because I would assume you would not go for a lucky item because a boat is obviously quite a compressed uh, space. You wouldn't have yeah. the space for anything and you wouldn't have the weight for anything. Hefty, certainly. You brought a horseshoe on board, you're going to be disadvantaging yourself. <laughs> I feel like the lucky things, for su like it's such a thing to French braid your hair, two plaits um, for girls, or for, or for men. Um, like it is, uh, it, it always looks really, really nice if you're in like a, a quad or a four or an eight, all of you having your like hair plaited and two um, plaits down yeah. your back and then it lends itself to that team spirit yeah. that we said this before I've sometimes done um, face paint like uh, I did row for Mary's uh, before going on to dark and we loved putting purple like um, stripes on our faces yeah. Yeah. really really get into the team mantra. get into the warrior spirit yeah and like I feel like there's certain things as well that I like I would it, not necessarily like lucky items, but like lucky food. I guess I would always eat. Is it saw? I can never pronounce it. Serene, saurine, the malt loaf. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can. My my parents laugh because I can never pronounce that. But um, I. I did, did wonder if you were trying to say sorbet there. Oh really? <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, today is the sunny day for today a sorbet. Today would be an excellent day for a sorbet. Yeah, there's some ice cream places I think down down on the river course another reason why you should come here yeah. and see the amazing races but also stay tuned on your phone if you are you know heading down to the regatta at any point there is much more to do than just the racing i should point out there's a classic car show um nestled on the race course it's wonderful uh, i'm a big car man myself are you i am are you into f1 i am into f1 mm -hmm. how did you know well i just presumed if i can't i like f1 as well f1's good um yeah, no, there's and there's also a Viking show at some point today. I can't quite remember what time. Um, but there is oh someone has gone past in an amazing rowing blazer. Oh yes. 
we actually, that is the thing. A lot of the teams we've had on the sofa today, I'm not criticising, I'm not suggesting a lack of spirit in the slightest. But last year, again, we had some incredibly coordinated teams, especially from the Bailey Colleges, all in the Blazers. Um, and it was like you, like with the face paint it was this sign of a team utterly devoted to the team and nothing else um, and this year there's been you know people in vintage jumpers and stuff and it reeks of self-importance it, it smarts I can't stand it no I don't obviously we love all of our teams I must admit I have bought a jumper whilst I'm here already I bought a rowing jumper uh, this morning, literally before my shift, I was like, oh, there's some nice jumpers around. And you can get Durham Regatta t-shirts as well. And I believe they've got all the um, boats that are entered on the back. So they have like each boat club. Another um, reason to come down if you're available. Yeah, get yourself a t-shirt. Get yourself a t-shirt. We have two quad coxed boats just lining up and they have been letting some people pass. So that's why we have been sitting here for a minute. Another piece of, another little tidbit for the non-rowers. If you see the coxes raising their hands at the start line, they're not asking their teachers if they can go to the toilet. What they're (laughs) indicating is that they are unsatisfied with the direction that their boat is facing in. So they're obviously trying to give their teams as big an advantage as possible, and they want the best line as they set off now, both happy with the lines. Um, And so they'll raise their hand if they aren't happy with it. But if they do so for too long, it is within the umpire's prerogative to say, you've had your chance to fix this. You're just going to have to race with how it is now. Um, and already in this rate, our, our yellow ward friends on the Peel or Wood side taking a half a length advance is very early. Very early indeed. And yeah, it's one of the things as well, like I don't know if you've ever watched the Oxbridge boat race, but sometimes the coxes go back and forth like putting their hands up saying that they're not ready or they don't like their position they don't like their line it's especially luckily like we said it's not been too windy today but last year in particular when it was so windy it just felt like every two seconds they were putting their hands up because they'd already be out of alignment yeah i mean the stake boats are tied in by multiple ropes this year which i think is partly influenced by the extent to which they were rocking about last year um Still looks like our friends on the Peel or Wood side have a, a fairly commanding advantage coming into this mid-section of the race. Um, looking marvellous there as yeah. they head past the Hildbead uh, dock. They'll be settling into their race pace now after doing a race start. Um, race starts can sometimes be incredibly, incredibly chaotic, uh, especially when you're practising. Um, I know like a lot of the summer training is just constantly doing race starts, just making sure that you you know what you're doing. And so, sometimes race starts are like half length, half length, three quarter, three quarter. Um, it's really all about just building up that power at the start, um, making sure that, and then they're just, they're, they just want you to settle once you're in the race. Well, Megan, we're 50 minutes into our commentary shift and wow. I have an update from almost minute one. Uh, Aidan Dyke Lawler in the chat you asked do we know who was disqualified in that earlier race we were talking about I can now tell you it was Leeds who were disqualified and not UCBC so I suppose I should have guessed that Leeds was in a white boat shouldn't I Um, well known for their white colour a city of the white rose Um, we have we had a war of the roses yet today on the water I don't think so, although if anyone does know that, feel free to correct us. We certainly have seen both Lancaster and York out there. Uh, we yes. saw York against Grey College early in the day in a men's four, um, which was a tight, a tight race if ever I've seen one, and a well-supported one. Uh, you do get a lot of noise here when it is a college against an alternate university team. You have people screaming and running down the, yeah. the bank side. Absolutely, whooping and leaping for joy. And here we have our Yellow Ward friends coming in to take... That'll be Hexham, I believe. Hexham to take an easy victory. Congratulations to them. And I think we've got some single skulls coming up again. Again, single skulls, very, very terrifying. I, I love doing single skulls in the summer, but I don't think I'd have the confidence to race in them. I know I've said I've never rode. I have canoed. I've okay. kayaked even, which is not yeah. the same thing. But it's the same principle. You have two oars... Um, although unlike in a rowing boat they are bent one in one direction and one in the other direction and you're not going Um, backwards and you aren't going backwards Um, but in them I had one of the worst experiences I ever had in a boat 
I really like boats usually. Um, to set the scene, this was I was kayaking off of the west coast of Ireland, which is a wonderful arena to surfing because of mm -hmm. a couple of reasons. One, it's generally really windy. Two, it's generally very choppy. And those conditions worked against me in the kayaking. So we'd launched off from this little sandy area, um, but the beach was mostly rocky. Mm -hmm. And we were just coming to the end of the session and it was a group of myself and friends. Um, and as we got to the end of the session, the weather started getting more Irish. Um, more Irish. More Irish, yes. Um, I love the Irish weather. I've got nothing against it. But in this circumstance, it had something against me. Um, and so for about 45 minutes, because it was the end of the session and I'd used up most of my energy uh, just enjoying it and pondering about etc. I was bashed against these rocks continuously, just without the energy to reach this, um, this section of um, beach that I've been trying to get to. And so... While I can't say I've ever experienced anything quite like the competitive nature of what these single skulls are going through here, I can say that I can understand completely any sort of terror that they're feeling at being the only person in that boat because it is quite bad sometimes. I remember uh, at a training session one time, it started thundering and you're not allowed to be on the water when it's thunder and lightning. So it was a mad... And we were the furthest possible... Uh, distance away from our club so it was very much i think we've been out for literally like 15 20 minutes and it was like right gotta get back because you could like i mean we've been really really lucky for the for weather today um and i believe it was meant to be really poor weather it was meant to be thundering uh, but luckily the weather changed um we've got some more single scores coming up on the team uh, on the screen for you now. I think that was Collingwood that we just saw winning that uh, single skull race, or leading that single skull race, I should say, excuse me, uh, that we can just see on our cameras now. Um, and if that was the case, they would be going up against Tyne ARC, which would actually fit those colours of that wonderful um, unitard that I've been praising, that blue and cl that clary and red. Clary and blue? Clary. Clary's red. I'm mixing up my colours. You're very precise with your colours. I have good colour knowledge. I like colours. That's such an inane statement. What what am I doing commentating? Change me out for What's somebody else. What's your favourite colour? Green. I'm I'm a big green man, but specifically if you pinned me oh, to a we've, ship. We have a capsize. Oh, we have a capsize. We have somebody clinging to the boat. Um, that's quite near the end. That's under the racecourse bridge. That's such a shame for that competitor. Uh, getting so far right to the end. Um, I believe, will they not have to stop the racing? I'm yeah. not sure. I don't know whether the skulls who are going past us just now will have been informed by an umpire, but once they reach it, they will certainly be shouted the, out by the, the crowd. I mean, there's plenty, stop. yeah, there's plenty of shouts from the crowd currently going on. Yeah. And I can just say, they are still rowing as they're coming almost into shot now. Um, they will have to slow fairly quickly. Yeah. Oh. And there we are. They've just you could just see them coasting their way into shot. They had stopped rowing by that point, so uh, everyone will be alright. But we will take a break now. These teams will now reattach themselves to the stake boats. They won't go. Um, they do a lot of practice for stake boating beforehand. Mm. We have, have we have seen on the live stream a couple of the stake boat changeovers. Really? Uh, shout out! I did shout out the stewards and masters earlier. Shout out to the stake boaters. You have to lie there in a fairly unglamorous position and hold on to these boats and all of these sort of like adrenaline fueled individuals. Oh, we've got that um, person who capsized being rescued just there. Back in the rescue boats. They are safe and sound and we're glad that we can report that to you, obviously. Um, we did have one big incident with the rescue boat last year. I think we've already seen the rescue boat used twice this year, but thankfully uh, neither event has been particularly serious and both competitors have been happy and healthy afterwards, which is... Um, something we're very glad for all of us and again as i say thank you to the stake voters thank you especially to the marshals and rescuers without who this event simply could not take place better to capsize in the summer than in the winter though very true i capsized in a single well, it was my first time getting into a single after maybe like three years break uh, and it was at my brand new club as well so i haven't met anyone um, and I really embarrassingly, within the first five minutes of getting back into that boat, fell in. And I wasn't, I wasn't even far <laughs> from the landing stage at all. Um, 
And I was just there like, oh my God, everyone's going to think I'm absolutely terrible. And I was meant to be in a double with um, someone later on that week. And I was just thinking they're going to think that I'm going to capsize them in the double now. They're going to think I'm terrible. But I, I, that's the thing. Capsizing can happen no matter how experienced and skilled you are. If you just have one stroke that's just slightly off, you can fall in. In certain water skills, capsizing in certain water skills in certain uh, water boat skills capsizing is an art and actually a qualification i remember uh, when i was much younger doing the very early stages of a, a, a sailing thing and one of the things you had to learn in the specific type of boat i was sailing was how to capsize and how to uncapsize it um, because it was one of those uh, imagine a very rudimentary version of the ones that they use in sort of the uh, sail 20 where you have these a large plastic or carbon bottom and then you have one tall central sail so you couldn't capsize it to such an extent that you it went over entirely you could only capsize it so it went to the side and you had to learn to do that and then you had to learn to sort of hoist yourself up on the underside of the boat pull it back down and then get yourself back in without recapsizing it um, and you actually had to do that to get your first level qualification um, yeah. which I hated <laughs> because I had to go in the water and it was not summer, like you say, the ideal season to capsize in. See, with um, college rowing, and with I think I believe, well, like when you come to university, regardless of whether it's college or um, DU, you have to do a capsize drill. You have to um, make sure that you know what to do when a capsize happens, especially because your feet are literally st- like strapped into the boat. Yeah. So it's and it's really really important that you know the safety of the river and you know what to do when you capsize. Again, this is an element of what you might see as a, a neutral viewer or a new viewer that you might underappreciate is just how much thought has to go into every element of while you're in a boat on the river. Um, Palti via setting up, and we're very grateful to Cuffs because we are in their boathouse on the race course. Thank you, and Cuffs. And one of the things. Uh, that I noticed as I was getting in this morning is on the wall all of these diagrams and all of these safety procedures specific maps of the river telling you where it's safe to perform certain maneuvers such as spinning Um, there are parts of the river where that's completely forbidden there are parts where you can't stop at all Um, and you have to be thinking about all of that while you're in a race while you're in a competitive situation if you've had a a momentary collision where an oar has been smacked out of one of your teammates hands with a boat that you're racing are you in a portion of the river where you can safely stop? Are there boats queuing to get back up past the stake boats to the left of you? Um, you know, are you at a point where it's going to be really difficult to retrieve you if something happens? And you have to be absolutely aware of all of that. And again, massive credit to the rowers themselves because uh, it takes a lot of drive and a lot of dedication and a lot of 6 a.m. starts. And for the sake of all of that, we get some very entertaining rowing. I've done some illegal turns in my life. I mean, <laughs> the disappointment call the on your face. If you're watching this stream, please call the police. Um, <laughs> I really hope nobody tuned in at that exact moment <laughs> because that would be quite awkward. Um, I mean, if I've I've seen some illegal turns in my lifetime as well. Um, I think, as, as specifically, for example, if you're the only one on the river, I've, I think. I think people... You're probably all right, yeah. You're probably all right. But obviously, when there are other people on the river, you have to be conscious of other people. And Are there any teams you want to name as notorious rule flouters? I feel like I get told off by the teams. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to name drop anyone. We have, a, uh, we have a number of paddles that are being waved at us as commentators, which tell us how we're doing or whether we're going to transfer to a video or to another segment. One of them is legal issue. Um which thankfully I haven't had waved at me yet this year, which no. makes a, a, an improvement on last year already. Oh, really? Um, yes, I do want to, for personal pride, I'm going to point out something, and a fact that some of you may not have heard if you're watching. Um, the regatta in Durham was first held as a celebration of the anniversary of the defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. Um, and I said that fact last year on my commentary shift, and immediately in my ear, in our little tech system we have in-house, I got told by somebody, I don't think that's right, Johnny. You have to retract that now. You you can't say that because I don't think it's right. And I was adamant that it was right because I'd done my research. I'm a good commentator. Um, Not to to be braggadocious in the slightest, you know. Um, Later in the stream, you will hear me talk about my many faults, I'm sure. But I was absolutely certain that was right. And 
members of the audience, I'm pleased to report, that is in the official commentator's guide for our lovely little station, PAL TV, this year. So I feel that I have won quite the moral victory. Um, we have a number of teams coming back up past the stake boats, so we're just going to switch to a little presenter segment. We'll be back with you with more commentary in just a moment. So we've got Tyne currently lining up at the start line, and I believe that's Sheffield, but we've got a segment for you now. Hello and welcome back to PAL TV's live coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta, sponsored by Osborne's. Absolutely, and we are here covering all of the races all day today. We have heard about a recent boat capsizing. Um, we just wanted to say that we believe the issue has been resolved and we hope that everyone on board is okay. These things do happen, especially in these really competitive conditions, um, but we really hope that uh, everything is all right now. Yeah, Lucy mentioned those competitive conditions there. For those of you who aren't at Durham University or that familiar with Durham, Durham is a collegiate system and there are plenty of colleges here and there are known to be some strict rivalries. Lucy, which college are you from? So I'm actually from St Mary's College. We are notorious for being the friendly college and unfortunately also for not being very good at rowing. However, I will say two of our crews won races this morning, including my wonderful friend Izzy, so shout out to her. Um, well done guys, I'm so proud of you. Mary's love always. And, and I'm from University College, fondly known as Castle. We actually get to live in the castle, which is pretty incredible. And we've had a bit of a mixed morning we had unfortunately our men's eight crash out but the women's four were doing incredibly well and as we mentioned lucy it's been such a lovely morning mm. the sun is out there's been plenty going on you can see my face paint what are you looking forward to getting involved in lucy oh i'm looking forward to getting all over those food trucks there is so much wonderful food out here it is looking amazing in the sunshine and i'm so excited to get out there and try some and i really hope that some of you come down and try some too yeah it'll be a really exciting the public are growing here and mm. it's it's going to be such a wonderful atmosphere we're going to chat to you a little bit more after some of our adverts Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence. Where each step brings you closer to luxury. And where rooms are more than a place to rest the head. Where elegance is just a step away. And sophistication surrounds you. Where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. Thank you again to our wonderful sponsors for their support. Without it, we wouldn't be able to put on an event of this scale and have as much fun as we are. The, um, we're going to head back over to our racing very shortly. Our, com our brilliant commentators have been filling you in the whole time. And yeah, we're going to head back over to them for some more exciting action over on the river. Absolutely. Over to you guys. Hello, and Johnny and Megan are back. Johnny and Megan are back. Some recent results for you. Uh, Leeds University beat T's RC via disqualification. Oh, no, did not finish, excuse me. Uh, in race number 291, not 291, race number 80, 
I'm reading these numbers wrong. Um, team number 87, Leeds University, beat TZRC team number 290, so congratulations to them. Uh, we have got a race heading down now. I love this overhead shot because it looks to me like a kingfisher heron diving into the water. I don't know that's why. That's so poetic. It's quite raw sharky. I don't know whether that's something I should, you know... Do I really want to own a kingfisher? Maybe. I mean, we have quite a aggress an aggressive line from those on the... Um, on the race course side they seem to be easing up a bit and the line is improving to yeah that. although it is heading inwards a bit especially when you consider that this section bends right um they do have that lead but they need to be careful that if they need to correct their steering too much they've got a lot of space they have got a lot of space to do so but that will take time and their opponents will be grateful of that time because uh our race course side team are two and a half odd lengths ahead there is a it's a comfortable lead for them. It's a comfortable. I wouldn't say it's an easy, but I would say it's a comfortable. Could move to an easy. Could move to an easy. Oh, you never know, do you? You never know. And that is a funky uni suit, to say the least. With the, It's almost like they've got racing stripes on the side. It's quite hornety. Yeah. I was going to say it's giving bee energy. Yeah. But hornet is a better way to describe it. Yeah. And we've got because they're rapid. As they're they fly past... Uh, the ports on either side, the Cuffs Port and the Hill Bead Court, and head towards the race course bridge, which is called Bath's Bridge. I've just remembered that fact. I always used to refer to it as the Hill Bead Bridge. It does border, for those of you who aren't familiar with Durham geography, it borders uh, the most standalone college of Durham University uh, in Hill Bead. Durham colleges are arranged. I'm going to tell you this fact on the assumption that somebody is interested, although that might be an entirely incorrect assumption. Durham colleges are arranged by categorization into Hill and Bailey. The Bailey colleges are the ones sort of on the central mott, quite near Durham Castle, Durham Cathedral, uh, and those consist of Cuffs, Johns, Chads, Hatfield, um, that sort of group. I mean, it's, it's almost a shame as well, because there's a lot of, obviously, boat clubs along the river course, but not every boat house, uh, not every boat club has a boat house. That's true. Uh, infamously, Van Mulder suffered a, a really upsetting incident a while back where their boat house was burned down, um, and they lost a lot of equipment. And they've been uh, through the incredible support of the rowing community. They've been able to get back up and put together a, a nice uh, set of kit and to take a full part in all basically all rowing events since so we're um that's the feel good story of the weekend i feel yeah i mean i believe last year as well i think the t-shirts were being um they were made and the money that w was raised from that went to the van milder boat club fund um i will say mary's has never had a boat club mary's has never well, had never a had a boat house sorry not a boat club but i don't know that Josephine Butler does either. But then again, Josephine Butler is not very near the river. Um, again, on my Durham categorization, Josephine Butler falls into the category of hill colleges, which are the ones not actually on the hill. They're the ones outside of the hill. So a little bit confusing for everyone. And then Hildbead stands proud and alone uh, over in this peel or wood section. Um, and as we pass this peel or wood section, it's neck and neck in the current it's race. It's a tight race, yeah. It's a very tight race. And we'll bring you all of the lovely camera angles to see it with, including this gorgeous drone one. Shout out, James. Always a shout out for James. Yeah. Interesting follow-up to that Battle of Waterloo fact that I was so proud of. Um, according to one of my lovely colleagues here at PAL TV, um, the constitution of the Durham Regatta states that any man who can prove he fought in the Battle of Waterloo is entitled to free beer all day. So if any of you think that that's you... Uh, make yourself aware to the organisers and, you know, enjoy your rewards. So, Free beer on a lovely sunny day like today. I what can't, a treat. Yeah. I mean, we're not drinking. We're on, we're on duty. Um, I'm on water. Ours is a sacred duty. I'm on Red Bull because I woke up at 4am. Oh, um, have you been setting up really early this morning? I was here at 5, but I woke up at 4 just because I was so excited I couldn't sleep. It's the regatta. It's regatta What's weekend. What's anyone doing other than 
being here at the regatta and enjoying the regatta. Yeah, if you're in Durham and you're not down here, why aren't you? Because you're a square. Because <laughs> you're in the, you're a wrongen, you're a lout, uh, you're a, <laughs> you're a layabout, uh, you're a lackadaisical individual. Um, you simply aren't good enough. I mean, there's food, there's ice cream, there's mini rowing shops where you can get some rowing paraphernalia just if you're feeling really, really rowing There's nerdy. cute dogs while there's we were dogs. off the air. A cavalcade of about seven incredibly wonderful dogs went straight past us and both of us went into our, you know, unmiked microphones. Aww. Aww. <laughs> so yeah, you missed that and you're probably glad you did. Another lovely sleek white boat with these little red racing stripes on them. But not the racing stripes aren't helping them win this at the moment. Um, it's those lovely red unitards that are leading the way by about one and a half lengths. Um, a well-dressed cox. They've gone for... I do find it interesting when teams in a race have... You've got one with a cox at the back and one with a cox at the front. Yeah, so if they're in a bow loader, they're in the back and you're literally lying down. It's really uncomfortable. I feel sorry for the coxes. They must ha get so many back issues, especially when if you're not in a bow loader, um, like your back is getting slammed to the yeah by um, your by your front row by your front row <laughs> who is giving it everything in accordance with your instructions. Um, I know. Shout out to all the coxes. I feel like sometimes they don't get the appreciation they deserve. Yeah. It's a it's a tough it's a tough job. You know, you're not just shouting. You are steering the boat, and especially if there's a difficult corner it can sometimes and, and the power that is behind the rowers Ooh, obviously hello. Ooh. one of our scholars oh, has had to take an off-route moment here that is that is poor by the team coming back up because they aren't very tight to they, the they they are not side. tucked in and i i wonder whether the oh. single scholar will call for i think if i was in that dashing yeah blue he's bait. he's stopped already they've yeah they've i wonder whether he's gonna call for that because mm. I, I mean I would I, I certainly I would feel unjustly done by and I did think the red rower slowed down there at the end perhaps in recognition that um, yeah. you know they were in the lead certainly but their blue friend was was, was catching hard. up yeah um, it certainly wasn't a done race yeah. at all again this is we've talked about the fact that you need to be on the water 30 minutes before your stake boat time you then have to you don't get out once you've finished your race you have to waggle your way back up the river and as we've just seen there some teams don't do so massively successfully mm -hmm. um you know the pressure is on you not to interfere with your competitors maybe not your direct competitors but certainly with your competitors races and your fellow rowers um that is a bit of a shame hopefully we won't see too much more of that eight coxed boats here and further up we have it looks like someone's going for a paddle. Something on a paddle? Is that? Are they replacing the stake boats? Or I, have they just replaced the stake boats? I think maybe there were two people with life jackets in there, so I'm not really sure. But mm. it looked like the brown boats are a lovely summer activity in the, in the, in Durham in the summer. Are. I've never been on one. Have you not? No, but I've, I, I do look at them and I think, that would be nice. I think um, they, are, they are lovely. Um, however, I know for a fact that if you are in one and it there's and you're having a rowing training session you are the most hated person on that river <laughs> <laughs> because you get in the way everywhere mm. it's a bit like the 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 tourist in a foreign city who stops in the middle of the road yeah it's do you know what it's exactly like that and it's the most especially in the summer obviously is when you're doing like regatta training and regatta sprint starts and there's been occasions where we've done a sprint start and a brown boat has come out of nowhere and they've not looked like they've not looked where they're going and and uh, often you find even if they're in a helpful mood they somehow manage to put themselves in the least convenient yeah, position yeah they think they're doing something well and they're really not um we, so we are off in this coxed eight man uh, race two lovely white boats again two very similar kits actually i wonder is this a it's collingwood versus yarm and yarm is on the race course side at so and taking a slight lead by the looks yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean Yarm versus Collingwood because Yarm's obviously a school. Mm. We have got um, a number of Durham, not just Durham colleges and Durham <laughs> University, or Durham Amateur Rowing Club. Even we have got a few Durham schools also competing. Um, and last year, I seem to remember they did quite well for themselves. 
Yeah, they do tend... I mean, a lot of the time they've been rowing since they were really, really young. I, mean, I think you have to be either 13, 14 bef- minimum before you row. Um, there is a, it's, there's a, strangely a late, an age limit on rowing. You can't, you can't start beforehand. Um, that shows how dangerous it is, obviously. But, it um, is, yeah. Or, or at least how intense and competitive that it can be. Um, and this is intense and competitive at the moment. They are flying down that course at the moment. And the cheers are flying in from the crowd from both sides of the river and both sides of the race. Um, We've got a lot of, yeah, Collingwood's obviously being shouted. A couple of people getting ready to run past us. It is truly, truly a close race here. Almost perfectly inverse colour unitards as well. And Collingwood are using a Josephine Butler boat, your college. But it looks like from this angle that we can see on the screen, it looks like Yarm are in the lead currently. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get a better shot of it soon. Yeah. Not a bad effort by the Collingwood team at all, by any means. But certainly it looks to me again like that second uh, oarsman. Oarsman's not the right word at all, but um, <laughs> is just ever so slightly out. Although Yarm have seriously impeded into the middle of the of the mm. course there. Yeah. But it was a... Dis- they would argue they were ahead. They were ahead. But, but it was a fantastic race there. Well done very to good all the contestants. Oh, we got another that. pair. Another pair. We had an earlier pair th- this morning where it was St. Andrews versus Berwick and St. Andrews had obviously travelled a long way down to come and race. It's, gr- it's fantastic that we have so many boat clubs from far and wide coming to our little city. Absolutely. So we want to thank you guys for making the trip down. We hope you have a fantastic day. Mm. If any of you came, I doubt it very much, but if any of you came by train on your boat, uh, if you <laughs> came from the boat. south you would have come across one of my favourite views in this entire country, which is when you are coming on a train south to north into Durham, you get an exceptional view of the cathedral and of the castle as you're coming in through the right-hand doors. And it's one of the things that always makes me smile a little when I'm on my way back to this wonderful place. And it looks like the crew on the Pilo Wood side has had a bit of a slower start. Mm. Um, they looked their race start wasn't as, you know, ag- aggressive as the crew on the race yeah. course side. One white boat, one black boat. Ebony and Ebony not together in harmony <laughs> because Ebony is, sorry, Ivory is taking a determined lead into this middle section. You can't see them quite in your image at the moment. You can see the peel or wood boat uh, because unfortunately nobody has weed whacked uh, <laughs> this side of the river. And that slightly annoys me because we have some wonderful camera angles. We've got some wonderful camera operators. And sometimes we just can't show you the, the dang race. Um, but that's nobody's fault, especially. And we do endeavour to cover as much of the action as we can. And we have a lovely drone shot. And frankly, if a plant were able to block our drone shot, I'd just... I'd be impressed Credit by that point, due. yeah. Yeah. Taking a length and a half, I want to say, into this final third of the race. Yeah. The crew on the race course side seems to have a really comfortable lead at the moment. Although it looks like Pilar Wood has actually just done a push for effort yeah. there. Both teams in a, in a comfortable rhythm. Um, neither settling or neither sort of uncertain at this stage. Oh, we've got some people on the bank with their feet in the water. It must be, it must be glorious in the sun. We are be. in the shade over here. I'm yeah, a bit chilly. Oh, I am a little bit cold, actually. I might get my... I bought a new jumper this morning, so I might actually... Is that your rowing one? Yeah, it mm. is. I might actually go and put that on. I feel I like do have a Pal have TV to. jumper, though, so theoretically I should have that on. I left mine at home today. <gasps> I'm, Shocking. It's shameful, I know. That is really shameful. It really is. Here we are. Our team on the race course side still taking a lead just into Bathsbridge and looking like, again, looking like they are impeding into the middle, but with a comfortable enough lead that you would say, well, it's not a clear competitive disadvantage to their uh, competitors. A number of spectators. I do think that Bathsbridge is probably a great place to be situated for these races. Tomorrow, I'd favour Elvet Bridge um, because the long races, obviously, taken even a more kinked course than the short races do. They go under Elvet Bridge, which is a real proper honest-to-God bridge, and it's not unheard of for teams to collide with that bridge. 
Um, it makes it a bit more interesting. Um, the bridge is always alright. The bridge is quite old. The bridge is the bridge has seen worse. The boats can sometimes come off quite the worst for wear. Um, I had I was rowing in an eight at Mary's in my first year, uh, or maybe even my second. But um, we snapped a blade full on in half because we crashed into it. Not during a race, at least, but then maybe during practice is more embarrassing because theoretically we wouldn't be at race pace. Mm. But, but you're not arguably you're not in um you're not in perfect focus. You know, in a race, you would hope that you are entirely invested in what's going on around you. If you're in competition or whatever, maybe you've been to Osborne's the night before. Maybe you've you've had you know a bit one hungover. a little bit hungover. It's a very early start. Um, you know, whatever your preferred hangover cure is hasn't kicked in entirely yet. Um, excellent, excellent costume just going past us at the moment. Got a still um, walker. I mean, oh, we've got two. Oh, there's a pirate. Oh, hello. Wow. Please, can we get a camera on these people? Um, I, bet they might be I think I think we're endeavouring to do so currently. And in the meantime, while we're distracted, this uh, four-person coxless race has set off just in the first third of this race. Um, Cox was or Coxed? I think I may have made a mistake there, actually. Um, I think it's a four, and I don't think it's Coxed. It isn't Coxed. I'm going to say I was right all along, and I never doubted myself. It's about three-quarter uh, length to the pedal side. The yeah. And both teams just looking hyper-competitive. Absolutely determined. You have know. you ever done a race in anything? I know you said you did rugby. Did you Have you done matches? I used to do my... I mean, I wasn't very good at rugby. I'm sure that's not true. It was a lot... I'm certain it is. <laughs> it was a long time ago. And I wasn't really a fan. Um, you know, I prefer the... I'm a football fan, but again, I'm not very good at football. Um, I'm a rowing fan. I'm not very good at rowing. Um, any sport that I'm a fan of, really, I'm, I'm not good at. Maybe there's a correlation in there. Maybe if I think a sport's easy enough that I can do it, it's not really a sport because, you know, only chumps would think that it's competitive if I'm able to do it with ease. I mean, I think there's a common misconception that you need to be good at the things that you enjoy. Mm. And I, that's so not true. I think I was talking about this earlier um, with one of our uh, commentators earlier. I absolutely love tennis and I am god awful at it. Mm. I'm so bad. Um, I went like my friend who lives in Wimbledon. Uh, I went and played tennis with him the other week and I told him that I hadn't played in about eight years and I think he panicked. Like, he was there like, oh my God, we're not going to get a match. We're not going to get a rally. <laughs> 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 she won't even hit the ball. But I'm much better at getting a rally in ping pong than I am at, at you know, a table tennis than I am at court ping tennis. Ping pong can get intense. Ping pong can get intense and I have a sibling who's uh, just about a year younger than me, so... You know I'm not lying. Incredibly tense here at the moment. Really, really tight race between these two teams. Almost nothing to separate them going under Bath Bridge. Um, just about three quarters of a length still. But again, it's that inside line. You have the, the marginally less to go through. And that three quarters length has narrowed. And they're really pushing. But I don't think, unfortunately, the race course side no. team is going to be able to dislodge the Peel or the Wood team from their hard-earned lead, so congratulations to them very much so. Um, and of course, although we can't give you the official result of that, uh, we will keep you updated via the ticker. And you can see there all of our lovely teams. Um, We've got the Yarm School versus Collingwood College, Yarm one by one length. The Open Junior 16 Intermediate eights, Tees Rowing Club versus Durham Arc, and Tees one by two lengths. Uh, so we'll, we are coming with you live with the updates on who's won every single race for the next two days. So please do keep keep engaged with us. Please we want to we want to hear about your day. We want to hear what you're enjoying. We want to we want to know if you want to shout out. Yeah, if you have any uh, siblings or children or cousins or relatives or friends or enemies competing here today enemies if you want us to give a shout out to one of your enemies and wish them badly we probably won't do the wish them badly part but we will give them the shout out wasn't so it uh Dora Mark who were on that sofa earlier saying about racing about against tees yes. and tees have won and tees have won so that oh. just shows you don't don't you know, shout out your enemies don't speak ill of your enemies before you've proven that you can best them on the field of battle exactly you know what a 
I bet Durham Arc feel very silly right now. <laughs> Probably not given the number... Again, the number of races they've won today. They've been doing quite well for themselves. Um, I know, but they, they got on live TV and, and called them out. And called them out, honestly. If you're feeling brave and want to do that yourself, pop on over to Pal TV station. We oh. might just get you on. We might just. Our most recent result, not our most recent race, uh, race number 94, Grey College beating Collingwood by three quarters of a length. Uh, so that was Grey up against the Collingwood team in the Butler boat. So unfortunate, Collingwood. Maybe you, you know, maybe you were too reliant on your nice snazzy sporty boat. Collingwood has a reputation of being the, the sporty college. The sporty college. Um, I can't remember if it was just a, a rumor, but I remember hearing once that they had an M team for rugby. That an was how M many team. rugby teams they had. I, I, do you know what? I've heard something similar as well with their football team. They have so they many They do teams. have a lot of football teams. It's one of the bigger colleges, isn't it? It is also quite a big college. I think 700-odd people. Um, they do do once a year a 24-hour live football charity stream where it's a continuous game with rolling subs, uh, and that's a wonderful thing to watch and be involved in. Um, We've got a lot of cheers on the bank side for these crews. I think this is Collingwood again. They've not got the... Collingwood Blades, that's my only thing. Mm. It could be. But, but they are a, absolutely pacing down. it. Yeah. Not sculling the first non scull race we've seen in a while. Yeah, actually. sweep rowing this time. Yeah. Less oars to think about. Less oars to think about. More effort it than It is can really, plow. really neck and neck, though, here. And the I'm not sure. are inching towards each other to my eternal delight at the hope of a, you know, a safe for everyone but dramatic crash. This is going to be a close one to call. This really is. I'm not... The last efforts as they come into the finish line. I'm not going to proffer an opinion because... No, I don't I'm leaving I it in it. the hands of the capable stewards. I wouldn't feel confident in calling that one at all. Very well done to both teams. I think this is a rerun of our earlier single skull race um, where that boat heading back up to the stake boats interfered because it looks the same boats to me, Megan. It does look similar boats, and, and you, again, they're s they're similar similar d similar kind of distances from each other. Yeah, and again. they are on the the same sides of the river as that earlier race. Although our blue friend this time has actually taken the lead. <gasps> By this stage in the race, last time on the running, uh, our red. red racer on the Pelor Wood side was maybe uh, one and a half lengths ahead, and now it looks as though the blue racer is about three quarters of a length ahead. So. We'll bring you results of that one as soon as we are told them, of course. Again, um, that just shows how it's so up to the day on what's going to happen. Imagine, I mean, I'm sure it, it feels a bit devastating, really, now, knowing that you, want, you theoretically won the first one. won the race. You know, drifted across the finish line, but certainly was ahead. And through no fault of your own, but equally no fault of your competitors, and the race does have to be rerun, you are now in a race where you're a, a length behind. But that's the nature of any competitive sport um, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be half as fun or interesting if we just sort of let emotions reign um, I mean speaking of high emotions last year one of the last finals was incredibly intense and the huge huge crab was caught that actually broke the blade um, and the team was absolutely devastated and they I think really our were. commentators squealed um, it was an we, entertaining thing. I believe we've got Trevs and Collingwood coming up soon. If not, it's coming got up now. I coming believe. up now, we have Collingwood on the Pilo, um, Pilo Wood side, and Trevs with the Blue Blades on the race course side. This is the final for their category, so um, we're going to hear. I mean, we're expecting to hear some screams, which you will undoubtedly hear through the Riverside cameras. I want to hear you all. I want to hear everyone screaming. I want it. I want it. If you're at home, scream. Just scream for, for us. Yeah. Scream for us. Because we can't I would rather not scream into your ears. I'm sure you appreciate that. Trev's with the slight half length lead into this uh, middle section of the race. Trev's really, really powering along there. Lovely teal blades. It, they they are a lovely colour actually. Again, colours are lovely. Yeah. And it's again, about half it's a length a ahead. As opposed I would to a say. skull. Yeah. And it's coxed, and I believe, is it? Co maybe it's not coxed. Actually, apologise. Both boats tilting slightly to the right. Um, As they're coming around that corner. Yeah. Oh, that I'm starting to hear the cheers now. Coming into the middle ever so slightly, and as they approach our commentary booth. 
Yeah, you can hear the screams now on the bank yeah. side. The crowd is getting decidedly the, the animated. The crowd is getting involved. They are enjoying this one. As we said, it's when it's a final and it's close, it's about as good as you're going to get. Oh, it's, they're it's a great race. They're in bow loaders at the front. That must be... They are neck and neck, and you know they are pushing yeah. forward. That cock's just sort of like scratching their head out of nervousness. I can understand that, certainly. Stroke is giving his all. He looks absolutely knackered. That boat is rocking from the exertion that they're putting into it, and the the exertion is working. They've gained a length and a half on Collingwood on the Peel or Wood side. Um, I'm, kind, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of rooting for the underdogs here. Collingwood? No, Trevs. Collingwood win everything. Oh, Trevs absolutely. I was, I, was, I was about to be disgusted with you. As no, no. Co as commentators of PAL TV, we have no opinions. We are a neutral organisation. Of course. But uh, we love you, Trevs. Please beat Collingwood. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing so well. Please. You're doing all of our competitors do well and all of our competitors deserve praise. But they don't make many sports movies about the team that everyone... It would not be a good sports movie... Which would you rather watch, Megan? A story about the 2016 Leicester team that won the Premier League at 5,000 to 1 odds, or a story about the 2019 Man City team that... 2019? 2020. They... No. 2019. No. Leicester I'm trying to think of a non... Leicester have been regulated this series, though. Hmm? Well, Leicester have been regulated this series, haven't they? They have been. I can't believe you just called it a series. <laughs> Football's not my sport at no. all. I'm so sorry. Rowing's your sport, and we're Rowing's here for a day of rowing. Sport. So I'm going to shut up about football teams now. <laughs> no, I do love a bit of wearing, obviously. But yeah, football's not my strong point. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an odd commentary session if you didn't really well, like I mean, rowing. I feel like sometimes rowers can have a real love-hate relationship with the sport. Um, no, that's quite fair. I think we are switching away from our commentary for a moment in order to... Uh, oh, we are in a minute anyway. Um... You do want to keep tuned, though, because I think you will be quite surprised by what you're seeing. Um, it's a fantastic spectacle for you guys to watch. I Absolutely do see my co-commentator lining up to grab a photo. Yeah, um, of course. They look fantastic, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's definitely a skill. I defi It's a definitely a skill that I do not have. I cannot wear heels for the life of me. I don't want to. I'm currently in Birkenstocks, and I wore Birkenstocks to my, um, to my graduation. Other sandals are obviously available. Other sandals are available, unless Birkenstocks sponsor us, in which case there's no other sandals around in the world. Um, yeah, Birkenstocks. If you are watching this, <laughs> oh no, we are we are actually cutting to what you just saw, but we're doing so in a few seconds' time. Um, we will be back with you with some more entertaining racing in just a few moments. Well, welcome back to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta sponsored by Osborne's. Now, in a sport fame for people who are tall, I think we may have found some people who are a little too tall. Hello, guys. How are you doing today? Hello. Oh, we're doing brilliantly. Lovely to be back. Amazing. And um, have you been enjoying it? Have the crowds been interacting with you today? Everybody's always friendly here at the Durham Regatta. What are you guys doing at the Durham Regatta today? How come you're down here? Well, we, ca we came to see the races, and we came to talk to all the short people. <laughs> and what is it that you're dressed as, exactly? Well, well, I, I, I am a, a ballerina. <laughs> and I've come dressed as a dog. Uh -huh. I love those vibes from you both. And finally, just how have people been reacting to you today? What do you love when you get to speak to the crowds? Ah, uh, well, uh, the children have been very excited. The dogs have been very nervous. And, um... Yeah, you found the gentleman very flirty, I believe. Well, I know everyone just thinks I'm tender cool. Uh -huh. As they should. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. That was amazing. Well, you it was next. so good to hear from You're some there? of the entertainers yeah. here at the regatta. I don't, I don't There's so much going on outside of rowing. The There's then. food trucks it, it, here. It, it, the There's some charities I've ever around. Had. And also, <laughs> as we said, some wonderful entertainment. Yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. And on top of all of this, we, we haven't even mentioned the rowing. There's been amazing races. Collingwood versus Trebs there. A quite unexpected hey. result, but definitely entertaining for the crowds to watch. There's been, the race course has become absolutely packed within the last hour or two. People are enjoying the food vans. The weather is so beautiful. And we can't wait to let you get back to a little bit more rowing action. So we're going to pass you back over to our commentators to enjoy it. That would imply that something had gone wrong. How are you doing? 
I'm doing well. I'm. You we know what? We just had in. a we just had a very tense final. Let's let's relieve ourselves of some pressure. Let's let's just let's see what nature watching we can do while we're watching these lovely races. Have you ever been? Are you very aware of you know if there was a bird flitting overhead as you were racing, and as we are now just racing with these two, uh, one bow loaded and one non bow loaded uh, coxed skull skull sweep uh, four person boats. There the we are. I know. I got them all right eventually. <laughs> the race course side looked like it was merging over to the middle of the river, but they seem to get their line sorted now. Um, but going back to what you were saying about, um, do you notice any birds or any nature flying around? I think one of the amazing things about when you're practicing in the summer and like training is that you, if you're not doing any like race starts, obviously. Um, is that you can enjoy the scenery and we've touched on how beautiful Durham is in particular um, I've been rowing in Oxford recently that is so beautiful mm. absolutely stunning although for my money Cambridge is better um, I couldn't possibly I've never been to Cambridge actually mm. I think you've got the you've got that lovely wooden bridge that's held together just by pressure um, you have a couple of the college chapels border the river directly Mm -hmm. And you can go past them, and you also get the the gondola men, and they're excellent. Um, the gondola men. Yeah. Like punting. Like little Venice, you know. And I've never been to big Without Venice. Without the weather. Because it's quite far away. Venice in Italy is beautiful. Um, mm. I can confirm though that there is no correlation between rowing skills and punting skills. I was absolutely god awful. <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. I could not. I had to keep on asking um, my boyfriend to take over, and I was terrified as well that I was going to fall in mm. the whole time. Well, my partner's just been watching this live stream and messaged me and told me that we're going on one of those uh, brown boats that we were talking about, so oh I'll be gosh, able yes, to investigate should. if people with no rowing skills are any good at it either. Um, in this... Yeah, report back. In Next this year. skull two-person race... Two We've got doubles. sleek white boats absolutely flying past us just at the moment, coming up to our commentary box. Um, look, all looking very neat, got the bucket all looking hat. in shape. They have got the bucket hats, and then they're, they're both in them. I do feel it's a sign of a poor team when, as on the race course side, one of you's in a hat and one of you isn't. Just make Should up your got minds. Memo. Just make up your minds. They didn't text each other beforehand to ask what they were wearing. Clearly, they showed up this morning and they were like, "What are you wearing?" What are you wearing? I, well, I thought we were. I thought we were doing this. Do you know Doesn't set your day off right. Although a win here will do them well, and it looks like at the moment that's what they're heading for. Do you know you get? Uh, you can possibly get disqualified if you're in the incorrect crew. Uh, I did crew. hear this um, while I was up in our little studio just behind us. I was occupied in a different task this morning. Uh, somebody pointed out that the umpire at the start position, which we're showing you now, is. Uh, delightfully vocal about how teams in mismatching outfits may be disqualified for being in mismatching outfits if it's an egregious enough fault. And I don't think anyone has been so far. So um, It's really interesting because I believe at Henley you have to wear your first club's um, uni suit. So you, if you can be mismatched. I might be... I'm, I might need to check that. Your first, as in your personally, your first clubs. Yeah. So in a boat, you could have hypothetically four people started in different clubs, now of one union, and they're all wearing different kits. Yeah, I might need to fact check that actually. That but is. I mean, I'll be fascinated if that's true though. Um, one more shout out to have while we were just away with our tall pirate and octopi friends. Um, shout out to Mike Pitt's daughter Eleanor Pitt in the coxing coxing in the Hillbead Men's for Beginner. Uh, looks like starting at 2 o'clock. Very best of luck to you, Eleanor. Um, all of us here at PAL TV hope you do great and hope you give us a very entertaining race so we can get millions of views and subscribers. Yeah, please do subscribe if you're liking what you're hearing. Please subscribe if you're not. It'll make, you know, it'll, if you're liking it, it'll make it all that much easier for you to find the channel tomorrow. What happens if you woke up tomorrow morning, you were like, oh, that channel yesterday was great. I mean, the commentary was so erudite and... Uh, whimsical but oh my god I didn't subscribe and I can't remember its name and because YouTube's a, 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 an, in, an a incredibly poorly constructed website I can't figure out what channel it was by going through my history and if you subscribe 
it'll just pop up in your subscriptions and you can be like, oh, my mind is at ease. My, you know, I'm relaxed. I'm, I'm happy. A large number of dogs are going past me right now, so I am happy. Um, What's your favourite dog? Of those or in general? In general. In general. It's a hard question, I know. I could tell you my least favourite type of dog. Is it a chihuahua? No, it isn't. I think chihuahuas get a bad rep. I think because they're small, people are far too keen to sort of pick them up and play with them and chuck them around a bit. And they can't defend themselves, so they get, you know, a little bit hysterical and a little bit aggressive. But so would you if something seven or eight times as tall as you picked you up and shook you out a little bit and scratched your belly. Um, No, I don't like Bichon Frise. That... Wow, okay. I think they have, much like horses, I think they have soulless eyes. I think they are creations of the devil. And I'm sorry if you're watching at home and you are a Bichon Frise, but I don't like you. I got so excited. I was walking with Pal TV celebrity Sophie. Um, Sophie Garner? Yeah, I was walking with her earlier. We were exploring the other side and we saw a Dalmatian. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was so excited. I love a Dalmatian. I think they're so beautiful. I know they're meant to be a bit crazy, but whoever has the Dalmatian at the regatta, please come back over. I want to see it. Please do come and say hello. As I said, if you're watching this and you are at the regatta, maybe we'll let your dog have a bark into the microphone. Um, <laughs> I'll do it with my one, because I feel like if the said dog then licks the microphone, I should suffer the the the... Uh, incredulity of my own fate for my own hubris. Uh, I wouldn't lob it off onto my wonderful co-commentator. I mean, I, I love dogs. I They're love great. I, I do own a cat. I have a cat. Yeah. I think people who have cats are much more likely to also like dogs than people who like dogs are to also like cats. 100% agree. Again, erudite and women's school commentary as a skull quad Coxless passes us on the Pulor Wood side, looking like they've gained a fair bit of an advantage over their competitors. They're looking relaxed, they're looking comfortable. I mean, as they should be, I guess, if they're winning. Yep. I mean, not that they can take anything off the gas pedal, Well, if they relax but, now, they'd lose. But but the whole point is that they do need to remain calm whilst they're rowing. Mm. I think it's, it's so easy to get really in your head when you're in the race, um, and you feel like anything anything can go wrong at any time and that's a really 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 tough thing to deal with because there's so many things that are so out of your control uh, especially being in a crew yeah. but as we said earlier the team loses and wins together yeah and the best thing you can do is to not focus on what's outside of your control but what is um you know do the best that you can again part of a team work with your team to achieve the best result that you can in the circumstances and on the day um, and speaking of teams half hatless half hatted but at least they are the same hats this is just a reminder as well that all the results are coming alongside the bottom of the screen yes. um, so if if you're anticipating anything or any results make sure to keep an eye on those race results we will keep updating them as they come in um, do have a look at that poll that we've just put up. Are you watching as a friend or family, such as Mike Pitt? Thank you very much, Mike Pitt, once again. You 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 look lovely in your profile picture. You look like a very friendly chap. Or are you watching for another reason? Maybe you're just a racing fanatic. Uh, a rowing fanatic. Rowing is racing, but I thought I should be more specific there than I was. One of the great things about the Regatta, Megan, is that they send them a pace down this river. It's it's oftentimes because of the length of it, you can have two or three even at the maximum races going at once. On the long course tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if we are uh, following three races at once consecutively. And I do apologise, therefore, if that means we're missing a race that you are holding out for. We do try and cover every single one if possible. Um, and tomorrow we will have for the long course cameras covering every element of the course. So rest not we will not you will not miss out on the end of any races um looks like we've got a dark boat coming up on the screen Ooh. my old club i was gonna say that's not a dark boat that boat is entirely white <laughs> but then i realized what you actually meant d-a-r-c d-a-r-c durham amateur rowing club 
they're looking good. Uh, they've got a comfortable lead, definitely. And it is, according to the local uh, regatta-specific commentators, a re-row of an earlier race. And it does look as though Dark's competitors are careening into that bank, or about to. They've managed to claw back that straight line. Yeah. But they cut it close. If there were any boats tucked up on that side, I would have been concerned. Yeah. And they have lost ground and certainly look like being unable to edge it back in the hundred odd meters they've got left of this race. Again, it just emphasizes how important it is that you really, really work on your balance, work on your steering. You do not want to be veering off to the side because you lose time. You lose ground. One of my main experiences of whenever I'm in a boat and I'm sort of paddling, again, not rowing, pro probably mostly kayaking, when you row in, a, in an inefficient way or in a bad way, you start rocking it. And a lot of your momentum, a lot of the effort you're putting in stops going towards the direction you're trying to go in. Are there, as a rower, would you have any sort of specific ways you try and cancel that? Or does it just come with practice, this sort of good technique that doesn't lend itself to that? I think it really just comes down to being relaxed in the boat more than anything. Um, I know that I have definitely like seized up and I, I, and you get stiff and you're more likely to make a mistake if you're stiff. You really need to make sure that you're loose so that you can react to any problems that come across in the boat. The yeah. worst thing is if you, you're panicking and you're stiff and then you can't make those fluid movements that allow you to fly down the course. Yeah, what if there was a snake in your boat? Would, would panicking help? No, it wouldn't. You want to be relaxed. You want I don't to, with one an... smooth movement, grab that snake and plop it into the water. Um, there's no and I'm assuming in this there. case it's a water snake, so it's fine yeah. in the water. Um, but I also wouldn't advocate, if you're ever in a boat and you find that there is a snake in that boat, that you take the time to find a landmass before you get rid of the snake. I think Probably I'd just prioritise yourself. Yeah. I'd be more worried if you were rowing in Australia and you saw a snake in your boat, I yeah. think, than, than in the UK. We do have a couple of indigenous species of snakes in the UK, but none of them are venomous, as you say. That's always good to know. Yeah. Good for my own sanity. And, of course, no indigenous species of snakes in Ireland, because, uh, well, depending on what you believe, either St. Patrick drove them out or they just weren't there in the first place. We've got some huge cheers now coming down this boat club. Collingwood again, I think. Collingwood again. And certainly in the lead as they go past us, just see them through the legs of the passers-by, looking... As you say, relaxed, yeah. calm and confident. They may be relaxed, but their muscles are tensed. Oh, well, actually, I tell you what, it's much closer than it appears because the... They've uh, caught some ground. The race course boat has dis just been below our line of sight. You could only see the tippy tips of their heads and they are only about half a length behind going to this very final stretch. They're very close, these two competitors, as they head under the bunting that signals the end of the short course. Are you excited for the long course tomorrow? I am excited for the long course tomorrow. I I feel like I didn't get to experience it properly last time. Really? Yeah. Because we were more technically limited. If any of you are repeat viewers, uh, you will know that we were more technically limited last year than we are this year. Uh, we weren't able to broadcast the end of the long course races because we didn't have the uh, feed length that we could broadcast it. But this year, we've got more cameras. We've got more ability to broadcast we're we're bigger and better than ever um we're happy we're healthy we're glowing we love durham and we love you i really want to see some crashes tomorrow at elvet bridge i'm not gonna <laughs> lie i would i think it would make excellent broadcasting it do you know what it really would um there's there's something i i know i shouldn't say this but you know when your friend falls over and sometimes it's kind of funny it's 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 almost the same kind of energy um, it's when I go, like when I go ice skating with my friends and I try and up the tempo to a pace that I'm comfortable with but I feel that they won't be because it would be really funny to see them fall over and fall on their ass. Are you good at ice skating? Um, actually not as good as my partner by any stretch of the imagination but um, not bad at it either. Um, you know, I just don't have the experience that he has but uh, we live. We've got some singles, single skulls coming up mm. the river now. 
looks we've got an interesting angle there we go that's better for seeing it it's perhaps the Pilor wood side is maybe half a length up uh, I believe she's a Hexham rower Hexham, another uh, organisation with a very strong showing this weekend so far. Yeah, they're from uh, Both Holland. in terms of uh, entrance and in terms yeah. of successes, actually, you have to say. Yeah. Um, I've been quite impressed. Well done you, Hexham. Again, this is a race that's getting the... You say it's local. It's getting the competitor, the uh, spectators riled up. They're really happy to see the result of this. They're very keen. Um, uh, I mean, Hexham yeah, still... Wow. Still a decent amount away from us. I know it's yeah. in the it's in Northumberland, beautiful, beautiful part of the country. God's own country. Is no, that's the different county that calls himself God's own county. I'm but from Northumberland. Well, yeah. I, well, I used to be. Um, and Northumberland is beautiful. And Hexham, yeah. the Hexham Regatta was last weekend, I believe. That's or the good. weekend before. I mean, it's a busy time of year for them, I suppose. Well, you would assume they can beat in their own regatta. Yes, they would be in there. Yeah. How good of a view of the start do you reckon you get from that twisty whirly gig machine? I I don't know, but I would not I could not be persuaded to get on that machine in any way, shape or I don't think I could be paid to be on that machine. I um, don't think we'd be able to set up our commentary rig on it to be we honest. We should get someone We should get a roaming presenter and a should, camera. We to should sit get a roaming presenter on there. Film themselves. That would be the best thing. I think we are told we have uh, a race that's going to get the spirits, uh, going to get the blood pumping coming up. Collingwood v Collingwood, and it's the Open Elites Four final. So it's an entirely Collingwood affair. They're going to have a, you know, there's going to be celebrations. That's be tense. Maybe the celebration is going to be really tense because, you know. It's one set of the people who've won, and it's one set of the people it's who haven't. It's friends against friends, really. Well, maybe it's... Well, all right. enemies versus enemies. Yeah. It might well not be a friends case. It might have been building up to this all year. That would be a good sports move. Yeah. Well, do you know what? It's almost similar. We were talking about F1 before. It's like F1, where your teammate is also your worst enemy. Mm. It's the same here. It's, they're the first person you have to beat. Yeah. The first competitor. No one wants to leave to their own team. Mm. But uh, we can assure, we, I mean, they've all worked incredibly hard and it's fantastic that they've gotten to the final. So they should all be proud of themselves automatically. I know it's always really hard. It feels like the f you're the first loser if you lose in the final, but yeah. it's such an achievement. Yeah, four of them will be prouder than the other four. Yeah, it's just, but it's... But four of them will have that extra motivation to just work that little bit more. And as we set off, it is the Peel or Woodside that have... The merest of margins ahead. Absolutely tiny margin. It, it's pretty much neck and neck. Yeah, actually. at this point, there's nothing between them. Um, wow. On the race course side, they're diving that boat into the water. They're flying. They are them. really putting a lot of energy into it early in the race, presumably hoping to get an early lead that they can then build upon and demoralize their competitors. But at the moment, it is the Peel or Wood side that have... Look, they pulled ahead there. They definitely pulled ahead. I wonder if that was less efficient than the uh, race course Collingwood team were hoping, because they are now about half a length mm -hmm. behind. Um, that is intense. It's interesting. They've got uh, different blade configurations. So if you notice, bow and stroke have both got the same side blade, whereas two and three, yeah, in the same side. Whereas it's one, in the two, uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, two, one. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, you can put them on either side. Just depends on the preference. And also, one of the other things you'll notice about the boats and the close shots is that some people have a uh, very, uh, very developed sort of oar anchors on either side, and other um, other boats will just have a sort of more simple configuration. Um, and each will have their own merits and uh, means. Coming up to Bath's Bridge now, and it is that Peter Wood Collingwood team that has just about a length now in advantage. There's not um, as much cheering as I thought there would be. Definitely not as much cheering. Yeah, I suppose for the Collingwood people, it's a bit tense. It's you know a done deal either way. They've won. They're, yeah. Mm. 
they, I mean, that, that is a good result for you, really, knowing that both your boats are in the final. Well, especially if it's an event which lots of college teams have in, it's going to be a significant point of college pride in the first place to have locked out the final. Um, so well done to them. It looked like the Pulaw Wood team had the lead just going into that final stretch. And of course, please watch the ticker for all of the lovely results. It'll be interesting to see which one won in the sense of, was it the first boat? Was it the second boat? Mm. Because yeah. A's I, or B's or M's. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're the first team, you don't want to lose to the second boat. Bit of rivalry there. Especially as well, I, I believe this is... I, we've got Henley Women's Regatta coming up as well as Henley Royal um, in the rowing calendar season in the next month. But I believe this is the last the last kind of regional local race at the moment from the sounds of it anyway I was speaking to someone I knew earlier and he told me that this would be the last time that he would be rowing for Durham yeah it is a lot of these competitors it's the final race in their season at the minimum um, for some as you say it will be the final race they ever race for their teams um, and that's sad that's to quite extent. emotional as it well is. I can imagine it's a, a difficult thing to to leave behind especially if it takes up as much of your time and energy and enjoyment as rowing can do i mean as well it's, it's a known fact that a lot of people who come to durham kind of stay for a long time so in particular the person i was speaking to earlier he's in his phd he's done it he did his undergrad here i don't know if he did his masters here but he did his undergrad here mm. and then come back for a masters so he's been here he's been kicking about for a long time so it must be must be emotional knowing that this is his last ever race here yeah and what i mean again what a venue it is it's so beautiful and it's such a sunny day out here yeah um if you're watching to the bank on the bank side and listening to the coverage please let us know and we'll give you a shout out yep hope you're enjoying the weather again we're sitting in our little shaded tent which you may have uh I'm wandered really cold. past i'm actually i don't know, i never thought i would it's be time cold. to get that rowing jumper yeah I, I think I will do. Yeah. I need that. <laughs> the problem is you don't trust me to be on solo commentary for no. as long as it takes you to get it. Empires will burn. Um, Coxless 8 here. Sculling. Oars on both sides. Um, it's sweep, I believe. Is it? Oh, so it is. It's sweep. And they've got a cox at the front. And they... I've got every <laughs> detail wrong. That's amazing. Well, you say they've got a cox at the front. One of them doesn't, so have they that. They both do. They both do. No, a cox is at the back on the Peel or Wood boat, I'm sure. I don't think it is. Oh. It's not a bow loader. I would be really bad if I'd made those mistakes, and then I defended one of those mistakes, and it was still a mistake. <laughs> um, that would be dreadful. So I'm hoping that isn't the case. Uh, not because I can't bear to look like too much of a fool. I generally do all the time anyway. Um but it is the race course side in any event that have about uh, length, half of a length advantage going past Collingwood. the hill bead dogs. And you tell you what, Collingwood have just had... I feel like they're in every race. They're in everything. And you can tell it from the fact that... I mean, I can see people jogging along the side and I think you caught them just for a second in your camera uh, at home, willing them on and willing them to another victory. Um... Would that what? be back to back? We haven't had a race since the Collingwood Collingwood final in between this, have we? No, I don't think so. Yeah. So back again. Back again. Just showing you again how quite a, Collingwood is quite a dominating force on the river in on the weir in yeah. Durham. On the river weir. On the river weir. There is a weir on the river weir. A weir. A weir. Do you know what a weir is? No, I feel like we're. That almost sounded like what's that vessel with the pestle? The, the, the vessel, pe the pestle vessel. That almost felt there is a weird. <laughs> <on> the <way. laughs> My Irish wristwatch. <laughs> Do you know they've really cleared up the river? Um, they have um, massive. I mean, like, this is why the course is the way that it is. A weir, for those of you who don't know, um, is a sort of uh, artificial thing in a river which uh, allows it to fall in staggered and managed amounts, sort of like a series of mini waterfalls. And in Durham, it falls between Framwell Gate and Prebends Bridge. And until about six months ago, uh, as a result of a sort of number of high rises over a couple of winters and just the general activities of a river, it was quite clogged with uh, these massive pieces of dead wood, an entire tree basically also, which was an impressive sight. 
um, and they cleared it quite recently and so it's now um, sort of flowing quite freely and looking very pretty I've got to say um, I was really surprised when I arrived last night and I saw how clear it was yeah they've done a great job it gets you I don't know who's done it but they have done a yeah, great well job yeah well done guys who well done, done well done to you I don't know if you're watching well done to you <laughs> um, we've got more pairs coming along that we do the Pilar Woodside has a sizable lead yeah. currently. It's red v blue again, although not in the boats this time. <laughs> Both in a nice primary white. I um, feel like that's almost certainly the main colour for the boats today. Um, I want to see more fashion, guys. I if want you've to see more fashion. Yeah, I want to see more rowing blazers. I'm actually really disappointed on the turnout of rowing blazers this year. There were so many people decked out in blazers last year. Maybe the weather's too good this year. Because nah. last year it was windy and, and, you know, a little bit horrible on occasion. It's really interesting going to Henley and literally every man and his dog mm. has, has a rowing blazer. Well, it is Henry Royal Regatta. I think that's probably probably part of the influence. Here, here in the northeast, we know how to let our hair down a little bit. I've heard people call Durham Regatta the Henley of the North. I have heard people call it the Henley of the North. Um, I mean, it's a great regatta. It's lovely. We are watching a number of boats just be let past the stake boats at the moment, so there won't be any racing action just for the moment. Um, but you can still enjoy our sultry tones provided to you by PAL TV's exclusive coverage of the Durham Regatta and sponsored by Osborne's. Thank you, Osborne's. We love you, Osborne's. Yeah, we do. We do. Are you going to be in Osborne's tonight partying it up or are you going to be sleeping? What shift are you doing tomorrow? I'm turning up at 6am tomorrow which many of you viewers may be going, oh, my God, couldn't do that. Don't worry, I did 5 a.m. this morning. So um, it's a lion. It's it's pra it's basically a lion, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm advantaged by my circumstances, and there are plenty of people who are here earlier than that, not least uh, no members of PAL TV and many members of the security and marshals who run the regatta. So, again, a huge shout-out to them and a massive thank you to them for doing the absolutely invaluable work that they do, without which... This could not possibly happen. Um, and the amazing thing is we're seeing so many happy faces walking past us all the time. Like yeah. it, This is genuinely a fantastic event. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Thank you to everyone who's helped run PAL TV. Thank you to everyone who's helped run the regatta. Everyone is having an absolutely lovely time. I think I've just seen a couple of the shirts you mentioned earlier for this year's regatta. And I think you are right in that they've got every competitor on the back of them. Because it looked quite crammed with text and names. So yeah. anyone who's enjoying it and anyone who's in the Durham region and, you know, fancies popping along, pop down and get one. It will be a nice, you know, in 20 years' time it will sell for £1,000 on eBay. <laughs> and you'll be... <laughs> That's a not only will you have had bigger. 20... I personally guarantee you that... And if that's not the case, you can sue me for 100,000. There's um, a really nice dog coming along, really little. Oh, bless his little heart. He's enjoying himself. He, he's having a great time. Good for him. Um, Never an unhappy dog in Durham. Another uh, duo skull coming past. And another case where it's, it's quite Bright an blades. easy lead. Um, I feel like we've had some hyper-competitive races and some less competitive races. There hasn't really been this sort of middle ground where one team's sort of in it, but sort of not. I think what, like, when you're on that start line, you want to throw everything into it. And sometimes people will look more relaxed than others, naturally. I, the adrenaline does run a lot when you're in these high pressured situations, but all the competitors have been absolutely fantastic. Um, it is a, it's it's a brilliant sport. It's a very polite sport. You, mm. You're not allowed to swear at each other. It's you get disqualified if you swear at each other on the river. Quite right too. Yeah. So it's a proper, proper. Polite Could you sport. claim that you were swearing at yourself? Could you unleash a string of, you know, unbroadcastable expletives? And then say, oh, I was just very disappointed in myself. That was at myself. You can't disqualify me. Or would it still be grounds for disqualification? I think it's still, because I feel like it's still classed as unsportsmanlike well, behaviour. It doesn't so. necessarily need to be directed at another competitor to be unsportsmanlike. You know, when you see tennis stars smashing their rackets, they're doing it out of personal frustration, but it is still unsportsmanlike. Yeah, I mean, Nick Kyrgios is a Nick, pri mm. prime example of uh, smashing tennis rackets. Thankfully, um, unlike Nick Kyrgios, None of the races today have 
uh, taken personal offence with us and tried to come up and argue with us. Uh, so thank you for not being like that. Can you imagine roses. someone smashing their blade? I can't. It would, it would be very dramatic. And a tennis so racket is quite small well. in your hand. A, a, it would be, it would be an overhead motion. I feel like they could do that, almost like knee jerk thing to break it in half. But again, why would you want to do that? It's, it's so. I mean, rowing is a is an, an expensive sport anyway, and yeah. all the equipment in particular is very expensive. So, in your frustration, please don't break your rights. But also, please don't take it out on us. No. You know, we're only saying spicy things to to keep you at home. Uh, all 160 of you. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, That's it's a an pleasure to have amount. you. Uh, we have uh, two more shout-outs. Steve says, thank you to trainer Owen at Hexham. Thank you very much, Owen. Um, you've produced some excellent races today, and we've enjoyed the pleasure of some excellent races thanks to them. So thank you indeed. Um, and uh, Ellie, Ellie Oswelsey, Oswelsey, excuse me, Smith says, good luck Billy and Ollie in the Elite Op 2X. Up the Polly. Um, I don't know where Polly is. I, I would assume know. she's in her cage, sitting like a pretty bird. Um, <laughs> but possibly she is also a, a city or a, a polytechnic, maybe? Maybe. Polly. It doesn't... It's it's not somewhere that jumps to mind as immediately. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's this place, of course. Ellie, um, if you're listening, please let us know what what you mean by up the Polly. Which university or Yeah, which, please do let us know club? who Billy and Ollie are competing with. And we will... We will, we will wish them a doubly good luck. Yeah. And then they'll be doubly as lucky. You know, it's like finding a six-leaf clover. No, actually, it's like finding an eight-leaf clover, because that's doubly as lucky as a... Mm, well, is it double or is it, um, you know, is it four, five, six, seven, eight? So would it actually be 16 times as lucky, or would it be twice as lucky? That's some maths I uh, can't compute. That's some fun maths for you. <laughs> In the meantime, a woman's quad is flying past us here in the I believe booth. that's University College Boat Club. Uh, but we're now... And now no. following a duo. Again, it's it's that stage of the day where, um, because of delays or because of a couple of uh, rescue boat incidents, we have, we're have we chucking them down the river many at a time, and we're hoping that nothing uh, comes of it. Uh well, we're hoping that entertaining races come of it, of course. We're not hoping that nothing comes of it. Uh, and so far, I've got to say, uh, we are getting entertaining races out of it. We're having a lovely day. Do you know, I'm still holding out on some another rainbow boat. I, I would love to see another rainbow boat. I am disappointed. It's 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 not a you know I'm not criticising it nearly as much as the fashion, purely because uh, of how expensive they are, and as you've said, how expensive the sport can be. Mm. But the number of white boats, you would think that people would be keen for a little more individuality. I mean, that one I've got to say, there's a gold stripe and there's a blue stripe. That's a dark boat. That's a dark boat. It's lovely. It's that little attention to detail that makes me just want to root for you that teeny bit more also thank thank you to ellie who has updated us northumbria university which is a polytechnic actually oh, marvelous northumbria university well so we've been talking about how northumbria is a lovely place and uh, a wonderful scenic place so yeah congratulations so everyone from northumbria university uh i don't need to welcome you because you live in northumbria and this is in northumbria but we hope you're enjoying yourself we hope you're having a lovely time and we hope you're having a very good race weekend. So, yeah, double best of luck to Billy and Ollie. Yes, Up double best of luck, or 16 times of luck. Or 16 times. <laughs> it would be quite entertaining to see a boat, by the power of luck, fly down here at 16 times the pace of the other boat. Um, Set a course record. Course record of about 15 seconds. You I know. wonder what the course record is. I wonder if they keep course records. I, you'd think they would. They do for obviously athletics, but mm. what running, running down the river weir, <laughs> <laughs> like walking on water, running down the yeah. water. I think there would maybe just be one guy who held that record, but I also don't think he was historically attributable to the north of England. Um, you never know; he might have travelled. <laughs> I'm told he's a very travelled man. You know, 
Uh, We've got lots of people lining the banks now. Yeah. It's really nice, actually. It's, it's that stage of the afternoon where you can sit down with whatever food you've brought or you've bought. Lots of people with ice cream. Lots of people with Very ice cream. Very jealous. I can see an ice cream van in my field of view, and I can see a steady, a steady queue for it, and I can see myself sitting at this desk in the shade without an ice cream. What's your go-to ice cream? Gotta be cookie dough. I mean, gotta be cookie dough. Ben but in terms specifically of or specifically Ben and Jerry's, other ice creams are available. Other ice creams are available. Um, it's like I also BBC. like non descript caramel and chocolate ice cream bars based off of popular sweet bars. I'm okay. being very non descript there as well. Um, but you can get off brand alternatives, and specifically one from a shop that rhymes with Waldy, I really, really <laughs> like. Um, but in terms of what you can get from a, a whippy van, I think there is no alternative in terms of quality than the 99 Flake. Um, you've got to say you just love them. We're going to go away for a second. Back with you shortly. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. Where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. And we're back. I hope you can hear us at home. I do believe you can. Um, if you can't, you can't tell us because you can't hear me asking you to tell us if you can't hear us. Um, in solidarity with the athletes, myself and Megan uh, are loading up on carbs. We're enjoying a nice piece of sourdough bread, um, which I don't think you can buy lamentably at the regatta. I bought but, it at Tesco. But you can enjoy it through the pleasures of the microphone. Um, that is not to say that I'm going to chew into this microphone yeah. because that would be horrible. I would apologize <laughs> to you all immediately were that the case. That's the worst thing, isn't it? Like a loud chewer. I don't understand. Sometimes it's in ASMR, and I don't understand how that's appealing to anyone. Do you know what I don't um, like with ASMR? When people do um, like slime, and you hear like all the bubbles cracking. Ooh. Sometimes it's nice, and sometimes it's just not. I know what you mean. Do you know what's really satisfying? What? The strokes of this single skull at the moment just clean and neat and precise there's no wasted energy in that at all and steaming to a deserved lead in this race at the moment she had a cheeky look behind her to see how far she had left to go that's the thing if you're it's obviously different when you this is your home course you can understand where you are based on like where you're looking to the side or what you've got in front of you but if you're completely new to this course you have no idea how long it is if, like I remember that I could always measure that I was halfway through the course when I hit like Hillby Boathouse. Well, here we are. We see, we've just seen a couple of people making their way back up past the stake boats and sort of wa wavering side by side. Um, side by side? Side from side. Side from side to side. I'm good at expressions. I'm good at commentary. Um, and sort of having to look over their shoulder quite a bit to figure out where they were. Um, if that was a local team and you do know this river, I apologise for suggesting that you don't, but 
it that's how it appeared to me and you know i've got i've got to make make do with what i what i've got um and what i've got at the moment is a bunch of boats just popping past the uh steak boats some that's lovely weather busy. and a lovely co-commentator thank you i've got a lovely co-commentator too thank you we're enjoying ourselves aren't we <laughs> and we hope you all are too at home or at durham or wherever you are um, yeah let us know where you're listening from it'd be really great to know like how far the pal tv net is this year yeah I, did we have people who were from foreign countries last year we did we yeah. had somebody from saudi arabia and a couple of people from australia what i'm curious to know is it's it's 2 p.m um if anybody's having lunch right now what are you having for your lunch what's your go-to what do you like and don't like especially about a lunch maybe we're having a picnic or something if you're eating at the regatta, what do you recommend? Yes. That's Which of the myriad food options is the best? Do you know, I keep seeing people with, like, slush puppies. I could, you know, you I could, could go for one of them. You could devour one of them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think... I feel I like slush puppies are underrated. If I could find... Last year, there was a Greek and Cypriot food store. Mm-hmm. And Ooh, I... quite a lot of cheers there. adore halloumi-style fries. If that um, was here, I'd devour that. Do you know, I, um, I, I've i made friends with someone who works at Pret, at my local Pret, <laughs> and they keep giving me free food, uh, <laughs> which is obviously really lovely. But um, I don't, I can't have dairy. Oh. She gave me um, a free hot halloumi and falafel wrap. And I felt so bad. I didn't want to. I didn't have the heart to tell us. So I just <laughs> took it. <laughs> I was like, oh, "I'm getting free food here. I don't want to complain." Well, um, you also don't want to compromise the future free food relationship. Yeah, 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 exactly. You don't want to seem ungrateful because then they'll say, "Oh, you." That's the thing. I was incredibly grateful. I just, it's just a shame I can't have a loony. But um, yeah. So. Well, they are listening to this, and now they they do hate <laughs> you. So that's that's one bridge burned. I'd be really impressed if they were listening from Oxford. But then again, that just shows how amazing Power TV is. So we've yeah, got we people say. listening. We are far flung. And if you've been impressed so far, please do um, subscribe and like and let us know what you're doing. Um, and let, yeah, you know, anything you find interesting. Um, thank you incidentally to the commenter who has corrected me. It is not a duo, it is a double. Um, I'm just, you know, we're learning as we go. Also, one of the wonderful things about PAL TV, we all learn as we go. Um, you can imagine, not many students who go to a university envision themselves setting up a live stream event that last year, I think we got 11,000 uh, consecutive views. So, nice. but and, and yet, here we find ourselves, and I'm surrounded by wonderful and uh, kind-hearted and intelligent people from all sort of walks of university life and life in general. Um, and here we all are enjoying this lovely sunny day and this regatta. Is it my imagination or has the wind picked up slightly, Megan? I just think, judging on the reflections on the water, it looks to be a little bit choppier than it was two hours ago, say. Yeah, definitely. The rule for us when I was rowing, especially when I was a junior, was if you see white horses, then you can't go out. Oh, yeah. Um, Steve is reporting that he is, unfortunately, what uh, listening to this live show... At Morrison's in Bladen. Uh, he'd ro- much rather be in Durham. Um, but thank you for listening along. Yeah, I'm sorry that this Morrison's is so so letting you down. And it is an appropriate moment to say there are other retailers, you know. <laughs> if this Morrison's is so disappointing. I feel like we're at the BBC, we have to... We, well, it's good practice, isn't it's it? It's good practice. We don't want people to forget that there are other other shops and other avenues and other but there are no other live streams because we are the official live stream ladies and gentlemen so if you want your regatta coverage and you're not at the regatta this is where you come um and i therefore do hope that we aren't letting you down with our knowledge or anything um and i hope you're able to experience a little bit of what a lovely time it is to be on the river weir today it's such a beautiful day. It genuinely is. Even if there is a bit of a wind picking up, it is so beautiful. Yeah. There's, it's meant to be a heat wave, isn't it, this weekend, I think. I know definitely in the south it's like up to 30 degrees. It's very much not 30 degrees. And, do you know, I forgot how cold the north is, mm. um, despite the fact that I've lived in the north all of my life until 
literally August last year. And I came, I came back last night in a, in a dress and I had to change instantly into jeans and a jumper because it was so cold. I mean, I'm wearing shorts, so I'm not doing too badly. But um, I was in Nottingham yesterday and the weather there was... In terms of the look of it, it was very similar. It was it was a similar level of sunny, a similar level of cloudy. But in terms of temperature, it was a good 10 degrees better than what it is here at the moment. Um, you know, not to say that it isn't good at all. I mean, you know, it's lovely. I can see a Bichon freeze. <laughs> I'm not retracting my earlier He's comments. He's being carried as He's well. being carried, and he has little beady black eyes, and he... He cares not for does the fate it, of the innocent. Does it annoy you more that he's being carried? I, I don't think it annoys me less, but I don't think it annoys me more. You know, my hatred is, is exists is regardless. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We are letting, again, a number of boats just pass the stake boat as a result of all that lovely action we had to show you just a few moments ago. Um... They all have to go back now. I know. I wonder if some of them will be f- fearing, feeling good because they won their race. Yeah. Uh, they'll be preparing. Sometimes you really don't have that much time in between your races. Yeah. I've had some people stay out the whole time. Theoretically, you could, you could end just up just queuing back again to yeah. the stake boats and going in a, a second thing, depending on how the schedule looked. And you might um, have like loads of snacks with you as well. Yeah. But We'll be back with you in just a moment. We are going to switch away for some lovely presenting. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Pal TV's live coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta brought to you by Osborne's. We've received word from the organisers that they have decided to scrap the start boats and you go with a free start for the rowers. I'm joined today by Will Terrell, one of our rowing experts and commentators. Start, sorry Will, let's start. Tell to me about what these start boats are. So people may have noticed from our coverage that the camera at the start line, where we've got our two anchored skiff boats with some junior volunteers hanging off the end, holding onto the crews to make sure that when they set off from the start, both that the crew's racing a dead level, but also they're pointing in the right direction. What these state boats do is sort of guarantee that they're a bit separate off the start and they won't be an immediate crash off the start line. And why could you think that the organisers would want to make this decision to move to a free start? I have to say it's quite a surprising call. I wasn't expecting it. But what we've seen throughout some of the races so far today is there's been a bit of difficulty with crews getting attached, but also from the start line with some power imbalances in the boat, some crews have headed towards each other, which have actually resulted in a few disqualifications. So it's, it's an interesting call for them, I must say. And how do you think it's going to affect you know, the future races that we have coming up this afternoon? And how will the rowers react to this decision? Well, so there's going to be a bit more uncertainty in the entire start procedure as a whole in both terms of where the crews are going to line up, but also how far apart they're going to be. So we may start seeing some crews get started maybe five metres before or after the start line, because once the umpires see that the crews are level, they'll just set them off, because now it's down to the crews to make sure that they're level. And if I was in a boat, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to try and steal a few inches if I can over the other crew and I'll just try and make sure the boat's a bit further ahead before they start us. But also it gives the crews a bit more opportunity to choose how far in their lane they are because they don't have that stake boat bit holding on to them. So for on this race course side of the river where it's a lot shallower compared to the other side and the stream isn't as far flowing, it's a bit of a dead water patch. So in that start area we've seen a lot more crews on the Pelorwood side come out of the starting blocks a bit quicker. So if I was starting on this race course side, I would maybe want to use this opportunity to move my boat a bit further towards the Peel or Wood side and maybe start to like intrude a little bit on the water of the Peel or Wood crew. Of course, we've got these yellow boys throughout the race course mm-hmm. to separate the crews once they come down here. But at the start line, it's going to be a bit more interesting. So as a rower yourself, if you were competing in the regatta this weekend and not spending all this time with PAL TV, what would you make of this call and this decision? I honestly, I'd be a bit surprised. Usually it's the case with the events here. I've raced at events on this river where there's been both standing starts and free starts, but never the same in one event. So. For the crews that have had all this practice, yesterday the stake boats were out all afternoon for crews to practice before the regatta. And it just seems that maybe it hasn't worked and the organisers think it would be more suitable to go for a freestanding start. Like we actually at the Hexham regatta last weekend that a lot of these crews raced at was a freestanding start. So they're, they're not complete novices to this procedure that the organisers have put on them either. 
Okay, so a slightly controversial decision, decision, but shouldn't be too groundbreaking. Let us know in the comments what you make of it. Are you a rower? Are you a spectator? And what do you think? We'd love to hear from you. You can follow us on Pal TV on Twitter and Instagram, and definitely let us know what you think. Um, well, going back to the wider competition, obviously you get to spend this weekend here with us commentating and helping us out. What have you made of the event so far? Oh, it's been brilliant. I think this is pretty much as good as rowing conditions can get it's not too warm there's very little wind and especially there's there's a little bit of tailwind actually so it's actually it's helping the crews down the course and we've seen some brilliant action so far today and I, i'm so excited about what's to come because we've had all of the quarterfinals and the semi-finals so far throughout our coverage and it's all the finals in today's racing to come later on in the a afternoon absolutely it's been so brilliant to see so many young competitors and college competitors and i cannot wait to see some more out on the river this afternoon so let's pass you back to our commentators Welcome back. Quite dramatic news there about the the rest of the races that we'll have today, Megan. I know. Thank you so much for that update from our presenters there. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. One of the disadvantages of our, our commenting duty is that we have got these uh, headphones completely isolating us from most of the regatta-specific uh, announcements, so we do miss those sort of things slightly. A um, couple more shout-outs in the comments. Uh, Angela Dresler says, shout out to Harriet Welch, Durham Uni and her crew rowing this afternoon. Shout out to you, Harriet Welch. Hope you are looking forward to the steak boatless experience. Hope it isn't stressing you out too much. Lily Sanderson said she's watching from her uni house in Manchester, missing her club dark. So another ex-darker. Um, and Angela Dresler also says that she's watching from Norfolk today. So I hope we are transmitting this experience to you and you're enjoying yourself. Um... This stake out change is taking a little time in order to prepare people. I think because this is going to be the first one, it's probably going to be a it's going to be an interesting start because yeah, um, the it's just going to be as soon as those if, into, if there's a cox as soon as the cox has put their hands down, the umpires will be like, you know, let a bang be a bang. It's similar off. almost to so in head season a lot of the time it's a rolling start, um, so there is no stake boat. Um, you basically you take your first couple of strokes and then you hit the start line and then from there it times you. Mm. And it's almost kind of similar in its approach in a way, I guess, um, in the sense that there is no kind of official, yeah. official, official holding them down to make sure that they go at the same time. I mean, if you've been... If you're in that queue for your race and in the middle of that you've heard the announcement that suddenly there isn't a stake boat, that's going to throw you off slightly, I imagine. Or even if you haven't heard it and then you're like, well, where are the stake boats? And somebody says, no stake boats, you know, off you, off you pop. Off you, off you go. Enjoy yourself. That's going to affect some of our competitors' nerves this afternoon, I think. Yeah, because I remember when I was preparing for Durham Regatta, we actually had stake boat training literally the night before. Mm. So you would be college boats a lot of the time will be prepared for a stake boat stop because they will have literally had a practice session 24 48 hours beforehand just to make sure that they know what they're doing and then the sudden decision when you're when you're perhaps waiting for your race is it will it will change your headspace it's, it throws you off slightly because it's just a decision that you've first thought was going one way now goes another to put it in simplistic terms so potentially a disadvantage for local teams for whom you know they're used to the stake boat at the regatta potentially an advantage for teams that attend other regattas and maybe they don't have stake boats and maybe they're not used to it um but we'll see you know we'll have to wait for a competitive race start to really see if we can see an immediate impact um you know I obviously the organizers wouldn't have made this decision uh, except in the interest of safety so I don't think, I certainly wouldn't attribute any collision or anything to this decision by the organisers and marshals because they are the experts, quite frankly, and I'm just uh, a disembodied voice floating into your earlobes via the miracle of modern technology. It is a miracle of modern technology. And you know what is miraculous this year is the amazing drone footage that we've been having from our brilliant James. Our brilliant James. Our, our brilliant wonderful James. James. He is We really fantastic. can't sing his praises enough. There's some of that lovely drone footage now. It really has made a difference. As if you watched last year, we didn't have this drone footage. Uh, it's really good that we're able to now show you the full race when we've got them on. And also just the full beauty of the Durham countryside. I mean... 
I can't emphasize enough how wonderful this place is. Um, Have you explored anywhere in particular in the Durham countryside that you I you'd quite liked? like, actually. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now, you can see there's quite a, st a steep terraced bit. And uh, the residential area near that steep terraced bit is called Gilesgate. Uh, and I used to live in Gilesgate in Durham uh, in the last year I was at the university. Um, and you can get quite, there's quite an easy walk from Gilesgate through to that nice wooded bit on the Pelor Wood side, and you get uh, a wonderful, wonderful view over the curve of the river and over Durham in general, um, towards sort of Durham Prison and the uh, sort of area of Durham that implies. And it's really, really pretty, really easily accessible. Um, nice benches, nice, nice foliage. Have you got any particular preferred Durham walks? Um. I quite like the alpaca farm that you can go to. Um, I can't remember quite. It's. I mean, you kind of like branch off near where the old the gardens old Durham are. Gardens, yeah, yeah, the old Durham gardens, and you can go and find the absolutely lovely alpacas. I mean, I'm one of those people that thinks it's a red flag if you're dating someone and they don't smile when they see an animal. You know, like when you like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you like walk past a dog and you find yourself smiling. Yeah. I feel like it's a really bad tendency if someone doesn't do that. So if you were dating me and I, we walked past a Bichon <laughs> Freeze, and I sort of like my face immediately turned to this dour cloud of darkness, you you wouldn't it's think a red flag. this man has a righteous hatred of this this weird animal. Um, you would think, oh, weird. And we're away. Here we are. We've got the first stake boatless launch today. I did initially think when they were lining up a few minutes ago, the boat on the race course side had sort of uh, swerved a little bit inwards, but it looks like they've both got a quite straight line now, just coming into this first 200 metres of the race, this first sort of third competitively. It's very much neck and neck at the moment, but it looks like Pilo Woodside has a slight... It's They're pulling away at the moment, you know, they've got like a quarter, maybe half a length on the opponents at yeah, the moment. Yeah, and they are looking like they're building on that advantage. Yes, It's definitely. not holding fast, it's increasing. Um, as they come past the hilled bead uh, launching off point, looks like it's increased to about three quarters of a length now. And it looks like they've definitely got a better straighter line than their opponents. Their opponents look like they're more... Yeah edging towards the side but but there's space there there is space on there's the space there's time for them to gather it up but not at the rate they're going at the moment unfortunately um i mean it's all to play for still you never know it is they, all to they, play they for. can do a final push someone can get a crab it genuinely just depends on the day this is about the stage of the race that we saw a crab earlier uh, and unfortunately, it was such a severe crab that somebody was ejected. Thankfully, in, in case you didn't tune in for that bit earlier, entirely all right in the rescue boat. Uh, did their purpose admirably. Again, massive shout out to the stewards and marshals for doing all that they do. But it does look like our, our Pelor Woodside aren't going to experience anything like a crab. They're comfortable. They're confident. Uh, boat number 108, is that? Yep. Boat if you know who that is, do give them a shout Beric, out in the comments. Like. They've got BER on the side of their boat. And ah, there we are. I'm going to presume it's Beric. Yeah, I just heard someone scream, go on Beric, so I'm going to... The the anecdotal evidence is stacking up in their favour. Yeah, definitely. Um, and they're, do they're doing well. Yeah, go they're on, Beric. Although cool. I don't like that you're in mismatching unit odds. I've I, got wonder what, I wonder what will happen, mother. Whether the Durham stewards will, will, will bring out their clothing. Really. It, I mean, it's such a colour change that I wonder if it's a last minute substitute. It might be a last minute For substitute. illness or for, for some other reason. I had to get a last minute substitute last year because my doubles partner got COVID literally 24 hours beforehand. Yeah. Um, and my friend actually from Berwick Rowing Club ended up joining me. So, sadly she's not racing here today. So it's not her in that form. That's a shame. And there they are crossing the line and I would well, say that's an easy. I would. If, if, I think if, you could say yeah, that's an easy. Yeah, I think you could say that's an easy. I think you could classify it as maybe four and three quarter, five, five and a half length. If you were being generous. Or you could classify it as easy. easy. And to be honest, you might prefer the easy because then you don't know exactly by how, you know. It's a large margin. Would you rather know the margin or would you rather just know you were beaten by a large margin? I'd rather know the large margin. I just don't like the word easy. Mm. It does, it It smarts a little. <laughs> I can imagine it smarts a little. 
Um, you know, there's no equivalent in football, say, given we've already discussed football. It's not like a Liverpool smashed City nil. Um, well, you, I just you feel do, you count it out. As yeah, it were. like I, I mean, if like Liverpool won like eight nil to someone, which they probably wouldn't at the rate that they're going at at the moment in this season, but it would, it, like, you already know it's a big margin from like the score, so you you don't really want to be patronised by them saying it was easy. Well, there we are. It wasn't an easy. I've just heard the uh, regatta local commentary. Berwick on Tweed winning a final. It was. By four lengths. Four so lengths. Congratulations to Berwick. Very well done to them. And we've got some single skulls coming up the river now. That, I mean, they don't look like they're particularly pushing. I wonder if there's been an incident further down river. Their competitors smashed into the bank or something. They could just be quite relaxed. Well, they're, they're being very relaxed. They're very relaxed. For what is about half race distance, they are very relaxed. That speaks to me that something their competitor is not competitive um, and not necessarily in a oh they're worse than me kind of way not least because that would be quite a you know quite they, an unpleasant attitude to hold well I suppose it's just a competitive attitude to hold but they are taking it certainly very easy in their nice uh, just yellow and black boat they're you, literally just you could mistake a it for a, a, an early morning fun, fun that take. looks like a paddle I, I mean it's it's pr- honestly, I went into the sun on our little break when we had that um, live update. It is so warm in the sun. We're really, really affected by the little booth that we've got. Yeah, we are. We're cold. The rest of you are warm. Yeah. You don't know what we're sacrificing for you, really. Um, it's almost hot drink territory. We need to keep this yeah. going. I did have a latte. Um, another thing to point out: the effect of the sun on the competitors is more severe than the effect on the spectators and the reason for that is that obviously the water reflects it directly onto them with much more intensity than say grassy ground or cement Mm -hmm. Um, and that means that our races are all hopefully uh, slathered up in sunscreen Um, you know absolutely coated in the stuff looking after themselves looking after their skin looking after their welfare I remember I went to Italy for two weeks and I didn't burn at all and then I came home for one afternoon and went on the river and I was red head to toe <laughs> and it just shows you it's free I mean it's really important to wear sun cream anyway regardless of whether you're competing today or not yeah. uh, please wear SPF um, but it just goes to show like even just like a couple hours out on the river and you're not wearing sun cream really really is terrible and especially as a rower you're not wearing the most flattering things on the river all the time you're wearing uni suits yeah you can get horrific tan lines oh oh i hadn't even considered that yeah the sacrifices these races are making for us to have a good day today is, are mounting up you know you don't want sunburn if you if you were doing this at the beginning of summer and then you were going on a nice hot holiday somewhere and you wanted some nice looking tan lines you would be risking that for a chance to prove your competitiveness to us today. And for that, uh, esteemed viewers, we are eternally grateful. We are back on at the moment. We are back on. It's a single skull uh, heading down the river towards us, as far as I can tell. And heading in quite different directions. Both of them seem to have taken quite an outside line. Uh, Neither one particularly after the middle of the course. Pilar Woodsound seems to have corrected himself a bit. But Racecourse still looks very far onto the Racecourse side. Yeah. Maybe they've got a spectator on that side there, looking out to wave hello to. Yeah, let us know if you're cheering from the side and you want to give a shout out to a particular rower. Yeah. Do let us know. We want to hear back. Do indeed. Man in a bowler hat's just gone by. That I like. He's got a cool jazzy shirt as well. It's quite a lot of topless people as well. <laughs> well, it's the great British summertime, isn't it? It's like typical, isn't it? Sun, the sun comes out, everything comes out. <laughs> <laughs> what a way of putting it. Um. But yep. it's, it's also, um, I think, I believe it's a rule on the river that you're not allowed to be topless. That surprise. I don't know if that surprises me or if it doesn't. I'm not sure. Um, so I'll make no further comment on it. Uh, one more shout out in the meantime while we have been receiving that dramatic information about the stake boats. Uh, shout out to Callum and the rest of the Mary's Coxed for best of luck this afternoon from Joshua Gray. 
Oh, Aren't you Mary's nice, is Joshua? My college. Mary's is my college. England no. is my city. Uh, regatta is my love. <laughs> Oh, regattas We've, are the best. It's another Hexham... Uh, is it Hexham or is it Sheffield? I think I decided this was Sheffield. Though, yeah, right? that's not Hexham. This blue-sashed uh, unitard. It's not got a matching cap, though. Disappointing. Well, I feel like if you mix the colours that he's wearing collectively, they might look a little bit like his cap. He's looking really, really good. He is looking... Definitely looking really, really comfortable. Again, it's one of these ones where it seems taking it just that little bit easier because you feel it's it's, it's slightly uncompetitive um, so we've had the first few stake boat race stake boat less races we seem to be doing all right um, we will keep an eye on that for you of course and keep you updated as to how they're all doing yeah um, and if you're a rower who was affected by the change why why don't you come over and talk to us yeah pop yourselves on our sofa let us know how you feel and in the meantime we're going to turn over to our excellent presenters and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Hello, hello, and welcome back to PAL TV's live coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta, sponsored by Osborne. And earlier this term, our head producer Sophie went on a very important task that we've managed to capture on film. Sophie, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Right, so I'm in my final term at Durham, unfortunately single, in desperate need of a husband. And PAL TV was in desperate need of some footage to fill in the regatta. I thought, why don't I kill two birds with one stone and get a couple of rowers involved in Chad's boathouse? have them wined and dined, riz them up a little bit, see if I can find myself a little boyfriend before I go. So you're about to see some wonderful dates of me and Regatta Rowers. Indeed we are. Okay, it looks like we are going to be heading over to see that right now. Get excited, everyone. The Hill B women's squad hate me. Um, what did you do? Yeah, I stole their trophies and a footplate out of their boat. Mm, that does sound like it might have been your fault. No. Have you ever written a row on? Excuse me? Have you ever written a row on? Uh, can you explain to me what a row on is? Do you have a favourite boat club besides your own? Um, not really. I don't really like many of the other boat clubs. Yeah, technically I'm just, well, a dev. But now, technically, you've seen this, but still dead. Oh, that sounds oh. like there's kind of like some tension around that. What's your go-to meal deal? Go-to meal deal. All right, quavers. Um, Are those chips or fries or <laughs> crisps? Yeah, <they're> crisps. <laughs> um, <laughs> You've been nervous, Jack. That wasn't me. That was you. It's the table. <laughs> oh, it's the table, was it? Just I thought maybe I made you a bit nervous. No. Oh. Yeah, I actually really don't like the uni suits. Why not? Because they're bread. And they're just like, I don't know, they're like a weird fit. Mm. I really like it. Oh, thank you. Can I have it? Um, I do have to say, you're just quite nice. I appreciate the incorporation of the uni suit. We were really on the same wavelength. Well, I was hoping it could be like a grand reveal halfway through. But, um, you just got too excited. I, I, I saw we were twinning and then I got carried away, so yeah. But I don't take it off usually anyway. Oh, do you like sleep in it and everything? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I mean this is quite a nice venue, isn't it? It is very nice, yeah. It's very sweet I love I love the lights. These oh, are these thank are a you. nice touch. I think they're quite nice. My landlord would not let me put them in my house because she said they were a fire hazard. Even though they're right. battery operated. She had a stroke though. So I was thinking about putting them back up because it's not like she's coming back anytime soon. Okay, I'm 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 happy to hear that. I'm happy for you. Thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> so you row for Collingwood? Yeah. Are you Collingwood? I am Collingwood. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> I promise. Are you, are you like a nom? Like a tier list. Are you like a dev? Are I'm you a Esther. senior? I'm going to say I'm senior vice president. You're vice president? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's but very that, nice that comes to meet you. Into the meme account. So, okay. we, need, we, need to, we need to rank your titles yeah. of importance. I'm also social sec as well. Wow. But that's more senior than vice president. Yeah. yeah. It would be. Does Aiden throw some like really good socials then? Yeah. You think he'll bring me along to one sometime? You could come. Oh. I don't know if you'd enjoy it, but you can come. Mm. Okay. That wasn't really like an invitation. We can, like, we can we can we can retry it if you want. Are you gonna bring me to one of these socials then? Yeah. You come with the social. Oh, you still did the you can come. 
That's, I like you know, to pay no, I get it. I get I, like it. I don't, I just, I don't think. as much as we did. We're here with the producer of Catching Crabs, Amy. How did you find filming this segment? Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved watching Sophie riz up so many people um, and never got so many meal deals, but I also didn't. I've never been such a third wheel. Mm, yeah, yeah, rough third wheeling for Amy there. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. We are about to pass back to the commentators for even more rowing. We hope you're enjoying Pearl TV's live coverage, of course, sponsored by Osborne's. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, guys. We are back. We've got some double skulls coming up the river. It looks like Tyne is on the Pilo Wood side, and they're trading just behind their competitors currently. I think it's Northumbria University, so Angela will be paying close attention. Um, I believe for all of you watching along at home and using the regatta website to keep it up, we're on race number 121, which formerly was supposed to start at 120. So I think we are perhaps a little bit behind on the schedule of affairs uh, that was promised for this afternoon, but that's all right. All that means is that we get more hours of racing and more hours to commentate in. And we've got more and more action for you guys to enjoy throughout the day. So please do let us know if you're enjoying our commentary. Um, let us know if there's anything else you want to see. You never know, we might be able to get that sorted for you by the end of the day. Um, but it's been a fantastic day of racing for us so far today. We hope you've enjoyed it. It's been, it's been great being here. Um, and as we said, if you're on the riverside and you want a shout out, let us know. If, you're, if you've got some cool stories um, and you're enjoying the day, come and say hi. We've got loads of people wondering about. We've got some, we've got some like, what the, I can't think of the word now. But um, roaming, <laughs> roaming. We've got some roaming. Ro we've got some roaming commentators that are like looking out for crazy, cool stories. Yeah. This crazy people. This weekend's about you. We want to hear about you guys. We want to know what you guys are up to. Yeah. A lot of you guys are now on the Hillby pontoon. That is crammed. Wow. Do you know, they always get the, um, for Hill Bead as well, they get out the sofas. Have you seen the sofas before? I have seen the sofas. They are, they are excellent sofas. Um, they're high drama because I always think, surely if you, if you suddenly lean too far forward, that sofa's in the river. We've got DUBC here now. We yeah. do indeed. Lovely Palatina oars. Do you know Mary's oars are the exact, like more or less the exact same colour? Mm. But it's, I believe that's, is that York? Or that's Sheffield, Sheffield, I think, again. Sheffield. The white rose and the uh, unitard. Sheffield trailing uh, DUBC by about a length there, I would estimate. Um, well, D, this is their home river. They should be doing well. They should be doing well. And at the moment they are, as they head towards the bunting that indicates the end of the short race. Um... I One haven't seen things. DU so far today, other than this race. They were they were very early in the program. They were um, they appeared, but they haven't. They've been quiet. I wonder if they've just not done as well in the heats, and we've had a lot of heat elimination races. There's Perhaps their home river hasn't been kind to them. The, that's the brutal nature of the game, I'm afraid. Mm, can't rely on anything, you know. Can't rely on any love. I think this is race 130 we're seeing at the moment between Yarm School and Lancaster University, and it's an open beginners four. Um, Yarm are doing incredibly well so far. Okay, yeah, a uh, Yarm. Uh, we should be shouting out Yarm more because they've had a Yarm great have weekend had a so far. Fantastic weekend so far. They've had a really nice time, uh, not just in general, but also with the rowing. Um, aha! For all your complaints about oh, blazers, there's another blazer. A man with a blazer. And an entire bottle of Pims in his hand is walking past. So he's well and truly He's in having spirits. a classy weekend, really. Well done to him. He um, needs to get fresh fruit now. Fresh he does fruit need fresh me. fruit. Well, I've just seen somebody else walking past with fresh fruit, so maybe they can collaborate. Mary's bar have started doing Pims in the bar. Speaking of collaborations, uh, a little shout out from me personally to the Durham Museum, which is open uh, days of the week 10 to 2 a lot of the time. I don't know exactly, but you can check it out on their door. They currently have a Durham Regatta uh, exhibit, so if you want to find out a little bit more about the history of the Regatta, you can pop yourself up there. Um, they also have an Instagram account, Durham Museum, and you can see a couple of little...
bits and pieces of the regatta's long and storied history there, if that catches your fancy. And in the meantime, we're going to keep bringing you the current regatta, which is proving to be wonderfully entertaining. It is a beautiful day out here and a great day for racing. The conditions, you know, they could be worse. I, it could be raining. Oh, I, they could be much worse. I would. I, I absolutely hate rowing in the rain. I'm really against it. Mm. I, I don't know what it is. As soon as I see that it's raining, I'm like, absolutely not. Not for me. I feel like, you know when it's that sort of pitter-patter rain? I don't know why I've just gone so Hugh Grant there. That sort of pitter-patter rain. That's um, when it's gently dancing on the face of the river. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that with a straight face. Um... I feel like that's quite fun to enjoy, um, but then again, I'm not the rower you are, <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to your wise judgment once again. We've got another race coming down, and it looks I feel like those are the same purple blades that we said for DUBC. It looks like DUBC again. Um, please do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and it seems like DUBC has got a lead against their opponents on the race course side. Mm -hmm. Well, there oh are. no, it's Mary's. That's why it's the blue. It's the, and they're going into the banks a bit there. They're going a bit close. They are risking it. Risking it for the biscuit. Risking it for the biscuit. Except there is no biscuit, as far as I'm aware. If you win your race, this would then appear to be the number 126 uh, Open Beginners Four, and that is between St Chad's College and Mary's. So it's an intra Durham affair. And um, Mary's currently. Oh, they've just. Oh, they've, uh, they're, they're catching they're, they're their really blades. Close. And they've just gone into the bank there, oh. pushing off. And they were leading as well. That's that going to be so sad. Devastating. 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 Mm. Devastating for my co-host from Mary's. Um, <laughs> and the image has now frozen on their moment of devastation, so they can't even escape it. Um, and we may now see St. Chad's having taken the lead against them, entirely, unfortunately, of their own making. That's, it's got to be upsetting. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really upsetting, especially if you're in the lead of the race, and it, it just feels like, like, it feels like even though there is nothing sometimes that can be done to prevent situations like this, it does, it just, it, it really grates on you, and it, you think about it for days after, it's such a, like, with a lot of sports, you know how, like, running is very much on that mental side, I feel like rowing also has a lot, a lot of that. Yeah, it's, people talk of, you know, Usain Bolt's not only the fastest runner in the world, but certainly one with the best mentality. Um, you know, some of his best races are ones where he was, you know, two, three, four feet behind at the 30 meter line and just keeps his head up and his opponents are chucking glances back at him and compromising their own races because they know the kind of racer he is and simply just know that he can get them. Looks like we've got Hill Bead here coming up. I'm looking for a number 84 in our program log, and I can't... Oh, I can see it. Uh, race number 125, another open beginners for Skulls between St. Hilden's and Bede and South College. Hilden Bede, probably, actually certainly, geographically the closest races to home this afternoon. Hilden Bede look like they're ahead there. They buy a nice amount, you know. Buy a nice amount, they'll be happy with that. Yeah, they could cash that into the bank and have a nice payday. South are looking. Bit South are looking like a college that was founded a few years ago. Um, <laughs> they don't. They don't have the generational experience. They don't have the They're the history. Slightly uncoordinated. Oh. In the in the manner that a a teenager whose limbs have suddenly gotten far longer than they have any right to be is. <laughs> and I they am weren't speaking from it. personal experience. <laughs> Were well, you not always tall? I was not. Well, I'm not always. I'm not that How tall. How tall are you? I'm six foot. You can't say you're not tall when you're six foot. Well, this is the problem because one of my very good friends is six foot four. And what he loves to do, what he adores doing, is saying when he, that he's six foot one. Um, because people have such skewed ideas of what height people are. Um, that he can say that and people will then assume everyone around him is seven or eight inches shorter than they're claiming to be. Um, and he finds it hilarious because he's got nothing to lose because he would always he is objectively tall if you ran across him you would look up and you think there's a tall man um, but those of us who are sort of just tall enough to be tall uh, 
You could row with six foot. I could row with six foot. I couldn't play basketball in America. No. Well, I mean, height is definitely a a huge advantage with rowing. Um, Mm. Just like, it's just, it improves everything in a way because it means that you've got such a longer stroke, which means it you're doing less strokes per minute like for example my friend she bless her really enjoyed rowing she got into it um and she's five foot like four five foot five um and her stroke rate was always really really high because she was just a lot littler it's really important it is it's and especially if you've got long legs in particular you might be shorter bodied like that is a real advantage knowing that you've got it's basically like having like long levers. Well, it also gives you a lower uh, center of gravity, I suppose. But short people do have the advantage that I find they are, uh, on average, more filled with spite and sort of like revenge <laughs> at the world. And that gives them maybe an extra 5% speed to somebody who doesn't have that. Our pure, pure vengeance. They yeah. need that extra bit of them. Well, we've got single skulls coming up on the screen here. Yes, and just launched from the no longer stake boated start, uh, race number 142, which is a women's elite for skull uh, between Yarm School and Lancaster University. Another Yarm. So we'll see them coming into our picture uh, shortly, one would imagine. James Wild, I believe. I'm gonna. Sorry if I butchered your name. Put yeah, Lancaster. And yeah, Garrett in the comment section. Garrett's yeah. the university, and Lancaster's the the head <laughs> Roseman. <I'm assuming. laughs> yes, of course. of course. Here we are. This, I think, is that women's elite four-person skull boat between Yarm and Lancaster. Couldn't tell you which side each of them are. I think Yarm is the yellow boat. Um, and they are well. I couldn't tell you which one's in the lead at the moment because they are neck and neck just going past the classic car so you can see creeping into your image. It's Durham ARC and Yarm School in the semi-final, I believe. Yeah, just and they're just setting off behind this race. As we say, this is the stage of the afternoon where races are being launched left, right and centre. I'm sort of surprised they haven't brought a trebuchet to literally launch them because that's sometimes what it feels like they're doing it looks like Durham ARC are looking slightly more confident and comfortable just it's, that, it's just neck that, and neck it's very close just that tippity tap more comfortable they a mix of hats and visors but I but kind of never both yeah it's interesting though because um and on the other ah but it's three hats to one visor whereas it's two hats and two visors i yeah one team is balanced and the other one is imbalanced (laughs) and that will ultimately be their downfall their hat pedigree they they may win this race but that will be their downfall um and indeed it does look like they're just about to edge it out in the race my goodness that one's come to the wire or to the bunting as the expression may be I feel like we need some bunting. I'd like some bunting. Um, Has anyone got any props or signs with them? Has Are anyone you? on the riverside, do you mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if anyone's got any big signs to support their team. Do you know, I've never really thought of the regatta as the sort of event where you'd bring a, a cardboard sign, you know. Some people take cardboard signs to football games and say, can I have your shirt? I don't imagine people do that for, not least because it would be far more difficult to take off a unitard. Um I mean, it would also be quite inappropriate, probably. It would also be possibly unbroadcastable. Um, but, you know, maybe let's say you, you're, a, you're a row, you've just finished your race, you've just finished your stake boating back or whatever. You're in a free stretch of the river. Pop off your unitard and you've got your swimwear, your swim clothes on underneath and just jump in and have a swim. Um, so we've just had another boat set off and it looks like they're both college crews again. And I believe it's Trev's on Pilo Woodside. And is that grey on the closer side to the river, the river side? And it is neck and neck. It is an eight, and they're sweep rowing this afternoon. Um, it, lo- it looks like Trevs are a bit more comfortable. You know, they're, they've got probably about just less than a quarter of a length ahead. But it is very close, and it's all to play for still. Then they're, they're still in the very early stages of their race. Neck and neck is a fantastic phrase. I love it as a phrase. But it is also... Um, how many times do you see somebody with their neck against somebody else's neck? 
I feel like it does it almost come from athletics you know how like they literally lean as far forward as oh. possible I don't know but then wouldn't it all be nose and nose you know I, I feel like that's the part but they're of inching their neck further and further to get that advantage true it's a shame they can't really do that with rowing, but there's, oh my gosh, the cheers on the riverside at the moment. This is, two. I think you're quite right, this is an inter-college event. Um, the blue, Ooh, is that is it Hill, it's Hill Bead? It's Hill Bead, Sorry, isn't not it? Trevs. It's Hill Bead. Hill, and Hill Bead are looking strong. Hill Bead have got a decent boat club. I remember last year they were still quite good. Yeah. Um, it is the advantage of that extra sleep because they're the closest ones. They can <laughs> they can roll out. They of bed. can do it in a few seconds. Honestly, they could almost roll out of bed and straight into the river. Yeah, they've got about half a half a length, maybe three quarters of a length on Thray, and they're really really pushing through as they head to the bridge. Head to Bath's Bridge. Bath's Bridge. That's it. Doing all right. Here they're they doing come. great. It's a nice colour combination. I feel like it's quite a gentle colour combination. The, red's the red and awesome. the yellow is a bit more harsh. Yeah. The blue, the, the light blue and the white is actually quite reminiscent of an Austin Healy I looked at <laughs> on a, a car auction website. We've got and another rate as well, thundering down. Thundering? Thundering, down thundering, thundering, thundering. York beating Sheffield there by two and a half lengths in our results. Um, not quite a war of the... Ro well, not the official war of the roses, but... Certainly a war of some roses. Um, Butler College versus Van Milder. Butler won easily in the open. Music to my ears. <laughs> Absolute music to my ears. You'd think that Van Milder could practice in that awful pond of theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently not. Uh, for it's those viewers who have never been to Durham, Van Milder, uh, you know, I have nothing against the people of the college. Number one. Hello. We've got Durham Amateur Rowing Club flying down. They ha they are dominating their opponents currently. And it's the I I didn't honestly know that they gave you the number one as the event. I thought it might have been some superstitious thing. Is there do you know a number thirteen team or is there not for superstitious reasons? I don't know. I don't actually know. But Tyne are ahead of uh, Durham Amateur Rowing Club here. Um, by a length or two um, as they're coming into the final part. You can see all the boats lining up, waiting, ready um, at the finish line there. Let's talk about miracles. Okay. Famously, Durham is only a city, supposedly, because of a miracle involving a cow. Uh, St. Cuthbert, of mm -hmm. course, which uh, one of the colleges of Durham University is named for, uh, famously had a well he died um, <laughs> as most people tend to do uh, and in a group of monks started taking his body because they believed there was a need to found a new church and uh, they had a cow I believe I'm getting this is one of the versions of the myth there are multiple versions because it's quite old um, they were a cow was dragging the body along on a cart and Suddenly, at one point, the cow stopped and refused to move, and the uh, the uh, requisite members of the faith decided it was a sign from God, and on that spot, they built what is now Durham Cathedral, and Durham sprung up around it. Um, nice. So my question is, if a cow suddenly appeared in the middle of the river, and I'm also assuming it's not sinking, it's just on the middle of the river, um, one of our cameras suddenly cuts dramatically to a... a, a, a a boat crashing into a cow and the cow's completely miraculously unharmed. What do you think the audience reaction would be like? Hard to say. I suppose it is. I mean... I assume, I assume the audience would congregate around that spot. You know, you'd be see people spectacle. wandering down. Um, maybe the hill bead coaches would start magically floating into the air or whatever. Coaches? Couches. Um... A double skull there from the racecourse side cruising to what looks like another easy win. And that's Durham Arc there. Durham Arc. Dark. Dark. Defence against the Dark Arts is not working for these other teams because it looks like another victory for Durham Arc. Again though, you might say, local river. Um, supposed to be doing pretty well. Pretty, pretty... 
pretty good, pretty respectably. We're just trying to get the next race up for you now. There's been a bit of a, as the as um, John Steinbeck quoted for his book of Mice and Men, the, the best laid plans do seem to go awry. Yeah. Um, Originally Robert Burns, I want to say. So we're just trying to figure out where we're up to with all the races at the moment so we can provide you with some more up-to-date and accurate information. We do love up-to-date and accurate information here at PAL TV. Um, big fans of it. Supplying it, however, is the difficult part. Um, you know, lots of people like accurate information. Very few get it. Uh, Mary's versus Leeds, I'm told, is the starter. Uh, Leeds on the racecourse side and Mary's on the Pelor Wood side. Leeds pulling about half a length really quickly, pulling about three quarters of a length already on Mary's. This is a strong start for the Leeds team. I actually know... I, uh, Mary's was obviously my college um, when I was here, but I actually know the Leeds boat as well. Oh. oh it's where a, do my loyalties it's a, It is a test of your loyalties. Here we go, then. Leeds still maintaining this lead. Get it? I actually know the cocks. That's, that's how I know the Leeds boat. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, Mary's has settled their rate, but they still, they've still got, you know, there's still contact with the boat in the sense that they're yeah. not, they're maybe just losing a bit of an overlap now. I'm going to workshop this, and I want you to just say if you understand it. Leeds, 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 Mary, by about a length and a quarter at the moment. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll. I'll I'll just go back to making comments about cows on the river. I feel like I was better at that. Um, I wouldn't have expected Leeds to have green unitards. I don't know why. Um, again, I think it's my primary association with uh, areas of the country's football clubs. And Leeds United are yellow and white, famously. Mostly white, so the boat is, you know, it's, 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 it's getting points for that. Um, a mix of visors and headbands again. I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, but Leeds have a sizable, sizable distance over Marys. Leeds Marys are still, still leads. Leeds still leads. And the city of Leeds is also still leads, but um, I'm sure nobody needed me to tell them that. Maybe if they win this race, they'll change their name to Nike, Nike, Goddess of Victory. They're just coming under Bass Bridge now and heading into the final few hundred meters of the race final meters really yeah with Not mary still meters after that they're still put throwing absolutely everything they can into this and that's the important thing even if it feels futile and that it's a long way away and your competitors are like so far ahead it's still so important that you really really push yourselves and give it your all because that's the only way that you're going to feel happy about your performance is if you know that you couldn't have given anything more yeah give it your best shot be happy with what you've got and treat yourself to something nice afterwards but not if you're racing tomorrow we'll be back with you in just one moment hello welcome back to pal tv's live broadcast of the 190th durham regatta sponsored by Osborne's. Um, I'm here with Will again and his lovely friend Fergus who works together on a podcast called I believe The End of the Island. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that Fergus? Yeah certainly. So End of the Island was dreamt up during during lockdown uh, for the, the website Junior Rowing News because uh, the bulk of what we were doing was all race previews and when the pandemic happened well there was no racing to do so we thought well let's try and get as many voices as we possibly can throughout the pandemic just to get on and talk rowing and we found we had no issues getting world champions on olympians on and everyone from across the uk really so it was great to have them come and that's been running for over three years now and we're still going still going strong well wow, that's really impressive and will what's your uh, experiences with the podcast how have you enjoyed it it's been a brilliant experience. I have to say, I haven't been a part of it for the past two years because I had a year abroad, so I stepped away from it. But they've been doing a formidable job without me. But I think at the beginning, it was kind of a case of we knew we wanted to do a podcast, but we didn't really know what to do. So if you listen back to those first few episodes, it's a very steep learning curve for all of us getting used to some microphone experiences as opposed to just being writers as well. So I think it's been 
really brilliant to see that the content has grown and grown and then the reach as well has managed to draw in all of these incredible athletes from across the rowing world. And yeah, Fergus and I are having a lovely catch up about the talent that he's had on over the past season. Oh, really? OK, do you want to tell me a little bit about that talent? Yeah, so I think it's starting off at the right at the beginning when we've had, yeah, as I said, world champions on and Olympic champions on and a number of people who have got world records on, on the rowing machines. But we used it as an opportunity to really connect with everyone across the rowing world. So most recently we've had uh, people on from the United States, from Australia, uh, as well as coaches uh, from the university scene in the UK, the US and predominantly and our largest listener base is still junior athletes and, uh, and students so we keep a huge amount of our focus on that as well and we've just wrapped up a lot of our coverage of, of Bucks Regatta, of the National Schools Regatta as well and it's great to see that continuing to grow and the fact that people are enjoying what they're hearing is, uh, is really exciting for us. That's amazing, so I do have to ask as you are both here and you are our resident rowing experts, what has been the race or the team that you've been most impressed with so far today at the 190th Durham Regatta? That's a really good question. Uh, I always come down with a huge amount of, I suppose, bias and loyalty to my old university, Newcastle, uh, having been president there for, for a year or so. So I've always got a keen eye on them, and, and I've got a huge contingent that are down racing tomorrow as well. But I've got friends who are racing at Tyne Amateur Rowing Club uh, in, the, in the men's Open 8s today, who I believe won their race earlier today, so that was good to see, and they're heading through and racing one of the uh, Durham Colleges later on this afternoon, so I'll be keeping a very close eye on them. Wow, very interesting. And how about you, Will? Well, you see, the thing is, I'm quite similar to Fergus, so I've got a bias to my college, Hill Bead, who are actually going to be racing Tyne Amateur in that AIDS race coming up later on. But I think in terms of the Durham College rowing scene, it really is Collingwood's weekend to lose. Every single college has been going into this weekend thinking, how can we best Collingwood because at Hexham last weekend if you look at everyone's results it's lost to Collingwood in semi-final then another crew lost to the quarterfinal it's just a constant change and now Collingwood have been having these races where they've beaten the college crews in the earlier stages and then they lose out to some of the local clubs in the latter stages of the racing but just seeing that age race it's been really nice for me from a Hillby perspective to see the eight and the four make it through in the past few minutes. That's amazing to hear. Thank you so much, guys. OK, we are going to be passing on to the commentators again, straight back to rowing. Thank you so much, guys. We will be back with you very, very soon. Enjoy what's up to come. Thank you. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. Where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we haven't missed too much racing while we were watching those lovely adverts from our lovely sponsors and while we were listening to those lovely people talk about some lovely racing. Uh, I hope you are enjoying yourself. My co-commentator is just putting her regatta bought jumper on. It looks very cool, I've got to say. It's a nice little graphic tee-style sweatshirt. Megan, how do you feel? Do you feel fashionable? I feel warm, that which is almost revolutionary in itself but I do feel fashionable it's a very nice jump I mean warm is fashionable some might say it's an extra large so it's very 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 baggy but 
you know, it's comfortable. And you can actually get them. There's loads of like rowing merchandise that you can buy on the bank side, along with all the food stores. Uh, if you're here at the regatta, please let us know what you're enjoying, whether you're enjoying, I think there's a waffle place. Um, whether you're enjoying the cricket that we've just cut to. Apparently oh. there's cricket going on. This I did not realise. How yeah. lovely. It's a multi-sport event. We're having a great time. But yeah, let us know what you're enjoying here at the regatta. It's a lovely day. We're excited to have you here. We're um, having a number of boats just pop past the non stake boats. But I think our next race will be race number 135. So that will be St. Leonard's School versus Durham ARC in a junior race. It's a junior 14 uh, doubles race. So that's something to look forward to. It's quite nice to see the young competitors here because I feel like, firstly, certainly there isn't, there's very little pressure of expectation I feel being put on them by the crowd and in respects of what they might be able to achieve. But at the same time, it's really good for them to be in such a big, you know, prestigious event. It's got to be a great experience, you'd have to say. It's really good experience. And the younger that you can get racing, the the... I mean, the better it sets you up for, like, a career later on in your life, in your rowing life. Um, I mean, I certainly wish that I raced a lot more when I was younger. I only got into racing when I was 18, and I definitely feel like I would have, you know, I would have gained much more, much more confidence, much more, much more just, like, calmness and ease around racing. If Especially when I talk to a lot of the fellow rowers at my boat club, they've been racing since they were, like, 14, 15, and they've all done the same races together, but just in different crews. And it, it's so weird that like the rowing community is so so tight, so connected, um, that you probably find yourself, if you've been rowing for a long time, rowing against rowing yeah. against people that you then end up having as your teammates. We've talked a lot about competitiveness, but we haven't talked enough about that element of it, I feel. Um, where you are, as a... Uh, a character from a certain movie franchise might say other movie franchises are available uh family i didn't do the accent right i did not do the accent right um we'll forgive you probably nobody even knows what i was referring to because i got that accent so wrong uh who knows who knows indeed not my nose my nose does not know um hope you're all enjoying yourselves hope it's as sunny wherever you are as it is here in durham where it is lovely and sunny still but, like I say, we are still in the shade. I mean, we're not getting the greatest bit of benefit from the sun. We have got, once these boats are all passed, we've got a number of races lining up. We have, uh, as I say, St. Leonard's School versus Durham ARC. And then we have boats 82 and 83 and 80 and 81 in sequence. So that is, uh, secondly, St. John's College versus Durham School in an open beginners uh, quad. And also in an open beginner's quad after that, St. Leonard's School versus Collingwood College. So three races presumably going to be released at us in quick succession, um, in dramatic fashion, and maybe with fireworks? I don't know. They might have brought fireworks on board their boat. It would be cool if they had fireworks. It Not would in be, the boat, but maybe at the weekend. You that know. would be cool. I feel like the fireworks might be considered a... a, a an advantage as long as you manage to not set yourself on fire maybe the spark would give you that little teeny jet of artificial propulsion like in Mulan where <laughs> yeah uses the fireworks <laughs> to scare off the army <laughs> catapults himself into the mountains with firework <laughs> is that the vibe that you were going with with that no I was I was um I think I'm thinking more in the style of Tom and Jerry cartoons okay where they get a comedically like burnt face from having had something blow up right in their face. Um, you know, in a comedic fashion, obviously. We don't want anyone to... We don't want to see anyone be hurt this weekend. Um, I'm quite enjoying seeing everyone sort of go the opposite way up the river uh, just at the moment, and everyone in the background sort of uh, ponderously watching this happen. It's quite relaxing in a way. We were talking about this upstairs um and we were saying how almost like how Wimbledon is relaxing to watch a lot of the time. It's quite relaxing to watch the rowing. Maybe not when they're racing as such, but just when they're paddling along there, it's quite nice. Yeah. 
rescue boat just following everyone else up there. It's quite distinct. I'm not sure I like the livery on the rescue boat as much as the others, but it's serving a practical purpose, not a decorative one. So that's all right. It will definitely give a couple waves to those who are waiting to head back to the start line. I was going to rock them. Yeah. Rock I their world. <laughs> But again, as we said, please let us know what. Maybe have you got races coming up or that? Have you ever been needed to be rescued by a boat? Yeah, once. would be a unique experience. Oh, you? Yes, I have. But also, let us know. Let us know any funny stories you've had from rowing. If if you're even if you're a supporter, let us know if your friend, your family member has got a funny rowing story. We want to hear them. It'd be really cool to like read yeah. out some good stories. I do want to hear yours now. Oh, so I was in a single and I was rowing and someone was coming at me and I didn't want to disturb them. I, well, basically, I was just worried that um, I was going to hit them or they were going to hit me. So I then went into a herd of swans. <laughs> wow. Um, and then I hit the swans and then I fell in. <laughs> Did the swans start hitting you? No, no. No, I'm surprised. I know, I know. But then if I if I had hurt them pretty badly, I would have had to... Re- that's, you have to report that to police then, don't you? Yeah. Because it's Queen's property. Well, King's property now. King's property now. Um, she doesn't keep them, I don't believe. No. Um, um. But, um, yeah, so I, I then had to be rescued and pulled onto a safety boat. Um, it was a traumatic experience. Mm. And that was in winter, and there was a lot of horrible things in the river. Oh, it was a bit murky. Yeah. It was a little bit fishy. <laughs> well, maybe not fishy, because it was, I'm assuming it was just so polluted that the fish weren't, weren't present. No. The swans in the entire country are the king's property, but only the ones in London are counted. And they are counted every year, um, and it's an official job title is counter of the swans. Or keeper of the king's swans, I believe. That's quite cool. There's your fun non-regatta fact for the day. Um, you do have some incredible facts. I'm not gonna lie. I do have some incredible <laughs> facts. It's uh, a symptom of an overactive imagination and just a lack of better things to do. But. I suppose people who have a lack of better things to do do better things than I do. So do you think that I do what I do because I am who I am? Well, do you know what? Having, like, an extensive knowledge of random stuff is really, really helpful. I mean, even just congratulations to our university for winning University Challenge recently. Yes, very big congratulations to the University Challenge team. Um, Wonderful, wonderful group of people. Um, And a well-deserved victory. Actually... Here's a fun fact. They beat the team they beat in the final, Bristol, was the first game of the series, Durham v Bristol. Oh. And Durham won that one too. Right, the action's back up and running. I believe it was St. Leonard's. St. Leonard's v Durham ARC. It's a junior 14 double. So some very young races out there. And I've got to say, they're all doing themselves credit at the moment. It's looking like a good race. It does look like Dark are well ahead at the moment. They look comfortable, you know. They they can see that they're ahead. They, they're they're astonishingly in sync. For a junior category and for you saying that this is the first time they're allowed to row in such a manner, they are. They look like a pair of seasoned professionals. Well, that's... I think that is the advantage of rowing when you're young. You yeah. can really, really nail that technique down at such a young age. And you can bed yourself in quite well. Yeah, and I think, it, you know, it's amazing that college rowing is so accessible to everyone and that anyone can join up. But I, I think it does sometimes lack the, the, the finesse that professional coaching obviously does provide yeah and it's it is it's easier as with like a lot of stuff the the younger you learn the the more you learn the more you learn and and the it's just it then becomes like muscle memory almost it's like you never forget how to ride a bike yeah you know like it's that kind of idea and dark look incredibly comfortable there as they fall into 
the last couple hundred metres of the race. Meanwhile, uh, St John's versus Durham School in an open beginners for a open beginners quad scu- uh, an open beginners quad coxed boat has just launched further down the river, uh, and we will find that uh, for you on our cameras momentarily. Sweet viewers. That is race number 127. As you can see uh, and hear, uh, the race numbers are a bit out of order. Um, Mm -hmm. The fun of the regatta is that nothing tends to go in the right time or or the right order. Yeah. Just to keep us on our toes. We all have fun anyway, don't we? Exactly. So I think that's Leeds University on the Pudlaw Woodside and St. John's College. Oh no, I'm reading the entirely wrong one. Excuse me. I think that's St. John's College on the racecourse side and Durham School on the Pudlaw Woodside. And it looks as though Durham School has got a little bit of a lead uh, at the moment. And then just launching at the moment, St. Leonard School versus Collingwood College. Open beginners, quad, sculled. Sculled? Coxed. Why am I mixing up Skull and Cox so much? Uh, answers on a postcard, please. <laughs> Ooh, one more shout out. Uh, come on, Dark Junior 14s. Quinn and Alex. Congratulations to Quinn and Alex, who I'm fairly certain we just saw win that race. So you've been shouted out, and you didn't even need it because you were just that good. Congratulations, you two. On the start line now, we've got the St. John's College um, against... Did you catch that? It's possibly the 1877 club. It is. Race 140. It's a single skull. And this is for a trophy. So this will be an interesting one to follow once it comes into our our field of view. Uh, Just watching the beginners quads coxed one that we talked about a moment ago. Passing the two-thirds mark and going just into view our lovely little commentary box. Oh, matching bucket hats. I approve. I approve, I Immensely I approve. However, are they emoji bucket hats? In which case, I dislike. Um, I can see a couple of spectators running down to follow this one. Um, it's still close going into this final third, but it is definitely uh, Collingwood on the inside that has the advantage. And by the inside, I mean, of course, the race course line. Um... Lots of people running along the banks there in support. Plenty of enthusiastic support. They've had their lunch. They're, they're up and at them. They're willing to <laughs> run again. They're not abandoning their, their delicious hard-earned supplies. No, sir. But hopefully we'll be cutting back to those singles in I'm a moment. I'm very curious I about I really want to know about this race. It's Espec- a cup race. How could I not be interested? 1877 Club. I wonder... Now, I don't know what significance that has is the thing. Here they are, on our screen. 1877 Club on the P. Lawwood side, St. John's on the racecourse side. And it looks like the 1877 Club is edging ahead by a length, I would say. Which is good, because this is their only race of the weekend. Really? This, according to the website, is the only one they've registered for. They are the official alumni boat club for Durham University. So they're the alumni DUBC. Oh, and it looks like St. John's, though, is now... Has edged the lead. Edged the lead by a quarter to a half a length. I can hear enthusiasm for John's from our side of the river, from near our commentary box. I can hear a dog barking, maybe also in sport, or maybe in aggressive dislike. Maybe he's the dog of the 1877 member. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe he's from 1877. Time travelling dog. Oh my gosh. No, it's 1877 Club back in the lead again. This has been a very back and forth race and now taking it by just about a a length and a half by the looks, as far as our camera could tell. I think that's Hexham now. That's Hexham. Oh, is this another one? It's another another single skull. We've got Hexham, which has got a sizable lead over their opponent. I have no idea what race that is, I'm afraid. No, I'm afraid uh, not either. It's not a good thing of a commentator to admit their ignorance. Mostly I should talk about the things I do know something about. But, ladies and gentlemen and others, I'm afraid I have entirely exhausted them. Um, 
I've run out of words, and now you will only hear me make strange and unappealing noises. Hexam looks comfortable. Hexam does look comfortable. I'm uncomfortable because there's a bug on my microphone. And I have to have my, my face quite close to this microphone uh, so that you can all hear me. And there's a bug on my microphone. Hexam having a rather sizable two lengths ahead of their opponent there as they head into Bass Bridge. I think you're not being generous enough. I'd say that's two and a half. <laughs> two and a half, though. Two and a half. Give them three. Why not? Give them three. Three lengths. What is it? Someone Give someone an inch, they'll take a mile. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to get rid of this bug because it's starting to distract me slightly. But I'm also trying to do so humanely. Isn't this... Is this just what you tuned in for? Aren't you all so lucky? We've had a comment from Richard Garrett. If you're impressed by short rowers, there's quite a spectacle coming up. Cardinal Racing... Oh, he's just deleted the comment. I think he was referring to our 1877 club <laughs> racer. He was. He racer. was referring to the 1877 club member. Many congratulations to them. We've got another period where we're letting past rowers past... Um, and future rowers present, and present rowers, the uncertain possibilities of today. Because today is a day of uncertainty. You don't know if you're going to win. You don't know if you're going to lose. It could go either way. You have a chance. Isn't that just beautiful? Got more boats coming down. Just catching up. Catching Hopefully we'll up. have some more race footage coming up for you soon. We're certainly going to have a lot of race footage because, I, by my calculations, we're between an hour and an hour 15 behind the official published schedule. Yes, yeah, so we do... In terms of the most recent race, yeah. as it were, that should have happened. We do apologise if the race structure is a bit here and there yeah. with the numbers. We promise you it's not us doing it deliberately uh, to annoy anyone in particular. Um... If your neighbour is Stephen or Jeremy or Jared or Gerard, it's not to annoy you. But if your name isn't one of those, then maybe it is. Consider that. Again, if you are listening from a foreign country or somewhere very far in England alone, we'd love to hear from you. We want to know where our listeners are coming from. Yeah. Um, and if you're listening from the International Space Station, I'd be seriously impressed, but... I think probably excluding those seven people from our calculations, seven, seven odd, um, is not unreasonable. We've got results coming through uh, at the bottom of your screen there. So we have Lancaster University versus Yarm School, with Lancaster winning one and a half lengths. We've got the women's junior fif under 15 double to Camus Arc and y Yarm School, and Camus won easily, easily. There's that word again. Easily. Easily. Easily or easy? Uh, it's been. Is one more insulting than the other? No, they're both pretty insulting, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, also, ag again, with the decision to get rid of the steak boats, if you're a rower and you don't like that decision, let us know. We want to hear from you. We want to know why you don't like that decision, whether that's rattled you for your race coming up. Let us know. Yeah, we're a, we're a social media organisation, and therefore we want your most feverish opinions in the open elite eight tyne arc versus durham arc tyne won by two lengths and in the women's elite four we've got lancaster university versus arm school lancaster won by one and a half lengths well done to everyone who's won today and well done to everyone who hasn't uh, because let's be honest as we've been saying all along we have quite an easy job we're just sitting here and we're watching things um they have to do all the doing and for that we commend you um if you have been doing the the racing at all today, do let us know. But I did also come up with a pun that I'm going to use tomorrow when I'm commentating. If there is an easy win, I'm going to say... Uh, no, hold on. I need to look something up before I can make this pun, Megan. So please give me 30 seconds of time. Okay. We've got the camera just there on the Mary's boat, women's eight. Um, who just faced off against Leeds uh, with Leeds winning by two lengths they're just chilling on the bank waiting for their to call to head back to the start line there reminds me a little bit of a crocodile hiding in some undergrowth 
ready to pounce on their prey. That's a really specific example. It's like the enormous it is. crocodile. Is it Roald Dahl who wrote the enormous crocodile? Probably. He liked yeah. writing about enormous things. James and his giant peach. Um, what else was giant in in a Roald Dahl book? I'm the sure BFG. there was the BFG. He was giant. Well, he was a giant. There's um, plenty of giants in that one. There are plenty of giants in that one. No, my joke for tomorrow, or my commentary line for tomorrow, that I'm also going to use today, uh, if somebody wins by an easy, I'm going to say, they must be a fan of the Commodores, because that was easy like Sunday morning. Ah, 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 ah. We've got a women's, women's semi-final in the eight here. It's really, really tight at the moment. Blue blades on the race course side, white blades on the peel or wood side, and it is neck and neck. Although again, both have sort of got this slight drift to the outside line. They're not taking the most efficient route they could, um, which won't cost them much given that both of them are doing it. But you know, you'll be you'd be trying not to do that in the moment. It very much is neck and neck in this semi-final. Going nicely. I wonder if that is Yarm on the outside again with that yellow boat. Um, I believe that. And I wonder if that's Hill Bead have, on the outside. They wear like a blue uniform, Yarm schools do. Mm. Um, we're just trying to figure out who it is for you guys now. There are a lot of them. 18 people on those boats. Including the Cox. Including the Cox, of course. Can't exclude the Cox. Coxes are people. And we can hear some shouts going going down the riverside now, currently. Let us know who you're supporting. It's about a quarter of a length to the race side track. Uh, race. Um, a quarter of a length to those on the race side. Moving down the river, absolutely. The river looks absolutely stunning with the sun glistening off of it now. I mean, it's great for us, but I can imagine it's um, probably quite annoying for some of our racers if it's reflecting into our eyes. That's where those visors come in so handy. That's why you should wear a hat when you wear mm. Are you secretly judging anyone who's not wearing a hat? Not or not so secretly? I, I would judge people if they weren't wearing sun cream more than anything. Yeah. I'm really hot on SPF. Take, your, take care of your skin, people. Not the first team today we've seen cut off their opposition coming into the final line indicated by the bunting. But again, they might argue that they were far enough ahead that they didn't care. This is a women's intermediate four, uh, quad even, excuse me, uh, coming up. On the Peel or Wood side, I think it is Durham ARC. Um, although I could be wrong. It's a men's four and it's actually Berwick. I'm mixing up my races. <laughs> We've got number 60, Beric Ark. With Yarm School on the race course side. And it looks like Beric have just pushed out in front of Yarm School there. There's something to be said for just how easy our competitors have made it look today. When it really isn't even a mid-easy. Well, I know for a fact that the two... Two middle um, rowers in that Berwick row have rowed this morning. They were in a double this morning. Um, I think it's. They'll, they'll be hoping their teammates who haven't rowed in the double this morning will be picking up some of their slack. I'm sure they will. Although, from the state of their position as relevant to their opponents, there doesn't look like there's that much slack to pick up. Um, you know, they're doing quite well. Um, they may be a little close to the uh, to the ledge. But it looks like. Beric have just sailed into the finish there. Sailed into the sunset. There is an odd oar on the Pelor Wood boat there. It's entirely white and the rest of them are red. And we've got a eight race coming up now. Mm. Octoplets. <laughs> the sweep rowing here. And it looks like the Pelor Wood side has half a length on their opponents here. L looking comfortable, all of them. Looking neat. It's very regimented stuff, this. Both teams not giving each other an inch, much less a yard. Um, Although, yeah. That, that, that half course length side, has narrowed. Yes, and Racecourse side has done a huge push now 
as they're coming into the finish line and it is literally neck and neck as they come past the hill bead landing stage the cheers that are happening on the backside now definitely multiplied there they're really getting excited and behind these two crews coming out of the river this crowd is happy with what they're seeing they're cheering in support of this uh, team cracking away number 43 Josephine Butler I believe uh, spectacular Butler are trying to come Have back the race course team taking the lead it from the looks sounds of our so tight. We'll have a look as they come under Bath's Bridge. I'm dying to know. Oh, I'm also wait. trying to use the people on the bridge to judge when they're coming under. Ooh, it oh. looks like Butler have just lost their lead. I think that's University College on the race course side and Butler look to have just not had enough in the tank in that second half of the race. College Devastatingly. versus college. College on college action. Meanwhile, we have a healthy gap in this uh, Double. doubles race. Skull as opposed to sweep. It's like two pirate ships passing in the night because it's a double skull. My commentator's looking at me with, my co-commentator's <laughs> looking at me with a look of disgust. Um. Wasn't discussed. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um. I hope my ratchety puns have not put any of you off of viewing this live stream. If you are enjoying it, please do subscribe. Please do return tomorrow if you're interested in um, this race. Somebody's granny and Rosh are watching from London. Hope whoever that is is enjoying themselves, having a nice time. Shout out to Granny and Roche. We have a bit of a break in the racing at the moment. I think. Oh. Oh, they've just thrown something over to their fellow boats on the safety boats. And yeah. I'm, I don't believe they caught one of them. Safety boats passing in the night <laughs> like strangers. It would be quite ironic if somebody fell in or off one of the safety boats. And that's I'm all sure I'm going to say on that. I'm certain it happened at some point, but uh, it has not happened today. I'm not going to say tragically because, you know, we love the safety boat people. Um, I will only say it would have been a mildly entertaining moment to commentate. There's that Mary's boat heading back to the landing stage. In victory or in defeat, I really can't remember. It's defeat. It was defeat. It was yeah. Leeds who won against them by two lengths. And it's St. Peter's School who won in a women's beginners race against Durham School by three quarters of a length. One of our recent updates. And then the Open Junior 15 single Hexham RC versus Sheffield City. Hexham won by four lengths. That's got to be one of the hardest races comparatively as a, a junior single. A junior single? I mean... You've got a lot of grit and determination, haven't you, to yeah. do a junior single? You've got a lot of confidence. Yeah. You know. I mean... Heck of a thing. And there we are, confirmation that that Mary's team was rowing back in defeat. And I think that's the team they were rowing back in defeat of. Uh, Leeds looking incredibly smooth, even as they just paddle back to the shore. Yeah. It's quite the procession, isn't it? It's quite nice. Um watching all the little boats go where is it there's a city in the world where they have a procession of little boats every year I think it's Amsterdam so quite the sight I've seen photos of it online here's a man with an excellent blazer walking past us that's a dark blazer an excellent blazer it's blue and yellow striped and an excellent hat <laughs> the hat wasn't blue and yellow striped tragically tragically listeners that would be a rather impressive outfit if it was yeah it would be I think there's something to be said for complete committal to an outfit. Socks, you know, short, uh, shorts or pants, um, blazer, shirt, tie, hat, maybe even glasses. I mean, depends on what the outfit is. I feel like that would be very impressive with glasses, especially if they were prescription glasses. That would be very impressive. That would be very impressive. You know, have you applied the decor yourself just for the day, or do you, do you did you order them specifically for the occasion? Do you break them out once a year? 
for two days for the mighty regatta. Or maybe you, you know, I suppose if you're a following member of a regatta, uh, regatta, no, a regatta groupie, let's say, um, maybe you'd take it to multiple weekends. Maybe you'd take it all over the country, you know, um, proud supporter, parent, relative of somebody, maybe. I still want to know if anyone has actually got any signs or anything like that. Supporter signs would be lovely to see. I'm I'm sort of disappointed I haven't seen one yet. I'm it surprised especially all the colleges haven't like done them. Yeah. I mean, actually, the best place to look would really be the hill bead pontoon. Yeah, definitely. That would be where I expected it to be. And yet, and yet, those sofas have made them weak. They've made them, you know, they, they're slovenly. We've got loads of people lounging in the sun at the moment. Yeah, as they, as they should. It's an absolutely beautiful day here, and it's very warm. Um, so again, if you're not here, but you're watching from nearby, why don't you come down? Why don't you come and see us? It's a beautiful, beautiful day, and you, sh you should be down here with us, but also listening on for our commentary. And we've just got the last of the boats heading back down to the start now. So hopefully we should be able to provide some racing for you soon. I think we've got numbers 243 and 244 lining up and raring to go. Which, ladies and gentlemen and others, would be the women's junior 18 doubles between Sheffield City and Durham ARC. So as we just wait for the last of the boats to go past, looking at the mass spectators, it's been nice to see the number of spectators keep increasing as we've been commentating, Megan. Definitely, you know, it's it it's a good thing to come out and support your friends, but also just to really, really support Durham in general. It's such a beautiful place. Um, yeah. I think sometimes students come and go um, and we forget that it's a really amazing city to be part of I think I'd find it hard or I will find it hard when I leave Durham to, to not return you know have you got one more year I have this? got one more year in me I got one more in me are you not tempted for a masters not particularly I will be honest I'm not a fan of uh, the academic system doesn't do it for me I'm not very academic as it turns out I very much got so excited to finish academics at the end of my degree. <laughs> so ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I find I'm glad I find an ally in my cause. I could I feel like nothing could persuade me to go back to education in any way. Mm. Oh, some people have got ice lollies and I'm very jealous. Oh yeah. Slushies. We have got ice lollies in supply in um be a, in the boathouse, I believe. Is there a freezer in the boathouse? There isn't. They were pre-frozen. <laughs> um, but they may no longer be frozen, would be my guess. Um, got some very fashionable people walking past us at the moment. Durham, also known for its fashion shows, if you are not a resident or a student. Uh, that fact might be new to you. The largest charity fashion show in Europe, hosted by the Durham university uh, organization that runs it and a lot of the colleges put on their own charity fashion shows for uh, excellent causes and you know do a lot for the community raise a lot of money help people out um, have you ever been a model i have to turn them down every day <laughs> every day it's a horde of people knocking at my door and saying i'm begging you you average looking man please <laughs> Please come and model for me. And I say, I've told you once and I've told you again. The only way you're getting me to do it is if we refilm the entirety of The Martian, but I'm acting in the place of Matt Damon. And Matt Damon is just standing in the corner of every shot uncomfortably. And they say, that would cost millions of pounds. We can't do that. It's for charity. And I'm like, so leave. Don't darken my door again. Our 243-244 race has set off the Junior 18's women uh, double skull. And it looks like it's Durham ARC that has taken the lead at the moment into the first third of the race. 
by about a length. This looks strangely like two of the same people from the same club. I don't. It's not Durham Amateur Rowing Club. But Is it not? No. Numbers on the doors are two three three two three four. I thought. Um, possibly I've got the sides mixed up. What the viewers won't appreciate, because there isn't a camera on us, is that uh, I've aged by six years while we've been on our commentary shift. I have uh, <laughs> that is Sheffield City's kit, the one I've been complimenting all day. The claret in blue. So, congratulations, Sheffield City! You win my unitard of the day, my colours of the day award. Uh, there is no award, but congratulations. They're looking quite comfortable there and quite relaxed. Yeah. As they... you think they were having a stroll in the park. <laughs> having a little paddle as they sail into Bassbridge there. I cannot see their competitors at the moment. I sort of hope they weren't sailing into Bassbridge. That might be a... That wouldn't be so comfortable. The competitors actually look to have stopped. Have they got an equipment issue? Possibly something with one of the seats, or have they lost an oar? They've got both on the side that the camera's facing. And there's just confirmation that Sheffield City are crossing the bunting that indicates the finish line. Quite comfortably, some might say, easily. 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 We had to say it five times because it was quite easy. But then again, this is another junior category, so we won't make any criticism. All of our competitors today are wonderful, wonderful people um, who I can do no wrong and, in my mind, should be exempt from any punishment of the criminal justice system. Because I think that's a sensible way to run a society. Um, and we are just watching the boats now head back to their landing stage currently. Yep. Um, hopefully with some more racing coming on soon. I feel like there's been quite a... I feel like there's a bit of a dull in the moment at the moment. I feel um, like we've had... There's a dull... A lull as a lull. we exit, but we've had an excellent session. I believe this is uh, the end of mine and Megan's time commentating. So I will say thank you all very much for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, we will have some more wonderful, wonderful commentators with you uh, after this. We hope you're enjoying the regatta. We hope it's sunny wherever you are, like it is here. And it's goodbye from us. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, and welcome back to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta, sponsored by Osborne's. What an afternoon we have had. There's been such incredible performances on the river. A special shout out to my college and my friend's castle, winning the women's four and just winning their round of the women's eight there. Oh, that is amazing stuff. We have enjoyed presenting this so much. It's been such an honour to be here talking to you today in the sunshine. It's been such a lovely afternoon. And you may remember earlier you watched me learn how to row a few weeks ago. Well, lucky for, lucky for you, you've got Izzy, our fellow presenter, giving it a go up next. So stay tuned and we'll see you in 10 minutes. Absolutely. See you soon. Have you ever looked out on the river, saw that and thought, I could do that? Well, we're going to give it a go. I'm Sydney. And I'm Izzy. And this is PAL TV Learns to Row. Regatta edition. Right, lovely. See you later. <laughs> Sorted. So 
to Georgie let's start off tell me why you love rowing so much what, what appeals what does it appeal to okay yeah a lot of people ask this question because rowing doesn't seem that appealing with like the amount of blisters and messed up hands you get um but I started rowing about six seven years ago um I never liked it when I first started my mum bullied me to do it um because she used to row and then I hated it but I've just got into it over the years and I'm really happy to be incoming women's captain now and it's just something I love I mean like the tan lines are horrendous especially from these all-in-ones um but it's just really nice it's nice being out on the river and it's also the sense of like community because we all work as a team and then just like getting the boat moving in a race especially in like an eight when you're all powering along it's just so satisfying and when there's so many people in a boat like racing an eight that like you'll probably be doing at the durham regatta yeah how does how does it how long does it take to trust all of those people in the boat so you know on race day oh gosh that you're gonna perform i don't think i have full trust at any time <laughs> um but you try it's just a matter of training so like we've been trying to really up our training program the past few weeks to get us ready for hexham which is the coming weekend and then durham regatta the weekend after um, and it's just maintaining consistency in the squad attendance and then just trying to like you do loads of different drills and balancing techniques and like we did earlier when we were at the water together it's just taking time to build it up so the first person's confident and then the next person can follow on um, it's just about it's all about leading so the person who stroke always you just follow stroke so yeah awesome. if in doubt <laughs> if in doubt follow stroke it's a motto when you're out on the water what is the most difficult thing when, when you're out on the water is it turning is it the speed is it maintaining consistency what would you say is the most difficult thing um this time of year the most difficult thing is definitely the browns boats i have as we nearly hit one earlier and um, i've yeah they're just a nightmare because they're often tourists who have no idea about the rules of the river they'll just drift in front of you and for example we were doing an, a sprint piece the other day in an eight and they just decide to go straight across the path and you're like just don't so um so yeah so they're the problem but worse and also swans i've had quite a few angry swans back at home who have climbed on my boat and have like hissed at me or flown really close over to me so I can feel their beat of their wings. So animals and browns boats, not to be done. Everything else is piece of cake, you're fine. You want a nice quiet river all to yourself. Yeah, that's why rowers like the early mornings because as soon as we get out, there's nobody else around and it's just peace to yourself, so definitely. Talk to me about what they're doing so far. How does it look like as he's doing? She's doing really well, yeah. She's obviously probably not doing as best as you because I took you earlier, um, but no, she's doing really well. Rob's just sitting the boat now, keeping the blades um, flat on the water so she can perfect her stroke and um, so it's basically just really focusing about going up the slide consistently popping the blades in and then taking a clean stroke they are heading for the weir now yeah i guess with the, with the position of the university college boat club that weir must be pretty tricky at the best yeah times. i mean considering we've been here for so long you'd have thought we'd have probably had first dibs on the selection of boat clubs but no we're right by the river, um, it's right by the river, right by the weir, um, which is an absolute nightmare when you're turning an eight because you really don't have much of a turning circle. Um, but Rob's handled that much better than I did earlier because <laughs> we did get quite close. Um, but yeah, rowing is just really about repetitive um, training and it's just about getting used to how your blade responds to the water. So and in different conditions, like the wind picks up and your blade can like lift a little bit and make you unbalanced. So it's just, it's all about trial and error and then getting into it and once you're into it it just it gets quite it's quite good and what will Rob be trying to get Izzy to do now would you think they'll be working on speed or focusing a little bit more on technique I'm hoping technique <laughs> but knowing Rob it will probably will be speed because any chance to outdo me he will try um but yeah I think it's just right now he's probably just explaining to her how to place her blades cleanly in the water so she's just going up to the position of a catch right now just so she knows whereabouts her blades will set and then once she's at the catch, the blades will go squared and buried and then she'll sink into the catch, pull with her arms and drive with her legs and take the stroke. <laughs> Apart from her blade is backwards right now, but... She'll work that out in a minute. Oh, was he teaching her backing down? Oh, oh, didn't do that with you. <laughs> well, I, focused on, I focused on the looks with us, Thanks. the looks. No one and has capsized yet. Yet, crossed. I did pack a towel, <laughs> so just in case Did I you am have ready. high hopes for us or were you pretty pretty convinced we were both going in um i hadn't i hadn't thought about it too much because it was kind of a bit scared me but you did do a lot better than i expected so georgie speak to me now about what they're doing as they go back up the river um so by the looks of things rob's trying to get them to do some form of peace so increasing the rate increasing the pressure um and again as last and they're now just doing some practices on getting the blade cleanly into the water taking a really clean stroke and also focusing on puddles, that's one of the really important things. Once you take a stroke, you see like, the puddles of water that form afterwards. Um, and it's basically as a row, you're trying to get as clean as possible for each stroke. Um, you don't really want to get any backsplash coming from that. 
So yeah, she's doing actually really, really well. I'm quite surprised. I'm surprised I'm not in the water yet. I was, <laughs> I was expecting that. But no, it's looking really, really good. So Georgie, we can see the Prince Bishop coming down the river now as Rob and Izzy head up down it. What challenge is this going to pose to them? You just got to try and keep out of the way because Prince Bishop will just keep going. They don't really have, they won't really have um, much remorse in direction of their movement. I mean, back at home, we have a similar kind of ship on our um, boat on our river and they just kind of just keep going, really. Um, hopefully the eight will get in before Prince Bishop comes down because and it will do its turning circle about here. But it's just making sure you're staying on the right side of the river. I think they've just avoided them quite nicely. Um, but yeah, it's just difficult when you've got lots of different users on the river trying to make sure that there's no collisions or anything, but yeah. Izzy, you were phenomenal. How was it? It was really cool, but really hard. Like, you keep like putting it in and I kept catching crabs, I think. Was that what I was doing? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I was catching a lot of crabs, but it was cool. It was really fun. I see why Rose has gone about the stuff. Like, well, you seem really confident. Did you feel like you picked it up really quickly? No, I kept messing it up. <laughs> I would just hear, I'd hear nice, 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 slow down, slow down. <laughs> and you got very, very close to the weird. Was there any? Any tension? Any any sense of fear? Uh, well, Rob was very nice and let me spin, which I think might have been why we were so close to the weir. But um, yeah, it was okay. Said hi to the pelican, which felt cool. Um. It was really, really good. Fantastic. Amazing. Do you think you'll ever row again? I actually kind of would. Is that bad? No. It was right. Too fun. But now you've got to get out of the boat, which you know, the entertaining part. Well, we did it. Rob, how did we do? Fantastic. Far, far better than expected. <laughs> Georgie, are we regatta ready? I actually think you could be, yeah. A bit more training, a bit more time on the water, 100%. You're very good, yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'll take it. <laughs> Brilliant. I've been Izzy. I've been Georgie. I've been Rob. I've been Sydney. And you've been watching Power TV. TV. This boat's going to be cleaner than when it came out. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham.
PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta. I'm Sophie Aikman. I'm Megan Titterington. And we're back. We're happy to show you all of the wrong that's happening this afternoon. Here's our title sequence and stay tuned for more. To our coverage sponsored by Osborne's. We have seen some amazing rowing today, haven't we? A few crashes, a few capsizes. It's been, you know, it's been interesting, providing a lot of drama there for mm. you. So hopefully you guys are really enjoying it. It has been quite eventful. I've got myself some amazing steak and chips from Northeast Beef, something like that. Check them out. They this look is incredible. Awesome. Um, we have to give a shout out to Andy Guest of Yarm School, who is in his last year of Durham Regatta after many, many, many. So a huge shout out to him. Congratulations. I hope you win all of your races today. Thank you so much for your contribution to rowing over the years. You know, you've, you've really dedicated a lot of time. Yeah, we're really thankful. So now we're going to hand it over to Will and Fergus on commentary and get you more rowing content that you've all tuned in for. But it's been lovely, and we'll see you later. See ya. Welcome back to the commentary booth. I am Will Tyrrell of PAL TV and joining me on the shift sat next to me here in our commentary position. I'm delighted to say we are joined by fellow rowing journalist and host of the End of the Island podcast with Junior Rowing News. It's Fergus Mainland. Hi Will, thank you very much for having me on what is a lovely afternoon in Durham. 190 years of Durham Regatta, one of the oldest in the country. And it's a pleasure to be sat here on the airwaves taking taking everyone through the coverage of the next next wee while or so. Yeah, exactly. So we can see that on our camera position, you're looking up at the start line. Of course, since I last commentated at about midday, the umpires have opted to remove the stake boats. We're now going for freestanding starts. So I was speaking to a few people that have raced on the course since that decision was made. And they said it's opened up. It's a bit more dicey racing, a bit more unpredictable on the start line. So interesting call there from the umpires. But nevertheless, we shall proceed with some racing and we had a few doubles that raced past earlier and some large shouts for Teves Rowing Club but we've got a little gap here in the racing at the moment. Fergus what's your impression of the weekend so far? You've been here for a few hours. What is it, how does it compare to the Durham Regattas you've seen from the past few years? Well I think first and foremost what's so good is that it's one of these events that's bounced back so well post Covid. I mean we know that clubs up and down the country and events have, have struggled just to get going but over recent years this, it's continued to go from, from strength to strength and the river banks are absolutely rammed as you can see on, on the screen and, and from our position we get a, a cracking view right the way down the course, we've got people hanging over bridges and all sorts, it's a, it's a brilliant day out and it's only day one, we've got another one still to come I know. And, and there's been brilliant racing so far, nice and close, particularly in some of the college eights as well as you'd come to expect from that sort of thing and yeah we've got more more to come into the late into the evening i know packed riverbank there as you can see and i remember you were saying fergus just then that the banks were a bit emptier over a few years ago i remember two years ago when i stood on the bank to watch my career i was actually told off by one of the organizers for loitering because they wanted to keep the spectators away from the event due mm. to covid and some colleges weren't even allowed to race because their entire squads had been uh, track and traced. And bizarre, utterly bizarre. Thank goodness all of that is behind us now. Exactly. And uh, yeah, as we've still got a little pause in racing at the moment, just sorting out a few things on the river. Some of the crews marshalling back down finished their races that we've had earlier on in the day. Some fantastic overhead shots on screen. We've got a drone as well. We've got everything here at Durham Regatta to bring you the best possible coverage that we can. So Fergus, you've been busy uh, qu 
quite a bit this year with other rowing broadcasts. What, how, how has the season sh- shaken up over the country? It's been fantastic, actually, and we're getting to the point where everyone is starting to gear up now for Henley Women's Regatta taking place next weekend, and of course the big one, Henley Royal, in just a few weeks' time now. We've reached the stage where we, we're, everything's starting to take shape in the university side of things, the club side of things, and, and the internationals as well. And it's always the the student events later on down the line in the year that bring the best sorts of racing. We get so many of those on display here. I mean, tomorrow we'll have Durham and Newcastle there. They're open crews going at each other ahead of Henley Women's, ahead of Henley Royal. Big grudge grudge match. Huge grudge match. Durham, of course, getting the better results at Bucks Regatta. Newcastle coming back and thumping Durham at the boat race of the North. It was a cracking turn of events from, from Bucks for the Blue Star. Phenomenal to see. And I think we've got a few crews from the likes of Leeds coming down today. We've got Sheffield University here as well. All of them will be looking to sneak their way and get themselves qualified for some of the events at Henley Royal, perhaps, um, as well. But there's so much um, going on between, between the colleges as well, beginner side of things. It's, it's a full spectrum of university that we're rowing that we've got here at Durham Regatta. And we can see here on the start line, we have got a race in the women's eights between St. Aidan's College on the race course side and I believe that is Lancaster University here on the Peel or Wood side that have managed to eke out just over a length advantage over the local college crew. Yeah, that is wonderful racing already. Out to a length in the first 300 meters or so of the race is just brilliant to see. And particularly when the racing's over such a short period, 750, 800 meters, it's, it's tight, tight racing. Um, so to have that sort of margin already is, uh, is fantastic and it's certainly one that your opposition is going to be struggling to, to come back from at this stage. I know, especially in ace, it takes a bit longer compared to the smaller boats to get the speed back and start to eat into another crew's lead. So um, this Lancaster crew will be very pleased with the way that they've led out off the start line. Now coming past our commentary position, they've got a very commanding lead over the crew from St Aidan's College. Yeah, Lancaster doing wonderful things and, and as they come past us, it, we just get this this surge in the in the noise on the bank as, as they come up and the wave of noise passes us on their way to the finish line. Cracking performance there from Lancaster University uh, looking to book their place in the next round. But after that pause in racing, it continues to come thick and fast. We're moving on to the Cox Fours now. I believe this is now a race between St Chad's College you can see there but it's Lancaster University taking the win in that women's eights race. Big celebration there for the Lancaster crew. They'll be pleased with that one. Unfortunate for the Aidens crew, that's most likely their season done. Some of them will be racing in college fours tomorrow though, but as for the eights racing goes, that's their season. Okay, Cox Fours. So there, with the green blades and the cross on the spoon markings, that is St. Shad's College leading. What sort of form of uh, St. Chad's been in this season, Will? Well, Chad's are uh, notoriously quite a small college. They only admit about 40 students a year. So to get the rowing program up and running is rather difficult. Um, and they've had some really, really strong performances early on in the day in their women's novice Cox Fours as well. They managed to field two women's novice Cox Fours, which is really impressive for a college of that size. And looking now as well, we've got another race on the course in the women's quads. I think it was Leeds University flashing past. Um, it's a matchup between two Leeds University crews. This is race number 166 between Leeds University Butler and Leeds University Barton. And the winner of this race will go on to face Yarm School later on, who are waiting and watching this race closely. Yeah, they certainly will. And that Yarm School programme, particularly on the, the junior women's side of things, has just been going from strength to strength in, in recent years. They've developed a, an unbelievably strong women's programme there that can go on and, and take on and, and beat university crews, which is, which is fantastic to see. Uh, and a really good representative of, of Northern Rowing when they go out and race other crews up and down the country. But we can see there, it's a close race actually, surprisingly tight between these two crews, uh, just a length separating them as they are heading up the 
up the course. And for one of these crews, they'll, they'll be the favourites. And they'll be thinking, do you know what? Why on earth, as they head under the bridge, why on earth are we being pushed so hard by our, by our club mates, know. knowing that we're going to have representation in the next round? But it will be Leeds advancing through, but um, maybe a tighter race than they would have liked to have had. I know, and even still approaching the finish line, I'm straying a bit too far over there, I'd say, but it's going to be okay as they've got enough margin over their uh, teammates. Looking back up the start line, there's a race in the singles on the course. So next up, as the camera's panning back down towards the start line, the crews are heading back down, having raced. We are lining up for the next race on the course, which will be 162. That is one of the quarterfinals of the women's elite course between Sheffield City and Tyne Amateur Rowing Club. Everything, it's a little bit out of whack, some of these, the order of some of these racings, but that's fine. We'll, we'll pick it up and, uh, and bring you as much information as we, as we can as they line up on the start line what so often happens here because there's not a huge amount of space to warm up at, at Durham Regatta you'll find that you'll you'll be standing around in the back find your opposition and boat with your opposition so what you've got to do is a, a vast amount of your warm up has to be done on land you jump in your boat you'll get a few strokes just to get set up make sure everything's still as it should be uh, blades are all set up rigors everything's tight and then you, you spin around and that's you onto the start I know such a short distance from the landing stage to the start line so focus if you were racing here what would you do in your warm-up on land to make sure you're warm enough on that start line well on a day like today you haven't got a huge amount to do to That's keep true. yourself nice and warm but you're looking to be looking to sit on the arg for a, a good 15 20 minutes or so get a few bursts in uh, if you're if you're in your crew line yourself up in your crew get get yourself sort of warm up get a, a decent sweat on because normally when you're out in the river if you're down you're racing if you're racing at Home Pier Pond or, or down at Dorney, you can get a, a good two or three kilometres worth of warm-up if you're putting some spins in, get a few laps of the course in. So it's an opportunity that you just don't have here. So you have to do all of that on the erg either, or on the bike or get yourself out running. Um, but it's because it's a crowded bank, so you're better off just sit, sat on the erg and just getting a few miles in on the erg. Now, it'd be interesting to know what's going on in the boat tents right now with those crews. You can see just we've got a few crews that have already raced just making their way beyond the start line so we can have a nice clear path for these quads of Sheffield City and Tyne Amateur Rowing Club. These drone shots that we're getting are unbelievable and actually from this camera position here you get a really good idea of, of where the racing actually takes place and it's, it's down almost in an arena where you've got spectators it's up so high looking busy down. Over there. Yeah. And it creates this unbelievable atmosphere when, we get some, when you get the Durham Colleges or you get Durham University rowing through it you've got the supporters lined up all the way 750 meters on on today the short course what a what a cauldron of noise it's able to create so down in that cut lower down about three or four meters down from everyone on the on the mm. bank and it's oh it's it creates an unbelievable atmosphere here. i know and when you're racing it you're very much in the zone but then you've got this like you say there's almost this stadium feel to it i tell you two years ago was one of the most incredible rowing moments i've ever experienced we were racing in the Elite Eight versus the Durham University first crew. And I was stroking my college eight and we come past our college landing woods, uh, our college landing stage with everyone packed on the steps cheering us on. I can just remember it was just it just like felt like people were standing on top of me mm. as if people were like leaning off a roof screaming at me as we rode past them. It was a very, very proud moment. That's a proper David versus Goliath. Race yeah. where I imagine everyone on the bank, all the other colleges were thinking, do you know what? Yes, we don't normally like Will Tyrrell and his college, <laughs> but on this occasion, because they're going up against DU, we'll, um, we'll get behind them and, and support them. Oh, exactly. And I mean, the coach uh, captain said to us as we voted, it's like, if we were to do a piece against the university crew, we'd win one in every 20. So let's go for that 5%. Let's get, yeah, let's go for that, uh, that 20th one. Yeah. Just now. We'll yeah. sat on the start line to go like one in 20, boys. <laughs> And of course they will, as, you, as you've mentioned so much, uh, it's a huge day for, for the colleges mm. at Durham. 
and really the, the culmination of what it is it's been a long season for them they'll be they'll have been out and about racing but by this point they'll know their opposition inside out having raced them locally up and up and down the country um but it's maybe one to touch on a little bit yes let's talk about that later can let's matter at hand on the course sheffield city against Tyne amateur rowing club in the women's elite quads this is race number 162 and it seems to be Sheffield City with the early advantage on the race course side of the course, which surprising to see crew on the race course side leading out from the start, I must say. Why is that? Because I find that the the bank is a the river's a bit shallow at that point, so you get a bit of a dead patch of water, not much stream. Yeah. So the advantage really lies on the Peel or Wood side. If you if I had the option of choosing my station, I'd always take the Peel or Wood side. Mm. Well, Sheffield have had a wonderful start and that's it was so important for him with such a short race jumped out to lead. they've got clear water already on time amateur but they're going to watch out with their steering it's a little bit funky at the moment the weaving will certainly cost them and it certainly looks like durham have found, or tyne i should say it can't maybe be making that mistake tyne have found themselves in a really strong rhythm and they'll be looking to etch their way back into contention here as sheffield battle with the with the steering foot over the, over the last few hundred meters or so. And it certainly looks like Tyne, they've not dropped they're off. They're getting closer. They've not dropped back in the last couple of hundred meters or so. And if anything, they're starting to move back on uh, on Sheffield. Looks like they managed to regain that contact with the crew from Sheffield City. We see them coming past our commentary position now. It does seem to be Sheffield City still with the advantage, but Tyne can make up for it here. So that race between Tyne and City of Sheffield unfolding into their last couple of hundred metres of that race. But we're back with our drone. We are flying ahead of yet more quad racing here at the 190th Durham Regatta. Live coverage brought to you by PAL TV, proudly sponsored by Osborne's. So I believe this is now racing the women's J15 Cox quads. And this is Tyne Amateur Rowing Club on the race course side there. You can see with their very colourful shell and they're up against Yarm School on the Pelor side, and it is Tyne that are leading out in this race. Yep, these two crews, once again, will have raced each other week in, week out across the season, um, across the region. There's so many of these local races that they'll be able to get stuck into. And that's what it's all about at this stage. If you, as a junior, as a J14, J15, J16, and to be honest, right the way through up, get yourself stuck into as much racing as you possibly can, because well, that's, that's the fun bit. And out on days like this, unbelievable. And this will be the event that it has been in everyone's head in the Northeast since the season started oh, way yeah. back in September. Every time it starts to pinch and hurt on those training sessions, you'll think, oh, but this is for Darren Regatti now. I've got to put in the miles now to make sure I have a good race. And it certainly paid off for this time for you. Yeah, it certainly is. Out in front, sun coming down in there. I've got to say that's one of the best paint jobs I've seen on a board I've never in a seen long time. Anything like Wonderful it. Wonderful stuff there. Yes, Tyne Amateur Rowing Club training just up the road about 20 minutes up the road on the Tyne in their brand new boathouse that they got built a couple of years back an unbelievable facility that they've got up there out in front and are absolutely dominating Yarm School in the women's G15 quads we've seen some excellent results from Tyne Amateur throughout the day so far from not only the junior program side of things but also in the older club categories as well dispatching many many university crews on their way to, through to the final races but now we've got an eighth race on the course between collingwood college and hillwood bead college this is the grudge match these two faced each other last weekend at hex and regatta and it's collingwood with the advantage as they approach the footbridge i know the hillwood bead boys would be certainly looking to overturn at least one of the races this weekend versus Collingwood. Doesn't seem to be that they'll have the chance in the eighth race today. They're gonna have to wait for the College Falls tomorrow morning for the good old grudge match and the bragging rights in the Durham College rowing system. <laughs> so who's been on top this season? It's, it's been Collingwood. I've been saying it all day. I'm, um, so apologies to people who have been listening to me say it, but this weekend in Durham College side of results, it's Collingwood's to lose. I was speaking with one of their athletes who was racing in the eighth that lost out to Tyne earlier, and they said that they didn't actually fancy their chances too much, but I'm not buying it. Okay, we've got some Cox 4s on the course. This is Durham University Boat Club. This is their development program. So they'll have learned to row this year for the first time up against 
Lancaster University, I believe, with the red kit. Or is that Collingwood College? No, it's Co sorry, it's Collingwood College. This is race number 175. So Collingwood have already progressed through to this round automatically and they're facing Durham University Boat Club. So tussle between students, between the the very well run program of Durham University Boat Club and the top college program of Collingwood. And it's the Durham University Boat Club novices that are taking the lead here coming past the commentary position so one race one for Collingwood and then the following race seems to be the loss yeah certainly a really commanding performance there from Durham University their development squad as you said it's run from from the start of the year and I think a huge amount of selection goes into that so it's great for these athletes to be a part of it and it's it's a part of the club that has gone from success to success over recent years one of the most dominant novice programs in the country when you you think of when you think of the novices you think of durham you think of edinburgh you think of queen's university belfast mm. um, surrey university uh, more recently and yeah once again showing that these guys are the best the best novice athletes that uh, durham has to offer yes yeah, so there we can see now a doubles race on the course Oh, and we can see the crew on the race course side getting a bit touchy with their steering. They need to watch out for that crew on the bank. Ooh. Oh, and they, I think they hit them, Will. I think, they I have. think they've hit them. And They're that on the is wrong side of the course. It's really unfortunate circumstances there. We hope disaster. everyone's okay. Absolute disaster there for one of the doubles in this race. And if you're that crew there from Northumbria University, you can see on screen there I think I mean part of you will be thinking oh it's disaster for them but I mean for them it's, it's now job done the race is wrapped up and they'll be able to advance through to the, the next round and speaking of next rounds we can see on screen the racing coming thick and fast we're moving on to the single skulls the open elite single skulls between two scholars from Durham Amateur Rowing Club so this is yeah the matchup between Terry and Flatters race number 186 we believe and race number 187 is also on the course between city of cambridge rowing club ed gardner and Leeds rowing club of newton ed spoke to him earlier he's driven up from cambridge this morning with his single on the roof of his car to race especially he spent quite a bit of time this season racing in the quad but he wasn't going to miss out on a chance to come back to durham and race because he was obviously vice president of durham university boat club a couple of years ago the Henley of the North, Durham Regatta, and that's a cracking race we can see on screen there uh, in the Senegal Skulls. Leeds Rowing Club out in front and leading them on Wilkinson of Leeds Rowing Club ahead of Marne and Joinville. That's actually uh, Rody Farley, that name rings a bell, I raced him here two years ago. Did you win? No, unfortunately. <laughs> I hope, maybe he'll remember where the finish line is this time. I remember vividly he stopped at the footbridge and then didn't realise that the finish line was a bit further on. So and he beat you and your throwing shade. That's mm. a good look, Will. <laughs> That's a good look, that one. Not salty. <laughs> no, he's part of the start programme at Leeds back when I raced him. And it's good to see that he's still racing the single a few years later. So this camera we can see on screen at the moment is just next to the bridge about 50 metres before the finish line as we pan round, we've got uh, St Chad's there on screen who raced in the Coxed Fours earlier on of course as, as Will previously mentioned great to have representation from that small college here at Durham you can see some of the results there on screen So Fergus, as a former student of Newcastle what's your impression of the college system here in Durham? very unique I think is the is the first way of putting it and I think what it offers is a very good bridging gap between those who want to train hard race hard uh, with DU uh, compared to those who 
just want to come down and enjoy the rowing a few times a week. I think it's, it's brilliant to be able to offer that. Mm -hmm. uh, something that Durham can offer, something that Oxford and Cambridge can offer as well. And it's, it's a rarity across the UK. And I think if it means that more people get into rowing, because obviously DU can only take so many, oh, uh, so, so many rowers, because well, they've only got so many boats. Um, um, so I think to have an opportunity to get more people into this sport, and if that's through college rowing, then I'm absolutely all for it. If it means more participation and more people getting yeah, involved with it. And the majority of the college crews that we see racing here at the Grata, whether they be in the beginner categories or the intermediate categories, they, m most of them will have learned to row here in Durham and then in their second and third year gone on to the senior programs within their college from the beginner programs in their first year. Mm. So you get this lovely dynasty of people training people up and just trading their, their knowledge with the novices and paying it back. Mm. It's, it's one of the great I think, showcases of students getting stuck in and leading their clubs when they get very little actual coaching support from from professionals and mm. to see students getting stuck in running running their clubs and seeing their clubs go from strength to strength i think is, is just brilliant to see So we can see we've got some Cox 4s on the course. That's Trevelyan College with the Blue Spoons and Collingwood College on the Peel Wood side closest to the camera. And it's Trevelyan College that are leading out. They've had so many Cox 4s racing so far today. But what we're going to do is we're going to pass over to our presenters soon. Trevelyan College there still with the lead over Collingwood. Thank you so much for, to our amazing commentary team. Uh, they've been providing great commentary so far and we're really excited for the rest of the day. Today I'm joined by Rob on the sofa here. Rob was our absolute expert when it came to the Learn to Row that PAL TV went to. And yeah, I just want to hear more about rowing and how you learned to row and w whether anyone from PAL TV had a fantastic chance of winning a race today. Yeah, so um, it was great fun teaching Sydney Easy how to row the other day. Um, I think myself and George, you, the two sort of cast people that taught them how to row, we were shocked at how good they are. Um, threw them in the boat within half an hour. I genuinely say we could throw them out to the grass today and they wouldn't be the worst people here. I mean, that's good praise, I feel. It's, it's a low bar, but I mean, I, I was very impressed. Genuinely, I would very happily get them out there racing today. Very do, happily. Do you think they could give DU a run for their money? Well, perhaps with a little bit more training, just a little bit more. But you know what? They've only started to learn to row, what, two days ago, three days ago. It's worth it. Fantastic. And what have you thought about the brilliant um, races that we've had today? Has there been any shocks, anything you've really enjoyed so far today? Oh, well, Durham Gat is always a lovely, lovely weekend. Um, June, end of exams, always seems to be glorious weather. I mean, the weather day really is fabulous. We've really lucked out today. Um, sit on the bank, um, have a couple of pints, just watch the racing. It's been a gorgeous, lovely day. Are you racing today? Unfortunately not, no. I think my rowing days are slightly behind me now. I sit on the banks and spectate and support the club in a more wider means. You're too old now. Yeah, pretty much. I'm too old, yeah. <laughs> too old, too many beers. Fair enough. I mean, it is such a beautiful weather anyway, so it'd be really good to know if you're really enjoying the footage that we've got out there at the moment. And, yeah, what's it been like teaching people how to row and... What's kind of the process? Like, how was it when you were learning to row in particular? Yeah, so I learned to row quite a few years ago now. Um, back when I was sort of 15, um, I come from Cambridge, everyone in Cambridge rows. Um, but sort of bringing that skill set into sort of college rowing, teaching our novices how to row. So each year as a college, we run an intake problem pr um, process with our novices. We um, generally get about 100 sign ups. They have to go through all their swim tests with DCR, Durham College Rowing, the governing body of rowing. They um, go through that process. Then within um, sort of six months, they're racing on the river in fours. I mean, it's fantastic that college rowing means that it's so accessible to everyone and people can try it out for the first time in their life. 
But thank you so much for joining us on the sofa today. No worries. And we'll be back to our commentary team. Okay, welcome back to the commentary booth. It's no race on the course yet, but we had the Collingwood and Trevelyan women's maiden Cox Fours go past. That was race number 172 on your program. I'm running a little bit behind schedule here at the Durham Regatta. So the organizers are setting off the crews in quite quick succession to make up for time because obviously we don't want to be here all day with racing originally scheduled to finish at seven o'clock. Yeah, we've got a Champions League final to uh, to get to uh, to and watch later on this I afternoon. Know. Who's your money on, Fergus? Uh, I my heart says Inter Milan, my head says Man City. I completely agree with you. Yeah, I think yes. Yeah, huge day, uh, huge day of sport, huge weekend of sport, uh, and Dara Magata, of course, flagshipping that 190th edition of Dara Magata, one of the oldest taking place across the UK which is just fantastic to see the rowing events thriving, absolutely thriving in the northeast. Mm. And as Will said, just taking a little pause in racing at the moment. We've got a huge variety of events to bring you over the next wee while or so. Plenty of singles races, like the likes of the beginner singles, some J15 singles, intermediate singles, and then we can look forward to some Cox quads and Cox fours coming up later about 20, 25 minutes time or so. Well said. Such a variety of crews and stages of people's rowing careers on display. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the unique things about the sport at, at any event that you go to is that you can have people who will be out taking their, stro their first few strokes on the water. And then you look at something like Henley Royal, you'll have schoolboys and schoolgirls going up against Olympians, world champions, people who have been in the sport for decades. And to get that sort of mix and an event within the space of 10, 15 minutes is is very unique. And you, we've got something similar like this on display here just now. We've got novices going up against potent people who have potentially gone and raced at under 23 or junior world championships. Oh, definitely. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few people in the Durham College system that uh, have had successful careers as juniors as well. Uh, we're seeing there the Collingwood College crew that dispatched the Hill Bead 8 earlier on in our coverage just making sure they're tucked into the bank so there's enough space for the race that's on the start line to get past without any impeding going on of course you'll notice there with the design on the spoon of the Collingwood crew it's not the usual red white and black chevrons that they're known for so the set there they've got this this little purple mark so that's actually the Durham College rowing community's own set of blade they're not owned by any college it's owned by the college community and then clubs can apply for this set of eight skinny oars Ve very nice set of oars um, <laughs> that you can apply for and use at the uh, committee's discretion and this year it's mostly been Collingwood that have been successful in loaning them there you go that's maybe why they're so dominant this season it's all in the blades all in the blades I believe so yeah definitely <laughs> So just waiting for the next race to come down the track. Dozens of races taking place today and dozens still to, still to come, as Will has mentioned. And again, we get to do it all again tomorrow. Racing starting early again in the morning. And of course, you'll be able to get all of that on this live stream by PAL TV, powered by Osborne's. Delighted to have them on board as sponsors for this event to make it all happen and take place. Very, very grateful for that. Yeah. I know you're a Newcastle student, or a former Newcastle student, New Asperger's, but I say if you're if you're ever around in Durham, especially on a Monday night, Osborne's Monday. Is, is a brilliant, brilliant night out. Are you talking from experience? I am actually. I went there <laughs> after I went there after Eurovision. It's a really, really good night. Lovely, lovely building. <laughs> Well, as, 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 as is always in Durham, I think, you're not going to really complain about the decor of the facilities in such a historic town. <laughs> no, definitely not. Just taking a look at some of those crews on screen there, the Cox Fours, Durham University there, Dev Squad, we saw race earlier on in the day. They beat Collingwood in, in their Cox Four race. It was Collingwood that got the automatic progression through the round. So Durham obviously had to, they raced earlier on, won that race, came out, beat Collingwood 
and are progressing through to the next round of their Coxed Fours event. Mm -hmm. It's a little awkward there, wouldn't you say, for the crews. They're having just raced each other and one beating the other, and now they have to sit there waiting, sat right next to each other yeah. to finish landing and then go on and crack on particularly, and their recovery. Particularly if you end up in a race full of controversy or there's a clashing of the blades or, or something's not quite right. So to be sat there next to them, there certainly wouldn't be any um, polite conversation taking place, I don't think. Mm -hmm. We believe the race that we're waiting on next is race number 165 in the Open Beginner Cox Fours between Leeds University and Lancaster University. See there the Hillbead crew basking in the sun as well. <laughs> there they went out, they won their eighth race. Mm. No, they didn't, my mistake. They did not. They lost to Collingwood, just like most people have done today. Sounds about right this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we believe it is beginner Cox Fours, Leeds University going up against Lancaster, two programmes who are particularly good at churning out their beginner athletes. Leeds University connected, and I think work very closely with the GB Start programme that is set up there under the stewardship of Dan Grant, their, their head coach. So Fergus, for non-rowing people tuning in to watch our coverage could you just give a little bit of insight what the GB start program is I can indeed Please. let me just let me get the business pitch ready to go GB start is essentially the the talent ID program run by British rowing that was set up pre pre London 2012 to essentially to, to, to find Olympic medalists to find the next generation of of talent I mean the systems that we've got at the moment the schools and the clubs at junior and your, your entry level at at a university level so your, your standard routes into into rowing but then of course GB start program will find those people who are who are tall who are big who are strong uh, and get them into the sport I'm Heather and I'm here with Pal TV to explain the regatta for course for the 190th Durham Regatta. Behind me is the start of the race course. Uh, it's a stake boat start, which means that both boats are starting from a complete standstill and released at the same time. On a short course like the 700 meter one on Saturday, the start is incredibly important At this point, we're about halfway down the short course, so 350 metres in. Crews are starting to likely feel pretty tired by now, which is where there's a real boost when supporters are cheering along. For the rowers participating in a race, the footbridge signifies the end. After this, there's about 40 metres left to go. For those participating in the longer course, they've got to go all the way through the traditional Elvet bridges, all the way round the corner under Framwell Gate Bridge, right before Prevens Bridge. So Durham Regatta is about more than just the rowing. We are here today to support the regatta, 
as a uh, <clears throat> beg your pardon, as an added bonus to them, so that they get more people in, which obviously they need the money. So that's the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing this for the past about ten to fifteen years. Oh wow! And you get a lot of people visiting. Yeah, we we have a tendency on the Sunday. Uh, we have more people here because obviously people go shopping or work, bless them, on a Saturday. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and how far has the furthest one been driven up from? Or are these all local to the northeast? Most of them are, are quite local, within like a, say, 50 mile or 60 mile radius. Um, mm. We have other shows where people come from one end of the country to, uh, to the other. Um, mm. But, yeah. Oh, great. And will you be watching much of the rain today? We'll be seeing it this afternoon once, once everybody's in, because obviously we, we have to marshal it because there's, there's members of the public and, and, and uh, children in the boat. Once everybody's in place, we can then have something to eat and then go and watch the, uh, the rowing. Oh, great. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a nice day. Back up on the start line. And... We're just waiting. I believe there's a race in singles lining up on the course. So this is a race in the Junior 16 single skulls, we believe, that we can see. Very tight off the start line between these two crews. Yeah, back out with the single skulls. We've had the eights, we've had the cox fours. We're back with the single skulls. It's a cracking race that's taking place here. So, so tight between these two single scholars. And just less than, less than a length separating them as we're getting about two or three hundred metres into the race. Sculler 287 there out in front, leading at the moment. And he's doing really well, hugging that bank. He's not drifting too far off it, not drifting too far in towards it as well. He's yeah, sculling remarkably well there up the up the bank and that, that straight course that he's got at the moment is paying absolute dividends he's stretching out clear water now over his opposition as they're approaching the halfway point in the race So the two single scholars just coming up towards our commentary position, about 50 metres or so from us. And we can see there the scholar from Camus Rowing Club already starting to wind down. He's got this race absolutely under control. He's got himself in a very commanding position as they're coming past us. And his opposition from Bradford Grammar School. Still working hard, just coming into shot there. Bradford Grammar School still working hard, doing his best to keep himself in contention and allowing himself the opportunity to pounce on any opportunities that may present themselves. But Camus have had the, the ability to co control this race from start to finish, really, and he is just cruising under the, uh, the bridge on his way to provisionally winning this race. Mm. It's so tricky racing in a single one shot opposition gets ahead you're all alone in that boat and it's all down to you to make sure that you can try and get that gap closed with the crew ahead yeah certainly and you know, I think winning that singles race is one of the best feelings I think in this sport when you're able to go out match racing one on one get yourself out on top and win oh, there's, there's nothing like it but we're switching from the singles to the Cox Fours are back with the college crews and we've got St Mary's going up against St Cusper. St Cusper. St Cusper. So there you go, Will. Thanks for sorting out that one. Of Durham. So yeah, great tussle between these two college crews. Um, Mary's there in their purple, always confused sometimes on the, on the water because their kit looks a lot like Durham University Boat Club. 
and we can see there the crew are giving it large effort but it's the St. Cuthbert Society crew slightly strayed off of their line here need to get themselves straight and it seems that St. Mary's College has capitalised on that slightly but there's a crowd there from Mary's absolute scenes in the St. Mary's College crew there that lead that they have managed to develop in the opening stages has now just been decimated by St. Cuthbert's who have now closed the gap to about half a length or so and, uh, and if St. Cuthbert's are able to hold themselves keep some sort of composure they could draw themselves right back into contention and win this one unbelievable racing here St Mary's College had what a, a, a cracking star there out in front leading but then it was Crab Central from their bowsiders that, that cost them their lead in the race and now all of a sudden with a couple of hundred metres to go it's everything to play for I know it even seems coming past the Hillbead landing stage we'll wait for our camera to pan around and adjust but it could be St Cuthbert Society with the advantage these crews seems like they're tiring quite a bit here on this course they will have already raced earlier on today this has been an event that's been going on since race number five this morning at the early hours on the saturday so there's been recovering making sure they rest up mary seems to have got their advantage back over the st Cuthbert society crew but as we've just learned at the beginning of this race, that advantage could mean nothing. It's all still to play for as they approach the footbridge and the finish line. It certainly is. The camera at the moment on St Mary's as they're approaching the last few stages of that race. And we'll have to bring you that race result later on down the line. We're switching from, from the fours to the eights. And what has been an unbelievable start is race number 168 the women's beginner eight between Collingwood College and St Chad's College <gasps> oh Mary's with a crab there and they're straying right off their course oh that blocking is absolutely St. Society chaotic. on the finish line absolute chaos here at the finish line at the Durham Regatta <gasps> and the Mary's crew are tipping in. so Mary's oh gonna go goodness. in the Mary's crew what? are sideways and it seems like that's a capsize there on the finish line. What a but we have another finish. race on the course. It'll be interesting to see what decision the marshals make here for the Chads and Collingwood crews because that Mary's and Cuth's crew on the finish line are obstructing the course. They've not reached the finish oh my line. Goodness. Really They've not reached the finish line and St. Mary's have come over, blocked the course proceeded to capsize so i'll be, we'll hope that everyone in that mary's crew is okay of course first priority is the rowers well-being really really exciting race there with some crabs an unfortunate ending with st mary's crew catching a crab and going on to capsize but it's the chad's women's novice eight now on the course with a monumental lead over the collingwood novices brilliant brilliant race going on here yeah panning back with the eights again and that's uh oh and um, here we it seems to be that the umpires have intervened and told the crew to wait as there's still a little obstruction on the course from those fours yeah as we bring you more information our best wishes go out to those rowers in the mary's crew we hope everything is okay in that but we can see the marshals were just drifting over to, to check in on them uh, so we're hoping for a swift resolution and the well-being of everyone involved and obviously for the safety of the event we have got the racing in and the event behind has been paused we can see the eights there just racing looking over their shoulders Seems like a few high fives being passed down that chad's crew the umpires may have handed them the early win there over the collingwood eight i think that makes sense given the margin they had at the time wouldn't mm. you say fergus yeah definitely but uh all provisional. It's all provisional until the uh, the umpires and the marshals say otherwise. And we can see there. There will now presumably be just a pause for a few minutes on the course as we wait for St Mary's to be safely cleared off of the course, and then racing will be able to get back underway. So while we wait for 
the races on the course. We can actually see just from our commentary position a few people from St Mary's College Boat Club on the bank making their way down just to check their friends and teammates are okay. Um, while we wait for the racing to get back underway, I think this gives Fergus and I a good opportunity to talk a bit more about some other rowing things. So I guess Fergus, first of all, like congratulations are in order for your commentary prowess as I hear that and you'll see there the Collingwood Cox now just getting a better look at what's going on yeah, we're just keeping one ear on the marshal who's going out over the tunnel and we're just trying to pick up what we can we can see there the two crews who are racing before the racing was halted, just waiting there. They haven't spun round or anything yet, which is quite interesting. They haven't spun round, they haven't joined the crew, the queue of crews making their way back to Durham Amateur Rowing Club. It's quite a narrow stretch up there, I must say. Um, the official turning point is just a bit further beyond the footbridge. So, yeah, I think we'll have those singles make sure they're past first, but then there'll be enough space for the Collingwood and the Chad's crews to get spun round and ahead back towards the boat tent square. Collingwood for them it's time to put the boat back on the rack and Chads will be pleased with their victory as they progress through to the next race in the women's beginner eight. So as you said a little pause in racing that's taking place at the moment and Will Tyrrell I suppose that gives you an opportunity to reflect on what is your final Durham regatta as a student of this fine university and I suppose the question I've got for you is well you've been involved with the club as a rower most recently you're president of of your of your college boat club and what's that been like for you leading leading your club over over recent months uh, in your final year as a student it's been a lot of juggling I must say and you you you, you yourself Fergus were president of a club so you know that I think there's a lot of rewarding moments that go into running a boat club but a lot of challenges as well because it's never going to just be plain sailing um, a lot of logistics as well no one ever really warned you about the, the number of the amount of paperwork that goes into organizing these events because suddenly <laughs> of course it dawns on you that someone is responsible for making sure that crews are entered and boats end up on trailers and that falls to the president so there's a lot of back and forth and discussions being held within the college rowing community as the um, DCR College Captain's Facebook group chat is very, very old and you just add and remove people as they come and go and people organise themselves and make sure that the weir stays safe here in Durham as well. Lots and lots of college clubs on here with lots of crews wanting to get out on the water at very specific times because we've all got lectures to go to. So the mornings can be rather busy, Wednesday afternoons are rather busy. So what exists actually for these novice crews that we've seen racing just now is there's allotted novice hours on the Wednesday and Sunday <laughs> afternoon where no other clubs are allowed to go out on the water apart from these novice crews so it's a very safe time on the weir for them to go out in wooden boats not worry too much about what position they're on the river and just get some rowing in. Safer for the novices or safer for the rest of the rowing community? <laughs> it's a mixture for both. Um, it has been the case a few times where someone will forget its novice hours and you'll have a senior men's four charging up and down the weir, du ducking and diving between <laughs> these wood, old wooden boats that the novices are training in. But um, no, everyone respects those novice hours really, really well. So that's a brilliant thing from the college community. Everyone stays very connected and doesn't go off and do their own thing. So lots of milling about on the water at the moment, just checking in on St Mary's, removing them from the course, and they'll be just checking up and down the whole course just to make sure that we are able to get racing back underway. So Fergus, which event will you be looking forward to most 
this afternoon and also looking forward to tomorrow when Newcastle University come down and race. Well, I think you, you've you answered your, um, your question there. Where <laughs> you, I'm really looking forward to seeing how, the, how Newcastle will get on yesterday, uh, tomorrow, I should say, in in the open events and the championship events with some of their fours going to be racing over the long course as well, which is very exciting. The eights, of course, over the short course. Uh, and on the men's and the women's side of things, just getting that final preparation, final taste of racing in, uh, in combinations ready for Henley Women's next weekend. And on the men's side of things, getting the opportunity to go up and race DU ahead of Henley Robert Gatta, because results from this, from, from Durham Gatta, will have a huge impact on potential qualifications for Henley Royal. Of course. Who might get a pre-qualification, who might have to go through the dreaded qualifiers. So it's so important how results go this coming weekend. And not just for Newcastle, for DU, but for um, the other universities as well. So York will be here, Sheffield are here. Durham School Leeds. as well, looking to qualify in the Prince of Wales, no doubt. They have a very tidy quad that I've seen out training on the water. And it's brilliant as well. For the coverage tomorrow, there'll be races taking place on the long course. The full 1,800 metres here on the way in Durham. And this is the only, it'll be the only day in the entire year where crews will be racing through Elvit Bridge in the same direction at the same time. It could bring some really, really brilliant racing going through such an old medieval historic bridge at full pelt in fours and other smaller boats and trying to make sure that you get your steering right because you say you can't win a race in a start but you can certainly lose it and then here as well you can't win your race going through Elvet Bridge but you can also lose it there oh, too. Oh hugely, hugely. It's, I think it's one of the most challenging pieces of steering that you can do across the, um, across the entire UK racing circuit. It's because of the angle at the bridge on the river, it's, it's, it's so difficult to get it right, particularly in a coxed four when, when you're going so quickly through it. Doubles you can get away with because obviously your blades are shorter, um, your, your sculling blades are shorter than your, than your sweep blades, so it makes it slightly easier. But sweep blades, quite often, you'll be heading round it and there'll be a call from the cox for less pressure on one side, more on the other as you're trying to get round it. So there'll be more pressure on your, on your bow side blades and quite often you might just have your stroke side is potentially just dropping out for just a stroke or two just to ensure that you get through Elvet Bridge because that's the most important thing there's no point going full throttle and then colliding with it because then quite frankly you've blown your entire race no, exactly. you're far better dropping the rate slightly potentially drawing in the blades if you have to and just making that tactical decision to get through the blades and then just go back up through the gears once you're safely through the bridge and then mounting that final sprint in the in the second half of the race with about yeah as you said but 900 meters or so to go before the finish line. So we're hearing now, and you can see there from our pictures that the girls from the Mary's crew that capsized in that Cox 4 event are okay. So that's very nice to see. But just to add to your point there about racing through Elvet Fergus, I've done it a few times in the head racing and at the regatta in a double in Cox 4s and it terrifies me every single time. It never gets easy. Every single time when I'm on the course and I'm approaching Elvet Bridge during a race, uh, just the adrenaline starts pumping, the heart rate gets higher, and it's nothing to do with the way you're rowing, it's just that it's added just obstacle. It's the bridge. I would argue it's case to be one of the trickiest obstacles on a national rowing race. Completely agree with you. Completely agree with you on that. And, and it's one that I've collided with many a time. Yes. Uh, in, I've done it I've done the hat trick, actually, of, of sculling boats. I've collided with it in the single, in the double, and Cox's quad. And I was steering every single one of those. Did you ever race there when you were at school? I did. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Came down, made the trip down from Edinburgh and raced, raced Small Boat's Head in February in the freezing cold, snow quite often. Yes. Sat there up at the start line thinking... Uh, do you know what, why am I here? But <laughs> then you go out and, and it's, I, think, I think it's one of the nicest courses that you can go out and race. I think, yes, we've got the challenge with the bridge, but once you're onto this race course stretch here, it's, it's lovely. It's a really nice piece of water to row on. Mm. And the majority of these crews that are contained within the weir and the time will only have the opportunity to race at events here in Durham and then on the Tyne in Newcastle. And these are two completely different courses mm. when you compare them in terms of length, width, tidal and non-tidal and Fergus you spent a lot of time training with Newcastle University on the Tyne so which which course would you prefer to train on would you say? Oh the Tyne 
You any think? day of the week you take the time I mean it's the reason why Durham Uni make the trip up on, on Wednesdays and on weekends to, to train at the time because it's it's better well what can I say Durham students wanting to come up and use the facilities that Newcastle have got <laughs> okay, so, but no I mean why wouldn't you because just to play devil's advocate I could do kind of agree with you there if, I mean you've got five you've got five kilometres of water that you can use from Newburn right the way up to up to Wylam a really nice part of, of the river and then if you want to you can go 15k out to the North Sea and it'll take you all the way through the bridges in town if you want to go that far for a nice big outing. Does it often happen? Out to, out to town. Well, I, I've seen lots of po- pictures on social media of crews rowing through central Newcastle, but do they go any further than that towards north and south? And some of the sessions that we would do in winter, you head into town through Millennium Bridge and you take a couple of turns. And at that point, you're thinking, oh, we're actually heading quite far out into uh, far out. And you think, oh, gosh, I've got to turn and row all the way back as well. <laughs> it's quite a long session. Maybe. Yeah, normally one of our one of our long ones would be out doing 12 2Ks or 10 3Ks on the water. And that'll take us Millennium Bridge and beyond. But it's a lot of fun because, you, because you've got the space to have three or four eights wide for the pretty much the entirety of the time. So you're just knocking lumps out of each other for for a couple of hours in the water. It's, it's awesome. Really good fun. And then obviously you've got the Newburn Strait at high tide you can line up just about seven or eight boats wide there um, provided you haven't got anyone going in the opposite direction just line them up and that is just perfect summer racing prep a kilometre we do a huge amount of our seat racing over that distance as well Um, and it just makes for so much fun so much fun you mentioned there a bit of unique terminology there Um, seat racing so might have a few non-rowing people tuning in that aren't familiar with the lingo. So, Fergus, could you give us a rundown on seat racing? Do you think? Yeah, certainly. It's the, th- the term "exact science" probably doesn't quite apply to no, it. No, exactly. But it, 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 it's one of the tools for selection that rowing coaches have. And ultimately, you'll line up your two match crews over a set distance, let's say thousand meters, and then you'll race them. And then you'll make make a change. One person out of one boat, one person out of another. Switch them around and then you'll race again and you'll find that if one crew crew a wins the first piece by three seconds then you switch your athletes around but then crew b wins the piece by five seconds well the athlete that switched from crew a into crew b is deemed to have made the boats go faster and has therefore won the seat race so it's it's all very well put it's all about timings and 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 margins and a lot of it will be done in, in coxless fours, coxed fours, or in, or in quads and doubles. And it's all about finding out, well, who's actually able to, to move boats. Because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for, for crews to come together very, very shortly. Because all you'll have is just a, a quick warm-up paddle to get used to time together. And it's who's going to make an impact on the crew that's, that's going to win the race. If you go in and try and win the race on your own, or win a seat race on your own, you ain't going to do it, and you're going to lose. You've got to come in. You've got to slot into the crew's rhythm and and positively impact that mm. and it can go on for hours seat racing it can go on for absolutely hours depending on how many pieces and how many combinations a coach wants to try it's yeah it's, no, some of the yeah. college crews here do a lot of seat racing especially collingwood you'd be surprised to hear <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's obviously down to the equipment as well you want as much equality in the equipment so i think that's where it becomes difficult for colleges to conduct seat racing because a lot of these crews will have a top shell for Cox 4, but then the next shell below that that's available won't be anywhere near mm. as good. So it sort of makes the seat racing a bit redundant. So it's been the case a few times throughout the years that colleges will lend Cox 4s to each other that are as similar as possible <laughs> for everyone to conduct their seat racing So if they would like to. Yeah. So... At the moment, we are our camera is looking towards the start line, and we are just waiting for the course to be fully cleared after after St Mary's took a wee tumble up at the, up the finish line. We've got an excellent view down to the start. Our next race is currently lining up on on at the moment, and yeah. And at the moment, what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break in the commentary and hand over to a quick quick video, which will be taking you through all of the action and explaining what is taking place on the course. No rush, go 
me Looking for push and shove Look your peace and love Sent a peace and glove Now you got a girl right now No rush, go on, move down Back and forth, push and shove Make your peace and love Sent a peace and Now you got a girl right now No rush, go on, move down Back and forth, push and shove Make your peace and love Sent a peace and Now you got a girl right now Old gang, old man Old school, young jam Unmissable This is Osborne's In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you, where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. Okay, looking up at the course, we've still got those singles getting lined up. We'll just wait for the victorious Chad's Women's Novice 8 to get the other side of the start line and then we'll be underway in this singles race. It's nerve-wracking for those single scholars sat on the start line and they'll have been sat there mm. orig originally not knowing why on earth they were sat there um, because they won't have known about all the chaos that was unfolding previously with, with St Mary's in, in the Cox Four. They just sat there then the news will eventually trickle through to them but because of the unique nature of Durham Magatta they won't have had too much of an opportunity to actually keep themselves moving stay active and chances are they'll have been sat there on the start line just for the past 10-15 minutes or so unsure as to what's actually going on I know yeah it's really really nerve-wracking we can see the Scala on the race course side in that red boat just adjusting his line he almost pointed across the river and then back the boat down to just make sure he could shift his boat over a few boat widths to make sure he had a nice line down the course obviously we want these crews to stay well apart in singles there's no steers it's all down to the pressure you're putting through your feet onto those oars and we can see they're underway now. So as Will said, after break in racing, after St Mary's capsized, we are back. We're back with the single skulls, switching from coxed fours to single skulls. We of course had the eights racing that was halted in the middle of their racing but these single skulls are motoring uh, through the first 250 meters of this race and from this camera here we'll need to wait for it to pan but it's looking so close between these two skullers very little separating them as they are coming through the course really really neck and neck as we progress from the Collingwood landing stage towards Hild B's landing stage and then on towards the finish line. This has been one of the closest races we have had all afternoon here. And it is just the sculler on the Pilar Wood side of things is leading but only just, about half a length separating these two scullers. And that can change so quickly, so quickly over this short distance that we've got. Even a burst of 10, a burst of power of 10 can make all the difference. But having said that, coming past Hill Bead landing stage, the sculler on the left-hand side of your screen is just starting to stretch out his lead. It was half a length, we're moving up to about two-thirds of a length, nearly three-quarters of a length as we're coming to the final stages. So this is race number 180, the open intermediate single skulls between Durham School and Teed Rowing Club. And it's the local favourite, Kinghorn from Durham School, who's leading out and seems to be taking the win here. Oh, sorry, it's the other way around. My apologies. It's Teed Rowing Club ahead of Durham School.
So there we have it, the single scholar safely through the finish line this time around. And we are back with Cox Fours. We're back with the college rowing. So closest to the Peelor Wood side, that is the Hill Bead Cox Four of with um what is it? Henry, Tom, Dom and Rory sat in that crew and they'll be going right past their own landing stage that they train out of week in week out we have a big cheer so we can hear in the distance coming from the hill bead landing stage you can see there the crews absolutely level as we come towards the finish line yeah we're treated to a cracking race in the single skulls beforehand and now we've got the exact same thing again even tighter this time round in the Cox Fours, Hill Bead Will, as you said, had that early advantage, but it certainly looks like it has shifted over at the moment. And this is, of course, this is the beginner Cox Fours, and Hill and St. Bead going up against Durham School. These two crews sharing the water session after session, and it is. I think the schoolboys who might just be starting to overturn the Oof. and it is what an unbelievable final 250 meters from the schoolboys of Durham School they have rode through St Hild and St Bede's to provisionally take the win in this beginner Cox four race and will that's got to be devastating for I know gutting Bede. gutting for the guys there I know they've trained that combination really really hard and they're really excited about getting a lot of racing going on I was very pleased that they made it through the first round but I think they're the Durham school crew are just a bit too much for them back to the drawing board but as beginners we're hopefully going to see them back again next season hopefully they've enjoyed their first season of rowing and we'll get them back in in combinations as the academic year gets back underway in in September but we're back with the drone shot overhead at the start line. Unbelievable pictures that this drone is able to, to bring us today. Some cracking imagery. So waiting for a race in the single skulls. And this is something that we can see now. The singles are quite far beyond the start line. This is something that we suspected would happen since the removal of the stake boats at the start line the official start lines over there in the distance where the bunting is. So this is race number 189 between York University and St Andrews University. So two crews that have made the long journey here to Durham, especially St Andrews. They've brought this single and a pair that's made it through many, many rounds so far today. And after a bit of funky steering off the start, I think it looks like we've got another close race in the single scales. But that sculler from I think as the camera pans round, I'm going to keep talking, fill the time a little bit because I'm not quite sure, but it is the York sculler from York University. Half a length advantage over St Andrews and as you said, Will, an absolute journey and a half they've made to get down here uh, for the racing. But why, why wouldn't you come down? High quality racing against university crews from across the country. Exactly. And saying that, the York crew is still ahead, but I feel like the St Andrews crew is starting to eat into that lead. That Certainly, they've, yeah. That they've managed to get in the initial half of the race. And in the single, of course, it's much easier and quicker to get that distance back into your opponent compared to the fast moving eights and quads that we also have on the river and today that is exactly what oh the uh, st andrews university scholar has done an advantage that was over half a length is now close to about a canvas or so something that can be overturned in just a few strokes time the york scholar looks like he's just starting to fade a little bit we've seen a look over over at his right hand side just to check the move that is coming from st andrews university as we pan around focus is still on him but you can tell the cheers and the shouts that are coming from the bank is indicating that it's still an unbelievably close race between these two scholars. We pan round just to get see if we can get a wider shot of, of what's going on on the course. But that's one that's going to go absolutely down to the wire as they head under the bridge with about 50 metres or so to go before they race. 
But we're switching it up. We're back with Cox fours now again. So you can see there the York Sculler managing to hold that lead and extend his advantage over the St Andrews Sculler. That was a very strong last 100 metres or so because at one point it was, it was neck and neck as they came past the likes of Hill Bead, came past us mm. in, the, in the commentary position. So a mighty final 250 metres or so from, from the York University Sculler to bring them back into contention. So now then, Cox falls on the course. Another close race that we've got here. <laughs> so we're sticking with Cox quads at the moment. And the next race that will be coming up will be the women's G15 quads. That will be between Yarm School and Bradford Grammar School in just a couple of minutes' time. But outside our commentary position, it's St Cuthbert Society leading this Cox Falls race. Apology. I think that's is that Sheffield University colours, Fergus, on, on the camera. I believe so, in the yellow and black. So Sheffield University versus St Cuthbert Society. There we are, Sheffield taking the victory there versus St Cuthbert's. So seems to be a a real mixture of crews emerging victorious on the P. Lawwood and the race course side. I don't think there's any advantage between the two sides as per the results from the racing today, but I'm still sticking to it and saying that I would prefer to start <laughs> on the P. Lawwood side. There you have it, the completely unscientific opinion there. We can see on screen we're back with the Cox Quads, the women's J15 Cox Quads, as we mentioned, and the crew on screen. Bradford Grammar School unsure where their opposition yarm school are at the moment just waiting to pick them up on screen cox looking over their shoulder not sure Do yarm may have had a few issues at the start line we can't see them from our commentary position so it seems like they are behind the bradford grammar school crew So from Bradford's point of view, that's an outstanding to be a position to be in. That far ahead, oh, there we can see there's been some sort of equipment failure, surely, from the Yarm School crew. Yeah, a technical difficulty just off the start. That's gutting to see there. So it will be Bradford Grammar School likely rowing over and provisionally booking themselves a place in the next round. Yarm School, disaster for them. We can see them spinning around on the course. Perhaps that's their race over, or perhaps there might be something coming, whether or not they'll, they'll re-row it, or I'm not quite sure, but Bradford are certainly cracking on. Wait for confirmation from race control to confirm what is happening with this race in the G15 quads. But Bradford Grammar School coming past our commentary position with about 200 metres to go, less than in their heat of the J15 quads. Sun continuing to absolutely beam down here. Day one of Durham Magatta. I know, I'm slowly inching my way further into this commentary gazebo that we've got set up <laughs> as the sun pans round as the day progresses. Of course, I started here at half past six this morning. We had a lovely bit of shade during my first stint in the booth. But now we've got some eights lining up on the course. I believe this is race number 190 that we're going to be waiting for between University College and St. Peter's School in the women's beginner eights category. Of course, University College already making it through one round of racing earlier in a very, very tight race just before we came 
at a, this race happened at about 3.30 earlier and managed to win by about three quarters of a length. It was a wonderful race to see lots of noise getting involved there on the bank as the race happened. So what we're going to do now while we wait for this women's eight to get set up on the bank we are going to do a little commentary handover so my thanks to F fergus for joining me for the past hour and a half it's been a pleasure will it has been there's been some really good racing we've had some tight stuff and any sort of chaos that unfolds is always always good for the spectators but and we've got another couple of hours of unbelievable racing that's going to be taking place and we get to do it all again tomorrow yes so um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Will. And I'll see you again very, very soon. <laughs> Okay, University 8s are on the course. It's Sheffield University on the race course side and St. Cuthbert Society on the Pelor Woods side. Seems to be Sheffield University taking the early advantage in this race. A very frantic and furious start. I always love watching these 8s race off the start line. I'm now joined in the commentary position with Heather. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. How was your race earlier on? It was excellent. We really enjoyed it. We unfortunately lost and I've checked the Power TV live stream and they were actually showing a pre-recorded video. So you'd have to have been there in the moment to have covered that one. Would you say that's fortunate for you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> but honestly, I can tell you from being in the boat, the spectators on the bank are what makes the difference right now. Okay. Like they're, you know, they're motivating the crews. They're really pushing it forward. You know, that's when you hear someone like shouting your name, that's what pu that's what's pushing you. And I think for these eights, that's probably what they're experiencing right now. Oh, definitely. We've had a really large cohort of Sheffield University students from their boat club are all here racing throughout the weekend. So they'll be on the bank, nowhere else to go, really, apart yeah. from supporting their crews throughout the weekend. So yeah. huge cheer for them. And, and they're make, long making support. it very easy. Oh, definitely. The St. Cuthbert Society crew racing on their home water but i think it's always difficult racing as a college crew oh, yeah. going up against well we can just see them going University past the commentator's box now looking a little bit tired but you know keeping form right until the end um, we've got some singles racing now Just seeing St. Cuthbert's coming through to the end there. So we believe this next race on the course is race between Yarm School and St. Leonard's School in the singles and Another crew also on the course in the Cox Fours. That's another Yarm School boat that's taken the early advantage here over a crew, I believe that's Lancaster University. Looking like they're quite coming back quite strong, the Lancaster University. Mm. Interesting the technique of rowing in bucket hats. <laughs> I'm not convinced. I'm a big fan of the fashion trends that we've been seeing throughout <laughs> this regatta. I went for the visor, I think that's preferable. I'm not sure I'd trust the bucket hat to stay on, I'm not going to lie. No, I don't really suit them. But they're fun to watch. And that's so probably the Leonard's and Yarm single coming through there. Mm -hmm. So it's the Leonard's crew there, the local racer, taking the win. 
and now turning our attention back to this junior Cox 4 event. It's Yarm School on the race course side coming past our commentary position. Quite a Bit compelling of... lead there by the looks of it. Mm. Ah. Some more double skulls back in action on the course. A slight delay in our program for the regatta. So the umpires are starting these races as soon as they can to get through. Lots the to catch up on for me and Will. <laughs> lots, lots, of, lots of things to keep track of. Um, lots of races still to come. Um, hopefully every single race will be able to happen before it gets too late on in the day. Yeah, they're really chasing them through now. And you can tell when you're waiting in that um, marshalling stage, it's very tense up there. Mm. The sun's beating down, you're getting quite tired, and you're, you're kind of sitting next to your competition for uh, quite a while before you race. So it kind of psychs you out a bit, is or at least our team did. <laughs> what, how noisy is it over there? Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of people on the bank. There's marshals yelling different instructions. I think that's what I found a little bit confusing. Um, and you know when your blades are scraping against the people you're next to that um, can get quite it gets into your head really when you're seeing the people you're about to go against so that seems to be their Durham Amateur Rowing Club versus Hexham Rowing Club with the Durham Amateur crew on the Pilo Wood side with the advantage down the course Some of the doubles coming through here. Okay, and now turning our attention to the Open Elite Singles. This is a race I've been waiting for for a long time. <laughs> City of Cambridge, Ed Gardner ah. versus Leeds Rowing Club of Newton. <laughs> spoke to Ed earlier as he was making his way to the boat tent. He's driven Very from Cambridge good. this morning ah. with the single strapped to the roof of his car oh. to come here and race wow. especially. Um, well, Will, I can tell you, my parents were also speaking to Ed Gardner. Oh, lovely. <laughs> parents so, who are up. Ed Gardner's got a lot of fans in Pal TV, clearly. Yes, of who, course. Who are your odds on for winning this one? Or well, Ed didn't fancy his chances too much. He's had a bit of a... It's not has been his greatest season, of course. Okay. Veterans of the Durham rowing scene may remember that Ed was vice president of Durham University Boat Club a couple wow. of years ago. Okay. And he's got some strong pedigree that he wouldn't let me say on air because he's not really <laughs> up to that standard anymore in his mind. But no, brilliant, brilliant skull. And he spent a lot of time racing in the quad down in the south lately, setting his sights on qualification for Henley Royal Regatta in the Prince of Wales Challenge wow. Cup. Wow, coming with, up very soon, of course. Yes, of so course, I guess this is really kind of two, three weeks time. So yeah, as much racing experience as possible okay. for this man. And of course, the lead scholar of Newton will continue to race in the single throughout the season. But it's yeah. Ed on ah. the race course side with the advantage there in the white cap. Um, in the I think shell it'll be clearer when they come past us, won't it? Yes, in that shell that he's owned for many, many years, that he's taken it up and there down the goes. country with him as he's relocated from Durham, Cambridge, and so on throughout his career. So, very, very pleased for him. He's made this journey all the way, and it would have been a shame to see him knocked out in the first round of a his convincing racing. Convincing win as well. Yes, exactly. Well, congratulations to Ed Gardner. Make the trip up more often. You should, he's a lovely man. <laughs> Sounds like we're going through all of the... 
Valentine. This is race number 177. More singles. This is now the beginner category, not the elite category. Okay. Between Edinburgh University's Maverick. No, sorry, Marwick, I should say. Well, Imagine the surname of Maverick. Oh, I feel yeah. quite passionate about Never the next mind. one. Um, and so John's <laughs> College Richards, Heather, fill oh. us in on what's going on here. John's Richards, um, he is the captain of St. John's College and he's just beat the coach earlier today. John uh, is also the cox, he cocks the women's crew at Weehaw, so I stared into his eyes for two hours, lucky me. Um, he's very, a brilliant man and he actually taught himself to skull. Did he? Yeah, so great to see him out today on the water. Oh, John's a very familiar face in every single John's College crew. He will no doubt be involved with it in some oh, way. Oh yeah. Big support. Year. Yeah, we'll miss him when he's gone. This is his fourth, uh, fourth year final regatta. Wow. Not quite sure who's out in front yet. Having a bit of a lag here in the commentating booth, uh, but as the rowers are going past near the end, we're able to commentate. So there he is, so John Richards. Is he out in front? I hate to break it too. I can see an Edinburgh Scholar's head poking out of the, the near side of the bank. Well, congratulations to Edinburgh. Yes. And congratulations to John to making it this far. Oh no, formidable racing from him. And this wow. certainly won't be his last race on the weekend. Is he not racing Cox Sports tomorrow morning? I imagine. <laughs> I don't know. I think it might be his last race, but... Um, Never mind, my bad. You know, he's won one today. Exactly. <laughs> so, I believe another race on the course is going to be race number 174 between Lancaster University and Buick Amateur Rowing Club in the Open Intermediate Cox Fours. On the Pilar Wood side is that Buick crew. Apologies again for the lack of communication. Our, our feed in the commentator's booth is slightly questionable, so we're not entirely sure which race is going past at the moment until Thank we can see them in person ourselves. Thankfully, it hasn't affected the coverage for yourselves. And ah, there, we've got Tyne 4 pulling through there. I think that's the crew that just beat me. Um, looking incredibly convincing. Can't quite see who they're racing against. Okay, open J14 doubles are on the course we can hear. Which is a very, very tricky category. Racing in a two-man boat at such a young age there's a really a lot to think about for these young school athletes out from our commentary position it is Lancaster University versus Berwick and it's Berwick with the advantage as they come past the cut landing stage by about half a length Just here now, it's Berwick still with the lead as they come through. Just taking about three quarters line. of a length? Yes. And some double skulls now going past Durham Amateur Rowing Club.
apologies about the silence as we try and technically recover. Hopefully it should be coming across on your screen. Back up and running here in the commentary booth. And I think we're back to a live viewing for us. So hopefully we can provide a couple more um, accurate commentary. Some wonderful drone shots. I'm so pleased that there's a drone. It's oh, a absolutely. I think, I think in some ways it gives us a better eagle eye of some of those closer races where even the rowers themselves don't know who's winning. Mm, certainly. It's really difficult to tell in the moment from within the boat because you're so focused on the racing. The last yeah. thing you want to do is look across at the crew next to you. That's yeah. not going to change. I mean, if you're doing it right, your head should be in the boat. Exactly. So just a little gap in the racing as we wait for some crews to paddle beyond the start line and get themselves clear of that starting area. And there'll be the upcoming races getting themselves lined up shortly of course no stake boats in use at the moment um the stake boats were removed earlier at around one o'clock um yeah. will we've got some a ex uh, very exciting announcement and be sure to watch this tonight bbc look north east tonight will be featuring some of our content and some of the rowers wow yeah big Wonderful excitement news. for pal tv and actually really exciting for durham regatta itself bbc look north Look northeast. Look I believe. northeast. Okay. Yeah. Regionally sp Wonderful. Regional specific. I think we've got some crews rowing back to the start now. That's a long way back. That's a long way back when you're tired. Will's got a couple of admirers. There's a few people that I know that are waving as they walk past. We've got the Hildby <laughs> first date standing outside our little fan girling. So <laughs> fan girling. It's really you, not the case. Wow. So I might go and have to join them in a minute. I am absolutely ravenous. Ah, well. I don't need to signal someone to go yeah, and grab me some I think food. all of this sitting outside, I've lost my appetite. And then I uh, started eating some wonderful chips from one of the food stalls. Um, devoured them. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's exactly <laughs> I offered like two exactly to other people that I thought now. The rest are for me now. Thank you to my mother and father, who I think are listening now. Are they here? Oh, of course you said they're here, aren't They've they? driven up from Cambridge as well as Ed Gardner. So very grateful to them for that. I think the final Ooh. crew is rowing back up before the others are good to set off. Obviously, you need to clear the water. Um, don't want anyone to race into a standing boat, do you? No, exactly, which we have had earlier on. Oh, did we? Yes. <laughs> there was a double skull dear, that got dear. a bit caught up with getting a bit I did too see far one skull have fallen on the way back. But we're underway in this Coxless quad semi-final between... Durham and Tyne Amateur Rowing Club on the Close Peelor Woods side. Close competition So really, really tight racing. Of course, such a fast moving boat, the Coxless Quad, and it's all down to whichever man in that crew has the steering rudder on their foot to di dictate the direction of the boat points. So really a lot to think about. Two yeah. oars, one person steering. Well, you can see them turn around and look. Goodness me. So the Durham Amateur crew, very tight on that boy line. They want to make sure that they're getting as much advantage yeah. as possible from this Looking side convincing. of the river. But taking a lead, I think. Excellent posture. Mm. Excellent posture from the ladies there. Very close call, though. Anything could happen in this one. I know. Drone shot really aiding our coverage here. We can see it's <laughs> neck and neck. Yeah, you as can we see come all the people in the boat the alongside stage. looking. Ah, looks like the Pilau Wood side might slightly be edging in front. Mm. This is one of the few races that we've seen so far at this regatta where it's the crew that's had the advantage at the start has their e lead eaten into by the opponent. Looking like Tyne slightly in the front there. Mm. Of course, the bow seat still looking over, still checking where they are.
Valentine about three quarters up at the moment, coming through to the final bridge. They've got about 100 metres to go. Looks like it's not going to be uh, salvaged for this point for Dark. So this is race number 200 in the programme. And it's Tyne Amateur Rowing Club with the victory over Durham Amateur Rowing Club. Of course, Tyne already raced earlier on today in this category and Durham were given a buy-in straight into okay. this round. And so this is the semi-final? Yes. Okay. So we'll see them the racing again later on at race number 238, which originally scheduled for 12 past six. <laughs> Might be a little bit later than that. Maybe. <laughs> That's how these regattas go. Mm. In the case, juggling a great host of upcoming races through our pieces of paper and laptops to try and bring you the information on the cruise. That's the nature when there's so many boats participating and uh, all sorts of things you can't really account for. So we've got some eights lining up on the start line now. And they are underway. This is University College Boat Club on the race course side, of course. Raced earlier on today, this is race number 190. Looking like they're down by about a length. Yes, from the St. Peter's School on the Peel Woods side. Incredibly impressive for a school. That sounds nice. Definitely. Really, really I've strong start the there Mall, from St. Peter's. But University College, this is a boat made up of senior uh, rowers and four novices in okay. this boat. This is the first year of rowing for four people in and this university And crew. they're still going for it. And, exactly. and Durham Gap is a big race. St. Peter's looking very convincing there, looking like they're taking it into their stride, getting quite close to the wood side. Mm. But I'm sure their cocktail is what they're doing. Definitely. So St. Peter's managed to break contact over a length of clear water now. It's going to be difficult for the university mm. college crew yeah. to get back. And when you're behind like that, it, it is a mental challenge to uh, come back from that. Oh, definitely, I because... Yeah, you kind of start rushing your arms. Mm. It, it's hard when you can't see even how far behind they are. You don't really know whether you're still in the race or not. And um, for the crew in front as well, you can see yeah. your opponents. You can watch them. Every single move that they make, you can immediately respond to. Yeah. And I mean, just look no how in time idea. they are. Mm. Their sequence is excellent. A couple of heads peeking out of the boat, but they can afford to, I think. <laughs> there they are going past us now, looking very calm and measured. Happy big, with the race they've raced, I Big think. cheer from the other University College supporters on the bank as they yeah. make their way past our commentary position here. But mm, St. Peter's haven't managed to grow their advantage just yet. Perhaps they're saving themselves for later on. Of course, they're going to progress through to race number 242 later on today. They're over the finish line. St. Peter's with the victory in this women's big eight reds. This is race number 190 if you're following along with your programs. And there's the University College crew just going past. But we can see now we've got some quad skulls making their way past our commentary position. That's Leeds University Boat Club. You've had a very good day at Durham Regatta, I'd say, Leeds University. Mm convincingly so worth the journey definitely they're always very big supporters of this event come every year leaves university how's your day been yeah this is like some doubles coming up at the moment yes how's that going very close finish there at the end from leeds university 
not quite sure there who's managed to clinch victory. So this is race number 196 in the Open Elite Doubles between Teams Rowing Club and Durham School. I myself have a bit of a vested interest in this event as I've won two Open Doubles events on this course throughout the season. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be taking the title in this category. Still all to play for when you're in a double. Um, and obviously they can see exactly where the opposition is. Doing very well for school children. That's T's rowing club with the advantage at the moment over Durham School and racing we can see on them their home past water. Us now. Looking calm, looking controlled. No sweat. They probably are sweating. It's a very, very hot day to be racing. We'll be there, like, until later. I've Okay, now here we are. This is the, the race that we were talking about. Our oh, apologies that that wasn't race number 196, but this is. So, Durham School on the Pelor Woodside with the advantage over Tees Rowing Club. Durham School crew have had a really, really strong season here mm. in the northeast on their home turf of course yes of course dominating Training very regularly for a school yes to dominating <laughs> crews at both junior and at club level so okay, that's why even though they're school kids they've opted to enter for the elite top category here this weekend can see now on the course I believe race number 199 in the women's J15 doubles Durham Amateur Rowing Club and Camus Rowing Club but there you can see then Durham School taking the win over Tees Rowing Club in race number 196 I completely off his face and like I was worried for his like I was worried for his health. Like I thought he was like in his Yeah, exactly. So past the Hillby landing stage, it's the Camus crew on the Pelor Woodside with the advantage over their opponents. There's quite a significant difference there. Yes. Looking like it might be an easy win, they call it. Large, large advantage over Durham Amateur Rowing Club there from Camus. But there's another race on the course. We'll be bringing you the picture of that start line there's shortly. Here we go. Right. Oh. So um, very close at the moment. Hoxed fours here. I believe that is Trevelyan okay. College Sounds on good. one side of the river. Race course side. Easily distinguished by their teal blades and all in ones. Yes. Is that also what's the animal on the blades as well? Is it a horse or something? I thought it was a unicorn. <laughs> um, that would make more regardless, sense. Regardless, I, I think they've taken a slight early lead, which is going to give them a big incentive to push off. Uh, just trying to identify who they're rowing against at the moment. Okay, so this is race number 100 and, no it's not, 
um, coming up is race number 198. But this ah. here, uh, this <laughs> wasn't Trev's. It was Hill B. Oh my you goodness! You should recognise your own blades. Didn't realise we had a full still racing today. Ah, okay. Hill B. Looking like they're going to cinch that victory. Of course, there is a John's rower in there. Tiggy Cow and Taylor. Yes. Formally. So very, very tight on the um, the seat racing and the the squad ranking to get a spot in yeah. this boat. It's been a really tough decision for the captains to make mm. of putting this lineup together. Of course, with Hillby, was such a strong crop uh, of rowers in that women's squad. It's been really difficult They've for them really to decide who to put in this top four. And the decision seems to have paid off as they take the win in this very top happy four event. One. I think Will's a little embarrassed that he couldn't recognise his own club. I haven't actually rode for them since February, so well, don't you've at been, me. Well, you've been sat here for a long time, Will. I'll let you off. <laughs> I'm sure those watching at home will too. So, on the start line now is race number 198, the Women's Intermediate 8, between Collingwood College and Lancaster University. Big race here. Big race. Big of race. course, Collingwood... This is their home stretch and Lancaster have made the journey. So let's see if the decision from Lancaster to travel all the way here. Looks like we're having our periodical row off. back now. Yes. The, the victory lap, as our boat like to call it. We didn't win, but we felt like we had. Mm, the victory lap for half the crew is making the well, yeah. duration. You know what? We may not have won the pots, but we won the people. And as the row back carries on, uh, we're going to get ready to go to to an advert with our sponsors. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. Now we're going to take a quick break from the rowing chat to bring you a little historical nugget which you'll find right here along the riverbank of the River Weir. And that is of course the story of the heaven-sent cow which supposedly is the only reason that any of us are here today. Basically in the year 687 a very saintly man called Cuthbert died. Now the thing about Cuthbert was that his body wouldn't decompose and it was said to perform miracles so it was essential that the monks preserved the body. To that end they decided to bury him on the island just off the coast of Northumbria called Lindisfarne. Now this was all well and good until the Vikings struck. Now because Lindisfarne is an island it was right on the coast and the Vikings were attacking it relentlessly. So in 885 it was decided that Cuthbert couldn't stay, they had to get him out. The only question was where did they put him? They moved around a little bit around the north in places like Ripon and Chester Le Street, but still the threat of the Vikings was omnipresent. They didn't know what to do. But it wasn't until 995 that a certain cow-shaped conspiracy led them to discover the final resting place of St Cuthbert just over there. As the monks were moving further northwards, one of them had an extraordinary vision. It was St Cuthbert himself, and he said, bury me in a place called Dun Home. Only problem was, no one had ever heard of that place. As far as they were concerned, that wasn't a place. Until an extraordinary divine intervention. 
a milkmaid came past and she said she was looking for her lost cow, a dun cow in fact, and she'd last seen it in a place called Dun Home. Realising their luck, or perhaps, depending on your outlook, their miracle, the monks decided to follow this young lady, and eventually they came to a place called Dun Home, where they found not only a cow, but also a hill above a bended river, the perfect place to defend the body of St Cuthbert. And that's why there's a cow on this riverbank, but it's also why there's a huge cathedral just over there. Welcome back to the commentary booth, and it seems like the start line is nice and clear, ready for the next batch of racing here at the 190th Durham Regatta. Big number. Bigger than the number of Henley Regattas. Very, very true. <laughs> so and we've got the women's eight event starting now. I believe this is Blankers race before. number a hundred and it's between Collingwood College and Lancaster University. Collingwood so. look like they're on the race course side and they look like they've taken a bit of an early lead there. Looking very in time, very sharp catches. Uh, but that's not stopping Lancaster University. He looked like they're charging um, to keep up. Of course, Collingwood, this is their women's second eight. So um, if you follow them on Instagram, they have an account for this crew. It's called, was it Power 5? Power 5 for Gabrielle, I That's believe. That's the one. And, and I am well informed on that one. Uh, friends with a couple of those crew members, they work hard and they love rowing. And they throw some really good socials too. And I'm hoping that they're going to keep hold of this victory. They've got a lot of supporters out here, Collingwood. So they'll be cheering them on as they come through to the second half of the race. Looking convincing. And of course, when you're up in that mindset and you know that you're in front, that's going to be a real incentive to them. And they can see the competition. They know they're in the lead. I don't think they're going to let that go. But that's not stopping Lancaster University, who is staying calm, staying control. You can see strong tap downs from Lancaster University. Mm. They're getting their blades up off the water. Um, and Collingwood seemed to be slowing down a little bit, uh, but Lancaster seemed to have taken a slightly odd line there, um, once again demonstrating the use of the drone. I think struggling a little bit at the front ends, Lancaster University. Pushing hard, but I think Collingwood um, have really taken a strong lead on there, over a boat's length in it. Um, and I'm sure they will be very, very happy with that race. Congratulations. So next race on the course, once we see out this women's eight race is 183, the women's J15 doubles between Tees Rowing Club and Bradford Grammar School and Tyne Amateur Rowing Club composite crew. Don't get many composite crews racing at the moment. So as you can see there, the Collingwood crew taking the victory over Lancaster by about a length. And there you can see, so on the race course side, the composite crew with the mismatch kit, Tyne Amateur Rowing Club, <laughs> and Bradford Grammar School have got the advantage over the Tees Rowing Club Early advantage. double at the moment as we've just come past the bandstand here. So it would have been difficult for this composite crew to organise their training of course. Bradford yeah. and Not the sure Tyne aren't too out. close together. That is good geography if, if my, knowledge. If my geography is correct. <laughs> well, I study geography and uh, I'm going to go with a yes on that one. I haven't studied it since I was 13. <laughs> Still lots of spectators on the Hillby landing stage that we can see there. As People always. have really shown up for a long day. Um, very motivational. And I believe we're getting ready for a break after the next couple of boats. Yes. Um, probably for the people up at the start line to reorganize themselves, because I'm sure it's been a bit hectic sending so many races down in quick succession. So up on the course, waiting once we have 
the, f the end of this women's doubles race. We've got another open elite doubles event. We have one of the new appearances, Durham University Boat Club and Northumbria University. Local university rival matchup here. Of course, Durham University Boat Club. This will be one of their top crews. We will be able to tell by the design on their kit whether it's one of their novices or one of their senior crews. Always a good racing. race to watch. Oh, What's definitely. What's the difference between the two? You can see. Which, the which two, sorry? Uh, the development squad. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. So the development squad, the current first years, will be racing in a bit darker shade of purple. And ah. then the senior squad will race in that iconic palatin that we're so familiar with. Ah. Nuances. Um, you have to Nuances. earn your way to the kit in the <laughs> university squad. If only we could dream of that one. Yeah, not happening. <laughs> not happening. I tried for six days. It wasn't my, <laughs> my thing. Six days. I lasted longer than some. <laughs> I feel like that, that speaks volumes about Durham University Boat Club. An intense and yet rewarding scheme. Oh, exactly. They've had an absolutely brilliant year winning the Victor Lodorum at Bucks Regatta. So Just seeing some of the they've got a very brilliant through. season behind them and there's still more to be done as well. And seeing another double pull through, sought victory. Unfortunately, didn't get there in the end. And we've gone back, back to the old row up. Yes, There'll be so some lots very sore, very tired arms at this point, I'm sure. A bit of sunburn. I can't, I, <laughs> I guarantee you everyone here, not everyone here has put sun cream on because I'm one of them. And we're about to go to a VT. Does Durham know rowing is the question we've answered. I think this might be my face appearing. So um, apologies, I suppose. Hi, I'm Heather, and today with Pal TV, we're finding out how much do the people of Durham know about rowing. Here's all Chris. That, I get nervous when Kit's staring at me and there's aviators. I've got an 18 second split time. <laughs> Everyone hand it back. Rowing chat is very boring. Hello, who am I here with today? Uh, Jacob. Izzy. Do you know what a cox is? I do, I do, I do. It's the person who shouts things at the back of, <laughs> at the back of the boat, or the front of the boat. They command the strokes. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. <laughs> rowing, rowing, rowing. You will be fine. <laughs> yeah. What does it mean when I say spoon? <laughs> Not gonna lie, the only thing I can think of is like the utensil. <laughs> so, the only thing you can think I, of. Perfect. That was not what I was thinking. I was thinking about another spoon. <laughs> is it when you um, turn to the right hand side? I wish. I wish. <laughs> Can you tell me what a drunken octopus is? A rogue night out in Jimmy's. <laughs> All of the blades don't line up. It's what looks choppy. Incredible. Um, <laughs> not a fun way to say what a drunken octopus is. It's, rowing chat is very boring. Is this as good as rowing chat gets, do you think? The only way is down. Hello, who am I here with today? Uh, Louisa Phillips. Sophie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed. And I feel like I fully know where to find you on Facebook. <laughs> Do you guys know much about rowing? Our housemate does, so we kind of know. Yeah, no, a little, little bit. Drips and drabs from her. Mainly gossip, but like, yeah. yeah. Is there much gossip in the Collingwood Boat Club? So oh, a lot. Much. <laughs> so much. Do you know what it means to catch a crab? Yes. Yeah. When your yeah. oar it get, like, hits can bad and it can hit you in the face, and it's and really embarrassing, get, like, apparently. How long have you been rowing for, Hannah? Um, since October, so how many months is that? Eight. What has been the low point? The early mornings, early mornings. What's your earliest wake up? Half five, half five, quarter past five maybe. Oh, I had a horrible experience the other day. I was literally sweeped off my feet, honestly. Right, lying down, vertical on the boat. You haven't explained what it means. <laughs> I'm used to catching crabs, but you've got me catching feelings. Um, Zoe, have you ever rowed before? I have been on the machine. What is your best split time on the machine? Oh, I actually don't remember. It could be 18 seconds, it could be 39. Could be That's not how splits are measured, but I love the optimism <laughs> there. If it was 18 seconds... It'd be fast, right? Uh, yeah, it would be very fast. Yeah. What does it mean to feather? 
Ooh, like you like kind of. You make oh, a little design. She knows. She really knows. Yeah, it's when you flip the blade. Yeah. You fixed the steering on that thing. It took us hours. Well, I think so that you should get in the boat with your 18 second split time. I think that if you are in need of an extra rower, I've got an 18 second split time. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. I've been given the sig. I've been given the signal. We need okay. to cut this. Sorry. Cut the. Yeah. We're having too much fun. So I thought I recognised it. Hi guys, thank you so much to our amazing commentary team that have been keeping you guys occupied so far throughout the day. I'm joined with Catherine Hallian. These are part of the Mary's crew that unfortunately capsized recently in the race today. Now, first of all, are you both okay? Yeah, we're all good. Full crew was all okay. <laughs> Bit soggy, but yeah. <laughs> have you had a chance to have a shower yet? No, we got changed, no. but we're going to head home and have showers, I think. I think a, a shower is very well deserved. And are you going to have a, a fat takeaway tonight to congratulate yourself on having a nice, at least a nice day at the regatta, if not a ri nice race? Yeah, sounds like a shower. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but how have you found Durham regatta? It's known to be like the Henley of the North and um, it wasn't your first race was it Hexham was your first race mm -hmm. the other weekend but how what are the vibes like to you guys really really fun I actually really enjoyed it I've been here like all morning supporting my college um, because I just I really like the atmosphere it's a vibe yeah I found it quite funny um, not but not not the regatta <laughs> but the whole experience yeah I mean the weather We've been blessed with the weather, yeah. to be honest. I mean, it is quite hot. Have you guys managed to, you know, stay hydrated yeah. and keep yourself well when the conditions are obviously quite intense? Yeah, staying in the shade, drinking lots of water. Bit of squash. Yep. Yeah. And, of course, the big question is, will you be racing again next year, despite the capsize this year? Absolutely. Of course, Team Marys. Wouldn't be put off by going in the river. No, yes, never. Team Marys indeed. And we'll be going back to the commentary team, which will be providing all the action for the rest of the races this afternoon. Coming past our commentary <laughs> position now, we could see the oh. Yarm School Cox Quad making easy work of the Time Amateur Rowing Club. Cox Quad, of course, in that very, very brightly coloured boat. But on the course now, we've got some Cox just quads. This is Durham School on the race course side. But I've seen it out training on the water Looking over the past few, day, few days. And they have had a brilliant, brilliant run in on the training. Racing in the elite category here as a school crew, which is so, so difficult against this tiny amateur rowing club crew of people much, much older than them. Well, not, I don't be, be too mean, but look, they're not 18. Look very easy, aren't they? making it look very, very easy. And excellent sequencing. You can see they're really in time with each other. They've trained as a crew. And time not letting that wind slip away from them. So it's gonna be barring <laughs> any major disasters. Yes, we, thanks to our <laughs> runners. There's so much production team going on here. 32 people involved in our coverage today. We're just the faces and the voices of a large, large team stood behind the cameras and the other side of the table where our microphones are. So in and that- a convincing school victory there. A convincing victory there for Durham School. Well done to them for dispatching that. Tyne Amateur Rowing Club crew, that must be very pleased. Now we've got some more quads. That's Leeds University. On Pilau Woodside. Do you sure say Pilau? Well, I say Pilau. As if I know. A debate for the ages. Drop I us a message know. if you're an expert in pronunciation, Hashtag please. Hashtag Pilau Pilau. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's spelt Pilau. All I can think is my coach going, Heather, I told you to make the commentary good this year. <laughs> <laughs> it so it looks like Tyne against Leeds. Leeds. Tyne convincingly in the lead there as mm. they're rowing past us now, but Leeds not giving up. Time will be pleased with this result. So two back-to-back -back races for that club, one with the mm. victory and, and one And they're not the looking loss. panicked at all. ASMR as you open the home yeah. packet. Welcome to ASMR with Power TV. I mean, they just handed us an apple. I'm not sure how they expected that one to go. I'm not, I'm not eating an apple. Sorry, it's Haribo's o'clock <laughs> here in the commentary booth. 
dog. What, um, what is your favourite hair though, Heather? Um, the ring. Really? Mm. Didn't even miss a beat. I'm so that. glad you didn't say the egg. And that, was that a time victory there? That's time. Con- convincingly so. Still close to the Myro. Mm. <laughs> now we've got... I believe that's octopus skulls on the course. You don't oh. see many octopuses. Well, they have to be days. under a certain age, is that right? No. So this will be a school. the women's J15 octo race between Durham School and Queen Elizabeth High School, we believe, race number 212. And it's Durham School leading out versus their rivals that train on the Tyne up in Hexham. Queen Elizabeth. So and Queen Elizabeth always turn up with a lot of spectators, so I'm sure they're getting a lot of support there. Large group of parents. I can oh, even see hello. one from where we're sat Cargo with the short. camera around. Well, the yes. camera doesn't like him, does he? <laughs> Apologies, he had a brief appearance. <laughs> we can see him from where we're sat as well. Durham School looking very convincing there. I mean, they do make it look easy, but right now these rowers are probably on the brink of um, collapse. Well... There's a lot like. of pain going on in the core. A lot of pain. I mean, well, the heads are in the boat, mostly. A lot of heavy lungs, high heart like rate. Cox is giving them some aggression. The thing about oh, a race that's so them. short on this course is that it's not necessarily the muscles that start to ache and yeah. burn. It's really your chest like, and the heart rate and the lungs yeah. just gasping for air Queen as you Elizabeth run out. still, you know, looking in time. They're still motivated. A couple of heads looking to the side. I see you, girls. I was like that one. Still out. You can see those octos coming through right to the finish line. Wow. That's impressive because if that goes wrong, that can be a very easy like dangerous crab or a capsize even. No, exactly. There's so many oars going on there. It's really, really easy in these crews to catch a crab, but not happened too much today. <laughs> Obviously, we just spoke to the Mary's crew. I'm so glad to see that they're okay after that. Yeah, and and I think it's it's unfortunately probably embarrassment more than anything else. I uh, you yeah. think it props to them for embracing it though. Yeah. They know that it's been a, a difficult day, so they're and smiling happy, it off. Happy to report. Everyone's okay. Yes. Yeah. Seems to be very Beautiful drone footage on the sofa. again. Once again. Um, I believe it's James who's been operating the drone footage all day. I know. You're not allowed to talk to him. He's being very <laughs> precise with his drone operating his skills. He is a do not talk zone. Mm. And he's we doing had, very well. We turned up this morning at half past six in very different attire. I'm here in my shirt <laughs> and sunglasses and smart trousers. And he's there in sort of his very very versatile trousers like very and very thick layered shoes it's very much ready for some sort of Business. handyman job ah. little That's break the, in the race the rowing back up yes H- hence why we're talking at such great length about uh how to be founder james in every in every shot that i've seen of them rowing back up i don't think that fun ride has stopped spinning and we've got a couple more races and then another break so you can see there we've got some singles at the first bit up and we believe this is going to be race number 215 in the open j15 singles with yarm school on one side and the victorious crew from race number 178 either Camus or, or, Rad, um, or Bradford, it's Camus, uh. as I was informed. <laughs> I, I made the same mistake earlier today, and the thank you very much feet. to the supporters who came over and gave me a little poke and said it's been Camus. imagine if Cambridge had a silent B? Huh? If, well, if you did that to Cambridge, right? Cambridge. Mm. Trying to think of the Something most ridiculous pronunciation of such a straightforward <laughs> word. You know what? That shows that people are listening to us. <laughs> Why wouldn't they be? So we'll just wait for these crews to get themselves aligned and straight. They've had a long, ra- long day, these crews, to hang around. 
I know. And, it, and it is hard to sit in the sun all day, to be waiting for that race, to have the nerves settle in. Because um, being sunburnt has a pr- quite a big effect on performance. And they're off. From a biological off perspective. Looks like an uh, early lead from the P Lau. P- I'm going to go with P Lau still. P Lau side. So it is Camus. Ah. We can confirm that are uh, racing up against Yarm School. And it really is neck and neck coming to the end of and the wooded section right of the course. They'll be, they'll be in each other's eye line because they're looking round. Mm. This is a mental battle, this one. They'll really be able to feel each other. Not much separating these yeah. in terms of margin, but also just the width of the boats. They'll be able to hear each other moving in the boats. And really, it's a case of keeping your hand in that fire as long as possible until the other one breaks. Ooh, all to play for this one. Not entirely sure. It looks as though the race course slide slightly has the advantage, but not really convinced enough to say that one. So, believe on yeah. the race course side, that's the Scala Foam Camus Rowing Club. And she on the looks like side, she's determined to come back after that one. So it's the yeah. Yarm Sculler on the Peel or Wood Hill Bead side of the course. It's got their work cut out, but they're really, really close here in this open J15 singles race. Camus, of course, has already raced, and it's the Yarm School crew that raced earlier today, too. Neither of these crews received a buy into this round. And goodness me, look at there that. Singles. Got a better vision there, so we can see. Coming past our commentary position, Yarm Sculler oh, just look. takes a quick look over his shoulder, yeah. checks where his opponent is. It's time to get the hammer down because we're coming towards the final few hundred meters on this course. And with Hard these singles. Come back from that one now, pulling a little bit more of a compelling lead. In these singles, it's so easy to change the speed of the boat. The camera's oh. rower needs to watch out there for the Octo that's parked in the banks, a little oh, tight they're not on be the happy course. With that one. But now, as the river slightly bends towards the favour of the racecourse side, we'll see who comes through the bridge. Oh, it's still too close to call. Kama still has an advantage, but he's moving across slightly. I think he's going to secure that one. believe that's oh, just going in the case race. of Kama. Brilliant, brilliant race from both athletes there. Formidable rowing for such young athletes. Okay, we've got an eight race on the course this looks like grey college there on the far side can't quite tell on the close side of course both of these boats will have raced loads throughout the, uh, the regatta already today you can hear the grey commentators from well grey supporters from where we are and what we'll do now is we're going to go to the presenters Not quite. I think we're going to stay with this race. Gray have got all the supporters. I think they're against Leeds University. And Gray looks slightly in the lead. Not expected from a college team to be beating a university, but I'm sure they'll be very happy with this. I believe this might be a mixed Gray. Uh, so four novices and four seniors. And there on the course is another race between Tyne Amateur Rowing Club. And we've got the aerial footage of Gray against Leeds at the moment. I think Gray are going to clinch that victory, but not by much, by about a third of a boat length. So coming past our commentary position, it is Tyne Amateur Rowing Club with the lead over Stevenson College. This is the first time we've seen their eight. Hello and welcome back to PAL TV's coverage of the 190th Durham Regatta brought to you by Osborne's. I'm Auntie Sophie. This is Auntie William. Hello. We've got Auntie Megan. Hello, everyone. And our poor rower, Richard, who is in dear need of the Agony Aunt's help. I am personally in great distress, Richard. He's, he's a bit short for a row, but he's a cock, so we'll go with it. But, uh. <laughs> so, Richard, can you tell us what troubles you're having today? Yes, I'm having terrible trouble, and I thought my aunties could uh, help me. 
First of all, how do I keep my physical and mental energy up during the race? It is a tough thing to do. And, you know, when you're on the river, seeing the opponents going, it's a tough thing. So there are two ways to do it, really. It's whether you like the person in your own boat or dislike the person in the other boat enough. And that's the way to really think about it. You have to really hate the person in the other boat to just motivate yourself just enough to be able to get to the finish line. If you like the people in your own boat, that helps. But really having a personal loathing about the people in the other boat, that's the trick to get there. I really agree. I think everything I do these days is motivated out of spite. So you really got to find that within yourself. I think that's really good advice. Thank you. And then the other thing I would say is it all depends on your cocks. You got to have a good cocks. An American cocks always helps. You know, just someone, you know, that has a really soothing, dulcet tone that can just scream at you. Oh. You know, I think that makes a big difference in a race. I to stir up, no? To stir up. Well, I don't know. If I need to get yeah. really angry, then... Well, yeah, you need, you need those American tones to oh. really get you going. <laughs> okay. Megan, what do you think? I think, you know, coming from the welfare perspective, you've got to make sure that you've eaten enough, that oh, you've drunk enough. boring, <laughs> boring. Come on, yes, Megan, the only please. Time, the only time we need to be worried about if you've drunk enough is if you're on the, on the sidelines and you're yeah. drinking enough wine. That's the only issue. Precisely. Okay. But this right. is a much bigger problem I have. What do I do if in the middle of my race, a friendly duck engages me in conversation? A friendly duck, you know, I think hit it with your oar. You've, you've got places to be. Well, you don't want to be rude. You've got, please, you're in the middle of a race. I think the duck's being rude, trying to they're distract not, not, it, frankly. Friendly, if they're in the middle of your place. Yeah, exactly, you know, this, we, this is our river. This is not the duck's river. It's, uh, okay. they, exactly. there's, yeah, they, they, they should just recognize it. Megan, that. I got some shocking looks from you when I said that. Do you disagree? <laughs> I, do you know what? I have, sadly, I've seen people actually hit ducks and kill them before. <laughs> you know what? And on that note, oh, we're no. going to go and show you a little clip. Get away from the duck duck slaughter chat. I don't think it's great for the rowing agenda, but I really hope, Richard, that we helped you solve some of your problems. It was an honor to have you on. Hi, I'm Matt, and today I'm here with Kira, the women's captain for Senate. Could you just explain a bit what the Senate is? Um, so Senate is basically a college composite um, of all the best rowers from the colleges and we come together to try and make a mega eight and we compete at some more higher competitions than the colleges do. And today you're going to be taking me through a bit of a workout. Yeah, so today... How do you think I'm going to do? Um, I think we'll do okay. Um, we have these gym sessions once a week but we can cater to your ability, so I'm sure okay. you're welcome and be fine. <laughs> That's good, yeah, because my ability is probably not quite up there. And you might need to blow out my calves because I don't really focus legs, so this should be interesting. Great. Is there like a difference in terms of specific training styles? Yeah, so we do, on the ergs, we do more stamina and endurance, but in the gym, they're just really trying to get the strength in the legs. So if you start with some just general stretching, yeah, yeah. whatever you feel like you need to do. <laughs> Right, just test my mobility. Oh, that's that pretty good. Not too bad today. Not bad for a uh, well, to be a row. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have a lot of like flexibility. Is that an important yeah, one aspect of it's it? It's important to have good hip flexibility. Right, yeah. When you're like leaning over. Um, so yeah. It's fine. You're feeling pretty. Fun? You're feeling pretty. Yeah, I'll just finish it. We can do a warm up on the bar, so. Yeah. That'll be fine. Right. I'm a bit scared. I feel like she's going to start putting on 20s on each side, and um, I don't know if I can handle that. Okay. So it's time with three by six back squats. Okay. So we'll just do that first. We're going to do a few on the bar. And then yeah. We can put some weight on. I think we need to go a little bit. You have to try to get like a lot of depth as well. Okay. Because like you're doing a boat. That is a lot of depth. It is. Very impressive. <laughs> you know, oh, don't look at my phone. Technique. <laughs> To see if my knees holds up or starts oh, yeah. bleeding. Maybe it's fine, it was yeah. just like, <laughs> don't want it to rip off and bleed all over yeah. your nice squat rack. That's fair. Okay, I think we'll put some tens on. Yep. Do one more upset with tens and then we can start. Makes sense. So, what would you say is kind of the 
ideal physique for a wearer to have? Um, tall. Yeah. Um, ideally a bit taller than me. Um, and yeah, just kind of long. Because the more like the more length you can get in the stroke, the longer you can have your blade in the water. And do you what's the kind of strength to mass ratio you want to go for? Because obviously I guess if you had a bodybuilder, their weight would probably impact how much because obviously the boat's heavier. Yeah. So is that a factor as well? Um, yeah, I see it as a factor. I mean, with rowing, we don't do it in college, but you can have light weights and open weights. But I think it's better to have that extra strength and the extra weight than it is to try and be lighter and less strength. Yeah. Because like in a 2K, it takes a lot of like strength and endurance to get to the end. Barbell row. So we'll take all this way off. Yeah. Unless you want to row. Oh no. Twenties. Okay, I'll take my track up. I think I'm keeping up all right, but then again, I feel like yeah, just, uh... that might just be because she's a bit smaller than me, so body weight wise, probably I'm not doing very well at all. So, but I'll say we're keeping up well. Welcome back to the commentary <laughs> booth. We hope you enjoyed <laughs> those segments. I, I actually, I have to share this. I just heard what? the most Durham thing I think I've heard you say, Will. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I thought you were laughing at something else. I need a cockerel. I do need a cockerel. For those that don't know, there's this like new sushi place. Did you say like someone walked Sushi and bento. Oh, sushi and bento. I go there all oh, once or twice a week at the moment. But <laughs> let's turn our attention back towards some racing. <laughs> We've got some coxed fours on the water. And I believe that's Sheffield University on the Pelor Wood side. And with the lead it is durham university boat durham club university. development squad ah, there. so okay. these shout out at the back to will nicholson will nicholson is it okay will yes nicholson. um where's our commentary form because i think they filled this one in you know what they look like they've stolen a convincing wow look at that to will's parents yes, if you're so watching be proud of that um, boy. all the boys were picked to be members of the dev squad following the dubc learn to row they train over 10 times a week, oh every six days. Recently and competing at the Metropolitan Regatta all the way to Eton Dorney last weekend. Uh, they say the team dynamics very wholesome and fun. They came fifth at Bucks. They're hoping to qualify for the Prince Albert Challenge Cup at Henley Royal, which for a novice crew would be a formidable feat. And they were all complete novices at the beginning of this year. None of them had ever rowed before September. Oh Look at so them incredible um, rowing cool from this fall. Of course, you Can't can see there. Cool for the cocks behind Will at Bow. No, so that's <laughs> Rachel Roberts there in the coxing seat, formerly of uh, Hatfield College Boat Club, and then she made the jump to the Dev Squad to help out with coxing them earlier this uh, year. Hatfield's not going to be happy about that one, are they? Uh, I can't tell you. Uh, but we've still got Sheffield, still powering through. They've come a long way, and that's that's tough competition to be drawn against. I'm sure they weren't particularly happy, but you know what? It seems like they've won one race today. Yes, exactly. Um, so Sheffield University, Cox 4, unfortunately their day is over, but brilliant, brilliant racing there from the Dome University Boat Club dev squad. You can follow their social media chat account at Ale underscore lay underscore devs. Ah, I'm back to some sculling here. Back to some singles. Just trying to work out who we've got So this here. is Open Intermediate Single Skulls, Grey College and Northumbria University. Ah. Can't quite tell from this angle which side is which. So Grey College fielding a single skull. We've seen a few colleges race in the small boats today. We had a hill bead pair, the John single, the Grey single. But no, it seems to be the Northumbria... University crew bow in slot number 260. That was 260? Okay. Maybe and this we can is, see so this going is, past us now. 
So this is T's rowing club. This is manners of T's rowing club. He looks pretty Taking chilled the rate me. down. Very strong start. Easily dispatched the Buick t crew of Master. Crew number 258 here. This is 217. Some open intermediate single skulls. So now we'll cut to the next semi-final. This will be Grey College and Northumbria University. So a Durham student versus a Northumbria student. Of course, Northumbria University based in Newcastle. Ah, uh, coming through to the there. finish line. Ah, looks like Grey College it looks slightly like in front. There's a scholar from Grey ahead as they passed our commentary position. Just before the viewers being uh, lots, lots of races being started in quick succession here by the umpires. We've oh, now got an eighth race. This is Collingwood College versus Sheffield University. Very strong coming. start from Sheffield University. Of course, Collingwood have already beaten Hild Bede on their way through this round. This is the third race these crews have done today. So this will be some of the fastest racing you'll see here on the Saturday. Okay. They're down a considerable amount, but I'm, they're about to go past their own um, boat club landing stage, and I'm sure there'll be a big push there. Oh, definitely. And that uh, Collingwood, the Collingwood crew looking sharp, following the stroke man, looking tidy there. We can see them going past Hillby landing stage, coming into the final stretch, but Sheffield looking very calm and controlled. We can see Collingwood going past us live now. The Cox is aggressive in his um, action. I wouldn't want to be facing him right now. No, definitely not. No. Stressful for the Coxes as well. I think that's something we don't often talk about um, when we're looking at the rowing. Uh, the stress of the Cox in getting the right line and the start, as we've seen in a couple races, which mm. is quite hard to do. We've seen a couple uh, steer into the bank, unfortunately, but it looks like it's Sheffield that has clinched that win. So back up to the start. As the open intermediate Cox Fours is on the start line, but we can see we've got this women's double race underway as well, coming down the race course. That's Hamas on. Good pronunciation, well. Thank you. Uh, I got it wrong earlier on because it's it's spelled in an incredibly French way, but not. And that's Hamas. Is that with the green and white? That's race? with the green and white okay. closest to us. And then I believe that is St. Leonard's. So yeah. I feel like a bit of deja vu. Is this a re-row? I feel like I've seen these crews at all race already against each other. S sounds like the heat is talking well. The heat might no, be I getting mean, to me. It might be. We, we've had a couple re-rows today. And I think that might, um, you know, account for the fact that we're running a bit behind. So open intermediate Cox 4s are on the water. Of course, the victor in this race that we'll be cutting to in a second will go on to face that Durham University novice crew who we just saw make easy work of Sheffield University. So I believe this is going to be York sir. University <laughs> against Buick Amateur Rowing Club. Lovely shot of the finish there. Slowly ru running out of races for the day. This is coming up to race number 221 of the 254 races taking place here today. So you can see the Camus women's double crossing the line ahead there. Of that Couple crew. Of waving so back. here now, <laughs> Buick and York University. It, it is Buick with the one length three-quarter length Ooh. advantage York over York University. There. York have had quite a good day today, mm. it seems. They've got a very distinctive all-in-one. Of course, York Regatta taking place next weekend, so we'll yeah. see some of the crews competing this weekend, making the journey south for that event. Still haven't decided whether to enter or not. <laughs> I think I still need to pay for my row ah. membership. I haven't done a race in a while, so I need to update all of that. At some Spencer point. Ah, now he's looking behind him, this Bauman here. Clearly thinking about that finish line, thinking how much he needs to push. Well, it's not one yet. York are looking aggressive as they come and they try and catch up, uh, but I'm not sure that they're going to secure that one today. So for Buick, it's C in the final. Race number 252, they'll be facing Dome University Boat Club 
in the final of the Open Intermediate Cox 4 event. Brilliant result for them as we come underneath Bath Bridge towards the finish line. So on the start line now, this is the women's maiden Cox Fours. So Chad's College and Trevelyan College Boat Club. Ah. Chad's in their very uh, distinctive green there on the race course side and Trev's with the blue blades and the unicorn design. There they are. Trev's taking quite a convincing lead off the start. And both quite small colleges, um, but Chad certainly have done very well to train up their women's squad this year. Um, but it looks like Trev's are gonna take the early lead, which as we know is gonna be quite demoralizing. It looks like Chad's are almost coming on to the other cutting lane. Yes, you can see them straying a bit off into Trevelyan's borderline there. Um, um, but there's enough of a lead there for Trev's <laughs> to make sure that's not gonna impact their race today. <laughs> Trev's looking convincing. Sarah McIver at Cox there, doing an incredible job. Lovely. So this is race 209 on the program. And ultimately, in some of these races, it's, you know, at least they're crossing the finish line. You're, you're racing as a crew, you're prepared as a crew. Um, and actually, to be able to start and to finish, you know, some crews haven't been able to do that today. So I think uh, Chad should be happy to be here and to row the race. Definitely, I agree. Every cloud will, every cloud. Yeah, <laughs> just like with your race earlier, you still got to the finish line. Oh, I had a wonderful time, I won't deny. Perfect. Not that Pal TV saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Another time. So waiting for us on the start line, race number 219, the J15 women's coxed quad skulls. Bit of a mouthful of an event category. So coxed events, skulls so two oars each j15 so they'll be in year 10 taking their gcse's next year Ooh. between hexham and bradford grammar school who are actually coming past our commentary position now so this next race that you can see on your picture now is between sunderland city and durham amateur rowing club of course, okay. both train on the weir, but in very different locations. And it's a close race. very, very close Thank here. Thank you to the drone. Of course, Durham likely to have more of a home crowd here. Uh, but Sunderland City, did you say Sunderland? Mm -hmm. Sunderland City not letting them get away from it. And it's great to see all different ages represented at the 190th Durham Regatta. Yes, of course. Brought to you by this Pal is, This TV is a master's event. So... <laughs> Um, certain certain age requirements go into this category, let's say. <laughs> How polite. There you can see Dark on your screens. You can see Bauman looking around to check as they cross the Collingwood landing stage and they're about to come past us in the commentator's speed. Really, really impressive rowing from these Masters crews. They make it look so easy. You I see think them one out. of them's even rowing in leggings. It's a bit warm, I'd say. It's a little bit warm for that. Haven't one. worn leggings in quite a few months now. <laughs> Still hard to tell with that end result there. I know, because the course is going to bend in the favour okay. of the Sunderland City crew. So really, really tight oh. racing between these two I crews. I think it might be Sunderland. It's too close to call. I'm not. I'm not even going to begin okay. to make a call on that. We'll see. I later. went straight for it. <laughs> we'll see later on in race 249 which crew out of those two progresses on to the final well, of the Open Masters Coxus Quads. You will see it along the bottom of our screen. Uh, I Which is far too confusing for me to be paying attention there's a, to. There's a lot of elements going on here in the commentary booth. We've got bits of paper. We've got laptop oh screens words. with both uh, the race order. We've got phones out with people informing us of which race is coming next. If it's not in the correct <laughs> running order. We've got Gosh. our own live feed of what you can see <laughs> as well. We've got our little <laughs> microphone controller. Oh um, and no food allowed on the table. Everyone's left us. I was... Clearly trust us. Yeah, I just noticed all of the... No. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, if we've got a problem, we're on our own here, Will. Wonderful. Not going to happen, though. <laughs> Got our Cox James Lennon walking past, who we interviewed earlier. If you haven't seen some of those earlier segments, do watch along. They're worth the watch, trust me. Yeah, have a look at the PAL TV socials. Mm. Not just this YouTube live stream. We've been putting out some content throughout the day as the live stream's been happening with some highlights <laughs> of mm. our coverage. Yeah. A lot of races covered today. A mm. lot of work. A lot of tired rowers, I can see. And some tired produ production too. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm sure. But we'll be back again tomorrow for Sunday. Yes, long course. course. How are you feeling about the long course, Will? I cannot wait oh, to gosh. see the racing through Elbit Bridge. I was discussing this with <laughs> Fergus earlier on. And oh, it's terrifying. We both agree, I think, as <laughs> obstacles on rowing courses go in the UK, oh, Elbit Bridge is... Oh, look, on the a little wave. And of course, on the Sunday of Durham, we go. Camus. Camus. Hello to the lovely pair from Panos. Double. Oh, and you can, oh, uh -huh. well, thank you. Look, we've got a look. Good, that's oh. a very good boy there. Lovely, a lot of people lovely like the dog shot viewing. of the dog, of course. You can see the race course, it's calming down as a lot of the major races are drawing to a close, but we've still got a couple finals to go. Very exciting stuff. Yes, so don't forget, tomorrow we'll be doing the live coverage of both the long course, which is 1,800 metres. So that is considerably longer than today's, which is 700 metres. And as Will described, that involves going through the traditional arches of Elvit Bridge. Uh, if you've ever rode through them, you'll know that they are not built for rowers. Um, I personally, when I'm rowing through them tomorrow, will let out a leap and a, well, not a leap, a yelp of relief. And we're going to bring you an advert shortly uh, by our sponsors, Osborne's, I believe. We're very grateful to them for sponsoring our event. Um, and then we'll be bringing you some of the finals. See you in a minute. Unmissable. This is Osborne's. In a world where luxury is defined by the extraordinary, there exists a place where every moment is an indulgence, where each step brings you closer to luxury, and where rooms are more than a place to rest the head, where elegance is just a step away, and sophistication surrounds you. where each bite is a moment of bliss. And each sip is an indulgence. Visit Hotel Indigo, a boutique escape nestled in the heart of Durham. And we're back. Ah, a, a wonderful vision of my family there. Um, <laughs> sitting in the stripy top. Hello to the McGowans over there. Oh, and you've got my picture on the left so you can see what I look like too. And getting ready to bring you some of the coverage of some of the finals here. And we've got some pairs coming through here or doubles looking like the race course side is coming through convincingly can't quite tell who they are right now um, but they've been racing for a long day they've got good sequencing they've obviously rode together for a while this is durham amateur rowing club going for the victory here 
And as you can see, there's a lot of looking around, checking out the competition. You can see there just how close they are uh, when they're rowing next to each other. Not easy to do when you, it really does get into your mindset here. Every stroke you're thinking about the other people and you can see on the close side, the rate's going up. They've taken a bit of a slight lead. You can see just how quickly um, it turns in a rowing race. And here we've got that mixed double again. One of which is Tyne and the other might be Berwick. I can't quite remember at the moment. We're just pulling up the races so we can tell you exactly who is racing at the moment. Will's left me on my own. He's trusted me with the ship at the moment. Can't quite see where their competition is, and that means that they're in a convincing lead here against Dark. So as you can see, Dark were up at the start, but unfortunately, it's that mixed composite crew that is taking the lead. And we've got some quads coming past us now, cockless quads. Ah, and shown to you right now, we can see Chad's racing against uh, Lancaster University. Lancaster University. Welcome back, Will. <laughs> Not at all. Looking like Lancaster have got quite a convincing early lead, powering down the regatta course. So you can see there, it's the Lancaster University crew that have the advantage over Chad's College at the moment in this Cox Force race, we believe. And that's, that's quite, a, quite a big difference. You know, Chad's is one of the smallest colleges in Durham. Mm. Uh, and of course, Lancaster being a university, a lot more people there, a lot more training, perhaps more resources. Um, but, you know, a convincing row nonetheless. Chad's are facing hard competition and Lancaster looking a little bit tired but of course that's natural when you come to the end of a race oh, you know definitely. your technique gets a little scrappy but you know at this point they can afford it yeah and we've got Chad's rowing past us now looking very calm and controlled on the rates on the slide you know they, they're still powering through finishing the race and actually looking very tidy oh, exactly and so we've now got a final on the course. This is between Durham Amateur Rowing Club and Hexham Rowing Club in the women's J16 doubles. Looking like Dark are taking the early lead against Hexham and we're joined by Megan, Megan, welcome back. <laughs> it's good to be back. How are you doing? How's, this, how's the finals been? I think it's the finals, isn't it? Well, when I figure out who's racing, then well, we're we've okay. got Dark, and they've got, a, they've got a nice, nice lead currently on their competitors at the moment. Um, Some singles going through there. Do you know what? It has been such an amazing day, and I really hope that everyone who's been tuning in has been enjoying the day. We've still got coverage going on until right at the end of the races, so we hope that if you've I mean, if you've got people racing and you know them, then send over their yeah, uh, let us send know. their details. We'll shout them out. Help we'll us wish out. them good luck. That, lo that looks like that lead is getting even greater from Dark. Calm and controlled. Do you know, Dark have been like an unstoppable force recently oh in a word. load of the. Ra I'm I used to row for Dark and okay. like I've got them all on Strava and they <laughs> they constantly <laughs> seem to be posting oh about God. their race wins. So they're looking nice and tidy as they're coming into the finish there. You know what, they've earned it they, they, yeah. they train hard, they yeah. are, they're powerful. And trust me, when I'm drawn against them, I'm, I'm quaking in fear. <laughs> but yeah, no, they, they've got a nice, comfortable 
comfortable rhythm. They're looking good. I, it's hard to come back from that for Hexham, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, I think it's it's been a long day. They'll be really tired. Like it's it's been hot yeah. as well. Um, and, I, and equally, you don't know how far behind you are. You, you know, you don't know how. Yeah, you don't know how whether it's worth pulling back from. Uh, that's the thing you, I mean the the one good thing I guess about having like Cox boats is at least you've got someone else to inspire you to keep on going but when it's just you two in the boat and there's you know that you're trailing behind you've really got to pull it out of the bag and make sure that you're motivating yourself to get to that finish line and when Dark have had such a strong lead throughout the majority of that race that's really really demotivating but at the end of the day all the competitors have been absolutely fantastic and i hope that they all know that and that they should be celebrating the fact that they've had a fantastic day I'm trying to figure out how this is this looks like dark's blades but that does not look like they're all in one no it's a <laughs> it's a funky design all in one um uh, gray college seems to be the boat it's gray college with dark blades it seems to be but they're looking good they're looking comfortable which is really good to see at the end of the day you don't want to be stressed you don't want to be tighten the muscles not sure who slash where their competition is right now um they're who? either very far ahead or very far behind i i'm gonna presume they're far ahead we'll give them okay. we'll give them well as soon as we know we'll let you know um but just so you know there's loads of results coming through at the bottom of the screen um if there's anyone that you're looking forward to seeing please do let us know um we want to hear what's going on with you guys But again, still no we, sign of the competition. Oh, it's coming along here now. Oh, oh it's <laughs> it's another college boat. I'm I, oh. I cuffs or chads. I would. I mean, say. this is a difficult one to watch. That I think they're, they've lost their rhythm, and they're not getting it back anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me, Meg. <laughs> you said it, not me. You know, I think as well. Like yeah. it's so hard to pull together when you know you're that far behind and you just need to relax. But it's, it, ah, it's some singles. This looks like York close to us, so on the Pilo side. And is it Sheffield as well? Could be York. Looking like they were it behind. It is neck and neck at the back. moment. Okay. Yeah, definitely York. Those uni suits are very easily to distinguish. And looks like York looks a lot calmer, don't you think? Um, it's it's definitely controlled. It's yeah. very very. I mean, York is doing a fantastic push towards the finish yeah. line. He knows he's not got long left. He's, and at, he's using his legs. And uh, it seems like the other competitor might be arm rowing slightly. <laughs> we, we've all been there, Megan, haven't we? <laughs> those, those of us who've rowed, which we both have. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but when you're at that last bit of the race and oh your gosh. legs are, like, absolutely dying, you're yeah. just there, like, right, yeah. arms, arms as it is. And, and right now course. it looks calm, but I can tell you that that York person is not enjoying himself right now. He's Might be enjoying the victory. He's looking good, though. He is looking he is. good. But excellent posture. Wow. Do you know, I've seen some really dodgy pot postures throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know, college rowing, I think we really don't give it enough credit. It's, you know, a lot of it is self-starter, teaching each other, waking up early, students helping students. Um, and actually, there isn't much professional coaching. And, and mm. to actually come to Durham Regatta, one of the biggest ones in the country, um, is a real achievement and real credit to these colleges. Yeah, so well done to everyone who's taking part today. You guys have been amazing. You've provided such amazing races for us all to watch. Um, thank you to everyone who's been tuning in to the live stream. We hope you've been enjoying it. Again, send us messages. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's going on. We want to know how you guys are finding the day. It's winding down a bit at the regatta. There's not as many people on the banks. It's still really, really warm. But hopefully we can provide you with some amazing races still in the last one. So we've got Cox Quads coming up the river now. We're just waiting to see a bit more about what boat they are, I'm afraid. Oh, it looks like Bradford Grammar from their t-shirts. Well done, Bradford Grammar. You guys are looking tidy. Wow. I wish I looked like that when I rode. <laughs> Come on, the boys. <laughs> Have you ever schooled before? Never. 
It's good. I'd recommend it. It is nice to learn. But it's a tight race, really. Tight, tight It looks race. like... The and they're looking very good considering they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah, and they, they look like they're, they're juniors. So yeah. they... I mean, it's such an amazing achievement for them to be at this level. Oh, there's a huge crab. There's oh. a huge... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is not the ideal a situation. Boat stopper. That is horrendous. Yeah. And, like, you can see that they're so devastated and really upset. And, you know, there's so much pressure on them when they're so young oh. to achieve at such a young age. I like the other ones just rowing off. <laughs> <laughs> as you as you, walked, well, the as you walked. That's, I mean, I feel like the best thing you that. can do in that situation is, if it's possible anyway, is to just carry on rowing. Yeah, um, absolutely. Oh, unfortunately, it's f that is a killer crab. I don't know how they're going to rectify that really um it's such a shame for oh, them you it's can see the smiles the heads have gone out of the boat of the other yeah they, they know they, they know they, they i mean know you know what time. fair enough I, I do feel for the other um, i feel for, for bradford bradford grammar i feel well it's not e it's not easy um to be sculling Le so okay sculling is difficult well, but I've got a beautiful shot of them there. <laughs> Credit to all of the camera operators who have been standing there for four hours at a time. But yeah, it's been a fantastic day. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to all the team. You've been absolutely amazing mm. so far. And we've got... They've probably listened to more of this than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably sick of our voices right about now. Well, unlucky. <laughs> okay. We've They've got us for another hour or so. <sighs> Until the races start. You, Megan, you make it sound like we're ending, but there's still so much. Sorry, there's then. still so much drama. So mu well, there's always drama when there's rowing. I know, I know. But mm. and, and then we've got tomorrow as well. We hope, yes. we hope you all tune yeah. in for tomorrow as well. I was well. talking about the length of the second race. Not an easy one, that one. Yeah, because we've got long course tomorrow. Could could be collisions at Elva. Oh, gosh. Did you row in that when you were... Um, in Durham Regatta? I think I did, and but luckily I had a, an amazing Cox that yeah. relieved that pressure. I know. And Coxes actually really do make the difference. You know, their tone of voice, how they encourage you as a team. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've been with aggressive Coxes, and I've been with very constructive ones. And honestly, it's when, you know, they need to be the first person to keep their cool, to mm. incentivise you. Um, like this Cox is doing now. He's, you know... Yeah. It, it must be such a disappointment. We've got Baus, he, he's yeah. unscrewing his blade. Well, unscrewing. Well, you know the what? These boys have got a lot of limelight today. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> I hope that they watch this. <laughs> and I hope that they understand. Maybe they're doing it for Pound TV. Maybe. They're, do you know what? They're being the main character in the uh, story right here. Well, the others are all rowing up. They're probably grateful that they can get off the water. Okay, well, I looks like we're turning around, and I think they're not going to finish the race, unfortunately. Which is a shame. But they, do you know what? They put their all in, and that's all that they can they be proud did. of, really. They did. And that's they've done. They've done fantastic. They've done absolutely amazing today. But I think there'll be a bit of a pause in the racing as we try and rectify that massive crab. And we've got some lovely overhead footage by our brilliant. James, uh, who's currently sorting that out. Um, got but a couple of finals coming up, I believe. We've got Hexham and Camois coming up soon. And who else are we looking forward to? Time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say on that one. Time will tell. Well, it gives us a bit of a break as well, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we can chat about rowing oh. because that's apparently what rowers do all the time. Oh my word! I, I wish that I didn't, but I do. Do you know it's really interesting because um, uh, there's been a big debate recently in college, and it's who talks about their sport more, and it's currently rowing versus frisbee. And I think Frisbee are taking the title at in Mary's, your I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, I like how you've left the college and you still know. I still I still hear everything, like I'm not going to lie. Looks like we've got some rowing on, but one of the blades isn't moving. One and of the, they're the not bow. heading back. I, I guess that's nice that they want to complete the race, you know. Uh, Props to them. Yes, they've come past us, but because of our vantage point, we cannot see. Um... Good, good on them for yeah. finishing the race. I think that's the all you can do, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've seen some crews that haven't. 
so. <laughs> well done. Oh, look at that huge eject. That is, that is huge. Oh, oh my God. It's God. literally gone backwards. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, this is the difficulty with sculling. You know, a lot of uni rowing is sweeping. Um, and it is a different skill when you're only trying to look after one blade. Oh, got oh. a dog content. Oh, it's a whippet. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with oh whippets. I'm god. not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the finalists lining up. They've had a long day. 7:08 p.m. Um, wow. And look at that drone pan. You can see the spectators are winding down, which is a bit of a discouragement um, for all those racing, but I'm sure with pottery in their sights, that's what they're focusing on. Do you know, I know for a fact that one person who's waiting to, uh, to race um, is missing a family birthday dinner. <gasps> How do you know that? Oh, <laughs> because you know it's my friend. Oh, okay. uh, it's, my friend um, it's my friend's birthday next week and she's come to Durham and they're going to Zen because Zen is absolutely amazing for food. And her brother is currently coxing um, oh. Leeds Uni Boat Club and he is stuck in the boat uh, so she, she goes to Durham but she's still okay yeah yeah well you know what I mean if you're in the final you would the final of the 190th Durham Regatta brought to you by Osborne's on this Pal TV live stream broadcast <laughs> I, mean, I wonder how many times those bonds have got name drops. <laughs> I mean, I for their sake, I kind of hope that they win. Otherwise, they he's missed out on an yes. amazing meal out at Zens. So we're talking about Osborne's. So I was like, I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> are you going to be partying in Osborne's tonight? No, no, I shan't be. Because you'll be rowing tomorrow morning. I am rowing at eight forty-two a.m. Oh, that there is. There is no sleep. No sleep. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of sleep. What is that? What's that? Is it Lady Gaga where it's like eat, sleep, row, repeat? Yeah. It does. But you know what? It has felt like that leading up to Durham Regatta, and I'm sure that's true of many of the colleges. And um, yeah, a lot of early mornings, a lot of 7 a.m.s, um, a lot of 6 a.m. alarms, which I think is hard in this, you know, this period where everyone else is kind of relaxing, and I'm like, sorry, got to go to bed. I'm rare. Oh. I'm rare. Oh, that, I think I know. that's the thing. I feel like the worst thing is waking up early, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's so much better now than in, you know, head. <laughs> We've just had a very motivational support from our um, ass assistant who's telling us to keep going with the chat. That, that as in motivational, motivational wise. Motivation. She's impressed. She's basically the Cox, you know. She is. Oh, yes. But as I was saying, you know, the, the early mornings in winter, you know, you wake up, you walk. You walk to the boat club, half an hour walk in the pitch black. It's just, you're kind of questioning life decisions at that point. But um, in the summer when the, the birds are chirping, the wild garlic is growing all and around the sun Durham. comes up over the horizon. Oh, beautiful. Oh, stunning. Beautiful. So my question for you is, mm. what has been the worst fashion that you've seen today from the rowing? I'm not going to lie. Oh. There's quite a lot of bad fashion in rowing. Um, oh, a race. Oh, we've got a race. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> Let's let's try and figure out. It's single skulls. Here we go. They are thundering down the course right now, and we're just trying to get confirmation on who the race is. But they are looking good. Oh, I believe it's City of Cambridge rowing club um for number 254 ah well i think that would be ed gardner then yes it if is that is the case it is Can ed you gardner. Tell? do you know ed gardner i know ed he dates oh. my friend he's going out with my friend oh well <laughs> as i was saying earlier i know ed gardner i went to school with ed gardner oh really uh well he's a bit older than me sorry ed but, um. <laughs> but he's got a nice uh Nice couple of lengths on his opponent at the moment. A he long way to come. Is it the fight? It's the final, I believe. I is believe it not? it's the final. He is looking good. He's against Durham Arc Terry, I believe. No, I yes, he is. Yes. That is Durham Arc. And it looks like Terry. Oh, Terry's coming back into Dark it. Arc has done a decisive oh, power push. Wow. And it is going to be a really tight race towards the end of this. And it's so exciting. And we hope that you are excited too. Uh, yeah. But it still looks He's like... He's looking over his shoulder. Yeah. I think Ed Gardner's going to manage it. Ed's done another push just to challenge Ed Gardner him. really has been a favourite of Pal TV today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as he should. He's driven up from Cambridge. 
But the yeah. single in his car as well has informed me earlier. Oh, and look God. at that drone footage. You can see he's pulling away again. And that just shows it is it is that mental battle when it's one on one and you can see each other in your eyesight. And, you you know, you have to look around for the steering. So you will see the competitor. Um, but I think that might be Ed winning again at the 190th. I mean, this is not his first time winning. Let's be honest. He's, he's will it be his last? I don't think so. No, he's gonna keep. I can imagine him rowing until his seventies. Okay. He's one of those type of people. He's fantastic. The masters. Well, congratulations. It looks and look at that shot of Durham as the sun sets. Absolutely wow. beautiful. And we've got another race, completely, you know, barging down the river. Street. Right now. They are not holding back. It looks as though it might be Leeds, I believe. It looks like the Leeds uniform. It looks like the Leeds uniform. It's number 189. And they, they're looking comfortable. It's a Cox quad. And we're just trying to get, trying to get confirmation. <laughs> but Not entirely sure. But again, this is a, this is a close race. I was just coming into the evening, and they will have been waiting all I mean, day for this. They're so, like the nerves will be there, and it looks like they've got a length ahead of their competitors. Always a nice thing to know about. Always a nice thing. And that's a beautiful I shot. I think, you know, Durham you're Bank sitting side. in quite a comfortable position when you're up that much. We haven't seen the competitors on their screen yet, so they're doing ah. quite well at the moment. They're just chilling. I mean, you know, see the person at bow. She's checking out how long she's got left to go. <laughs> she's still got a while. <laughs> she's she's, still got she's a while. ready to go. You she's can see all the Hillbead supporters sitting on their sofas there. Do you know what? Anywhere. The Hillbead supporters on their sofa are a common thing in Durham, especially with the races. I remember for Novice Cup in particular in your first year, right? Mm -hmm always there and they will boo at you as you go past which isn't always the nicest but it's all a bit of fun isn't it i'm sure we would do the exact same in their position and it looks like they are school children yes sorry so we it's not Falsely misinformed you. It's, it looks like it's Durham School versus Camus Arc. And in I'm going to assume that's Camus. In the yes. I'm not quite sure where Durham School are. Um, but lovely shots of Camus. In the women's J13 Cox Pod. There we go. We can see them now. They're still going. And then we've got another race coming up. And they're gaining on the juniors at a, a, a rather an alarming rate, actually. <laughs> Yes, I'd be alarmed. You I, can't see them yet, but we've just but, seen but, them go past, and, and they uh, are not holding back. No, they're, they're going rather quickly, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll get some footage on them soon. Just remember, we've got loads of results coming through just along the bottom of the screen. So if you want any updates, there we go. Oh, and who have we got here? Could that... Be Leonard's. It's an octo. It's an octo. <laughs> and they are thundering down the race course right now. And it is neck and neck. There's a lot of blades at the moment, so a lot could go wrong. But so far, it's all going right for them. Most of you sit, the less risk you'll be in the camera. They're looking clean. A couple of them aren't, haven't got their eyes in the boat, you know, they're looking behind, seeing how far off they are. They need to keep their eyes in the boat in order to really, really concentrate in the last stretches of these races. But you can, we can hear the coxes from here. There's a lot of screaming going on in There's a lot boats. of screaming. There's a lot of screaming from the banks as well. You can hear from further down the, on the course. We think that might be Dark slash Leonard's against Durham School. It look it, it does looks like, like Leonard's it, on the yeah. close side, and it looks like Dark. It looks like Durham Schools Durham have School got that advantage, advantage over the composite crew. We can tell that they're children because they're in an octave. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
It's what we've resorted to at this time of the evening. Do you know, I think it's actually so lovely that you start rowing at such a young age and then sometimes people compete until like they're 70 in the Masters. Mm, I don't think we've had any Masters today. I've seen a couple. Okay. Well, Um, I perhaps I'm wrongly assuming. There might be more Masters tomorrow and it looks as though Durham School has taken it over the Ah, composite crew. Who have we got coming up here? It's a Coxed Four. And it looks like race course crew has got the edge over the competitors. I want to say that's Yarm. Yes, that is Yarm School. Yarm School have currently got an edge over their competitors. Looking tidy. Yarm have been big winners today. They've been really, they've been doing really, really well oh, in their races. Are. They always are a good. good we uh, we refer to it as getting yarmed in our uh, boat club. When you drawn against yarm and you know you're going to get yarmed. You know what? I really like that. <laughs> I mean, I it's, not wrong, it's not wrong, I'm afraid. And wrong. Trying to work out who they're against at the moment. But I mean, their competitors are gaining on Yarm School on the Pilar Wood side. And it looks like it could be tight into the last couple hundred metres of this race. I think that's... I think that's Berwick. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know to you, Megan. Yeah, that's Berwick. I used to row with them. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I anyway. used to row with them, she says. I think... Well, Berwick are trying to chase that win. At least I hope it is Berwick. I apologise in advance if it's not. But Yama looking good as they go round into the last final stretch. Pass Bass Bridge. But how are you guys? How are our listeners? Let us know where you're listening from, who you're listening out for. Well done to your family, your friends who are rowing and got, getting to the last of all the races today. Got some singles coming up here. got some singles coming up and it looks I think that's Durham, Durham School d- yeah Durham School tees in the final of yeah. the women's J18 single event yeah we believe and Durham School looks like it's got a couple lengths on their competitor but their competitor is not giving up uh, and with a single a it can it can switch at any moment because really you're not relying on other people to carry you through this event it is all on you and got beautiful shot of the cathedral in the background and There's if you have girl. and if you have one dodgy sh- dodgy stroke you're in the water it can all, we've had a couple capsizes today thanks for the reminder I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> they probably won't be proud to be lying <laughs> No, but capsizing can happen no matter how experienced oh, you absolutely. are. Oh, absolutely. So do not... If you haven't capsized, have you even read? <laughs> I've capsized multiple times. Both times in a single. There we go. There's the tease rower trying to catch up valiantly. Looking calm, looking controlled, but... I think that's really important, looking calm and controlled, even if you're behind. Because oh, at the, the same time, just because you're not winning, it doesn't mean you can't put in a good race or a good time. No. And actually, it's when you start to panic that actually your power's not coming through the legs. Um, And unfortunately, that is where the power is for the rowers. It is indeed. Seeing through to the final there. Logan Marshall says he loves the people with the couches. I'm presuming he's referring to Hillbeat. (laughs) I don't think he's referring to our presenters. Well, I mean, we have a good couch as well, but I do oh. think he'll be do have better couches. I tell you what is sad, seeing that there's pizza and we can't get it. Yeah, there's <laughs> pizza upstairs in our little boathouse, but <laughs> not available. They for can us. hear us talking about the pizza. We know you're listening upstairs. <laughs> what pizza could you go for right about now? 
Um, pepperoni. Pepperoni. I did actually have a pizza yesterday in my uh, carb loading, which yeah. I always find entertaining for a 700 meter race. I feel like <laughs> load those carbs for that 700 meter push. I literally <laughs> carb loaded <laughs> for commentating about rowing. Uh, I love that, Megan. I had like a whole loaf my of respect bread. <laughs> <laughs> Soreen, that's my rowers. Do you know, I was story. talking about this earlier because we were talking about like lucky things for races and I was like, Soreen is like a lucky thing to eat before a race. But we've got a race saying off right now. It looks like a bit of a scrappy start from both of those boats as they are thundering down the river course. Bright, bright green t-shirts on the race course side. And then I the believe this is an eight. This is... An eight. It looks like it's St. Chad's versus Sheffield University. That does look like the Sheffield Blades. And this is a very interesting race to watch. Um, Chad's, I think, rowing with a half novice and half senior squad. Do you know, I see some of the heads slightly out of the boat. <laughs> I see num seat number four. Do you know, it's great though that we're that college boats are on, are, you know, competing against universities. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely. fantastic. And do you know what? It's, it's, nice. it's a close race and it's amazing to see dogs. that all the dedication and hard work of the past couple of months is paying off. Absolutely. And it looks like Sheffield I know a lot of those Chad's girls, they, they, they have put in hours. Um, but it may be Sheffield edging the lead. Sheffield I'm looks sure like it's a quarter of a length ahead of the college boat at the moment but it's still all to play for they're only in I the first couple hundred meters now. of their race so you <laughs> never know just enjoying um our founder james saying pizza for everyone make sure you get it whilst it's hot thank you james how <laughs> much we can do about that now <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like sheffield are clawing oh look at that beautiful drone shot it it is still close and they're going past us right now there's a lot of support for Chad's at the moment. I'm they sure look the calm. They look controlled. And Sheffield's starting to get a little splashy. Yeah, Sheffield look like they're pulling ahead, though, by half a length. But that might Gosh, all change. It, it you know, it starts to get scrappy at this point in the race. And you, you <laughs> can't... You, I don't blame them. They are tired. I, I was the same. Um, yeah, a lot of supporters still down here, which is great to hear. Who are you supporting on the live stream? Let us know. Oh, I thought you were asking no. me. I was like, it's well, fairly obvious, Megan. <laughs> the college I bleed blue for some dons. Um. And it looks as though coming over the finish line will be Sheffield first, but we'll give you all the official race results down That's a below. lot of splash. Ah. Oh, there's a huge shout wow, on the backside for these races. We've got doubles coming down. And they're really If only they could be clearer who they're shouting for. Sounds like they're saying, come on, Grey. Oh, that's because ah, there's an eight. We've got and some eights coming in hot near us. And I believe... Not that you're able to see, but Grey's eight are about to lose. And then we have two doubles coming up the river at the moment. It looks like they're, you know, trying to get the races through quickly at the moment. Oh, How are you guys all doing? Are you guys enjoying us? I'm Let enjoying us the piece of hot pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Turning into an ASMR show. <laughs> no garlic mayo, might I add. <laughs> the pizza does look and smell good. And it looks like the crew on the race course side has a rather sizable lead currently over their opponents. But it's still all to play for. Again, like, uh, rowing is so unpredictable for every single race. You could be the favourites coming in and still catch a crab, have a dodgy stroke. It, it's so hard to tell what could happen in a rowing race. And we think this final might have been between Northumbria University and Durham School. Um, apologies for the delay in updating you on that one, but we're trying to find these as quickly as we can. It, that's a massive impede on their line, but I suppose with their lead being quite considerable, 
it might not be taken up with. Have there been any scandals f so far today? Let us know in the comments if you want to talk about something that you were shocked about that happened. Oh, there's always scandals with rowing. There's always scandals with rowing. Look at the little row back. <laughs> a happy row for some, a sad row for the others. We'd love to know if there's any hot takes for you that you've had today. And it looks like we've got a bit of a break in the racing tonight. A bit of a pause as they row back. So Megan, do you miss rowing on this river? Do you know, I really do, especially because I just don't really know the rules of the river in Oxford yet. Yeah. I like, uh, How could they be different? Well, uh, they've got like weird, like, because the the bends are a lot bigger in Oxford, so yeah. there's like certain there's, there's like a certain time and place where you have to take start like taking that turn, um, and I just like haven't um, been able to do it in a single yet. So I've only ever done it in a crew boat, and I feel like I'm still just not really on it. Um, I'm just not yeah. really clued into where where <laughs> you need to go. Um, but it's I mean, Oxford's obviously a beautiful <laughs> place as well, but it. it I oh, feel you like can't say that when you're looking at Durham like that. Oh no, it's, <laughs> it's both beautiful for different reasons. But I think I think Durham is so special because, mm. like, when you're rowing up and you see the cathedral and, like, especially it's so even in the autumn it's so beautiful when with all the different coloured trees and leaves. It's so so nice. And yeah, I do miss rowing here. Um, I used to love being in a single skull um, up and down the river. But wow. Look at that. You can see the crowds dwindling as the races come close to the finals. We've got a couple minutes here, we believe. But then again, with rowing, you never know with the timings. Looks like the Viking reenactment has ceased. Do you know, we were talking to um, MP Mary earlier and she was saying that she wished there were more blood and gore in oh the Viking reenactment. I, I did hear something slightly, slightly strange from some of the Durham regatta uh, presenters, uh, commentators even, who are here on the day. Because we, we, you know, we've got them in our ears at the same time. And they were saying, yeah. if you love like blood and guts and gore and like spilling your liver out then you'll love rowing and I just thought what on earth <laughs> I just got out of the boat and I was like oh, what's going on now do you know I I feel like in a way that accurately sums up how rowing can sometimes feel um it's such a like love hate sport and I think like I know I personally go back and forth whether I actually like <laughs> rowing sometimes because I think you put your all into it so much and and sometimes you get very very little reward um so it's definitely really really difficult to always mo especially when yeah. it's the early mornings I think it's really really difficult to always motivate yourself to wanting oh to, absolutely to, and ergs oh my god I hate ergs <laughs> but it I it's all for moments like this moments like this when there's a coxed for final about to take place you can see them lining up and off they go wow looking like a strong start from the race course side it looked like a really nice tidy start and they are powering down that river because that's the bit that you want to keep that lead as much as possible from the early stages and it will be on the Pilau Wood side to really make a push just to you know really really show them and not make it an easy race for them that's the thing you want it to be dramatic you want it to be right until the end trying um, to identify these blades i oh and it's now getting neck and neck which is incredibly interesting you just never know and it looks like the race course crew is still tiny amounts ahead. Maybe a quarter of a... No, maybe not even that. We think this might be Berwick, Universe, Berwick Amateur Rowing Club against Durham University Boat Club. In which case, this is going to be a very tight race towards the end of the day. Durham will not want to lose this one after a successful season. Uh, incredibly successful at Bucks. And we can hear the support as they come down the race course. It will be a tight race. Durham University on the race course side, we believe. 
There they are, number 67. And it lo still looks like a tight race. There really is nothing in between it. And that's the DU devs, we believe. Uh, so we talked about them earlier, sent in some crew information, and that is Will Nicholson at Barrow, I believe. So I, yeah, I know the two people at Berwick as well. Ah, of course, as you used to row for them. Neck yeah. and neck, not much is going to decide this one, and it's a good job we have the drone footage. And it's a really good job that we should be getting live updates across the screen of the results. And it is looking so tight as they come into the final couple hundred metres, and I don't think they can call it. Well, I'm certainly not going to try. Megan. I'm not going to try. I don't want to. I don't want to get the finger pointed at me. And it must be so difficult because they must have put all their last reserves of energy, and to be unsure at that finish line of who has won must be tantalising, to say the least. And we've got another race coming up stream currently. It looks like two eights. And they are driving like through the Sheffield's water. Sheffield's blades, but I might be wrong. I believe that's Tyne that's as well. Tyne. That's Tyne on the race course side. Tyne versus Sheffield, I believe. And it looks like Sheffield has got a tiny amount on Tyne. And it's incredibly exciting over here, knowing that, you know, we're going into the last couple of race races. There's some big finals. People will be pot hunting, to say yeah, the least. This is the final of the Open Elite. And it's Tyne Arc versus Sheffield University. So, looking determined. I like the bucket hats. Wow, like they're just they sailing are, past us. They are powering Their down that not river. Touching the water. It looks like Sheffield's got a tiny lead well not deep. it's got a maybe a quarter yeah. half a length on time Sheffield are looking determined and I think Tyne are trying to keep calm keep it up but I think time might be at a slightly slower rate and I think that's going to be a, a Sheffield win in the open elite but it's been an excellent day of racing today we really hope you've enjoyed the coverage so far and it looks like Sheffield are just going to cross the line a bit beforehand. But again, the official results will be posted at the bottom of the screen soon. And there's Durham. And there's the Cathedral. Ah, we might have the final of the sculling here. Number 305 is on the screen currently. She looks calm, she looks cool, she looks collected. She's having a cheeky look behind her to see we, how far she is. We think this is the J17 final. Durham School, Heslop against Sheffield City Styles. It's not looking quite as close as some of the other races. Um, certainly not as close as the last. Indeed, the race course side seems to have a rather sizable lead upon that kilo opponent. This is my first time camera hopping. But I mean, it's so great oh. to see juniors rowing in such a competitive. Oh, absolutely. I mean, these are the people that could be future Olympians. I don't want to speak soon, but they could be. I aim high. Well, what can you say? Well, quiet. Looking like Durham School is in the lead there. And it's not easy uh, rowing on your own at this time of the day in the final. There's a lot of pressure. Have you raced a final in a single? I, I feel like I make it a habit not to race in a single. Yeah. Yeah. I would be terrified. I remember doing like an attempted race, like I re like race piece where I was literally just like going a bit faster than usual. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I feel like the worst thing is a race start in a single. Oh, oh God, like, yeah. Because I feel like a race start is just a bit tricky anyway, regardless of how good a crew you are. Anything can kind of like make it go a bit off balance. So it's 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 a hard thing to do in a single. And it is. And congratulations to Heslop from Durham School. It, we're pretty sure that is you. 
um, as she's about to cross the finish line confidently ahead of her competitor. Um, Maybe but well even done to easily. Both. Well, <laughs> well I, I wonder if we've explained what easily means. I didn't know until a couple of weeks ago when we asked how much we won by and they said easy and we went, no, but how much? Turns out it's more than six boat lengths. Oh, okay. They just count it as easy. Is that what you know to be true? I just figured that it was just such a big distance yeah. that they didn't think it was yeah. worth actually calculating how many lengths. Yeah. I feel like it's really difficult when it's noted as easy. I, I like I would yeah. be I would be a bit sad. It's demoralizing. Mm. It is in fact. Um I think we might have lost easily today. <laughs> nah. Nah. Just click don't I can People check. I think we're getting ready for the open masters um coxless quad. Between oh, yeah, Durham Art and Sunderland so City. You know when the race ends? Unless that has already raced. Um, but <laughs> watching a few so queues go back. Okay, um, Massive shout out to everyone yeah, who has um, been organising the regatta. It's not an easy feat at all. You've done such a fantastic job. You've provided such an amazing day. The entertainment has been fantastic along the bank side. And, you know, you've done amazing. So please, please recognize the amazing feat that you've done. Go to the home point in 10 seconds. And there's the shot of the full course that we've got. So as you can see, it's mostly a straight line. There's a slight corner and bend right at the end, which does make it a little harder for us to tell who's winning. Were you um, in a coxed boat today? I was in a coxed boat. So you had a coxed to Thankfully, a cox who I've known for 20 years. Wow, mm. that's which I'm presuming. AKA you all my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, it's lovely. I, I really get on with the people I'm rowing with, and and that makes such a difference. I sounded so formal. I really get on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think what's what's important is, that a is political statement. No, <laughs> no, we're we're very good friends. Went for a cheeky pasta bonding last night. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's what's important is when you enjoy rowing and you don't want to take it away. There's the Chad's eight rowing back. They've done so well today, um, and I really hope they're proud of how they've rowed. To make it to the final and be against a university boat is an absolute yeah, it's absolute win. And basically. from the smallest college in Durham as well. Yeah, not many. Um, that's cool. Clearly, quantity doesn't mean quality. Well, quite, yeah, Megan. <laughs> quite. Well. A predicted end time now is what have you enjoyed team. most about today oh wow um i enjoyed racing i was yeah i was nervous before my race um i think ultimately when you're rowing in a boat the the issue is when you make a mistake your whole crew feels it you know if you catch a crab if you're not sitting correctly if you're not squaring in time um then actually you're let you're not letting yourself down but like as cringe as it is you are letting the boat down um, and that's but what I was really afraid of. Yeah. I don't think I did. I'm sure you didn't. But uh, remember, you win and lose as a crew. Yeah. And and actually, losing as a crew is something that is really important. And um, to learn how to cope with that, to learn how to come back from going down at the start. Um, there was a lovely. Yeah, there was a. There was, there was <laughs> a, a dog. dog. Left it. I would talk about it, but it's gone now. Um, there have been some good dogs at the regatta. If you're here tomorrow and you've got a dog, pop by <laughs> the Pound TV station. We would love to see your dogs. Those tomorrow. camera operations have been there for four it's hours. It's, it's, um, it's probably the best part of their day. Oh, who's doing karaoke? I do love a good dog. Have your family ever made the trip up to watch you, Megan? They have, but to be fair, they're from Northumberland, so yeah. they're not. See, no, they're not too far. They're from. Not they're uh, from yeah. Almouth. Um, yeah. And it's a it's a lovely day when when uh, families and friends of students come up to watch, and a, a lot of alumni coming back for the Durham Regatta. Um, it's always a bit of a highlight seeing people from boat clubs past. Have your parents ever come and visited? My and parents are standing opposite me. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, they're dressed all in blue. <laughs> 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 no, I, I only mentioned because my dad um, he just texted me. Although, uh, do you want to give him a shout out? Not, well, not really. Not to bait out my um, parents. 
Um, but they came to watch us at Weehaw and they said, rowing's not really a spectator sport, is it? Oh, wow. That's quite Look brutal. how close these ooh, quads are. Almost blade collision worthy. And I believe that means that we have taken off again. Yeah, they narrowly missed a blade collision there. Really good calls from the Cox to make sure that they don't get disqualified from uh, moving their line too far over. Wait, that's, wait, that's but they're, they're looking strong despite the fact that it was a close call. And we're pretty confident that that is Durham Arc versus Sunderland City in the final of the Open Masters. Do you want to be rowing until you're 70? I would love to. I would love to. But there's a lot of early starts. Does rowing want me rowing at 70? <laughs> That's the question. Well, Dark have got about half a length up on their opponents at the moment. They're looking very close. But there, there are no coxes in this event. Um, so it's all pressure steering or perhaps yeah. there might be a foot pedal in the, in the boat. Pressure steering is difficult, though. Yeah. I sympathise. So, yeah. yeah, presumably that's from the team communicating. Maximum we'll go light TV. on uh, stroke side, you go heavy on bow side, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. So basically the person in bow will make that call all the time. They'll they'll give it a shout out and be like... Because uh, it's it's basically the person... It's it's the... What's the word I'm talking about? It is at the control of the person in bow. They're the one making the decisions about the bowman. The bowman. About gender neutral time. And they've got a really, really, s you know, they're pulling away. Although it looks as though. Oh, oh awfully it, close. It's awful. And there's been a collision oh, of blades. Oh, no. Dear, oh dear. And it, they've had to right in come front to of a us. stop. Not right in front can, of us, not right, <laughs> right before. Okay, it the looks finish. like Durham are rowing on. Is it Durham? It looks, yeah, Durham are ahead. And It'll be interesting to see what the stewards might make of it. Yeah, hopefully they aren't asked to row again. Um, or hopefully no one gets disqualified. Sometimes these things just happen. It's really, really difficult. Indeed. Like and to happen in the finals. It's stressful. They probably just want to get out of the boat. So Didn't like li with us after right literally now, in the Tokyo Olympics. This happened with a no, GB crew. I can't you. remember I which crew, I wouldn't know. but it was um it was a men's crew in the Olympics last year. Uh, last year, two years ago, and they literally said they forgot to steer. Oh, so God. it hap it happens to professionals, you know. Oh shit. Um, I'm just gonna go and we've got another nap. race no, coming down the takeaway. race course at the moment. I'm not going out. Everyone in my house is going out. I'm not and going it's out. And an eight we have coming up. We believe it's Sheffield University against St. Peter's School. <laughs> a university <laughs> against a school. <laughs> okay. And this is in the final of the women's beginner eight. And, and I think that would be St. Peter's in the lead. That is a... By about mm. a boat length. Boat length for head. That's quite a lot in the start of the race. Um, an early lead from St. Peter's. Beautiful drone fittage. And you can see from those splashes, their blades are off the waters. Um, off the water. Wow. Some clean rowing, you know. They're going to be very happy after this one today. Coming up from York. And I'm sure they will be doing well in York Regatta next weekend. Are you going to York Regatta next weekend? I don't believe so. <laughs> I think um, it's rowing and me need to have a little break from each other. <laughs> to keep We've it got chill. race tomorrow. <laughs> oh, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, no, I think um, uh, unfortunately not going to be able to make it. And that is a rather sizable lead by St. Peter's school at the moment by a couple of lengths. so well done for them so far they're doing really really well well done to everyone who's competed today you've all been absolutely fantastic we hope that you've enjoyed your day mm. sorry i <laughs> had a missed call from someone i <laughs> <So laughs> can't, can't really take it just um commentate sarah styles is wishing lydia styles of sheffield junior rowers lots of luck in her second ever single skulls race oh coming up soon
And it is still a rather sizable lead for St. Peter's College as they go under Bath's Bridge heading into the final Very significant. few metres. They're going to be medals or pots for those girls today. Have you got a pot or a medal? 